Chapter 3 21 3 verses 3. As soon as the battle began, the vigorous jungle hunter nimbly climbed to the top of the oak guard. The oak guard, which is three to four meters high, is thick and thick. Even the top of the head is half the size of a table. The jungle hunter stands firmly on it. And as the crown of the tree grows, it actually forms a natural arrow tower. At the same time, the beautiful flower dancer's slender legs move gently, floating in midair on the petals, also occupying a height advantage. Owen just smiled slightly at this and simply let go of the control of the three puppets, allowing the puppet's intelligent core to activate the battle mode and play freely. The smartly opened top hat Jia Jia gave a strange laugh. He took off the red ribbon top hat on his head with his slender fingers and flipped it gently in his hand. Suddenly, a large group of black red-eyed crows flew out from inside, flying around like a blanket. While blocking the jungle hunter's shooting angle, he also pounced on the flower dancer. The flower dancer has the shape of a female elf. She is small and obviously not good at fighting. But since she was taken out by Cortana, she is naturally unique. Facing the flock of flying crows, the flower dancer danced gracefully. Her jade arms and pink legs dancing to the music that came from nowhere. Because her skin was so smooth and white, it actually refracted the sunlight and turned it into a hazy luster. Making her the flower dancer is even more breathtakingly beautiful. And there is no trace of it being a man-made creation. Compared with dancing, the effect is more significant. Countless petals appear and rise with the dance, forming a barrier of flowers, and gradually spread to the entire venue to form a rain of petals. The effect is much stronger than that of a crowd of crows. Even Owen he frowned because he felt illusion and mental interference from it. The jungle hunter was not disturbed by the petals and the crows. He drew his bow and accurately shot the arrow through the gap between the flying crows towards the most fragile-looking top hat. As a wooden puppet, the top hat's defense was obviously not very high. Facing the incoming arrows, it could only open its umbrella. Unexpectedly, when the arrows fell, they slid away like raindrops, without even producing much impact. Seeing this scene, Cortana was stunned. The feather arrows used by the jungle hunters were enchanted and were not affected by ordinary strength magic shields and distortion fields. They also had an armor-piercing effect, but they did not penetrate that the thin umbrella is so weird. In fact, this is not surprising. The umbrella that looks like black silk is actually made of sky silk originating from the world of martial arts. It is the same material as the puppet silk used in top hats. It does not require any enchantment to be invulnerable to water and fire. Therefore, the effect of feather arrows to destroy demons is completely ineffective. The sharpness of the feather arrow itself cannot penetrate the sky silk because it is difficult to bear the force. The thin umbrella surface and the tough and elastic ribs allow the 10-layer force to exert at most 20 to 30%, which is far from enough to penetrate. The jungle hunter was about to replace his arrows when he suddenly made a movement, then shrank into a ball, and rolled down from the oak guard's head without hesitation. However, he was still injured by the sudden flash of the sword behind him, revealing the precision under the artificial skin, structure, and oozes a sap-like liquid. The sneak attack was made by Ni Sha who had been sneaking since the beginning, without anyone noticing. He sneaked up on the oak guard and slashed his back with a knife so sharply that the students who witnessed it couldn't help but flash their backs. Finding that there was no kill in one hit, Ni Sha also jumped off the oak guard who was slowly raising his arm to shoot down without any hesitation, and fought with the jungle hunter who already had a sword in his hand, preventing the other party from using long-range attacks. Opportunity and the jungle hunter also judged this before choosing to draw his sword. Nothing could be seen in the long-range competition. But now in the close combat, Owen could see some clues. Cortana's golem was not a simple golem, but followed a similar path to him. The essence of the golem is activation and intelligence, which is similar to giving life and thinking to dead creatures. Just like the transfiguration technique at Hogwarts, because giving real life to dead objects is too whimsical. The functions of the golem studied in the future are more and more focused on combat. So they are not deliberately made to be very sophisticated. Because even if the golem is made of a piece of stone, it will not hinder thee if the movement is too delicate. It will be easily damaged and affect the combat effectiveness. The puppet's pursuit of ingenuity is purely to save costs. Because it does not require too much precious materials and magic power. The problem is that the puppet is flexible enough. But it is completely unable to compete head-on with the golem. It is easy to suffer losses unless you are willing to pile up materials and create a prodigal game like Iron Overlord. Of Cortana's three golems, only the Oak Guard is a golem. 
The flower dancer is more like a magical product. And the jungle hunter is similar in nature to the ninja killer. It also has a sophisticated and flexible structure and can use long-range bows and arrows. Darts, knives and swords were used in close combat. So the fight was very exciting and fierce. The students present cheered after seeing it. Only Carl's face became more and more ugly. He wanted to stop the game several times. But finally succumbed to reality. It was obvious that both Owen and Cortana had violated the rules. But the teacher's gaze, the heated scene, and the backgrounds of the two made him remain silent and watch the duel he had pushed move in an unpredictable direction. At this time, the monk also joined the battlefield. As the product of Owen's martial arts dream, the tall and strong monk is not a thick and hard golem. Even though he looks like a bronze man, he is actually a bionic puppet that goes further than killing. With 100% human structure of bones and muscles, even joints, cartilage, tissue fluid and other structures are taken into account. And it is even equipped with five energy cores that deal with the five internal organs and magic lines and nodes that imitate meridians and acupuncture points. Such a complex and cumbersome design allows the monk to really perform it after integrating the martial arts that Owen exchanged from the system martial arts game. But it is not driven by internal force, but by the energy provided by the energy core. However, the monk faced an oak guard three to four meters high in the first battle. Owen was a little worried, but thinking about the effort and energy he had spent, if he couldn't deal with even one oak guard, there was no need to continue. The bronze man-like monk's footsteps were unusually light, and he easily approached the oak guard. As soon as he got close, he launched a fierce attack, just like a clockwork doll, and his fists like a pair of copper hammers were fierce, but not unyielding. He nimbly attacked the side of the oak guard's knees, making a loud bang and splintered with flying everywhere. As the monk attacked without mercy, the heavy body of the oak guard began to tremble, which showed that the key point was found. After judging that the threat was huge, the oak guard immediately waved his huge palm to grab the monk. Unexpectedly, the monk who was still attacking suddenly jumped up on the spot, flexibly backflips to avoid the oak guard's sweeping arm, and then stretched his body and landed. It was as if there was stickiness on the opponent's arm and under his feet. He stepped on the oak guard's thick arm and jumped into the air above the opponent's shoulder. His agility was not inferior to that of the jungle hunter. Chapter 322 Naughty children are regardless of age and race. This move is to catch the cicada in eight steps, which can make a bronze man step up unscientifically on the swaying and uneven arms. But the specific principle is not clear to Owen himself. Although magic can do this, the monks obviously use martial arts instead of magic. Unfortunately, as more and more martial arts are integrated, the meridian-like magic roots that are open become more complex, and the monks change more and more. Even he is a little unsure now, and can't even predict the next changes. Maybe the most perfect puppet he makes will be the monk. At this time, the energy core is installed in the monk's body according to the five internal organs continuously release energy. And then it is absorbed by the three largest magic nodes. Upper, middle and lower. And is transmitted to the magic circuit. After the operation of the magic roots and nodes like meridians and acupuncture points, it is transformed into a very strange energy. The bronze man-like monk's body surface has lines that resemble muscle textures and runes. At this time, the lines seem to be injected with liquefied energy, which gathers and flows in the ditch-like lines, and finally pours into the palm, forming a giant golden palm. He took out his hand and slapped the oak guard on the head. There was a click, and the oak guard fell to the ground with his head tilted. He couldn't move for a moment and a half. It can be seen that this move is very powerful. It is indeed a powerful King Kong. Palm, the Buddhist great monk's name is well deserved. Owen was in a daze when he witnessed this scene. He knew that the monk was powerful, but he didn't expect it to be so powerful. You must know that he did not control the monk, nor did he provide any blessing. And this was just the beginning. After taking down the oak guard with a powerful to draw palm, the monk who fell from the air tapped his toes on the ground. His seemingly heavy body once again rose into the air unreasonably and rushed towards the jungle hunter like a rock. His hands resembled those of a dragon and an eagle. If he were caught, it might not be as simple as ten bloody holes. The jungle hunter, who was already inferior to Nisha in terms of melee combat, sensed that the second enemy had joined, and the combat mode inevitably caused a moment of confusion due to adjustments. However, Nisha, who was good at seizing the opportunity, flashed his eyes with lightning and retreated. The sword was drawn out only in an instant. 
The jungle hunter who was about to deal with a two-sided attack suddenly stopped moving, and then his upper body slid down diagonally, and was unexpectedly slashed into two pieces by Shinobu with his sword. Although it is a man-made object, such damage will not lead to destruction. But major damage is inevitable. Of. At this moment, the crows dancing in the air also ignited the flammable gas that had been quietly released before. In a very short period of time, the expanding flame instantly filled the entire dual field. Although the temperature was not high, there was no problem in burning out the petals. Without the petals, the flower dancer lost most of its means and had to his whole body fell to the ground covered in charred black. But he still had the elegance from before. To be honest, Cortana's oak guard, jungle hunter, and flower dancer are not weak. The problem is that when they were first created, the purpose of these three works was not to deal with the unconventional puppets in Owen's hands. The huge oak guard is enough to demolish the city wall. Unless it is hit by continuous fire magic, it is a ruthless demolition machine. But it can be hit on the head by the monk's extremely explosive drop palm. Using the lever principle on the upper side, the neck was damaged and fell down with a slap. The jungle hunter is equally miserable. As a man-made object of the same type as the ninja killer, if it is in a complex environment such as a forest, or there is a stable shooting space, it will not be able to play such a role. At least it will not be forced to fight in close combat. Of course, the saddest thing is the flower dancer, because it uses illusion as the main means of assistance. As a result, the puppet is not affected by illusion at all. Even if it releases petals to block the sight, it has no effect, and it ends up in disgrace. And, for various reasons, there were three shots in a row, and all the creations belonging to Cortana fell to the field. The battle was over so fast that even Owen didn't react. Cortana's face didn't look very good at this moment. Previously, because of her equal status and the fact that she was both a royal elf, she behaved elegantly. But essentially she was still a child. As a princess in the original world, her living environment did not require much. Having said that, even after I came here unexpectedly, I was pampered by a legendary mage. When had I ever suffered such a big loss? I was immediately unhappy. There are naughty children regardless of age and race. Especially those who are pampered like Cortana. Once they become willful, even her teacher will have a headache. After all, the other party is an elf princess who not only has royal blood, but also has an elf kingdom as the background. Such as, It seems we need to be more serious. Cortana tilted her head and said a little innocently, but also a little seriously. Owen immediately felt something bad. He forgot that his body was just smaller. But inside, he had the mind of an adult. Therefore, he ignored that the other person was a real child. Even if the actual age was not young, the long life cycle made the other person always maintain the way of thinking of a child. Which is unpredictable. When aqua blue lines appeared on Cortana's forehead, and a strange spear with a head like an elongated water drop appeared in her hand, and a large sapphire embedded in the fist, her aura suddenly changed. Just like a pebble dropped into a pond, invisible water waves spread out in all directions with Cortana as the center. Kevin Flynn's expression changed on the spot. Before he could stop him, teleportation waves lit up around him. He immediately sighed and asked Carl to step back and make room. What's going on? Why did little Cortana use water drops in the Academy City? The old mage who was teleported over in a hurry almost tripped over his one meter long beard. But he didn't care about it and jumped up and grabbed Kai. Then Flynn's collar snarled. Children's anger. Kevin Flynn said helplessly and painfully, while pointing at the dual field. This was none other than Phoenix, the oldest legendary mage in Academy City, who was also Cortana's teacher. So after hearing this, he immediately let Kevin Flynn go and lay on the fence to look down. Hey! When did Academy City gain another elf royal family? As Cortana's teacher, Phoenix immediately recognized Owen's identity and said in surprise. Kevin Flynn rubbed his eyebrows with a headache. Originally, he was not 100% sure, but now that Phoenix opened his mouth, he was 99% sure that the little guy named Owen, who claimed to be a Northland noble, was indeed of the royal family of elves from other worlds still master cross-border teleportation, which is even more troublesome. Visitors from other worlds are not uncommon for Academy City. They are everywhere in the secret realm, but they are all intercepted outside the seal. Occasionally, some enter directly, but most of them are either eaten by wild monsters or become new wild monsters. Only people like Cortana, who can't hide their light will be remembered. Chapter 323 Loli's willful scene is huge. Cortana was accidentally summoned by Phoenix. 
for some reason, he couldn't go back, which made him feel a little guilty. After all, Cortana looked so young. Because of his mistake, he had to leave his parents in home. So he was not accepted as a disciple. She is still very doting on her, making her mage family just like her mother's family. This led to the fact that no one dared to offend Cortana in Academy City. Not to mention that as a royal elf, her talent and potential were unparalleled. The legend was easily available, and the demigod was just a matter of luck. In addition, with the efforts of Phoenix, she contacted the Light Elf. After entering the kingdom and being able to send some items, her status becomes even more special. In other words, Cortana has the potential to become a strong person and has a strong background. She must be given face and cannot be easily offended. Now Owen is the same, even more deadly, because the other party obviously has the ability of cross-border teleportation. So he can't be offended. You know if you beat him to tears today, will a demigod come to talk to you tomorrow? This is no joke. Elves are inherently immortal species. The strong ones accumulated over many years cannot be said to be in a nest. Nor are they just one or two. When the number increases, it is normal for one or two demigods to emerge. And don't think that demigods are weak. If a legend can destroy a city, then a truly crazy demigod can destroy a country. It's really not a joke. Like the undead demigods like Queen Yu. Don't look at Owen scaring away the young queen. It was because the other party didn't like trouble and was restrained by him. So he ran away. And the blood prince, even if he suffered a lot of injuries, he still failed to win the 10 legendary abyss demons with infinite flashes, forcing Owen to use a lot of trump cards to solve the problem. You must know that in that battle, he had the right time, place and people. Even so, these demigods are not in a state of complete victory. It can be said that Owen is invincible. Theoretically, as long as these undead demigods are given enough time, any one of them can cause a small-scale undead natural disaster. It is unrealistic to destroy the empire. It is easy to massacre hundreds of thousands of people in a city. And it is also difficult to catch or restrict the opponent. In other words, this kind of behavior can be copied. As long as a solution to the opponent is not found for a day, similar scenarios will keep appearing. This is the scary thing about the strong. It is not about how many people can be killed at one time, but that there is no limit. They can come and go when they want, but they can still cause large-scale destruction. Even if such a monster were placed in Owen's previous world, it is an existence that scares all countries. Even in the unfathomable Academy City, if you want to deal with a demigod, you must pay a sufficient price to seal it. As for killing it completely, it is not impossible, but too difficult. Generally speaking, demigods, who are truly good at fighting are invincible in the material world. At this time, countless water vapor gathered over the entire dual field, even reaching the clouds in the sky, like a sea of clouds falling into the world. The scene was very spectacular. As expected, he is indeed the lover of the water element lord. Although he cannot fully exert the power of water droplets, his momentum has surpassed that of ordinary legends. Kevin Flynn said with a sigh, as a legendary alchemist, it's not that he can't create big scenes, but he can't stir up the storm so easily and startle the entire Academy City. In this short time, several legends have appeared in this small temporary dual field of the alchemy department. You must know that every legend in Academy City has a heavy responsibility and is as busy as a dog. It is obviously not a small matter to wake them up. Although Owen's face was expressionless at this time, he felt as if he had eaten shit in his heart. It was obviously just an ordinary duel. How could it create such a big scene? And how would it end in such a short time? Now he deeply understands the old saying. Women are inherently troublesome. And coupled with the destructive power of a naughty child and Superman. It is simply a disaster. Just as Owen kept complaining. The clouds and sea water vapor falling from the sky turned into waves and poured into the dual field. Turning the place into a huge pond in the blink of an eye. If it hadn't been for the intervention of several legends. The students present might have been flooded on the spot. A few die and the rest depends on the nature of the water. This shows that Cortana, who did all this, did not consider the consequences at all. Seeing Cortana's reluctance, Owen sighed, guessing that he couldn't keep a low profile anymore. Originally, he had planned well, just to continue on like the Northland, secretly developing his Hydra in the Academy City, and finally replacing it with the Academy City. But who would have thought that accidents would keep happening? And now, he was forced to use his trump card. The reason turned out to be that a little lowly was showing off her temper. It would be useless even if he gave up on the spot. 
let alone whether Cortana would agree or not. Just having attracted the attention of so many legends would go against his original intention. But there is no benefit in having an extraordinary duel. Low-key development is safe. But the speed is also slow. If you make a name for yourself, countless people will naturally come to invest. Including teachers. Risks and opportunities coexist. It depends on Irving's choice. In fact, Owen has no choice at all now. He must use this to establish his own personality. Making himself look noble. Tall and difficult to provoke. Only in this way can he get rid of useless temptations and malice. Because no one likes to provoke strong people, he must be strong enough. Thinking of this, Owen lit the fire and put his hand deep into the void to hold something. With a twitching, countless jet black flames spread from the void. And even the all-encompassing fierce fire was rendered black, colliding with the surrounding water flow. Water element! Owen frowned. What the other party was driving was not just water, but the water element. Although there are only two more words, the essence is completely different. Just like the difference between ordinary flame and fierce fire. That's what makes it interesting. Owen smiled crookedly. Since he decided to show his muscles, he had to have a suitable opponent. Otherwise, he would have to carry the Qing Long Yan Yu sword against the ants. That would not be majestic. But stupid. As Owen pulled out his hand, the weapon hidden in the void also revealed its true appearance. A gun with a hilt but more like a twisted metal rod or something else. But the almost endless black flames made no one dare to underestimate it. Look at it. Another semi-artifact. Kevin Flynn's mouth twitched like a toothache. After looking at Phoenix, who was a little embarrassed, he sighed resignedly and activated various defensive alchemy formations in the alchemy department. Although the two people on the field are not legends, they hold two semi-artifacts and master some terrible original power. Once they collide, the scene will be more exciting than the two legends fighting each other. If you don't make some preparations, the alchemy department will wait. You have to be removed. Phoenix was also a little embarrassed. After all, he could see that if Cortana hadn't been aggressive and took out the semi-artifact first, the other party wouldn't have been forced to deal with it. The problem is that he can't blame Cortana. So he could only help clean up the aftermath and work with the legends present to strengthen the boundaries of the dual field. Chapter 3 24 Fierce Hedging The blue wave and the black flame gradually divided the dual field into two halves. And the collision became more and more fierce. Just like two fat men of three to five hundred pounds crowded at the entrance of the elevator refusing to give in to each other, and the resulting fluctuations became more and more terrifying, even if there were legends working together to strengthen the barrier, and the entire venue was still shaking, which made Kevin Flynn's face not look good, because from the beginning, various alarm sounds kept ringing in his ears. As a legendary alchemist, he has the highest authority in the alchemy system. Therefore, the intelligent system of the alchemy system will constantly remind him after sensing the accumulation and loss of high energy. But what can Kevin Flynn do? Both the water element and the black flame are transformed from some high-level origin. They are not ordinary toys at all. Although they have not reached the level of laws, the fluctuations caused by collisions are still not a simple explosion impact is like an efficient grinding wheel to the dense alchemy arrays and runes of the alchemy building complex. So there are damage alarms everywhere. In order to prevent shock waves from penetrating into the interior of the building and causing irreparable damage to those precious equipment and materials, Kevin Flynn had to focus most of his energy on adjusting the resistance and repair of the alchemy array. So the enchantment in the field was handed over to Phoenix waiting for several legends. So they did not notice the changes in the field. Phoenix is the most concerned about Cortana. The problem is that many legends take action. What needs to be paid attention to is not whether the strength is enough, but to maintain balance. If there is a slight negligence, the power inside will not explode. And the dual field and thousands of students around will be transformed into Fay. Ash was also involved in a lot of energy. Which caused no one to notice that something was wrong with Cortana. In fact, everyone was marveling at the youth and strength of the two people. But they did not realize the danger hidden under this power. To put it bluntly, regardless of the big scene. In fact, both Owen and Cortana are far from being legendary. Especially in terms of realm. They are not even masters. They simply rely on their talent and potential to use semi-artifacts. It was okay to bully the weak in this way. But when faced with equal beings, the two of them lost control. Especially after the two semi-artifacts sensed each other's inadvertent increase in energy level. They became more and more beyond the upper limit of their control. In fact, the problem is that when a child drives a large car, it is okay to turn the steering wheel and play with it. But if he really wants to step on the accelerator, 
the consequences can be imagined. But everyone was deceived by the false power released by the two. Even Phoenix, who was most likely to notice this, was also deceived by Cortana's elven royal bloodline and many trump cards. Therefore, without anyone stopping her, the power of the magic gun water droplet was continuously released. As the holder, Cortana was the first to bear the brunt. Her eyes turned into light blue unconsciously, and her will was filled with blue fluctuations like waves. The somewhat dazed Cortana did not ignore Owen, because he was also constantly releasing power, causing the water droplets to automatically lock onto the target, and she instinctively launched an attack. Water droplets come from the elemental realm of water, which is not an ordinary world, neither void nor HL, but a more unique place, where there are no boundaries, no concept of space, and even time is blurred. Such a special place. The thing is certainly not ordinary. Not to mention that it is made from the crystallization of the original water element. And it naturally has the power to control the water element. Owen now felt like a whole reservoir of water was rushing towards him. He instinctively waved the hunting god's sword. As the sword was swung, the black flames rising into the sky blocked the pouring water element. For the first time, a force with opposite attributes released its own power without restraint. The terrifying fluctuations rattled the layers of reinforced barriers in the dual field. Although it did not collapse, it still shocked everyone around them. Everyone evacuate the alchemy building! A legend saw the two of them preparing for a second collision. Since they could not be interrupted, they could only give priority to evacuating the people here. The students present were already shocked by the momentum of the two men. Before they could recover, they instinctively screamed and ran outside. Fortunately, the students are all prepared extraordinary professionals. Some are blessed with magic and can climb over the wall and slowly fall down. There are also some who throw hooks and claws to follow the trend. There are even some who are like monkeys flying over eaves and walking on walls. They are not limited to the exits on both sides. Therefore, it was panicky but not chaotic and did not cause serious squeeze. In a blink of an eye, the evacuation of the people was almost complete. And Phoenix immediately released the amplification magic and said, Abandon the barrier that reinforces the dual field. And use your own methods to reinforce it layer by layer. The quality of the barriers in the dual field was good. But they were essentially for students. Even if there were legendary reinforcements. They were just stickers on paper boats. Unable to display their respective abilities at all. So Phoenix chose to give up and be the first to hold up a barrier. Boundary. Other legends also used their own methods to prop up the barrier. For a while. The dual field was shrouded in five or six layers of barriers, which looked very spectacular, but no one was sure. First, they were not well prepared. After all, they were here to watch a show, not to fight. Second, they were facing two and a half artifacts. Even if they were not aimed at them, the power they released alone would be enough. It is not something that ordinary barriers can resist. Now we can only rely on numerical advantage. I hope I can last until the end of their battle. Kevin Flynn sighed and said, and then notified the teachers of the alchemy department to transfer some precious instruments and materials. He is really afraid that those two will use real fire to destroy the academy. It won't be a problem if we reach the city. But I'm afraid it won't be a problem if we demolish the alchemy department buildings. At this time, the second collision began. If the first collision relied purely on volume to suppress people, then there were more changes in the second collision, becoming more concentrated and penetrating. Countless water guns dropped from the sky, flashing with cold light like ice crystals. With the impact of the water flow, they had terrifying penetrating power, not to mention the plate armor knights as a unit of measurement. Even the city walls could not withstand such a large flow. They could not withstand a few blows. It has to collapse. The water gun was powerful, and the black sword was no less powerful. It brought black flames that burned everything into the sky, just like a volcano from H, L erupting and the power was not weaker at all. Both sides were obviously transformed by energy. The collision between the gun and the sword actually made the sound of iron and stone. Even if it was shattered, a terrifying impact would erupt, making the scene even more chaotic. For a moment, the sky was thundering and the earth was on fire, and the conflict was inextricable. What's even worse is that the energy of the two seems to have no end, filling the entire barrier continuously, causing huge pressure. In the end, the barrier in the duel was broken, and the barrier held up by Phoenix took over. Who would have thought that as soon as he made contact? Phoenix's expression changed. A large amount of magic power was turned into runes under precise control. 
and was applied to the barrier layer by layer. However, he still felt huge pressure and the barrier was shaking. It was obvious that he had endured a huge amount of energy. Pressure. There is a possibility of rupture at any time. Chapter 325 The situation is out of control. It's not okay anymore. Part of the energy must be released. Please help me guide it. Phoenix hurriedly said to the legendary mage he was familiar with. The two parties have known each other for hundreds of years. Needless to say, one stabilizes the barrier, and the other helps open a vent to transmit the large amount of energy accumulated inside. But they underestimated the quality of these energies. Because there are identical but conflicting energies competing within the barrier, they will not spread and reduce the quality. But after being transmitted to the outside world, because there is no pressure, the status quo will naturally not be maintained and start to spread. Although the quality has decreased, the quantity has increased tenfold and hundreds of times. As a result, in the mountains dozens of miles outside the academy city, first the floods formed a huge torrent, and then the fire erupted to form an active volcano, causing terrible disasters in a short period of time. This scene was projected by a legendary mage, and the expressions of everyone present changed. They could imagine that once the energy inside was out of control, the academy city would have to be overhauled even if it was not rebuilt. They could not afford this responsibility. We can't let them continue any longer. Another legend said with a somewhat ugly face. Because of the third charge, the energy of both parties was more concentrated and gradually formed two huge figures. Obviously, the two little guys attracted a lot of attention. Existence. Why interrupt? How about I open up a hole and let you in? Phoenix, who was busy reinforcing the barrier, immediately rolled his eyes and said angrily, Although the two little ancestors inside are not legends, they are extremely talented and have two semi-magical weapons. Without ruthless moves, ordinary legends can't even get up close. If they use ruthless moves, let's not say whether they can. They will be killed by two little ancestors who cannot calculate based on common sense. Even if they succeed, if they are hurt, he he, just wait for the other parent to come to the door. Like Cortana, she stayed here instead of teleporting back because she was too young and it was too dangerous to teleport. But that didn't mean that people couldn't come over there. What's even more frightening is that Owen, who is disguised as the Earl of Northland, has most likely mastered the ability of cross-border teleportation. And his parents are really in trouble every minute. There are not many fools who can become legends. Even legendary warriors with brains tougher than steel do not want to leave a reputation for attacking children. So even if they are itchy, they still remain silent and watch a group of legal legends continue to strengthen the barrier. At this time, Owen has already noticed that there is a problem with Cortana. But the biggest problem now is that he cannot solve this problem unless he exposes his space of authority. But the current authority space has not yet completed its transformation. And even if it was completed, he would not dare to use it. Owen knew very well that exposing his space of authority in front of so many people in Academy City was no different than seeking death. He didn't think so. So now, he could only rely on his own strength to defeat the opponent. Owen does not lack strength. But what he lacks is character and experience. In fact, he realized this after the battle with Sylvia. So he wanted to go back and ask my mother about the witch and the legendary realm. After all, the territory the legends are either system enhanced or half disabled. Only my mother is not only a witch but also unfathomable. Sometimes Owen even wonders whether the other party has become a demigod. It's a pity that it's hard for him to completely trust the other person after traveling through time. After all, he had doubted even Maya for several years. As his own strength increased, and he strengthened her, he gradually relaxed and accepted her. So what qualifications does his old lady have? Reassure him. What's more? No matter what the reason is for the other party's abandonment, there will always be a knot in my heart. So I finally chose to give up. It's not possible to ask others for help at the moment. So Owen simply showed his trump card again. And let's look at the template he redeemed. The Ghost Lu Bu. There is still some debate about who is the best counselor in the Three Kingdoms. But not in terms of generals. At least when Lu Bu was still alive. There was no dispute. As for those generals who emerged after his death, who were brave and not inferior to Lu Bu. There was more or less water. Although he has a bad reputation. Lu Bu is really brave and he also has a special skill. Owen had already thought about it. If he really encountered someone he couldn't beat, he would just kneel down and worship his adoptive father on the spot. And then prepare Fong Tian's painted halberd. As a lover of the water element lord, Cortana continuously releases the power of water drops. 
and a trace of instinct hidden in him is activated. This instinct of consciousness was not to seize the body, but to protect it. So after feeling the pressure from the outside world, it began to integrate into Cortana's consciousness, allowing her to more perfectly exert the power of the water droplets. However, because the difference between the two parties is so great, even a trace of consciousness puts Cortana under tremendous pressure. Out of protection, her own consciousness fell into a deep sleep. Now it is dominated by her own instincts and a trace of the water element lord's consciousness, which makes what happens next become even more uncontrollable. As the fusion was completed, the turbulent water element immediately calmed down and condensed into a special water element body under the influence of invisible consciousness. It looked like a mermaid wearing full armor. But this was not a fairy tale at all. Because there was no such mermaid. A hundred meters tall. Not even a blue whale or a mermaid. The faces of the legends all turned green immediately. As the water element lord at the top of the pyramid. He is undoubtedly a god. Moreover, he has not been weakened in any way does not require believers, and can automatically master a certain origin. Moreover, elements have no concept of lifespan, so even a trace of consciousness has been baptized by a long time. It is impossible for ordinary people to look at each other. Even the legends around them lowered their heads slightly to avoid each other's gaze. Even the legend couldn't bear it, let alone Owen. His claws were numb on the spot. He never expected that the first problem he faced would be a battle of willpower. You must know that although Irving has many blessings, his two lifetimes can only be counted as retirement age. Moreover, he has never endured hardship and has never truly persisted in anything. Therefore, his willpower cannot be said to be dregs. Dry tofu is the kind that will break if applied force. So when faced with the pressure brought by the water element lord in terms of consciousness, he couldn't help but escape. If a war starts with this kind of mentality, Irving will know what will happen with his butt. Fortunately, Owen exchanged Lu Bu's template for himself after he had a lot of money. Without the passage of time and the blow from Baiman Tower, Lubu at his peak state was really a mess. This self-confidence is not in vain. Zhang Fei, who is the enemy of thousands of people, and Guan Yu, who is known as the Martial Saint, were all defeated by him. The arrogant Lu Bu's instinctive resistance originated from the pressure of the Water Element Lord, which condensed out of his incarnation. Owen has become a pure carrier at this time. Lu Bu wears a purple gold crown with three prongs on his head a Xichuan red cotton flower robe on his body, an animal-faced head-swallowing chain armor, and an exquisite lion belt on his waist. Elemental lords confronted. I guess you can't keep your alchemy skills, Phoenix said sympathetically to Kevin Flynn. Kevin Flynn was filled with hatred when he heard this. After all, there was a disciple here who was this bastard. Now he wanted to completely ignore the responsibility. And there was no way out. If Cortana hadn't been deceived by his disciples, he wouldn't have spent a cent of the alchemy department's reconstruction funds. Not to mention that Kevin Flynn was troubled by what his disciples had done. Before the situation was about to get out of control, a sky mark appeared across the entire academy city, and dozens of chains stretched out from it, involving the two of them. Chapter 326, Traces of the Sky I didn't expect these two little guys to alarm Tian Tian, but it was the mother who took action, a legend said quietly. The legends present were a little speechless and they didn't know whether to say that these two little guys would cause trouble. Still young and promising. Because they are very aware of the importance of Tian Jihan and the high level required to alert the mistress. Not every criminal needs to dispatch the armed police brigade, and the few lives in hand are not worth the manpower expended. The existence of Tian Tian is actually not a secret among the top management of Academy City. But only legends and some masters in the entire Academy City are qualified to contact it. And only these people understand the importance of Tian Tian. The mark of the sky is nothing else. It is both the entrance to the secret realm and the wound of the world. Because a crack appeared in the world, the fragments in the void were attracted and gathered together. Just like when a person is injured and infected by bacteria. So they were sealed to act as a bandage and suture to prevent dirty things from coming in. And the seal is the heaven. The traces are maintained. It can be said that Tiantian is the real guardian of the world. So nothing can alarm them. Therefore, even Phoenix who is very worried about Cortana's safety, can only wait for the news with a frown. At this time, Owen was in a very embarrassed state, because the lock of heaven was the manifestation of law. And even if it was crackled by black flames, it would not be able to be burned out in a short time. Not to mention that he could feel the aura of divinity from above. It was obvious. This is God taking action. 
What is hidden in Academy City? Owen was flustered. But he had to force himself to calm down and seek hope. There is nothing trivial about the gods. And he does not have the strength to challenge the gods now. As for breaking free and escaping. Don't pull it. The chains are formed by laws. Unless you surpass the opponent in mastering the laws. Or you can break free with hard power. Let alone him. Even if the god is tied up. He will have to kneel down. But the solution is so easy to think of. As the chains extending from the sky mark pull the two people closer and closer to the sky. The chains become more and more entangled and shrink tighter. Owen and Cortana, the huge incarnation of the external release, was the first to experience strong pressure and was shrinking. It felt like the flood was forced to flow back due to external pressure in the middle of the discharge. The whole body was swollen and uncomfortable, as if it was going to explode. However, the chain was very considerate and squeezed all directions, causing the pressure to have nowhere to release, and was forced to merge into the two of them. In vivo. At this time, Owen already understood that the other party had no ill intentions. This was to help them master the power that they were not familiar with. But he looked a bit ashamed because many chains had been wrapped around his body along the gaps in his clothes, and they were still wandering around. Look for weak points of pressure to reapply force in order to maintain balance in the body. The problem is that it is obvious what the weak points of the human body are, even as a veteran driver whose bottom line is constantly declining. Owen is a little unable to handle it. Cortana, a little Lolita, is even more unbearable. And then, there are the gods who were like before. Cold, tearful, panting, blushing and covered in chains. Owen almost couldn't hold himself together with this expression. Fortunately, the chain was retracted after passing through the sky mark. But the momentum did not diminish. The two of them were ejected from the monkey rubber band, crossing the secret realm and heading to the void behind the secret realm. At the same time, a message also reached their minds. Come back after the fight. Well, not to be completely banished, but to teach them a lesson. It seems that there is no need to worry about his own safety for the time being. Owen thought with a sigh of relief. But he also regretted it in his heart. Ever since he left the North and entered the Empire, he was no longer as obsessive as before. He actually learned bad things and pretended to be cool. He wanted to marry a princess and make friends with nobles. He couldn't live in the Academy City. Although there were not many moves, the movement became louder every time. And this time it actually provoked the god to take action. Even if he successfully survives this calamity, he will still have to be stared at by the higher-ups of the Academy City in the future. Not to mention that there is an unknown god standing behind him. In this case, why should he play the trick of replacing him with a Hydra and simply surrender? I got it thanks to my adoptive father. Thinking of this, Irving was immediately annoyed that he had let down his guard. How much achievements he had made. How much strength he had increased. How many bases he had built. And how much power he had developed. Yet he was so careless and indulged in showing off that he was exposed. He picked up a lot of trump cards that he had hidden away before. Just like taking out a disc that he had treasured for a long time and watching it with his friends. But his parents suddenly opened the bedroom door. I couldn't even imagine that scene. So this is absolutely inappropriate. And we must find a way to get back on our feet again. When Owen was feeling stressed, the two of them had arrived in the void. The secret realm formed by countless fragments is attached to the surface of Tian Tian which is both pressure and a layer of protection. But not all kinds of fragments can be used. Some fragments that contain huge dangers are excluded. Forming this boundless void, compared to the secret realm where space is relatively stable, the void land is like the remains of a shattered planet, with countless large and small fragments floating in the void. Only a handful of them retain a small amount of their origins, maintaining a fragile ecological environment, but lacking a perfect barrier and being directly eroded by the void. Its demise is only a matter of time. Generally speaking, the so-called void place is the tomb and decomposition field of fragments. However, except for part of the matter decomposed by the void, the rest was absorbed by the larger world and secret realm, becoming nutrients for the growth of the world. Owen immediately understood the role of the sky trace. It was both a wound and a mouth that swallowed up nutrients from the void. And the secret realm was the food reserve and filter. Dangerous substances are blocked by the secret realm and nutrients are absorbed and filtered by the secret realm, and are transmitted to the inside of the world through the sky trace, becoming nutrients for growth. No wonder there are so many legends and masters in the Academy City, because the Academy City located below the sky trace is the first anyone who enjoys this wave of benefits is completely in a paradise. Owen was a little envious, 
But when he thought about the existence of a god in the sky trace, he was not envious at all. In their wild thoughts, the two finally landed and stopped on a boulder suspended in the void. Now the two of them no longer have the same power as before. But they are still extraordinary. Cortana holds a water drop gun and wears dark blue armor. Although she is a little smaller, she is still heroic. Oh, it is no less impressive. Wearing a beast-faced head-swallowing chain armor. Carrying a square-shaped halberd. And a three-pronged purple-gold crown with two slender feathers standing out like antennas. Making him look even more energetic. Now that the two of them are not fighting anymore. They are in this strange and terrifying place together. So how can they still have the mood to continue fighting? In fact, it's really scary here. It's like being in a meteorite belt in the universe. There is endless void in the distance. It feels like being swallowed up at a glance. If you carefully identify the large and small meteorites around, you can see them. It can be concluded that they are all part of the fragments of the world. And you can even see the traces of civilization and the appearance of destruction, which makes people feel even more chilled after seeing it. The most terrifying thing is the dead silence. There is no light, no air, and no life. The two people stand here alone, leaning against each other involuntarily. Chapter 327 Unforgettable Fall in the Land of Void Are you scared? Cortana suddenly said quietly. Owen was startled by Cortana's voice. He thought there was no air here, and he couldn't speak. However, after careful analysis, it was through magic fluctuations instead of air conduction. As long as the mental strength is in place, it is not difficult to do this. So he replied, Afraid. Owen's honesty obviously won the favor of the little Lolita, who couldn't help but get closer to him. And he couldn't help but sigh. No matter what, she is still a child. Of course, I have this idea because Cortana has good looks. If she were replaced by an ugly, fat, crying and fussy child, you can see whether she would be kicked into a ditch. After all, we are all children. Why should we spoil you? This is for you. Owen took out a round transparent fish tank and gave it to Cortana. The life forms of the two people have exceeded the scope of normal people. After all, ordinary creatures will not have such a long lifespan. Nor will they be born with magic power. Therefore, the harsh environment of the void land will not kill them immediately. But it is uncomfortable. Weakness is inevitable. And even if it goes on for a long time, it will either mutate or die. Fortunately, Irving was prepared. And the helmet in his hand was his work. What a beautiful fish tank! Why is there a little flower at the bottom? Cortana stared at the smiling flower at the bottom of the fish tank with wide eyes and asked curiously. This is not a fish tank, but a helmet. As for the flowers, they are modified sunflowers. Owen placed the fish tank. No, the helmet. Upside down on his head. And the little flower suddenly stood up. Just like Teletubbies. Because of the head-soaking charm. The fish tank is firmly on the head. Phew. It's a helmet. It's firmly on the head. And it's as light as nothing. As soon as I put it on, the little flower on the head immediately became energetic. Swaying happily. Converting the carbon dioxide exhaled by Owen into oxygen. And obtaining energy from it. The smiling face gradually glowed. Lighting up the front like a flashlight. Seeing this scene, Cortana immediately became energetic and put the fish tank on her head in the same manner. Sure enough, her breathing gradually became smoother and her eyes were no longer pitch black. The two villains were dressed as military commanders with fish tank-like helmets on their heads. A small flower with a bright smile was shining and moving its head leisurely. They were so happy that the god who had been paying attention to this place almost didn't laugh out loud. In the depths of the sky mark, countless runes form an array and the arrays form bands, and the bands are woven into rings. They are crisscrossed and tightly locked the entire sky mark. And the core is a city in the sky. This majestic city in the sky is always swallowing the magic of the void, maintaining the powerful seal of the sky mark. And the core of this city is a hundred meter high goddess statue. At this time, the goddess showed a faint smile and continued to pay attention to the two little guys, who almost caused big trouble. This is the mistress, the future sky goddess, who was born from Tian Jihan. Unfortunately, her origin was damaged, resulting in her being incomplete. She only has divinity and soul, incomplete authority, and no divine body. The incompleteness left her without a divine name, unable to develop followers, and she always had to expend energy to maintain the seal of the sky mark. Because as the future goddess of the sky, this wound was just like on her body. Once the sky mark expanded, she would no longer have vitality. 
being seriously injured and falling into a deep sleep means that he is forced to use his own origin to fill the cracks. At that time, it will be the same as falling completely. Therefore, although the mistress is a god, she has no freedom at all. She can only stay here for thousands of years, maintaining the seal boringly. It is rare to meet two interesting little guys, which naturally gets more attention from her. The two of them had already circled the boulder, because it was about the same size as a mountain. They didn't spend much time. Now the two of them were looking at each other, both wondering how to go back. Cortana tried to teleport, but she was in the void. Not to mention that she didn't have coordinates. Even if she did, she didn't have the ability to travel across the void because she lacked some kind of medium. The location where Owen and the others are now is not considered a true void. Even so, it has various characteristics of the void. And the greatest characteristics of the void are nothingness and dissolution. Not to mention matter. Even space and time are meaningless here. Therefore, it is possible to teleport between planes, but not in the void. Owen, who possesses ancient blood, is fine, but he has attracted enough attention now. Not only has he been targeted by a group of legendary bosses, but he has also offended a god. At this time, he would not want to show his ability to teleport through the void at all. To make a living, he has to act. After taking stock of the vehicles on hand, None of them were suitable for sailing in the void. Don't think this is simple. Although the boulder under their feet shows no signs of life. As long as it is not completely decomposed by the void. It proves that the source is not completely exhausted. Therefore, it can help them resist the erosion of the void to some extent. But once they leave the boulder and step into the void, you need to face the threat of the void personally. Now the two of them were just like being in a shipwreck and being forced to stay on the rocks. They were waiting to die if they didn't move. If they moved, they would face countless dangers. Owen calculated that there were many fragments gathered in the void land, because they were constantly being decomposed. The concentration of surrounding materials was relatively high. The erosion of the void was not too outrageous. Many fragments had been neutralized, but ordinary matter still could not withstand the erosion of the void. And even if there is material that can withstand void erosion, how to move it is still a problem. In fact, the void is very similar to space and ordinary technology cannot be used here at all. Owen found that he needed to use mithril steel to build a carrier and then master the basic technology of void navigation in order to meet the conditions for return. Mithril steel Owen is not lacking. And Emily, who likes to dig ruins, has also studied the technology of void navigation. He meets the current conditions. But whether to use the technology of void navigation is also a question that Owen needs to consider. Void navigation technology represents void immigration resource development, etc. It is by no means an ordinary technology. Now he is not sure whether Academy City or the Empire has mastered this technology. But regardless of whether they have mastered it or not, it is best not to expose this technology. Because everyone knows that Monopoly is the best way to maximize profits. Due to various restrictions, Irving, who was trying to keep a low profile again, rejected most methods. But he couldn't stay here forever even if the possibility of the other party pulling them back was high when the time came. He couldn't do nothing. You have to be serious about your acting. And you have to pretend to be decent. He was too lazy to act and expected the other party to turn a blind eye and stop joking. So Owen had to do something. Let's build a foothold first. And then find a way back. Owen said with an idea. Cortana, who was confused and even wanted to cry, nodded without hesitation and decided to cooperate with her brother, who seemed very reliable. Owen didn't know how dangerous the void was, so he didn't plan to stay on the surface of the boulder, but planned to drill a hole. Unexpectedly, the hardness of the boulder was a bit unexpected, and it was actually harder than steel, if he wasn't sure that this was really a stone. Owen would have suspected that this thing was disguised as mithril steel. Fortunately, the two of them each held a semi-artifact, so it was just a matter of spending a little more time to dig a hole out. Chapter 328 Shelter in Goblins for the sake of safety, the opening of the shelter is not only hidden, but also very small. Even two small people have to bend down to walk in. Fortunately, the children have no waste, so they will not suffer from back pain. After passing through the Z-shaped passage, the interior suddenly opens up. The barrel-shaped hall is divided into several areas and rooms on the upper and lower floors by the circular second-floor corridor, which can fully meet daily requirements. In the plan, the first floor is the living room. Owen also built a fireplace and a bar according to his own habits. With a thick carpet in the middle. 
The palmong pile is so fine that it can lift a person up. When he steps on it, he feels like he is floating. In addition, there are kotatsu and soft pillows placed on the carpet, rolling around on the carpet, then getting into the kotatsu, letting the firelight of the fireplace shine on your face. This feeling is simply heaven, not like being in a dark and cold void at all. Owen is busy planting lanterns. This improved lantern will light up and down according to the 24-hour cycle, imitating natural light, and will not make people feel impatient and confused due to long time. In addition, there are special plants that increase oxygen and add natural breeze, making the place more comfortable and less likely to make you feel stuffy and irritable. While Owen was busy, Cortana, who had nothing to do, put her chin on the table of the kotatsu and felt the warmth gradually penetrate into her whole body. She felt lazy and completely relaxed. The previous experience was too exciting for Cortana, who had been under protection. She was always in a state of tension. Now she was in a safe space that she had dug with her own hands, and was arranged so comfortably that she relaxed unconsciously. Just like a child who likes to get into the nest he builds with quilts and pillows. Wake up! It's time to eat! The day's Cortana was woken up by Owen, who had finished his work. Before she even opened her eyes, her sense of smell was completely awakened by the aroma, and she immediately became energetic. L, the cat wearing an apron, was carrying a steaming tray filled with food holding two large glasses of butterbeer in its two paws, and walked in an elegant catwalk. Oh, is this my brother's summoned beast? Cortana called her brother without any hesitation. She obviously already trusted him quite a bit. After all, she was in the void, and the only one she relied on was Owen. Not to mention him. She is very reliable. But right now, she is more interested in El Cat. After all, it is difficult for girls to resist cute furry animals. Meow! Elu is a good helper for the master, with a rare opportunity to play her own role. Ella showed off her cooking skills and made several special delicacies. Placed in the middle is a whole leg of lamb that is roasted to a crisp on the outside and tender on the inside. After being sprinkled with cumin and chili pepper, the spiciness and aroma are perfectly blended together, making people want to sneeze and salivate at the same time. Those who live there are moving out. In addition, there are mushroom soup, mashed potatoes, fried chicken legs, fried bacon, and finally cream puffs, strawberry pudding, and butter beer, all of which are favorites of children. Cortana swallowed, staring at Owen with a pair of big watery eyes, making him smile and said, Eat it while it's hot. As soon as she finished speaking, Cortana didn't care about the royal etiquette at all. She stuck a piece of roasted lamb leg with a fork in one hand, grabbed the fried chicken leg in the other, and showed off from left to right leaving oil stains on her face. If you have good looks, you are good. Even if you eat like this, it will only make people feel cute. If you change it to someone with low looks, I am afraid you will only get an unqualified evaluation. Owen shook his head secretly. He was lucky in this life. Not only was he good looking, but he also had a system. So he followed the same pattern and started eating. As expected, he was also indescribably cute. After eating and drinking for a while, the two of them couldn't help but hold their round bellies with both hands and lay on the kotatsu to digest food. El Cat was happily clearing the table because the delicious food it cooked was favored by its owner. The welcome from guests is undoubtedly its greatest recognition. The mistress, who had been paying close attention to this place, was a little speechless at this moment. Her original intention was to use this to temper these two little guys with amazing talents but reckless behavior. Unexpectedly, the test turned into a barbecue and the two little guys had an extremely nourishing life. No matter how long the time goes, I'm a little worried that I'll gain weight. However, the mistress has no intention of continuing to interfere. Being able to live a healthy life is also her ability. She will not interfere too much. She just hopes that these two little guys can discover the gift she left them. Ella Cat, who was humming a song and squeezing fresh juice for his master and guests, suddenly shrank his pupils and his sharp claws showed a little bit of sharpness from the pink flesh pads. Then he flipped back and grabbed a ghost almost instantly. A sneaky little dark shadow. Meow! What kind of strange thing is this? Elma stretched out her tongue and licked her lips, looking at the palm-sized little man in her hand with a puzzled expression. Elu cat is a cat human, not a cat. So although it has many cat habits, it has already been able to suppress some of its instincts, such as eating raw and playing with prey. Therefore, this strange villain was lucky to save his life, but it was still ravaged by the meatballs on the cat's claws. 
Anyway, when it came into Owen's hands, it looked like it had been spoiled. And it was the kind of thing that could be done with a little milkshake. It's a goblin. It's so rare. As a princess of the elf kingdom, Cortana recognized what it was at a glance. Owen also knows something about goblins. Strange creatures that are rarer and more sensitive than elves. In fact, it is not entirely correct to say that goblins are living things. Although they look like living creatures, they feel the same. And they can even reproduce. However, the original goblins originated from nature and dissipated back to nature after death. Theoretically, if a place has a good natural environment, sufficient magic power, and the power of nature gathers, it is possible for fairies to be born. It is not an exaggeration to say that they are naturally raised. But this is only the case in the early stages. When a certain number is reached, the fairies will reproduce in their own unique way, because they exist similar to natural spiritual beings. Fairies, although not powerful, have various magical abilities. For example, the body fluids of fairies have the ability to heal physical, mental, and even soul wounds. It has even been rumored for a long time that eating fairies can lead to mortality. Rumors of agelessness, various rumors, coupled with fatal weakness, have caused elves to become increasingly rare. And even elves can rarely see elves. Looking at the palm-sized little man in his hand, Owen fell into deep thought, because the environment in the void land was too harsh. It was impossible for a goblin to be born. So he was very curious about the origin of this goblin. Let's wake this little one up first, Owen said to Cortana, who was so curious that she pushed her head towards her. Brother, leave it to me. I heard my mother say that if you put the injured goblin on a plant, it will be cured. Cortana was very interested in the very soft-looking goblin and had been ready to do it. Now that she has found an opportunity, the two of them are all the little paws were raised. Owen was not worried about leaving the goblin in the hands of Cortana, who was gradually awakening to her naughty nature. He personally placed the goblin on the sunshine mushroom. Chapter 329 Fairy Gigi The sunlight released by the sunshine mushroom is not strong and is very warm, which is suitable for the recovery of the fairy born in nature. Right now, Owen can see that the color of the fairy lying on it is recovering, and its posture has changed from the nervous and uncomfortable curled up posture at the beginning. After unfolding it, he lay there with his whole body relaxed and his expression was very comfortable. However, Owen has not yet figured out the gender of this goblin. As for lifting the clothes made of leaves, he has not been so stupid. After all, this is what's the difference between it and the licking goddess figure? But Owen is really curious, because goblins have three genders. They are neutral at first. When they are mature enough, they will change according to their own wishes. This usually happens after coming into contact with humans or elves. Otherwise, the carefree goblin will never realize the issue of gender and will never mature. And this is not a kind of happiness. After all, maturity comes with a price. After looking at it for a long time, Owen suddenly felt that as long as the appearance was right, gender was not very important. The goblin in front of him had a delicate appearance, a light body, and was easy to push down. If it fell into the hands of some people, he would probably have to live a long life, an everyday item on the tip of your tongue. Thinking of this, Owen couldn't help but shook his head, because according to what he knew about goblins, this was very common, because the goblins in the morning dew, fruits, and sleeping flowers exuded a fresh smell similar to a mixture of floral and fruity scents. The body fluids are even sweeter and more delicious. And many people even like to drink the goblins' bath water. They find it refreshing. And it also has the effect of beautifying and nourishing the kidneys. Anyway, with the body shape of a goblin, a teacup is just right. And you can drink it after soaking. Drink the bath water. Owen shook his head again, feeling that those people were really perverted. Even beautiful women could fart and poop. What's so good about bath water? However, the words of the goblin. Owen's eyes gradually became strange. But fortunately Cortana was by his side, bringing him back to his senses, not knowing how long it would take for the goblin to wake up. Owen asked Cortana to take a bath first, and he would go back later. However, when arranging a room to sleep in, Cortana was unwilling to sleep alone and wanted to be with Owen. It's a pity that Owen is not very confident about his current moral status and finally decides to sleep here together. Anyway, there is a carpet, a kotatsu, and a fireplace for Elu to help at firewood. So he is not afraid of freezing. I don't know how long it took, but Gigi was feeling dizzy from sleep and wanted to sit up. However, the sunshine mushroom was too slippery and Gigi couldn't hold it. 
His hand slipped, and he fell off the mushroom. He just heard oops. He was all over his body. And he was flapping his wings desperately with his teeth and claws. But unfortunately, he fell into the soft soil before he could fly. Fortunately, the goblin is light and soft. And its pair of dragonfly-like wings are not just for decoration. The frequency of flapping is very fast, which is somewhat cushioned. So the fall is not heavy. He rubbed his head and stood up. This, Gigi looked at the vibrant jungle in front of him with a shocked face. He suddenly felt like he had returned to the past. At that time, the mountains were green and the water was green. Everyone played among the flowers all day long and foraged for food. When you are thirsty, you hold up the dewdrops to drink. When you are hungry, you hold the berries and devour them. Occasionally exchanging some honey with the bees can make you happy for a long time. It's a pity that disaster has come. A big hole is broken in the sky. The ground is also torn apart. And the whole world is shattering. The fairy queen hid in the sacred stone with a few remaining fairies, waiting hard for the day when the disaster passed. However, more and more fairies fell into a deep sleep due to weakness, leaving only Gigi, who was entrusted with the important task by the fairy queen, waiting alone for the day when the disaster passes, and then awakening everyone with hope. But as time goes by, loneliness and despair gnaw at his heart day by day, and sometimes Gigi feels that that day will never come. The excited Gigi flapped its wings vigorously and flew up. The natural power emitted by the surrounding plants automatically gathered around Gigi turning into little bits of light and scattering like dust, and then disappeared in midair, leaving only a short strip, traces of light and dust. But soon Gigi, who was flying in the air, discovered that he was not in a new world, but that the sacred stone had become strange. The sacred stone has been occupied? When Gigi realized this, the whole goblin was dumbfounded. He was so stunned that he even forgot to flap his wings. If he didn't fly high, he would have sat down on the sunshine mushroom and then been bounced by the round and straight sunshine mushroom. It flew away, but can be used to make tea, the kind that can only be brewed once. The house is occupied. What should I do? What should I do? He was running around in a hurry, but he didn't realize that a pair of cat's eyes were approaching. He didn't know what happened until he was slapped on the ground by a cat's paw like a fly. I felt like I was starting to tremble. The goblin was only a little older. Facing the Alcat was similar to how a human would feel when facing a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was good if he didn't pee on the spot. Don't eat Gigi! Gigi screamed in fright. But instead of sharp teeth and sharp mouth, what was waiting for him was a juicy grape. Don't make any noise! The master is sleeping! Alcat filled some water with a fruit sh. L. Carefully placed it in front of Gigi. And said softly, Huh? Gigi numbly lowered his head and took a bite of the grape. The sweet pulp proved that he was not dreaming. So he slowly calmed down. Because Gigi did not feel any malice from Illumeo. Nor did he notice it. Danger. Although the goblin is a loser. He has a very keen sense of good and evil. But he is easily deceived. Now a grape and a sh. L of water make Gigi regard Illuma as a friend with whom he can share food. Do you have a master? Gigi didn't quite understand what master meant. But judging from El Cat's appearance, he must be as great a being as the fairy queen. Yes, the owner of Elucat is great and kind. Elucat liked Gigi very much and brought more fruits to entertain this little friend. On weekdays, he can only rely on store dry, flat and moldy nuts. Gigi has not eaten fresh fruit for a long time. Otherwise, he would not have thought he was dreaming after smelling the fragrance. And he would have drifted away from it in a daze. He flew out of his hiding place and looked at the fruits that were about to surround him. But he still couldn't bear it. As he ate, Gigi started to shed tears, and then burst into tears. If it weren't for its small size, this cry might have woken up Owen and the others. So Elicat didn't stop Gigi from crying because it felt that its new friend needed a happy cry to let the pain in his heart follow the tears. Flow away. I don't know how long I cried, but Gigi took the initiative to talk about his own experiences, including his nostalgia for his past home, his hope for the future, and the despair and loneliness he feels now. The master is a powerful lord. He not only owns a vast territory, but also owns a forest. You can ask the master to take you in. You don't have much to eat anyway. Elicat helped with ideas. It felt that a kind master was not a good person. Will refuse. Because the master is too rich and too kind. Gigi was moved when he heard this. Especially after learning that the plants here were cultivated by the owner of Elcat. He made an important decision to awaken the fairy queen. 
Not only is Gigi unable to awaken the fairy queen, but the queen is too weak now, so she must find someone to help. And the best person is the owner of her new friend. Chapter 330 Fairy Queen When Owen woke up, he was faced with a little goblin who had a serious expression and couldn't get up from his knees in front of him. He didn't know who he learned from, and his butt was stuck out high. There's no problem in taking you in. The problem is that you can't make the decision. Owen took the hot tea from El Cat and said nonchalantly after taking a sip. He didn't plan to use the goblin to make tea, so he naturally had no enthusiasm. After all, the goblin's abilities could not be used for anything other than making tea. But the appearance is not bad. It would be good to put it in a magic school or a big tree hole tavern as a decoration, just to enrich the types of magical animals. Anyway, the goblins will find their own food. And with such appearance, they can gain weight just by feeding them. Stand up. As for learning the customs and girls of other races, Owen wouldn't be so mean. The main reason is that the models are too different. And what can people do to Gundams is the same as vice versa. Gigi resolutely led the way, taking Owen and the curious Cortana to the depths of the sacred stone to awaken the fairy queen. This huge stone is the sacred stone in the mouth of goblins. It is said to have come from outside the sky. During the great disaster, the goblin queen took the still living goblins and hid in the sacred stone. Fortunately, she saved her life. But unfortunately, the world was shattered. Finally, the sacred stone fell into the void. If it had not met Owen and the others, it would have been cold. Owen didn't think he was lucky to meet the goblins. It was most likely arranged. However, saving these goblins was just a piece of cake. He had no intention of doing the opposite. So using magic to expand was just right for the goblins. But it was too much for him. The small passage leads to the place where the fairy queen sleeps. When he arrived, Owen looked carefully. The space was not big. At most as big as a storage room. There were hundreds of goblins sleeping. And there were many nuts and fruit sh. Ls scattered on the ground. Which were obviously Gigi's food rations. However, judging from the musty smell, Gigi's life was not easy in the past. In such an environment, he was alone. With no one to talk to. If the goblin hadn't been naturally optimistic, Gigi would have gone crazy. It is very simple to wake up the sleeping goblin. A pure mind, natural consciousness, or the power of nature can be used. However, Owen is still a bit concerned about the purity of his mind, and did not choose the first method. Natural consciousness is also unrealistic, because the so-called natural consciousness refers to the hazy consciousness generated by the perfect natural cycle in an area. It does not even have the concept of self, so let alone being able to obey orders. Just wanting to form a natural area is not it's such an easy thing. So we can only work hard through the power of nature. The power of nature comes from all things in the world. And the simplest source is plants. It just so happens that Owen has no shortage of plants. Ordinary plants can't provide much natural power. And they don't even produce consciousness. But the plants and plants versus zombies are different. They can fight zombies and still be considered weak. Looking at those intelligent eyes. They are obviously extraordinary. Animals. In the world of Xianxia. Are spirits. So the natural power they can provide is not comparable to that of ordinary plants. Under the influence of the surrounding fairies. The originally invisible power of nature began to appear. And the Chiji flew excitedly in the air. Just like the industrious little bees. Guiding the power of nature to gather where the fairy queen was sleeping. The fairy queen is indeed extraordinary. She is over a foot tall. Has a face as gifted from the gods a curvy figure, and a pair of long legs that are even more eye-catching. Except for the wrong size. The proportions are simply perfect. If it were a figure, it would be a must-have for any otaku who wants to buy a house. With the infusion of the power of nature, the fairy queen woke up from her deep sleep. After seeing Gigi, she was first relieved, then realized that there were outsiders around, and suddenly became serious and alert. This was the experience brought to her by the injury. Elf! When she found out that Owen and Cortana were elves, the fairy queen was relieved because the people who caused the most harm to the fairies were humans. Basically, as long as they encountered people who were not humans, there would be no problem. Even the most rude ones. Orcs will not hurt fairies who are just like bugs in their eyes for no reason. Elves, known as the sons of nature, are natural allies of fairies. They will provide shelter to fairies as long as they have the ability. So the fairy queen is relieved. You guys talk first. And then come to us after we finish talking. Gigi knows the way. Owen said with a smile. 
and left the plants behind to let the power of nature nourish the goblins, who showed painful expressions in their sleep, and then tried to Cortana hide several goblins, and returns to their sanctuary. Fairies have wisdom. Don't force them. Let alone treat them as pets. After returning, seeing that Cortana was a little unhappy, Owen first persuaded her, and then gave her a few velvet velvets. Okay, brother. After seeing Pu Rong Rong, Cortana's little head started to click rapidly, and she couldn't wait to take these furry little guys to play. For Cortana, although the land of the void was lonely and cold, she had her brother by her side, and she didn't need to study those troublesome magic theories and alchemy all day long. In a way, she felt a little happy about it. Alu, go prepare some fruit for the guests, Owen said to Ella after sending Cortana away. Okay, master, leave it to Aluma. Aluma went to prepare energetically. Didn't wait long. The fairy queen came with Gigi. Eat first and then talk. It's not the way to treat guests when they are hungry and talking. Owen waved his hand and told the fairy queen to eat first before talking. Otherwise, her haggard face would not look like a conversation. Thank you. After a moment of silence, the fairy queen nodded and said, Compared with the innocent Gigi, the fairy queen appears to be more mature, not only in appearance, but also in her way of thinking. However, as a naturally innocent fairy, the fairy queen would rather not have this maturity. Who knows how painful and profound this so-called life experience has caused her. The fairy queen doesn't eat much. So Owen didn't wait long before entering the conversation stage. In fact, there was nothing to talk about. It was more like an interview process between the two parties. Because the fairy queen had no leverage and no ability to resist. Besides, after discovering that Owen has the blood of the elf royal family, he felt even more relieved because goblins have always had the habit of relying on elves for protection, even as the Goblin Queen. Moreover, the Goblin Queen is just a title. She is more like an elder who takes care of the goblins, rather than a person in power. So she will not resist. So the process is very smooth. However, Owen also unexpectedly learned some not-so-good news. The goblins were not the only ones in the sacred stone. But there was also a sealed door. You don't need to think about it to know that this door is not a good thing. Otherwise, the goblins would have been absorbed into the secret realm long ago. And this is obviously the reason why he and Cortana were left here. What's that door? Owen said, touching his chin. I don't know, but it gives me a sense of fear from the bottom of my heart. Thinking of this, the fairy queen's expression was very ugly. Just like recalling the nightmare she had just had. After listening, Owen didn't plan to touch that door. But he thought about the god who sent them here. The goblins are a benefit. And this door is probably a test. Otherwise, they wouldn't be sent here for an outing. Let's go and take a look. Owen, who had made up his mind, said to the fairy queen, Okay, I know where that door is. The fairy queen nodded and led the way. Chapter 331 The Sealed Door In fact, the door was just below where the goblins were sleeping. When the goblin queen discovered it, it was already too late. The sky was falling apart outside. She could only escape by relying on the sacred stone. Therefore, she suppressed the fear in her heart and took the other goblins to sleep here, in order to prevent accidents from happening. Owen collected all the sleeping fairies, and then used the Elder Wand to cast the cutting spell according to the place pointed by the Fairy Queen. Unexpectedly, it went smoothly unexpectedly. The core should be the hardest, but it was harder than the outer layer. Lo, with a crispy feel. Is it a trace of a seal? Owen, who felt strange, suspended the cut stone in front of his eyes looked at it carefully, and said with a frown, Well, since the destruction of our world, the seal in the divine stone has become weaker and weaker. Otherwise, it would not be so easy to cut the divine stone, the fairy queen said. After all, the divine stone can withstand the disaster of breaking the world. If it is not hard enough, it will break early. After knowing this, Owen became more careful with his movements, and it took him a lot of time to dig out the door completely. The whole door stands there, 10 meters high, with the spine as the border, the ribs as the frame, and the flesh and blood as the filling. The ferocious devil's head hangs on the door and merges into one. Just taking a look at it, it feels like this thing is feeling alive. Fortunately, this door is still sealed, and all flesh and bones have been turned to stone. So there is no need to worry too much. Is this the gate of the abyss? After looking carefully several times, Owen remembered something. And at the same time, he finally understood why the Fairy Queen's sacred stone was abandoned here. There is very little information about the Gate of the Abyss. 
Owen still learned it from Emily. Because the appearance of this thing means the destruction of the world. The world has been destroyed. How much information can be expected to spread? And occasionally from the ruins? It's just a matter of digging out a few clues and piecing them together. If Emily hadn't come from a legendary mage family and liked digging ruins, she probably wouldn't have known about it. Owen oh, suddenly thought of something. No one knows the abyss better than the devil. So he called out his summoned beast. Blood Princess Angel has met the master. As soon as Angel came out, she bowed her head and saluted in a sensible manner, which made Owen, the master, feel a lot happier. I asked you to come here this time because of the gate of the abyss. Owen pointed to the gate in front of him and said with a headache, Master, this is not the gate of the abyss, but the gate of demons. And she just glanced at it and said calmly, Oh, what's the difference between the two? As soon as and she opened her mouth, Owen knew that she was the right one. So he continued to ask, The gate of the abyss is a fragment that fell off the abyss. It is rare in number, because it contains a small amount of the source of the abyss. It can open a portal directly to the abyss. However, the gate of the abyss is extremely restricted in the material world and is not allowed to approach the material world at all. Even there are not many records of openings in H, L. But the devil's gate is much more common. But many people who don't know why easily confuse the two gates. And she explained, to put it bluntly, both sects can destroy the world. But one is strong and the other is weak. But for the weak, there is no difference between the two. They are both dead anyway. The gate of the abyss is a fragment that broke away from the abyss. I can understand this. So how did the gate of the devil come about? Owen asked doubtfully. It is made of the flesh and blood of demons. The stronger the demon is used as the material, the stronger the demon gate will be, and the more powerful demons can pass through. And she said lightly, It is obviously cruel to use the same kind of material as material. But it is nothing to the devil. It is a common thing. So what level of demon was this door made by? Owen asked, pointing to the door in front of him. Looking at the size, he should be an unlucky guy who just became a demon lord. And she shrugged her shoulders, then pulled down the sling and said, There is no weak person who can bear the name of lord, no matter the elemental lord or the demon lord. They are the strongest people under God, and they are invincible in any world. But in the abyss, even someone as strong as a demon lord is just a material in the hands of the stronger one. The only one who can defeat the demon lord is the demon lord. And that's trouble. Just by hearing the name Demon Lord, you know that he is not a reckless man who fights alone. So once it is turned on, a large number of weak demons will enter first, and then gradually strengthen. And finally the Demon Lord will be summoned into the world. If the world is not strong enough, it will be basically the same as the Gate of Destruction. Otherwise, the Devil's Gate and the Gate of the Abyss will often be confused. After all, they are both Gates of Destruction who can tell the difference between the big and the small. Fortunately, the devil's gate is very restrictive. It will not be activated unless there is a lot of life around it. However, once it falls into the world and feels a lot of life, it will automatically demonize the surrounding creatures and create chaos. And kill. And then open the door to release a large number of demons. And finally form a portal large enough for the demon lord's true body to pass through. Therefore, if it is not discovered early and the momentum becomes large, even if the Empire wants to solve it, it will be a very troublesome thing. Because the demons are all soldiers. And there are no weak ones at all. And there is no need for logistics and weapons. Once a large number of demons pour in, they will run around. There is no way to fight without ten times the strength. The most terrifying thing is that the demon gate is extremely difficult to destroy. Because it is made of the flesh and blood bones of the demon lord. It can be said that for every demon gate that appears, a demon lord will sacrifice his life for it. There is nothing that can be done about it. Ordinary materials can withstand the pressure of the demon lord entering the material world. And only those with equal strength can do so. Because it is so special. The demon gate can be regarded as a demon lord in a special state. So ordinary weapons cannot cause damage at all. And the demon has excellent magic resistance. Let alone the demon lord. So it is equally difficult to destroy it with magic. When Owen heard this, he understood that the god who sent them here was afraid that he had some restrictions and could not take action himself. So he planned to use their hands to solve the problem. I understand. But it's not that easy to complete. Because the seal on this devil's door is already quite fragile. If the door is violently removed, the seal will be destroyed before it is removed. And a bunch of demons will emerge. It doesn't end well. Thinking that Cortana was also an elf princess 
and a disciple of the legendary mage. She called the little Loli, who was having a great time playing with Pu Rong Rong to figure out a solution together. How about we smash it together? Cortana summoned water droplets and danced excitedly. Before Owen could tell her that this was not possible. Cortana eagerly stabbed it with the tip of her spear. Then the seal shattered, and the petrified demon gate began to regain activity. Owen gasped on the spot, grabbed Cortana and ran away. On the way, he collected the panicked fairy queen and the belongings in the shelter. Anyway, he had telekinesis, so it would be useful in battle. A little too late. Moving things as neatly as a tornado. Chapter 332 The Cruel Growth of the Devil Not long after the two left, the petrified flesh and blood of the devil's gate began to slowly squirm, and the hanging devil's head also grinned, letting out a painful howl that penetrated into the soul, with the door as the center, originating from the chaos of the abyss. The force begins to spread. As soon as he ran out of the sacred stone, Owen felt the power of demigod-level chaos coming from behind him. His expression suddenly changed, and he immediately increased his speed. This thing directly acts on the soul and body, and can irreversibly distort the creatures within the range into chaotic evil creatures. That is, demonization. If it is in the center, even legends will inevitably be affected. It doesn't even need demon flesh and blood to produce a large-scale effect similar to swallowing demon eggs. No wonder the demon gate can destroy the world if it is not handled properly. So Owen ran faster. And at the same time, he wanted to kill someone. Cortana, who had turned around, tightened her grip. She couldn't let this little guy get into trouble again. In fact, Owen didn't blame Cortana for getting into trouble. Because even he didn't expect the seal of the devil's gate to be so fragile. Not as strong as potato chips. And even if the seal is not broken by Cortana, no matter what the two people discuss, they have to test it first. And the seal will still be broken when the time comes. It can be said that when Owen dug out the demon gate, it was only a matter of time before the seal was broken. Cortana was not forgiven just because she was cute because there was no target around that could be transformed. The devil's gate quickly shut up. Now it could only rely on itself. So the devil's flesh and blood, which was bound by the bones as filler, began to proliferate rapidly. Just like the degenerated cancer cell tissue, which was twisting, it keeps growing in the pus. And eventually the excess part squeezes out from between the bones. And the fat hangs down everywhere. It's a bit like an aspiring young man who has mixed internal and external ambitions and just showed off a spicy hot pot and ice beer at night, but ended up transforming into a human body just after midnight. Splatoon's end was disastrous. However, the demon's proliferated flesh and blood is more disgusting than the chi, and is more disordered and twisted. At least the chi will not bulge and pulsate. Yes, it is so disgusting. As the demon proliferates and flesh continues to expand, strong pulses can be heard from the inside of the bulging belly. After the swelling reaches a certain level, it begins to contract violently, and a pile of meaty dumplings are squeezed out of it. The mucus mix with fishy odor flowed all over the floor. The scene was very shocking, especially the production method of proliferating flesh and blood like squeezing out a pustule, which is an illusion that it can effectively cure various LSPs. Is this the newborn devil? Owen saw this scene clearly through the reserve means. His face was a little livid, and his stomach began to twitch, but he still insisted on watching because it is difficult to see how a devil grows in the material world. Although there are many kinds of demons, there are all kinds of demons, but the essence is the same. In theory, the hot succubus with bulging front and back is no different from the minotaur with big breasts and buttocks. However, many young mages who have not yet seen through the truth are the same. The sorcerer just doesn't want to admit this. After a long period of practice, he will see through everything and understand the truth that white is empty. Right now, Owen was very curious about how a demon grew from a meat dumpling into all kinds of demons. So he not only watched it, but also started videotaping it. These were all precious research materials. Just after birth, the fleshy dumplings, covered in mucus but not yet dried, opened their intestine-like mouthparts and sucked in the weak ones around them. Because there are no teeth, one can only rely on the muscles of the mouth to wrap the enemy, and then swallow it by squirming the throat like an intestine. Therefore, the success rate of hunting is not high. Some succeed and some fail. But as long as they can survive, these meat dumplings begin to evolve independently in order to eat more efficiently. Some have developed sharp teeth, wide mouths, and intestines covered with barbs. But their bodies have also become relatively bloated, just like anglerfish, in order to hunt more efficiently. 
Some have grown slender limbs with sharp claws, which can not only move quickly, but also be used for hunting. But once bitten, there is a high probability of disaster. There are also some that are covered with spikes and are poisonous, so as not to be swallowed, and at the same time, poisoning the same kind makes it easier to eat. Some of them became more and more enchanting, with plump lips and big eyes, exuding a strange charm. And then they were eaten separately. This was purely due to the wrong evolutionary path. No matter which kind of evolution, they are all for a more favorable survival in the current environment. For this reason, they keep eating and fighting, and they are merciless, chewing and screaming together, making people suspicious. Is this a restaurant or a slaughterhouse? This is not simply killing each other, but a unique way for demons to grow. By preying on the same kind, they gain more growth nutrients and combat experience. Therefore, every demon is a born warrior. Experience in hundreds of battles is completely inadequate to describe it. There will be no weak ones, because the weak will have been eaten long ago. With the killing and devouring, the chaotic evolution continues and becomes more and more excessive. There are seven or eight mouths, five or six legs, eight or nine hands. The butt is on the head, and the brain is in the butt. You have to open your eyes to take a look. All kinds of weird looks made Owen vomit. Although it was ugly, the devil's fighting ability was no joke. And Owen began to worry about how to fight next. It's not impossible to just run away. But consider that this is a trial arranged by a god. If you just run away, who knows whether you will be tied up and spanked. But how to fight is also a problem. Because the environment here is too special. The characteristics of the void environment limit all elemental magic. Because there are no elements at all, and there is a lack of matter. So it needs to be transformed with magic power. Which is obviously not cost effective. The idealistic spells are not lethal enough. But fire is powerful. But it also requires material support to burn. Moreover, demons are abyss creatures. And their fire resistance cannot be said to be full. But those with less fire resistance will not survive to grow up. In addition, with the same excellent magic resistance, Owen can't say how effectively Hua is against demons. Owen never thought about engaging in close combat in person. Firstly, the danger was uncontrollable. And secondly, it was inconsistent with his status. He was a lord. So why should he be like a reckless man and fight his opponents to the death? It would be good to directly use the ultimate move to clear the field. But thinking about the trouble caused by using the ultimate move twice, Owen almost has a psychological shadow. As for summons, weak ones are useless. While strong ones are trump cards and cannot be exposed easily, neither can puppets. Because the void environment is the most corrosive to inanimate matter. Unable to do anything left or right, Owen finally decided to have a plant versus demon battle, which not only suited his identity as an elf royal family, but also made it easier to test the abilities of those demons. Anyway, he wouldn't feel bad if he lost it, since there were more in Green Shade Town. Moreover, the energy of Demon Gate is not endless, especially the special environment of the Void Land, which is a limitation for them. And it is also a limitation for Demon Gate. There is no life, no killing, no fear, and no soul. Where to replenish it? When the energy is exhausted, it is just a door. Chapter 333 Plants vs. Demons After counting the plants he brought, Owen frowned slightly. There were many types, but the overall quantity may not be able to beat the speed of Devil's Gate's offspring. So the quality must be increased. Otherwise, if he fights for 1 out of 10, even if he reserves, no amount of consumption is enough. Fairy Queen, I remember that fairies have the ability to possess plants? Owen thought of something and asked the Fairy Queen. Yes. Fairies can have limited control over plants after possessing them. But they can only be used for pranks. If they are special plants, there may be magical changes. In the end, the fairy queen was not very sure. Because people like Owen, she had never seen any of the plants in her hand that were strong enough to fight zombies and had some consciousness. There is always a first time. So just try it boldly. If it doesn't work, Irving thought so and took out a walnut. The huge nut and the dull eyes made the fairy queen, who had seen many plants, be stunned for a moment, and then asked Gigi to possess it, because the appearance of the walnut did not meet her aesthetic taste. Goblins feel soft to the touch, but they are not simply made of flesh and blood, so they can do many incredible things. For example, they ate fruit until they bulged like a ball, and then returned to their normal size after a while. This is definitely not what normal creatures can do, did it? 
taking on the important task of trying it for the first time. Gigi flapped its wings excitedly, accelerated and circled in the air, and then plunged into the wall fruit at a speed that could flatten itself, as if it were thrown into the water, blending in quietly. When Gigi and Chongwa merged into one, Chongwa's eyes became much more lively, and an indescribable change occurred at the same time. Owen observed carefully, understood something, took out his wand, and cast the transformation spell. This transformation spell was not very powerful, but it broke some restrictions. The wall rocked and cracked. It transformed into a head and limbs, and stood up staggeringly. It was also able to move independently, like some kind of special of golem. After some perception, although the consciousness has increased, it is still dominated by plants, and the integration of fairies is only an enhancement based on the original basis. This puts Owen at ease. After all, the goblin has no fighting ability at first glance. The goblin's consciousness dominates. He is afraid that he will be merciless or even avoid fighting. Very good. Let's wake up more goblins. We have a big battle to fight. Seeing that the attempt was successful, Owen said with a smile. The goblin queen nodded and used the plants provided by Owen to awaken more goblins. As for fighting, although goblins don't like fighting, they hate evil extremely. And demons are obviously extremely evil and can be called the enemy of life. Even if the goblin is not willing to fight. When the demon emerged, the heavily armored nutmen rushed forward bravely, attracting hatred, and at the same time blocked the demon's mouth with their bodies. Even if they were bitten, they still refused to retreat. After the demon was blocked, a group of skilled kung fu cabbage and nunchuck wielding master Su jumped out from behind nutmen. With a powerful roar, a pair of cabbage gangsters and sweet nunchucks whipped the demon into chaos. Before the demon, who was almost knocked unconscious, could recover. The white melon sumo wrestler and the wogwa wrestler, who were shaking as they walked, and the cactus boxer, who had his own back injuries, came forward to greet him, knocking him out. The demon was knocked to the ground and was beaten to death. Even if the demon was tenacious, it could not withstand such a violent hammer, and a lot of them died on the spot. Feeling the inadequacy of the newborn demon when facing the plant warriors, the demon gate seemed to be provoked and sped more power to give birth to stronger demons. This wave of demons is no longer the product of random evolution, but the winners that emerged after countless years of elimination from the abyss. They may have many flaws, but they still cannot hide their outstanding advantages. After all, there are no perfect creatures in this world. The addition of the mature demon reversed the situation in the battle. The powerful demon wielded his heavy fists and cracked the nutman's sh. L. The thick muscles also made Kung Fu Cabbage and Master Su useless. They only had weight. The top-level white melon sumo wrestlers. Melon wrestlers and cactus boxers can cause damage. But it is still not fatal. Instead, juice flows from the iron fist of Liamo. The entire battlefield is like a supermarket after a discount. With dirt all over the floor. The vegetables break the melon. After the side demon and the winged demon joined in. The countdown to the collapse of the plant front began. One by one the goblins broke away from the broken plant warriors and returned to the goblin queen. This shows how the battle is going. However, the sacrifice of the first batch of plant warriors has bought enough time for Owen's attempt. And the new batch of plant warriors are ready to go. Although many plant warriors died in the front. None of the goblins died. Instead, they became more energetic. Because after the death of the plant warriors, more natural power was emitted. Which greatly replenished the goblins who had experienced slumber. But the goblins are not happy. Because the plant warriors are comrades fighting against evil together. Now that their comrades have fallen. They have to work harder. The pervasive power of nature was gathered by the fairy queen. And poured into Owen's newly transformed plants. When the fairies possessed them. Combat power was also formed. The machine gun shooters lined up in a row not only have powerful mouth cannons. But their hands have also turned into machine guns. With the blessing of the force of nature. The peas they eject are not only harder and faster, but also have extra damage against evil. Even if they are skinned, the thick-bodied force demons will be beaten into dogs after being focused on fire. Not to mention that the machine gun shooters mainly target the flying wing demons. The wide flying wings have become the main reason for the death of the flying wing demons. Even if these flying wing demons are unscientifically capable of flying in a near-vacuum cosmic environment, the strange thing is that as long as the flying wings are destroyed, they will lose their ability to fly. As a result, they were either killed on the spot by machine gunners, or became drifting garbage in the void waiting to be decomposed. As for the blood cow-like force demon, 
Owen specially prepared the coconut cannon turtle. This plant warrior transformed from a coconut cannon moves slowly. Just like an old turtle carrying a cannon. And it still has the problem of low firing rate. But the strong power is enough to make up for this shortcoming. Anyway, Liamo, with huge arms but weak legs, has no dodge attribute at all. Finally, the side demon is as agile as the wind as it has high attack power and is dealt with by a boomerang shooter. The boomerangs flying all over the sky leave no room for dodge. The side demon cannot dodge even if it is twisted into a twist. Next, the two sides fell into a fierce offensive and defensive battle. Various demons were constantly born at the Devil's Gate. Owen also adapted to the situation. And various plants emerged one after another, which consumed the Nightmare Gate without any temper. The Devil's Gate has never encountered such an opponent. In the past, it was always a crushing game in other worlds. With occasional resistance, in the face of various powerful demons, death is only a matter of time. But it happened to encounter a monster that has evolved to deal with various zombies. There are so many types of plants, and such a wide range, that there is simply no way for the devil to survive. Chapter 334 Slaughter Demon and Plant Giant Part 1 As the war situation reached a stalemate, the Devil's Gate fell into a state of violence. After all, it was unrealistic to expect the Devil to think calmly and weigh the pros and cons, let alone a good Devil Lord who would spend his whole day eating and drinking, either killing people or toying with succubi. I would not change my life even if I gave it to the gods. The result is that because I failed to defeat my neighbor and lost the battle, I was dismantled alive and used as materials to make a portal. How can I be in a good mood? Not only full of resentment, but also all the time? They have been tortured. And now they have been exiled to the void. And their resentment is soaring. Only killing can relieve it. So it is impossible to retreat. And it can only end with the death of one party. Cortana creates sunshine and rain. Owen hurriedly transformed plants. Barely keeping the battle line from collapsing. But with the devil's gate stud. He couldn't hold it anymore. So he said to Cortana. Who was the trump card. As the princess of the kingdom of light elf. Light magic is naturally Cortana's specialty. Although the Void Land is quite special, she still managed to convert magic into sunlight. It has no lethality, but it is enough for plants. Coupled with the status of being a lover of the water element lord, the reign of the sun made all the plant warriors frightened and energetic. They punched, kicked, shot and bombarded the demon, which temporarily stabilized the shaky front line. But it wasn't enough. Owen used his own means to observe that the proliferated flesh and blood of Devil's Gate was rapidly expanding. Judging from the huge cyst that bulged from time to time, it was obvious that a big guy was pregnant inside. As for that, Owen said with a helpless sigh, in this land of nothingness, every bit of energy is precious. It is obviously not rational to consume it uncontrollably like the Devil's Gate and have to fall into a deep sleep without sealing it afterwards. As choice. But sanity is a joke to the Devil. And the pregnant big guy is also a problem. Owen frowned and started to make preparations. Cortana, save some magic power. You may have to turn it up later. Owen said to Cortana, who was still preparing to use Sun Rain. This can be said to be a last resort. As for the reason, it is because of the special environment. If you turn it up here, the consumption will increase at least three to five times. And the longer the time, the faster the consumption so it is not necessarily possible to consume more energy than the devil. I have to say that the devil is really powerful in some aspects. It has almost full resistance to all kinds of damage, especially damage from poisonous fire curses, coupled with its strong body and strong vitality. Except for intelligence, it has almost no shortcomings. Even in the void, the impact on the devil was actually very small. In contrast, Irving also has to worry about the issue of foothold. Under various constraints, the combat effectiveness that both sides can display will naturally be tilted. So he must keep a trump card. As the plant warriors rose up, the last demon was beaten to death. But no one had any intention of relaxing. Because the heartbeat coming from inside the sacred stone was loud enough to make the dust on the surface of the sacred stone fly. At least he has to be a legend, Owen said with a headache. Legend is a level. Not only humans, but other creatures also have legends. Generally speaking, human legends cannot be said to be the weakest. Nor are they any stronger. While legendary demons are definitely at the top of the legendary level. They are both legends. Two or three human legends face off against legendary demons. It's hard to say whether they will win or lose. This shows how difficult the legendary demons are. Not long after, 
There was a dull sound underground, and accompanied by strong vibrations, countless cracks opened in the ground, and even spread to half of the sacred stone. Owen's face became more and more ugly. After all, once he lost his foothold, he could not even fight, let alone survive. Is the problem. But this is normal. The sacred stone is not big at all. It has been destroyed by demons and plant warriors for so long, and it is not broken. Let alone accommodate the appearance of a big guy. There was a loud crack, and the ground was completely torn apart. At least one third of the sacred stone collapsed into the void, revealing a terrifying beast. Slaughter demon. Owen's tooth hurts badly. This thing can be said to be a close relative of Behemoth. It is more than 10 meters tall, and its body is as thick as a mountain. Its huge arms are ferocious with muscles and are covered with bone spurs. Wherever you put it, it presses deeply into the ground. Like soft mud, it can be said that it rubs against the ground. If you touch it, you will be injured. If you touch it, you will die. And it's ugly, with a head that looks like a mix between an orangutan and a Tyrannosaurus Rex, plus two huge horns spiraling down, which fully embodies the ferocious look. Together with the exoskeleton all over the body, there are also exoskeletons that extend from the ribs to the back straight into the sky, with six hollow bones. There are simply no words to describe the terror of this monster. Compared with the appearance, Owen and Cortana can personally feel the fury of the Slayer. This is a monster born purely for destruction and killing. The slaughter demon opened its mouth big enough to swallow a car, and the wind surged between its thick sharp teeth. Then it let out a loud roar, and the six whistle-like hollow bones behind it also erupted with a wide range of low sound waves and the originally slowly collapsed the sacred stone became even more fragmented in the blink of an eye and flew into the void like a cannonball. No wonder this thing is called the slaughter demon. This is still a land of void. If such a voice were heard in a human town, half of the town would be wiped out. If placed on the battlefield, it would be an unstoppable mass destruction. Weapons, even if you don't use them, can cause disaster just by shouting. Cortana had never seen such a monster before and almost cried out of fright. However, Owen remained calm and immediately pulled her into a strange wall not sh. L behind her. Then he pulled down the sh. L with force. Pulling the two men apart. People are locked inside. Owen certainly didn't do this to wait for death. Because this wall not sh. I was his carefully built cockpit. As soon as the two people came in, roots extended out from the inside of the wall fruit sh. L and secreted elastic pectin, which firmly fixed the two people inside and would not be affected by external impacts. At the same time, all the plant warriors rushed towards the wall not sh. L, under the influence of the power of nature and fairies. A large number of roots began to spread with the wall not sh. L is the center, and connected and merged with each other to form a huge plant. Giant. The fairy queen who appeared in the wall nutch. L at some time is working hard to guide the power of nature, weaving the spreading roots of plants into something like a neural network so that all plants can be integrated into a whole. Otherwise, simply stacking plants will have no effect. Significance. Fortunately, every plant warrior has a goblin in his body, which is enough to become a node, so that the goblin queen can build a partial natural network, so that this plant giant will not become a decoration. With the help of the fairy queen, Owen successfully connected with the plant giant, with the help of his elven bloodline and the ability of the druid profession, and then controlled this special giant according to his own will. Chapter 335 Slaughter Demon and Plant Giant Part 2 Enable Heavy Armor Cannon Mode Owen took a deep breath and said to the Fairy Queen, When facing the Slayer Demon, it is not a good idea to choose melee combat. The Fairy Queen nodded, and the Fairy possessing the Wall Fruit began to channel the unique power of nature. After a while, the characteristics of the Wall Fruit began to show up in the Plant Giant. It didn't take long for the Thick Wall Fruit SH L to cover the whole body of the Plant Giant turning the plant giant into an armored giant. And this is just the beginning. Coconut cannons, carrot missiles, and machine gun peas are all growing out of the plant giant one after another, looking like a plant version of the Warhammer Titan. The plant giant covered in weapons held a huge frozen watermelon in one hand and a spiked durian the size of a van in the other, in addition to two enlarged versions of exploding cherries hanging from his crotch. He also hit a destruction mushroom, which can be said to be armed. It's so full that it explodes. Although he was just born, the slaughter demon still adapted to the surrounding environment in a very short period of time. He could no longer hold it in any longer. He roared again, and then took heavy steps to rush over and smash the enemy into vegetable juice. However, 
He was shot twice on the spot. Coconut cannonballs hit the eye sockets. The specially strengthened coconut cannon. The coconut SH. LS fired are no longer the size of ordinary coconuts, but as big as a pot lid, and are more powerful, and have a higher hit rate. And because it is rich in natural power, the coconut juice is as effective as holy water and makes the eyes red. The slaughter demon with black, green and red eyes barely opened a crack, opened its mouth angrily, and was about to let out an angry roar. As a result, the plant giant raised its hand, and a precise carried missile fired from its open mouth. It goes down the throat smoothly, and then explodes in the stomach. The slaughter demon's belly suddenly bulged, and then he spat out a large mouthful of blood with carrot juice in a daze, not even understanding how he was injured. This was not over yet. The plant giant who seized the opportunity took the opportunity to approach, before the slaughter demon could recover. The frozen watermelon, which was harder than rock, was slapped on his face like a brick. Owen could clearly feel the surface of the frozen watermelon. The frost rubbed against the slaughter demon's thick horns, splattering out bits of ice and snowflakes. Then, driven by strong force, first the heart is iron rind, and then the heart chilling melon flesh, spattered randomly on the slaughter demon's face. Shoot! It was stunned, and even the cold and sweet watermelon juice flowed into its mouth. Not to mention this life, even in the last life, the slaughter demon never thought that he would be slapped in the face by a watermelon. But there were many more things it never thought about. Once the move was successful, Owen didn't stop. He followed the pattern of manipulating a puppet and combined with the plant giant's unique body structure. The vine roots all over the place replaced the muscles to exert force. His legs took root. His twisted waist drove his arms to lift the heavy spiked durian. He swung it with all his strength, bringing the unparalleled evil wind from top to bottom, and hit the slaughter demon hard on the head. Compared with the watermelon knife sold by the watermelon seller, the durian in the hand of the durian seller is the murder weapon. The power of swinging it is more powerful than a mace. The head of the killing demon can collapse the city wall, but cannot resist it. There is a crisp sound in cracks. Little bits of gray gelatinous substance, like brain matter squeezed out from the palm with slit in the brain. And it looked painful. However, the durian in the plant giant's hand couldn't resist the shock. It exploded on the spot. And the pulp with a special flavor spilled all over the floor. When combined with the vegetable juice from the vegetable giant who had been killed in the battle, the taste was a bit overpowering. Owen lost his useful weapon, so he could only raise his nut fist and punch the slaughter demon that was still standing. But he already had an ominous premonition in his heart. Even though he used all his killing moves and knocked out the brains of the slaughter demon, the damage caused him to fall to the ground. And he couldn't even take a step back. The slaughter demon is not only hard, it's also meaty. So meaty, that it makes Owen's scalp numb. Owen never thought that they are all legends. Why are legendary demons so difficult to deal with? The plant giant's blasting hammer had no effect, but instead excited the slaughter demon. As he hammered hard, the slaughter demon opened his mouth unprepared and bit down on the plant giant's raised fist. He didn't even care that the fist went deep into his throat. He could even reach his stomach when he opened his hand. But as soon as he closed his mouth, the outer layer was first the fruit sh. L of the wall shattered. And then, there was the sound of the internal plant fibers being squeezed and broken. A large amount of mixed vegetable juice flowed into the slaughter demon's mouth, giving it a good vitamin supplement. Demons are not afraid of cold food, regardless of whether it is fresh flesh or rotting corpses with maggots. They are all delicious food for demons. The only exception is vegetarian food. Who has ever seen a demon who likes to eat vegetable salads and drink juice? So he wanted to chew his enemies. The slaughter demon whose arms indicated that he was very ferocious. Vomited on the spot. Nut sh. Ls. Cabbage leaves. Cabbage. Green peppers. Eggplants. And other things were scattered all over the floor. Owen, who had lost an arm, immediately realized the difference between the plant giant and the slayer demon. He gritted his teeth and used his good arm to dig hard at his crotch. The two hot things that were still smoking after he had just taken them off were removed by him. With his quick eyes and hands, he quickly stuffed it into the mouth of the still vomiting slaughter demon, and then quickly ran back while swinging his arm that was bitten off again. The killer demon, who instinctively bit it down, since something was wrong. But before he could spit it out, there were two loud booms. In the splashing cherry juice, Owen, who was evacuating, could see that half of the killer demon's face was blown apart, because the flesh and blood on both cheeks were blown away. The chin hung down weakly, the tattered tongue was spitting out. 
and the blown out teeth turned into bullets, which penetrated the flesh and came out from the eye sockets or other places. The overall look was already gone. It's time to send him to the emergency room, but it was still useless. The slaughter demon completely ignored the damage, violently smashed the ground with a pair of giant arms, and rushed towards the enemy, who tasted disgusting with all four limbs. Owen took a deep breath, resolutely raised his thighs, and looked like he would piss all over you even if he died. Then he drilled out an inconspicuous little mushroom from the green vegetables and shot it like a missile at the carnage that was rushing towards him. Magic. As soon as he shot out the mushroom, Owen desperately jumped out of the range of the sacred stone while controlling the plant giant to huddle tightly. Before the plant giant jumped out of the sacred stone and flew far, the terrifying explosion completely shattered the sacred stone. The gravel with huge kinetic energy beat the plant giant to pieces. Vegetable juice, fruit juice, sugar cane juice, etc. were flowing all over his body. Of Owen's face was green as he stared at the damaged area on the cockpit. A fragment of the sacred stone penetrated the plant giant. There was also the hardest special wall cockpit. If it weren't for the thick pectin layer as a buffer, this would have been impossible. The thing hit him on the head. I still underestimated the destructive power of the destruction mushroom. Owen said with a breath of cold air. At the same time, he couldn't help but be grateful for his caution. If he used it at close range, he would have to shed his skin even if he didn't die. However, after seeing the completely shattered sacred stone, as well as the half-crushed slayer demon and the demon gate floating in the void, Owen couldn't help but admire the power of the destruction mushroom. It's a pity that this thing can only be redeemed from the system, because he has not discovered the key elements required for the growth of the destruction mushroom. Otherwise, he would have planted a warehouse long ago. And then, he would use the mushrooms to kill anyone who doesn't like it. Chapter 336 Specialty Class Twisting his waist and straightening his body, he fired another destruction mushroom, killing the half-crushed slaughter demon swimming on his back in the void. By the way, Owen was promoted several levels, but he was in no mood to care about it now because he was targeted by the Devil's Gate. Owen couldn't tolerate it. It was just a door, and it couldn't grow legs. So regardless of the danger, he took Cortana with him. The two of them wielded two semi-artifacts and slashed them. And in a daze, they demolished the huge devil's door. He was reduced to pieces and took the devil's head back as a trophy. In fact, Owen was mainly afraid that the devil's gate would be restored. So he chose to take away the devil's head, which was the core at first glance. When the body was separated, even if it was restored, it would still be half disabled. After doing this, Owen and Irving were teleported back to the academy. Obviously his guess was right. However, Owen didn't know what his mistress said about the two of them, which was that they were reckless. The mistress didn't actually have as many ideas as Owen suspected. In fact, she just wanted to scare these two naughty little guys. As for the goblins, it was a small benefit for them. But the trial was not as serious as Owen imagined. In fact, in the mistress's mind, the two of them could strengthen the seal of the devil's gate or push it deeper into the void. As for forcibly demolishing the Devil's Gate, she had never thought about it. In any case, the destructive power of the two little guys has not improved a little bit in the mistress's mind, which means that it has not reached that level. Otherwise she will have to worry about the two of them causing a big disaster. Under the arrangement of the mistress, the two people who had just returned to the Academy City received a notice of class placement. This is the first time I know that there is a specialty class in Academy City. Cortana complained. Although she is middling young, it does not mean that she is a fool. As the oldest student in Academy City, she knows Academy City better than many teachers. So it was natural to guess that this specialty class was obviously just established and was specially designed to accommodate troublesome students like them. Well, from this point of view, Cortana is quite self-aware and knows that she is trouble. Owen was a little unhappy when he took the class placement notice. After all, he had just laid the foundation of Hydra in the puppet class and was assigned. Of course he was not happy. If my brother doesn't like it, I can go to the teacher for help. After seeing it, Cortana said comfortingly, it was obvious that she really regarded Owen as her brother. Otherwise she would not care so much about his mood after coming back. It's okay. Maybe we will meet more interesting students. Owen said after receiving the notice. If the specialty class is full of students like him, it may not be a better opportunity. After all, no matter how many ordinary students there are, they are not as good as one subject. A super talented student like Tana. In any case, unless they leave, 
they still have to listen to the allocation of the college town. So the two of them made an appointment to go back and pack their things. Because the specialty class has an independent dormitory. They have to move. Before going back to the dormitory, Owen went to the puppet class first. And when he arrived, he saw Kara beating Carl. It was a real beating. The kind where he was hung up and whipped with a whip. After asking the little fat guy Obadi, I found out that Carl was determined not to give up. He came here yesterday to repeat the previous scene and destroy his sister. As a result, Carla, who had been reborn, beat him with a hammer. While beating him, he shouted something like, Weak! My brother is not worthy of revenge. So why should he feel the pain? Recognize his own weakness? And become stronger if he wants revenge? Anyway, he was ravaged. And this lasted for a day and a night. During this period, Kevin Flynn came by. But after seeing Kara wielding the whip with one hand on her hip, and her skin becoming shiny and attractive due to sweat due to the continuous operation of her body, he bent over and went back. Leaving just one sentence, don't forget to send it back when you're done. Owen's expression was very strange. He didn't speak for a long time. And finally said, I'll build a dungeon later and fight wherever I go. It won't be good outside. Owen is not afraid of beating people to death. Firstly, Kara knows it well. Secondly, the whip not only hurts people, but also has the effect of promoting blood circulation and removing blood stasis. Long-term whipping can help blood circulation and is most suitable for people who sit for long periods of time. It can prevent various chronic diseases, occupational diseases, and so on. Otherwise, Kevin Flynn would not turn around and leave. However, just using a whip is still a bit monotonous. Then get an iron virgin for acupuncture, a triangular horse to treat hemorrhoids, a gallows to prevent cervical spondylosis, and a soldering iron to remove moisture. I just don't know if Carl has constipation or anterior proximal problems. If so, prepare a wooden donkey for him to ride on. When the time comes, let Carla pull in front and Carl rock in the back. Doing this every three to five times will ensure that Carl can live until death without any disease or disaster. Not to mention Owen's good intentions. Not long after the two were teleported away, two groups of people came to the void land. And they were enemies. They fought fiercely as soon as they met. One side had a large number of people. And the other side only had one person. In the end, it was difficult to fight with both fists. Against four hands, the man grabbed a handful of things and left. The winning party originally wanted to chase it, but the dismantled devil's gate drifted further and further away. In desperation, they had no choice but to collect the fragments of the devil's gate first. Not only Owen, but even the mistress knew nothing about this. After all, one was still immortal and the other had many restrictions. So she did not discover this group of daring people. After waiting for a few days, the time came. Owen said goodbye to Peters and Robert and took Cowles to the specialty class. Even Owen didn't expect that both Cowles and Sylvia would be assigned to the specialty class. But if you think about it carefully, it's not surprising. Cowles has the heritage of a necromancer and Sylvia is a witch. They are both highly dangerous students. Is this good? The short phoenix stroked his long beard and said to Kevin Flynn with a sad face. No way. This is what the mistress wants. Kevin Flynn said helplessly. Compared to those people, Cortana is too kind. I'm really afraid that she will be bullied. Phoenix said worriedly like an old father. Didn't she recognize a brother? That little guy is not as weak as she thought. Kevin Flynn couldn't help his eyelids twitching when he thought of his apprentice, who was brought back by a few strong men in black tights. But fortunately, compared to the lifeless apprentice, who was always immersed in a swamp of hatred and couldn't extricate himself, now he is much more energetic. It's like a volcano, and it will explode in a moment. If he hadn't stopped him, he might have used an alchemy bomb to destroy the puppet class classroom. It was blown flat. Those students are fine. But why did College City send Amelia, a pair of troublesome masters and apprentices, to be teachers in special classes? Phoenix suddenly mentioned this name, and even Kevin Flynn frowned when he heard it. You know, she is the only legendary alchemist in Academy City. We can't keep her locked up forever. Kevin Flynn took a deep breath and slowly exhaled it, holding back something and whispering softly said to Phoenix. Not even Phoenix can deny this. Although the alchemist is not a combat profession, it is more precious than ten professionals of the same level. It is impossible for the Academy City to imprison a legendary alchemist all the time. Even the Academy City cannot bear this kind of waste. The problem is that you also know her hobbies. If you put her together with those students, 
you won't be afraid of problems. Phoenix couldn't help but speak again. Perhaps this is the balance that College City wants. Kevin Felling rubbed his eyebrows and said, Obviously, he was also very distressed about this matter, but he could not stop College City's decision. Faced with the answer given by Kevin Flynn, Phoenix was speechless. Chapter 337 New Students Although he knew that the purpose of setting up special classes in College City was to keep these troublesome students away from trouble, Owen never expected that College City would be so ruthless and arrange the special classes to the mountains dozens of miles away. On one side was the mess left by the flash flood, and on the other side was the crater that has not been extinguished yet. Owen couldn't help but scratch his head. Were they sent to open up wasteland for farming? When a few people arrived at their destination according to the notice, they looked at the desolation in front of them and realized that they were assigned to open up wasteland. Owen kept his composure and didn't speak. So Cortana and Sylvia wouldn't complain, let alone cows. It didn't take long for the teacher to arrive. The very cool teacher was sitting on a giant eight-legged mechanical spider, arriving like the wind on the rugged mountain road. My lovely students, I am your teacher. You can call me Mia. The intellectual sister you jumped down from the mechanical spider. Her abundant capital, which could be described as bouncing, made Owen narrow his eyes and almost ignored the other party's introduction. Our first priority now is to build classrooms and dormitories. So come on, students. Mia smiled slightly, then jumped on the mechanical spider and left without hesitation. I remember we are students and she is a teacher, right? Owen opened his mouth and finally said helplessly. After all, he had never heard of students building their own classrooms and dormitories. Yes, at the moment. But it seems we are not the only ones suffering. Sylvia rubbed her fingers and the thorns formed by the dark magic pierced her skin and wrapped around her fingertips. And the dripping blood turned into seeds, making this a barren land grows thorn bushes that can bring pain to people. It's best to calm down. We are students. Owen said with a headache. Having an irresponsible teacher is enough to make people speechless. Coupled with a group of students who are ready to fight at any time, he would rather drop out of school. Ha uh ha. -huh. Warlocks. Orcs. Dwarves. And demi-humans. It seems that our future student life will be very exciting. Sylvia said to Owen with a smile. Owen's face twitched. He didn't expect that there were so many types of students in the Academy City. I originally wanted to introduce each other to each other. But the new students ignored him at all. They each found a corner. Either dazing somewhere. Or cutting down trees and digging holes to prepare shelter. And some carried axes to prepare for hunting. Owen. Forget it. Let's build the residence first. Owen said rubbing his brows. The three Sylvias were obviously headed by Irving, and no one had any objections to the decision he made. In order to maintain his image as an elf royal family, Owen stopped using other abilities and instead grew mushrooms. This is a mushroom house seed brought from Green Shadow Town. It grows very fast, and as long as the transmission of natural power is interrupted, it will quickly become fibrous. It will not be planted in the morning, but it will go bad in the afternoon, or be eaten by some animal. The colorful, short and fat mushroom houses grew rapidly in the hands of Owen and Cortana. From a distance, they looked a bit like the Smurfs' cabin. As for the furniture, it was even simpler. Neither Owen nor Cortana had the mastery of alchemy that ordinary students could match. Just knock on a tree and it would turn into furniture instantly. And knock on a stone and it would all turn into floor tiles. Such an action naturally alarmed several new students on the side. The orc sneered at this and went hunting with his ancestral axe. He preferred the wild environment to the academy city with many rules. The stubborn dwarf was wielding a war hammer to hit the rocks. He obviously planned to build a house of his own. He had only one comment about the mushroom house. It is for women to live in. The shrewd warlock glanced at the two men, and then focused on the cat sisters, who were stretching on the branch of a tree. Not knowing what the warlock said, the cat person's sisters followed him towards Owen, because they knew at a glance that the other person was the leader of this small group. Owen had noticed their movements a long time ago. So he waved his hand and led them to the mushroom house and sat on the soft sofa. Owen, as you can see, I am a student in the specialty class. Irving introduced himself while casting a spell to make a cup filled with juice come to the guests with long legs. Dragon Vane Warlock Corgi is also a student in the specialty class. The handsome Corgi smiled crookedly, showing six shining teeth. He showed that he often provokes or is provoked by women. And in Ka from the cat people. And in Ka are twin cat women with the same coat color and pupils. The same wildness. 
They were a simple two-piece suit with a bust and leather skirt, revealing a large area of healthy skin color, and a long tail, shaking restlessly. The claws pressing on the sofa showed a little bit of sharpness, and there was a feeling of eagerness to try. Corgi started to chat for a few words, and then revealed the reason for his visit. He wanted Owen to help find a place to live. He would not let his help go in vain, and would pay him. It doesn't matter if it's money or not. The main thing is to make friends, Owen said with a smile and waved his hand. Big brother is handsome and generous. Corgi is really thick-skinned. For a young girl like Owen, who can still call him big brother to his face, he is not an ordinary person. From now on, we will all be students in the same class. Let's have a meal together and communicate with each other. Owen could tell at a glance that Corgi and Peters were the same type of people. So he said, such a person has many eyes, but he is also a smart person. He will not do stupid things easily, and he is well informed. So I thought of asking him for news about other students. Owen called Elu out and asked him to prepare a feast, because the cat sisters were there. He specially brought out a big fish from the northern boundary river. The appearance of Elu cat made the bored cat girl sisters immediately prick up their ears, although their appearance is a little different. They are all cat people in essence compared with listening to Owen and Corgi's boring conversation. It is better to talk to this ignorant cat, who can carry a big fish and play together. Aluma, who was about to show off his skills, had a headache as he watched the two guests jump onto the dining table, full of interest in the bottles and cans on it. We are all cats. So how can we not know what the other person wants to do? So Aluma immediately took out the secret dried fish from her collection. And then she got a quiet working environment. Not to mention the cat girl sisters, who climbed up the tree to compete with each other for the delicious dried fish. Corgi could see that Owen had something to say, so he pretended to answer all questions of the entire specialty class. Almost half of them are surrounding the opponent, which shows the opponent's strength. Of course, Corgi, who didn't intend to stand out and only wanted to go around, would not offend such a man. Besides, it was just some information, so there was nothing to keep secret. As expected, Kuji was very well informed and had some knowledge of the details of those students. Among them, the identity of the orc named Gugu was the most mysterious. Even he did not find out much useful information. He only knew that it was arranged by the royal family. So even if it was the orcs are still eligible to enter the academy city. However, due to his different personality and living environment, this one often gets into trouble. After all, orcs don't have the habit of being reasonable. Generally speaking, whoever has a bigger fist is more reasonable and he is a typical example of convincing people with force. As for the Catwoman sisters, they are simply too naughty. So naughty that neither teachers nor students can stand them. However, the Catwoman sisters have a very special bloodline. They could not be caught by ordinary methods, let alone stopping them. So they were eventually assigned to a special class. In addition, there is a dwarf and an elf, from the dwarf province and the elf province of the empire. These two provinces are autonomous regions of two ethnic groups and have strong independence. Even the empire needs to win over them. As for being able to come to the academy city to attend school, these two people certainly have unusual identities. The dwarf Iron Fist has a strong heritage from the dwarf clan, while the elf Antler belongs to some kind of blood mutation of the elves and is considered a treasure among their respective races. Chapter 338 Teacher and Student Why didn't you see the elf? Owen asked strangely. Because she loves nature. She couldn't help but see the damage caused by flash floods and volcanoes. And ran to plant trees. Corgi waved his hand and at the same time glanced at Owen one more time. Having gone to the alchemy department to watch the duel. He knew how the damage here was caused. Otherwise, no matter what. He wouldn't call him big brother when they meet. You must know that he only kneels down to women. And it's not because he is a real boss. Now Irving is curious as to why he was assigned to the specialty class. In fact, if Peters were here, he would definitely tell him that it was because of his specialty. Warlocks are inherently passionate and unrestrained. As a dragon-veined warlock, Corgi not only has a good skin, but also possesses the lecherous gene of a dragon. With his speciality, he can really range from a primary school girl who has just entered school to a serious girl. The teacher, who never let go of anyone he saw, had the same resemblance to Peter's. If it was just pure lust, that would be it. What made Academy City unbearable was that in the end, he didn't even let go of good-looking boys, and even took the grandson of a certain professor. This is not a corgi, 
It is clearly a Teddy who even slapped the slippers twice. So it was paired here. If he knew about this glorious history, Irving would definitely stay away from him. His current appearance as a young gentleman is too delicious. The senior sister has the most say in this regard. She really holds it in her hand for fear of falling and holds it in her mouth for fear of melting. In addition, although his bottom line has declined, he can at most ignore race and has not yet reached the level of breaking through gender boundaries. How much do you know about the teachers arranged by College City? Owen poured a glass of red wine for Corgi and continued chatting. You mean Professor Mia? Corgi took a sip of the red wine, which unexpectedly suited his taste. But he was still very concerned about Owen's question. Yes, and Amelia, Professor Mia's teacher, is also the main person in charge of the specialty class. Owen had some understanding of the two of them through Kara and Cortana, but it was not comprehensive enough. So he wanted to use the well-informed Corgi added. It's difficult and dangerous. Corgi frowned and said. Professor Mia is full of misdeeds. If it weren't for her uniqueness, she might have been kicked out of the Academy City long ago. However, compared to her teacher, what Professor Mia does cannot be said to be child's play. Nor is it any better. No more specific information? This is similar to what Irving learned and is of little value. Before I came here, I went to find a female professor and spent a day and a night to convince her and get some secret information. Speaking of this, Corgi hesitated. But if it was true, he was afraid he would have to thanks to this big boss. The decision was made. As the only legendary alchemist in Academy City, Amelia has a high status, but she has been closely monitored by Academy City because she wanted to create a god. For this reason, she was imprisoned for several years because she caused big trouble. Kuji drank the red wine in one gulp and said it with some hesitation, because he was not sure whether it was true or not. Because when the female professor said this, her eyes rolled white, her whole body twitched, and she drooled. It doesn't look very reliable. Now Owen understands the reason why teacher Cortana gave her a bunch of self-defense tools. It turns out that not only the students in the specialty class are unreliable, but even the professor is a dangerous person. It seems like the days ahead are not going to be easy for us, Owen said, pouring another glass of wine for Corgi. Corgi smiled bitterly and nodded when he heard this. But he had nothing to do. After all, he had caused too much trouble. Yesterday, he was almost blocked by the husband of a female professor. At least for a long time. He would not dare to do so. Returned to Academy City. While Elle was cooking, Owen went out to help Corgi and the Catwoman sisters build a room. Corgi has no other requirements. Except that the bed must be big. Owen understood immediately and made arrangements for him immediately. The new house not only has a huge round waterbed, but Owen also arranged a swing and a rocking chair for him. And the bathroom even has a massage table with holes. Seeing this, Kajina didn't know that Irving was an old driver wearing a shot. So he immediately gave him a knowing look. Owen simply built the house of the Catwoman sisters on a tree. Anyway, these two are not peaceful. So it would be good to climb more trees to use up their excess energy. In addition, cat climbing frames, cat scratching boards, and wheeled treadmills are all arranged as well as cat teasing sticks, mouse traps, etc., to attract the interest of the cat girls and avoid causing trouble everywhere. While Owen was busy with this, Mia, who was riding a giant mechanical spider, did not return to the college city. Instead, she wandered aimlessly in the mountains, seemingly patrolling and clearing away some hidden dangers. In fact, it was just a realistic robot. The puppet, the real Mia has long been hiding in the dark to meet people. Long time no see. Moretti, you are still so charming. Mia stared at Moretti with blurred eyes. This was true, because not only did Mia's eyes blur, her face was flushed, and her hands were ready to move. If you look at me like this again, I swear I will kill you, Moretti said with an extremely ugly face. Ha ha, that's not what you said when you begged me to repair it. Mia, who was smiling, was breathing a little heavily folding her hands on her chest as if she was enduring something or reminiscing about something, looking at Molly up and down. Mentioned. Stop talking nonsense. You are still being monitored by the Academy City, and I am also facing the pursuit of the Devil's Leader. There is not much time left for us. Molly's early experience gave her a handle to fall into the opponent's hands. I can't take any advantage by talking anymore. So I got down to business. Of course. But I want to make sure first whether what you said is true. 
Do you really have the flesh and blood of the demon lord in your hands? Mia licked her red lips and looked at Moriti with an increasingly perverted look. Asshole! Feeling the familiar gaze, Moriti once again recalled the past when she fell into the hands of this woman. It was really an unbearable past. But she had to ask for help from others. And she could only endure it no matter how aggrieved she was. Don't let her find the opportunity. Otherwise she must let this woman taste the tentacle demon she specially contracted from the abyss. So as to repay what this bastard did to her. In any case, business is more important. After all, Mia has just been released from imprisonment and is still under surveillance in the Academy City. If she is discovered, both of them will be in bad luck. She is even more terrible. It is so easy to snatch food from the head of the devil. There were old grudges. And now there is a new grudge. The head of the devil wants to throw her into the abyss again. So there is not much time left for the two of them. I will analyze these samples carefully to see if they are suitable for you. After looking at them obsessively for a long time, Mia put away the collected samples and said to Moriti, You'd better hurry up. The devil's head is trying to rebuild the devil's gate. Although it lacks the most important head, you can tell from the name of the devil's head that they have spares. Moriti reminded Mia that to know the devil's head, once the door to the main body is reorganized, it will resonate with other parts, and they won't be able to hide it for long. Once they fail, they will have no chance to come back, and whether they can even survive is a question. Repair the devil's gate? Most people can't do it, so we have enough time. Mia didn't expect the devil's head to be so bold and not afraid of attracting Tian Jihan's interference. But rebuilding the devil's gate is so it's easy to do. So he shook his head and said, What if it was your teacher who took action? Moriti said with a sneer. If it's a teacher, it's even more impossible. Mia narrowed her eyes and said, Because the teacher's dream was never about the devil's gate. The devil's head did a very stupid thing. They put a very dangerous thing in the teacher's hands. Mia clenched her fists unconsciously and said to Moriti said seriously, Now I want to notify Academy City. Even I can't predict what the teacher will do next. Mia said with an ugly face. You think too highly of yourself. It doesn't matter what they want to do. As long as they can achieve our goal. Moriti was obviously more realistic. So she said it indifferently. After all, no matter how bad the world becomes, it can still be done. Worse than the abyss. Forget it. Let's not mention the teacher's matter for now. I will inform you when there is news. After counting the time, Mia, who knew that the previous method could not be hidden for long, left. Mori, who was left alone, remained silent and didn't know what she was thinking. No matter how high the risk is, I will personally seek revenge from you. I won't leave you another chance this time. Mori looked to the north and said through gritted teeth. As for who she was talking about, it was self-evident. Chapter 339 The Nature of Elf Dear Lady Owen, who didn't know all this, was hosting a banquet for all the students, under the temptation of fine wine and delicious food. Even the orc huge and the dwarf iron fist joined in. After all, no matter how stubborn the orcs and dwarves were, they couldn't stop the combination of barbecue and fine wine. As an orc, huge naturally doesn't look very good. The green face fangs are an adjective tailor-made for orcs. Although he is not old, due to the rapid growth of orcs, he is already more than two meters tall and his whole body is as strong as a loaf of bread. The muscles, coupled with the two fangs pointing straight up to the sky, would make people believe him when they say he eats children. In fact, Gugu has a pretty good temper, at least among the orcs. He will not swing an axe to kill someone in the street, nor will he raise his fist and break the whole body of the opponent just because he takes a second look. He only does it because he is incompatible with the Academy City. Appears to be taciturn. In fact, Gugu felt more relaxed when he came here. At least no one looked at him strangely here. And the barbecue was delicious. Born in Monster Hunter World, Elcat is best at all kinds of barbecue. Especially the original flavor of large pieces of bone and meat. It is very enjoyable to grab it with both hands. Pick it up and bite it. Gugu is so excited to eat that he can't wait to pick up the axe. Kill several giant beasts to eliminate food. As a dwarf, Iron Fist has a short body and looks stocky especially the arms covered with iron fist gauntlets, which are frighteningly thick. However, compared to barbecue, he prefers the various spirits that Owen brings out. I kept drinking it until it was finished. If there were any water mice in my stomach, I'd probably drown them all. There was food and drink, and with Corgi who was good at livening up the atmosphere and the naughty Catwoman sisters, the scene couldn't calm down at all. After a while, 
Even Owen started to make a fuss and drank a lot of wine. If it hadn't been later, the drunk corgi tried to summon the succubus to perform an interesting dance, but was interrupted by a flush Cortana bursting with water. This party was quite perfect. The next morning, Iron Fist, smelling of alcohol, drew a drawing according to Owen's request. And then he started alchemy and started building the classroom. Because the number of students is too small. The classroom is not big, similar to a puppet class classroom. But it has everything it needs, including teachers' dormitories. It's a pity that everything is ready. But the teacher doesn't come. And a bunch of students look at each other. Owen saw that he had no choice but to stand up on his own. Otherwise everyone would be in a daze. It would be fine for one or two days. But as time went by, the team would disperse. Since the teacher is not here, let's just find something to do that interests us. As long as we are not too far away. In addition, Cortana will apply for a batch of supplies and books. After all, the specialty class is also a class and should have the same treatment. No less. Being sent to this barren mountain and wilderness, it would be a lie to say that he wasn't angry. So Owen's tone was very tough. Of course, Owen would not go against Academy City. So he asked Cortana to do this. As a student of the legendary mage, everyone had to give Cortana some respect when she came forward. Not to mention it was not a big deal. So the materials and books she requested were given the green light and were delivered the same day. And the quantity was beyond imagination. Brother, the resources are provided in accordance with the standards of the advanced alchemy class. Once a month, the books cover most mainstream professions. If there are special requirements, you can add them at any time, Cortana said proudly. Judging from her achievements, Cortana had the right to be proud. So Owen touched her head and took out a handful of wave candies of various flavors as a reward. Next, Owen built a martial arts training ground, a blacksmith shop, a library, a laboratory, a canteen, and a warehouse. Anyway, with alchemy, these were not a problem. They were built one after another, giving the originally barren place some appearance. And Owen also used this to establish prestige. I dare not say that everyone will listen to what they say. At least they are willing to listen if it does not go against their wishes. After all, now he is everyone's big housekeeper. And his food, clothing, housing and transportation are all covered. So he has to give him some face. After letting Ellicat take care of three meals a day, Owen prepared to repair the environment here and get used to the druid profession. Although I don't plan to go into depth in the short term. I at least need to know how to use it. After his experience in the land of nothingness, Owen felt more and more that there were no weak abilities. Only people who couldn't use them. Especially the cooperation between plants and fairies. So he decided to spend some time getting familiar with this profession. However, the druid profession owned by Owen is a little different. Because this profession comes from the world of the dark god of destruction. Which is an apocalypse full of despair. So even professions related to nature are full of tyranny and quick success. He is no longer the picky self he used to be. Irving never accepts all new professions but selectively absorbs them, trying to build his own system. Obviously this is difficult. Even if his intelligence attribute is now as high as 90, it is useless. Because sometimes what is needed is not how fast your brain works, but what kind of inspiration. Just like a computer, the calculation speed is definitely faster than that of humans. But you can let the computer come up with a creative idea. In Owen's understanding, the core of the druid profession is the power of nature. With the help of the power of nature, the druid can transform, summon, and control natural elements. Therefore, a powerful druid is fully worthy of the title of the wrath of nature in a suitable environment. However, if placed in an extreme environment, such as the desert and the void, although the druid will not become a lamb to be slaughtered, it will not turn into a lamb to be slaughtered. How good it is. Therefore, druid is a profession that relies heavily on the environment. And this obviously does not meet Owen's needs. Owen has seen the fairy queen control the power of nature. It is better to say that it is manipulation than guidance. The former will cause consumption, but the latter will not. So he tried to use the power of nature according to the way of fairies. Sow the seeds casually, and then guide the surrounding natural power to let the seeds take root and germinate. However, Owen did not overstimulate the growth. Firstly, it would affect the lifespan of the plants. And secondly, it would deplete the nutrients of the land. This is not natural, nor is it druid, as the places he walked were gradually covered with green and revitalized, and the power of nature gradually increased. 
Owen understood that druids were actually porters of nature. They did not produce the power of nature, but could better use it to make nature more harmonious. Huh? Owen, who was addicted to the way of druidry, looked at the figure not far away in surprise, and then walked over slowly, for fear of disturbing the other party. Owen, the centaur, had seen it before, but this was the first time he saw the half-deer elf. This is probably the new student whose name I have only heard of but not seen, and is called Lou Antler. As expected, he is as his name suggests. His lower body is that of a deer, and his upper body is that of an elf girl. There is also a pair of small, furry antlers on his head. Compared with the centaur girl who is out of reach, the elf deer girl is smaller in size, more delicate, and more naturally dressed. She is completely naked except for leaves and vines. Unfortunately, after only a few words of conversation, Owen gave up, because this is a pure naturalist who rejects all unnatural products, including houses, clothing, and tools. He even believes that man is the biggest enemy of nature, especially if there is no natural environment throughout the year. The cessation of the desire to reproduce is the greatest sin. Because of lack of restraint, the population has exploded and affected the natural balance of the place. Therefore, she advocates that people should follow the pattern of animals and wait for spring to start reproducing. They should also stop using tools and accept the natural rules of the weak and the strong. After hearing this, Owen called him a good guy. He is a knowledgeable person. Really following Lou Edler's idea can indeed effectively improve the relationship between man and nature and completely solve the problem of periodic riots caused by the increase in the empire's population. The problem is that if we really do this, human beings will be far from evolved and everyone will just climb trees and become monkeys. I'm afraid even the elves can't accept this theory because if you don't make progress, other races will definitely eliminate you first after they improve. So Owen hurriedly left letting this person continue to experience the beauty of nature. Chapter 340 Omen of War Owen soon figured out that the so-called specialty class was the sheep herding class, which only took two days a month, and the rest was all self-study. Whether you let the sheep graze or eat enough or eat less depends on your ability. If he had been treated like this at school in his previous life, Irving would probably have been happy to death, and then cried to death after entering society because he couldn't afford to eat, although the class time is short. It is full of useful information. A legendary alchemist and a master alchemist come up with various theories and data. If it were another alchemist here, I would probably kneel down to listen. But for students other than Owen and Cortana, it's just a duck to listen to thunder. What the H, L is this? However, as the course progressed, Owen and Cortana were a little unable to keep up. They were smart. But they couldn't keep up with the relevant knowledge system. It would be very difficult to rashly come into contact with high-end things and it would take a lot of time to fill in the gaps. Cortana can ask the teacher for advice, and Owen also has a group of subordinates. After asking them to help analyze, he can then activate the wisdom spell to copy. In any case, Owen had a lot of time. After several trials, he simply used the poor key to travel to and from the north. Anyway, it did not delay him in collecting knowledge about the Academy City. Even the Hydra Interest Study Group was with him. Gradually grow under the operation. It was just hard for Carl. From time to time, he would be locked into a small dark room by his sister. First, he would be whipped, and then various props would be put on him in turn. Finally, he would be carried back to the alchemy department by a group of strong men in black tights. It became a scene in the academy city. Many students bet on this and even came here to watch. Now Carl finally understands that there is no future in working alone. So he starts looking for someone to join forces. Kara was very pleased with her brother's growth. In order to encourage him, she whipped him harder and even sent him back without a shirt and even oiled him. Think of a group of strong men wearing black tights with bulging protrusions that look like a bunch of grapes. Holding up a handsome man covered in whipped marks and greased with oil and parading through the streets. This scene will make the men look at it, but the women will not be able to leave. Dong Dao. One can imagine how famous Carl is now in Academy City. Now Carl has even given up the revenge of killing his father and just wants to kill Kara. It must be said that Kara succeeded to a certain extent. She succeeded in making her brother forget the hatred of the past. And now only new hatred remains. Owen, who helped with many ideas and provided many props during the process, did not dare to take credit and kept a low profile to prevent others from mistaking him for being a pervert. On the contrary, those Hydra minions are getting more and more arrogant. 
No one likes them when they wear tight clothes or hoods. And they have secretly developed many people. After all, when you are surrounded by perverts, you will not it will look out of place. Owen, who was aware of this, had nothing to do. Although he didn't want to be the leader of a group of perverts. The problem was that he had already reached the point of no return when he made suggestions for Kara. At this time, no matter how much he tried to prove his innocence, it was useless. In desperation, he could only able to hide his identity. He controlled the Hydra Interest Study Group through Kara, Senior Sister, Obadi, and Brody, and set up a grading system like the one-eyed braised egg to try to avoid his identity being discovered. During this period, Owen focused most of his energy on the territory. Because with the implementation of the canonization of the Northland nobles, many forces in the Empire will reach deep into the Northland. Although it has brought many opportunities and accelerated the development of the Northland, it is also it brings countless hidden dangers and disputes, such as competition for population and resources. Nowadays, the Empire's borders are wide open, allowing landless farmers and wealth-hungry merchants in the Empire to enter the Northland. However, the vast and sparsely populated Northland has no end to its desire for population. This is very realistic, because both land development and military training require a large population to support each other. Therefore, competition for population at the borders of the empire often occurs. Owen's territory has not had a large influx of refugees for a long time. Only a small number of people came with the caravan, which shows how fierce the competition for population is. If the competition for population is fierce, then the competition for resources is fierce. The Northland has no shortage of resources, especially mineral deposits. Previously, due to limited manpower and material resources, these mineral veins could only sleep underground, because it was more important to cultivate the land to feed oneself than to dig these mines, because the environment in the Northland was such that you could not even buy gold bricks to eat. But with the influx of a large number of refugees into the Northland and the officially canonized Northland nobles, these mines have gained value. Nobles have the qualifications and ability to mine veins and turn them into wealth. The problem is that some territories have barren iron mines, some have fine copper mines, and some have crazy gold mines. So conflicts and disputes arise. This kind of contradiction and dispute is irreconcilable. You have me or you don't have me. Whatever you want to do, you can only rob it. If you are not willing to be robbed, you can only resist desperately. So war appears as the old earls of the north. Farrier and Solari are also having a hard time now. They are also facing provocations from emerging forces. Their original monopoly on furs and horses in the north is beginning to be shaky. These two things are the foundation of their territory. Once there is a problem, collapse is not far away. So they can only fight whoever touches the other until no one touches them. The empire turned a blind eye to the turmoil in the north. How could they have the chance to intervene if there was no chaos? Moreover, the Empire would not intervene in the fights between nobles unless mediation was needed. And not all nobles were qualified to have the Empire mediate. At least not it must be the first level of Earl. The troubles don't stop there. Through the Black Hands Intelligence Network, Owen learned that Sylvia's father, Grand Duke Macaron, had finally taken action. However, because he was in the Academy City and exposed the blood of the Elf Royal family, he did not dare to overly. Secretly, he guided an undercurrent against Bei Chung. At the same time, Sylvia also received a letter from her father, asking her to leave Owen's bloodline. Simply put, it was to improve the family's bloodline by leaving seeds. Grand Duke Macaron dared to think that a witch with the blood of the elf royal family might be as good as a demigod in some aspects. If these are just hidden dangers that have not yet broken out, then the sudden drop in temperatures in the Northland this year is the prelude to a large-scale war. Not even halfway through autumn. A shallow layer of white snow has covered most places in the north. This is not a good omen for a good harvest, but a sign that many people will die. The further north you go, the colder and barren it becomes, and the food becomes scarcer. If Owen hadn't cheated, there wouldn't be so much fertile farmland in the north city. In contrast, the barbarians in the north rely entirely on the sky for food, so they must store enough food to last a whole winter before winter. If one person loses food, one person will die. If there is less food for ten people, ten people will die. That is so cruel. Therefore, once faced with the problem of insufficient food, the barbarians in the north had no choice but to hunt or plunder. However, large-scale cooling has made hunting more difficult. In contrast, going south to plunder has become their only option. Chapter 341 Arms and Food 
in the underground armaments warehouse in Beicheng. A large number of standard muskets with a glossy oil were neatly packed in boxes and fixed by wooden strips. Next to them were customized ammunition and maintenance kits that had already been packed in boxes. These were to be sent to Farrier and Solari, along with small caliber artillery and a large number of civilian muskets, the former for his own use and the latter for sale. Originally, Owen had many concerns and did not dare to sell firearms in large quantities. But after traveling to the Empire, he discovered that the Empire was fragmented. The real upper class never cared about firearms issues, and those who cared often did not have the right to change anything. Taking Academy City as an example, if you are willing, you can complete preliminary industrialization within half a year. Upgrade technology to the 1950s and 1960s within a year. And some technologies can even reach the level of science fiction movies. By then, not to mention guns and cannons, aircraft, tanks, and rockets can be manufactured. The only question is how much it will cost to mass produce. Manufacturing and energy production are two different things. The former requires a laboratory, but the latter requires a complete industrial system. They are not of the same order of magnitude at all. However, Irving never dared to underestimate the empire. With the accumulation of thousands of years in Academy City alone, he didn't know how deep the foundation was. The power of the empire is the reason why Owen dares to sell firearms to the entire Northland. Because the real people in power don't care. Of course, it's just a firearm. If Owen really dares to create aircraft, tanks, missiles, satellites, etc. on a large scale, the Empire will definitely not let him go. Because this level of equipment can already pose a huge threat to the Empire. And with a bunch of legends sitting in charge is a serious problem for one's confidence. Firearms are now another major product sold by Bei Chung to the outside world besides food and ironware. And the profits are very high. The reason is very simple. Because although most of the Northland Lords have people behind them, it is impossible to get the other party's full support. Even if it is given to them, they dare not ask for it all. Otherwise, they will be completely ignored in minutes. Although it is all pushed out by the forces behind it. Anyone who does not want to be independent will naturally be wary. At the same time, the chaotic and fierce competition environment in the North makes it difficult for them to have a lot of time to train professional soldiers. Therefore, training short-formed and fast musketeers has become their best choice. Once a large-scale army is formed, without professional interference, under such circumstances, the chance of winning against an ordinary army is very high. So even if the cost is higher, they are willing to pay. Farrier and Solari also faced the same problem. Before the mining industry really took shape or made a lot of profits, their monopoly of fur and livestock were the two most valuable industries in the north. So they faced more challenges. There are many. So they must improve their strength in the shortest possible time. Otherwise they will face the fate of being eliminated. The two of them have even prepared for the worst. If the territory really cannot be defended, they will choose to completely surrender to Owen, although they cannot retain the title of Earl. What do they need the title if the territory is gone? Owen was well aware of the two's plans, but he had no intention of forcing them. Instead, he strongly supported the two to expand their strength. The reason for this is that Irving does not only see immediate benefits. After traveling with the Empire, he knew very well that in the absence of foreign enemies, the Empire was his biggest enemy. Even if there was no conflict now, it did not mean that there would be peace in the future. Therefore, in addition to Mara Town, he also needed to establish an empire on the border of the empire. In the buffer zone, Farrier and Solari are obviously suitable. So he will not interfere unless necessary and will strongly support their development. Before autumn was over, another snow fell in the Northland. Compared with the first gauze-like shallow layer, this time the snow was thicker and the temperature did not rise much after the snow stopped. On the contrary, there was a tendency to gradually decrease, and large dark clouds gathered over the Northland, which felt like they were being suppressed at any time. This made Owen feel a little heavy, because he knew what this meant. Not only did Owen see the hidden crisis, some smart northern nobles also noticed something. Especially with the arrival of the second snow, they not only accelerated the harvest of crops in the territory, but also placed a lot of food orders for the caravan, as the only place in the north that can export food. Beicheng has also received many orders. But whether to sell in large quantities depends on Owen's decision. Not even Maya can make the decision for him. Holding the material reserve data sent by Maya, Owen fell into deep thought. Even if the food in the territory is sold every year, it is still in a state of surplus. Firstly, the amount sold each year is actually limited. 
And secondly, there is super farmland in Green Shadow Town. So the food output is beyond ordinary people's imagination. Some of these grains were used as war reserves. Some were sold. And some were used to make wine. But after years of accumulation, the inventory was still very alarming. And many early grain stocks were already at critical points. This year's new grain production has been reduced by three levels. It seems that other nobles will have a difficult time in the future. Owen said while rubbing his chin. Nor City has complete planting technology and water conservancy facilities. And can even use steam machinery for farming and harvesting. Even so, the production will be reduced by three levels. If it were replaced by other northern nobles. Even if the territory is closer to the south and the temperature is higher. The autumn harvest will be halved. It's a foregone conclusion. And some even can't even collect the seeds. In this case, survival is a problem. After all, the vast majority of the Northland nobles are newcomers and have not yet established a foothold in the Northland. Most of their consumption depends on the assistance of internal forces in the empire. They have no reserves and can only rely on buy. New grain is used as a reserve and the old grain that is approaching its expiration date is sold. The price of grain increases by 50%. Anyway, they have no room for pickiness. Owen doesn't care about this profit, but he must do this because Northland, no, the entire of the empire cannot tolerate a benevolent lord. Because mercy represents weakness and hesitation. So he can be cruel and greedy. But he cannot be kind or merciful. Even if he knows that restricting food sales will kill many people. In addition, tell them that they can exchange their people for food. Give them some discounts. And encourage them to do so. In the end, Owen finally opened up. Allowing the northern nobles to exchange the people who could not feed themselves for life-saving food. Sure enough, He's still too kind. Irving's labeling of himself as kind is not to put money on his face. Because those northern nobles really think that he is a kind person. Because the food they buy from other places is not as good as what they buy in the North City. Most of the food sold by caravans to the north comes from warehouses on the border of the empire. It is old food that has been stored for many years. Due to poor preservation. Mold and deterioration are common. It is not uncommon for the sand, gravel, and mouse droppings to be mixed in more than the food. However, the price is still relatively low. It was very expensive, which made the northern nobles, who bought it full of complaints. Of course they don't eat this stuff. But if the people eat this kind of food, not only will it be difficult for them to get enough nutrition, but they will also be more likely to get sick. And getting sick in the cold winter means death. In the vast and sparsely populated Northland, the population is far less cheap than in the already saturated empire. So these northern lords feel distressed. In contrast, although the grain sold in Bei Chung is also old grain, except for the worst taste, it is very well preserved. And because it is very dry, it is easier to store than new grain. So it is more popular. Chapter 342 Barbarian Kingdom From today on, the territory begins to prepare for war. The food will be made into easy-to-eat dry food, as well as muskets and ammunition, and will be distributed according to the quantity per person in each household. Owen put down the data he had read many times over and over. Maya said, These territories have been doing this. And the proportion of private firearms has reached one-third. Almost all adult males own one or two muskets. Maya does not need to think. These data come out of her mouth. As for so many muskets flowing into the private sector whether it would cause unrest. Neither Owen nor Maya ever worried. Well, continue to strengthen it. In a real fight, one or two muskets are not enough. Owen nodded and said, then stood up and walked to the sand table to look at the model of Bei Chung, which still showed its majesty even if it was shrunk. After admiring it for a moment, he continued speaking of, in terms of city defense, leave it to Howard and his sons to choose a suitable place in the city to build an artillery position. The range of the new cannon is enough to attack enemies outside the city without occupying the limited space of the city wall. At the same time, let them recruit troops into the city. The soldiers are conducting the first training session and trying to increase more combat effectiveness in a short period of time. Owen is preparing for a rainy day. After all, he cannot predict whether the territory will encounter a war or how big the scale of the war will be. The unknown makes him cautious and cautious. He cherishes his life. Only by cherishing his life can he live long. In addition, Mara Town must be vigilant and replenish resources in time. Our enemies are never just the barbarians in the north. After casting his eyes on the Lord's territories scattered throughout the central part of the Northland, Owen said quietly, He has not forgotten it. 
Grand Duke Macaron has done a lot of tricks in the north, and is still thinking about his seeds. You must be wary of this old bastard, who wants to be beautiful. Okay. The relevant materials will be delivered within two days. Maya said confidently. Because of the existence of witches, space pockets, and flood networks, the territory's material delivery in the Northland is faster than imagined. If it weren't for Beichang at the same time, supplies are also needed. And the supplies needed by Mara Town can be delivered in three hours. Next, the two of them gathered Howard and Emily to discuss the details, made some additions, and made several plans. Military reorganization and training. The establishment of new artillery battalions. Emergency training of conscripts. Mobilization of combat readiness supplies. Construction of field hospitals. And last-minute emergency evacuation. Etc. These all need to be formulated with reasonable execution plans. Otherwise it will become chaos. Group. In addition. Long-distance reconnaissance. Peripheral strongholds. Urban defense construction. Emergency mobilization etc. also need to be perfected little by little. Otherwise if something goes wrong, not just one or two people will die. Although Owen has many trump cards in his hand, he is still not 100% sure against the declining Northland Barbarians. Because although the Northland Barbarians have incomplete inheritance, who can guarantee that they will not have legendary combat power or even retain the demigod level? Trump card. After being able to fight against the Empire for so long, Owen did not believe that the Northern Barbarians had completely degenerated into a group of savages. As for whether Owen's guess is correct, he will not choose to take risks anyway. Although the territory responded in time, the invasion of the Northern Barbarians was faster than Owen imagined. After all, the shamans of the Barbarian tribe were not vegetarians. They had long expected this year's snow disaster. But before the snow disaster came, not even the shaman can convince everyone with empty words. Fortunately, it's not too late now. The food originally stored for the winter is now used as dry food for plundering south. As long as they kill the imperial southern barbarians who invaded the north, they will not only get enough food for the winter, but also a large number of tools and sophisticated tools, weapons and slaves, forced by the cold, under the threat of death, and under the temptation of booty. One after another the northern barbarian tribes began to move south, and more and more of them gathered. In the process of gathering, these barbarians use the blabbering prophecies of shamans and gods and their fists to determine the right to speak and form a larger group. They continue to grow like a snowball, with thousands of them moving south. At this time, they relied solely on the food reserves and did not need to consider the issue of hunting. Otherwise, it would be difficult to form such a large scale. However, this would be a disaster for the northern nobles, who were still in the early stages of development. Owen Sue received the news. Because the Buffalo tribe has been quite popular among the barbarians in the north these years. Iron pots, battle axes, salt, and spirits are enough to make any northern barbarian put down his fists and choose friendship. After all, the heavily armed barbarian heavy infantry of the Buffalo tribe are not easy to mess with at first sight. And when he realized that the war was coming, Owen allocated a large amount of food to the bison tribe and asked them to exchange the food for furs, gold, silver and gems from the Northland barbarians. Therefore, the Northland barbarian tribes around the bison tribe did not lack for winter of food. So it was not so easy to make the decision to go south. Another reason is that the excellent conditions of the bison tribe have attracted many northern barbarians to join. These northern barbarians are related to the surrounding barbarian tribes. In addition, they have always been generous and do not lower the price of materials in exchange. The relationship is very harmonious. Therefore, as long as the bison tribe did not relent, those tribes would not forcefully pass through the bison tribe's territory and go south. After all, they could still distinguish between a full meal and food. I just don't know how long they can hold on. Once the northern barbarians who go south are full of food, these tribes will definitely not be able to sit still. But if the barbarians heading south were beaten to death, Owen would have the opportunity to make a plan. However, things did not go so smoothly. First, as the barbarian tribes gathered in the north, information circulated with each other allowing Owen to know a lot of important information, such as the existence of the Barbarian Kingdom. Not to mention Owen. I am afraid that even the Empire does not know that a Barbarian Kingdom has appeared in the North. This is not because the Barbarians in the North have done a good job of keeping secrets, but because the news circulates too slowly. The Northern Barbarians exist in the form of tribes, and each has its own activity range, and this range represents the source of food and living space. 
so no one is allowed to infringe. This results in the circle of the northern barbarians being very close, sometimes hundreds of people. What happened inside and outside could not be reported for decades. Not to mention that this barbarian kingdom was not within the scope of the barbarian tribe. It was also at this time that Owen learned that the northern barbarians, who migrated north were divided into two parts. Mainly because of the existence of the North Boundary River. The Northern Boundary River originates from the mountains in the far north and flows downstream from the center of the Northland. However, when it reaches the center of the Northland, it suddenly flows sideways eastward and passes through the Devil's Horn Forest, like the two hands pointing to a quarter past twelve on a clock. They divide the Northland. Because of the strange flow direction of the North Boundary River, the northern half of the Northland was actually divided into two parts. When the barbarians move north, some chose to go up the North Boundary River to the west, and some chose to cross the river and go north to the east. The former group became more and more united because they were constantly being pursued by the Imperial Frontier Army. Even though the Imperial Frontier Army never came, they did not completely disperse because of their habits. They also learned to herd and plant, and slowly evolved into a barbarian kingdom. As for the barbarians who crossed the river, because the North Boundary River served as a natural barrier, they continued to live as tribes according to ancient traditions. Compared with the two, the former is obviously a greater threat. However, due to its geographical location, Owen's territory is located in the middle of the Northland to the east. Therefore, even if the barbarian kingdom goes south, the two sides will be one to the east and one to the west. Unless they take a special deeter, they will not meet at all. Even if the northern barbarian tribes cross the river, Owen's territory will not bear the brunt. Unless someone causes trouble. Chapter 343 Barbarians Go South The sudden drop in temperature has brought the dry season of the North Boundary River ahead of schedule. After all, the main water source of the North Boundary River comes from melting glaciers. So the river water surges in summer and halves in winter. If you are not afraid of hypothermia and freezing to death, you can still cross the river, knowing that the river was freezing cold, but driven by natural disasters and death. The Northern Barbarians, old and young, resolutely chose to cross the river. There was no turning back for them. A large number of barbarian tribes headed south one by one. In this huge group, the individual fears fundamentally changed. Nothing but the North Boundary River, which has been washed away by glacial frozen water all year round, is too wide, too deep, and too cold. Even if they deliberately choose the shallowest place to cross the river, the water is still up to their thighs. The shallow water also means that the river is wider so they need to walk in the water. The longer journey consumes more energy, especially the young and strong people who are carrying the tribe's supplies and leading the livestock. It is even more difficult to move. There is no spare time to help the old and weak of the tribe, because they have to go back and forth more than once. Taking all the tribe's belongings, bring supplies and livestock, because once they lose these, they will starve and freeze to death before natural disasters take their lives. The contact with the cold water makes people feel like it is almost a solid smoothie. Everyone can clearly feel the cold spreading rapidly on the body. The most terrifying thing is that the cold continues to penetrate deeper, making the muscles and bones feel stinging and the blood becomes. The coldness makes the body gradually weak. The frail old man fell first, with his back to the sky, his upper body floating on the river, and his legs hanging down, like a broken dead tree flowing down the current. He looked lonely and helpless. But those who were still alive had already there was no more strength to grieve. In order to survive and for hope, they tried their best to move. Moving tents, food, weapons, and livestock. The most precious things of the tribe. Safely across the river. The children, who are half the size of a horse's belly, are also working hard. The northern barbarians continued to move south. Even though many old people and children died as a result. They did not stop. When they decided to go south, death was already doomed. And if they could not plunder enough food, those who died due to natural disasters would there will be more. Owen's territory is not on the main route of the Northland barbarians going south. But it is not far away. Because the river near the Devil's Horn Forest is wider. So the water flow is gentle. Suitable for crossing the river. If it is not for the Buffalo tribe in front, Bei Chung will face the Northern barbarians heading south. But as more and more Northern barbarians move south, Bei Chung was still exposed a city close to the North Boundary River. Most of the Northern Barbarians didn't know what it meant. However, there were also wise men and radicals among the Northern Barbarians. They planned to gather enough people to conquer this city of the Southern Barbarians of the Empire. In fact, 
it is not cost-effective to attack Beicheng. But the barbarian wise men found that Beicheng's geographical location will pose a huge threat to them. Whether they attack or return with loot, Beicheng can attack and intercept them at any time. So a group of barbarian shamans came forward to communicate with each other, made the decision to capture Beicheng. In fact, this is also related to interests. After all, Beicheng is very wealthy at first glance. Many people may die if they attack it. But the distance is short. And the harvest after the attack is enough for them to return immediately. By then, before other barbarian tribes have come back, they can completely expand their territory and occupy more areas of their prey. Two to three thousand strong northern barbarians were standing there holding the best weapons of the tribe. The shamans were busy applying paint, a mixture of animal oil and herbs on their bodies, applying them according to some ancient pattern, while mouthing mutter the words and let the smeared pattern glow faintly. This is the ability of the barbarian shaman. With the help of totems, herbs, and the power of nature, the tribal warriors are blessed, making these barbarian warriors stronger, faster, more durable, and more fearless. It is said that the legendary shaman used this skill to strengthen a dozen barbarian warriors to the legendary level in one war, almost causing the empire's army to collapse. Today's barbarian shamans are no longer as glorious as they once were, but it is enough to strengthen ordinary barbarian warriors. The barbarian warriors, with their blood boiling and steam rising from their heads, were eager to try. But the ones leading the charge were not the most elite and precious barbarian warriors of these tribes, but a group of old barbarians. Because of the lack of civilization, except for shamans, the old people are of little significance to the tribe. Once they lose their hunting ability, they will gradually become a burden to the tribe. Therefore, every year, some old and frail barbarian old men walk into the wind alone, in the snow, Repay the kindness of nature with your body. But this year is different. And their sacrifices will have even more significance. More than a thousand barbarian elders slowly move their hands and feet to restart the declining energy and blood. At the same time, they drank the blood wine brought by the tribal shaman without changing their expressions. This thing is a mixture of herbs and animal blood. After being blessed by a shaman, it can deeply stimulate the potential of barbarians, allowing the drinker to gain the strength of an ox and the speed of a wolf at the cost of being weak for several days. But this price is for the young and strong barbarian guys. For these barbarian old men, it is like the last bowl of wine. But they still drink it without hesitation. Just to let more barbarian warriors live. Because the tribe needs these young people. At this time, Beicheng was also preparing for war. Because there were too many barbarians, and tens of thousands of people gathered there. Irving did not dare to follow his previous idea and let the villagers gather in the Mujai earthen fortress to resist layer by layer. And all of them retreated into the city. Although this made Beicheng crowded, it did not appear chaotic because of the system's population obeying orders, and instead provided more sufficient manpower and material resources. Facing the crucial battle in his life, Howard did not panic at all, because he knew very well how strong the territory was. The army he commanded alone was enough to fight against ten times the Imperial Frontier Army. Not to mention that all the adult men in the territory were strong. They are trained reservists. Even women are proficient in the art of loading ammunition and can go to the battlefield when necessary. And Howard knew very well that he only controlled the superficial power of the territory. And the real ace never showed up. Sufficient confidence allowed Howard to deploy his troops calmly, showing the style of a general. And his men also lived up to their expectations. Baron Charles, who was the first to receive the order, led his elite musketeers to the city wall. These elite musketeers lined up were equipped with high-quality muskets. Each one was carefully crafted. Not only did the range of the attack be greatly improved, but the accuracy was also improved. It is also much better than ordinary muskets. In the hands of elite musketeers, it can accurately hit wild wolves 300 meters away. For muskets, this is already an incredible achievement. After the elite musketeers, who climbed onto the city wall took their respective positions. They skillfully took out the fixed charges and completed the loading. The whole process only took about 20 seconds, and even including aiming and shooting. It only took less than half a minute. This rate of fire made everyone understand. What is professional? However, given the size of the northern city, it was obviously not enough to have a thousand people on one wall. The second and third battalions, which had also been strengthened, also climbed onto the city wall as ordered. Compared with the 1st Battalion, which is all elite musketeers, the 2nd and 3rd Battalions also have their own characteristics. The characteristic of the 2nd Battalion is its fierceness. 
All members are composed of big-bodied gunmen. The gunmen use short-handled muskets about three feet long with a large caliber. They mainly fire shotguns and single-point bullets. The power is not small. But the maximum its characteristic is that an axe blade is installed under the muzzle, which can be swung like a tomahawk. It also carries four grenades with it, which is a good hand for breaking through enemy camps. The specialty of the 3rd Battalion is artillery. Artillery of large and small calibers make them the most powerful fire support on the battlefield. Chapter 344 The First Round of Testing At this time, more than a thousand old barbarians who drank blood wine felt that their hearts, which had begun to weaken, were beating faster and faster. Although it brought a lot of pressure to the body, the gradually warming blood allowed them to regain the feeling they had before. Just like an old car. After being fully warmed up, it may not be impossible to take a lap around Mount Akina without any unnecessary movements or words. These old barbarians carried weapons and stepped onto the farmland that had been harvested at a moderate speed. They were in groups of three or five in the open fields. They cooperated tacitly and kept a certain distance from each other, just like hunting, running towards the most powerful prey they have encountered in their lives. The behemoth like North City dominates the earth. The tall walls are its carapace, and the soldiers who are waiting are its minions. Any enemy who dares to offend will face the wrath of guns and cannons. As they ran in small steps, the old barbarians were getting closer and closer to the tall city wall of the North City. Although they were amazed by the height of the city wall, they did not hesitate in their steps because they had accepted their fate. This made those who saw the scene through the telescope Howard was shocked. The old barbarians are not weak. In fact, they are only in their forties. However, the cruel environment in the north has exhausted their potential and lifespan in advance. Therefore, if they really fight to the death, their combat effectiveness cannot be underestimated. This made Howard more vigilant. Don't be careless. Fortunately, the old barbarians had not experienced much war. The experience they relied on was hunting and fighting with barbarians from other tribes. Therefore, the beginning was okay. But as they approached, they unconsciously got closer to each other. This was also a cold weapon. The characteristic of the era is that only by uniting and concentrating can the greatest combat effectiveness be exerted. It can be said that the skirmisher line is completely seeking death in the cold weapon era. The same is true even for firearms troops. Before the invention of breech-loading rifles and machine guns, a tight and strict formation was also the secret to victory. When the first group of old barbarians stepped into the 100-meter limit, Howard raised the sword in his hand, and all the elite musketeers raised their guns uniformly, aiming at the opponent directly in front. As the sword fell, dense gunshots rang out on the city wall. As the cold wind blew away the gunpowder smoke, the elite musketeers did not look at the target at all, but loaded ammunition step by step. At this time, three to four hundred old barbarians had fallen a hundred meters away from the city wall. Although some of them were not killed on the spot, the bullets that penetrated the flesh were not arrows. These things could easily get lost in the body. A shot in the shoulder would cause the bullet to escape from the butt. It is not impossible to come out. Not to mention that this thing will break. So it is almost impossible for the barbarian to stop the bleeding and heal the injury through traditional means. And the heavy blood loss also made the blood of the old barbarian man, who had finally warmed up quickly become cold. If it were an ordinary army, it would have been defeated due to panic. But the old barbarian, who had long been determined to die only panic for a moment and then launched the final charge in unison. As the distance got closer, the barbarian old man threw out the wooden spear and stone axe in his hand, and began to climb up the city wall without stopping for a moment. The more powerful the enemy is, the more they have to charge forward, allowing the enemy to show off their methods and allowing the barbarians in the rear to see more clearly. This is the meaning of their existence. Elite musketeers are equipped with steel helmets, breastplates, shoulder pads and leggings. Although they are thin and light, they are enough to withstand wooden spears and stone axes. Even if they are hit with a bloody head, it will not affect their continued fighting. Facing the barbarian old man's charge with death intent, Howard showed no mercy. After completing the second round of shooting, he asked the elite musketeers to retreat and let the axe gunners take the lead. The already impatient axe gunner smiled ferociously, aimed at the head of the old barbarian who was about to climb up the city wall, and pulled the trigger, one round after another, the single-head bullet exploded into flowers of flesh and blood, taking away lives along the way. There was no need to reload at all. Ammo. Pick up the gun and axe and start slashing. There are no carriages or long ladders. 
It is not so easy to climb the city wall with just two hands. Even if you barely have one hand free. You don't dare to wield your weapon forcefully because it is easy to fall from the city wall several meters high. In desperation. Next. The few hundred old barbarians, who were still alive could only retreat. As a result, the elite musketeers, who stepped forward to take over took away many more people with a volley of fire. After one charge, only three to five hundred of the more than a thousand old barbarians returned alive. Such a terrifying killing efficiency made all the barbarians look unhappy. The oldest shaman sat in front of the fire, without looking at the ferocious-looking corpse. He put his finger into the wound without expression, held it for a long time, and took out a deformed projectile. It's a musket from the southern barbarians of the empire. It's more lethal than a crossbow. But the rate of fire is slower, and it can't penetrate water. The old shaman handed the projectile in his hand to the shaman next to him, and asked them to pass it around. Then he casually grabbed a handful of dirt, wiped the blood off his hands, and continued, But the Empire has long since abolished the equipment of muskets in the army. Only the Empire's frontier troops retain some artillery. How could they encounter organic musketeers here? Great shaman, the destructive power of muskets is too great. Even the strongest barbarian warriors cannot withstand the concentrated fire of muskets. How should we deal with these muskets of the southern barbarians of the Empire? A shaman looked at the blood-stained projectiles with a look on his face. He said a little ugly. After all, more than a thousand old barbarians almost died without resisting a few rounds of shooting. I noticed that each musket attack is separated by three to five breaths, and the range is only a stone's throw away. Therefore, as long as the warrior runs fast enough, he only needs to withstand one attack. As for the city wall, you can carry a lasso in advance to facilitate climbing. Another and observant shaman said this, and other shamans immediately agreed. That's good, but we need more warriors to spread the news and let more barbarian tribes gather. The great shaman nodded first and then said, Although I don't want more tribes to divide the spoils. The great shaman is recognized as a wise man by the barbarians in the north, and the weight of his words is not low. What's more, these shamans can't find any reason to object, and recalling that it was a massacre just now seen. They also felt that they would be more confident in gathering more people to fight together, because there were many barbarians going south. Within a few days, the number of barbarians outside the city exceeded 30,000. They even invited the bison tribe to participate, but they were rejected. Your Excellency, Great Shaman, the Buffalo tribe refused. They are not trustworthy and must have colluded with the imperial southern barbarians in the city. A shaman in charge of recruitment said firmly to the Great Shaman after returning from the Buffalo tribe. Of course they are related, but they are not untrustworthy. Although the great shaman is very old, he is not an old fool. He knows very well what a barbarian tribe established on the other side of the northern boundary river means. Asking people to ask is just to determine the other party's attitude and position. Being polite, but distant means that the other party is related to the city in front of you, but not to the extent of being an ally. In fact, this is impossible. Even if the northern barbarians want to find an imperial southern barbarian as an ally, they will only get betrayed. This is the lesson that the northern barbarians have learned for countless years. Therefore, they can do business, trade, and even be hired. But only there will be no alliance. So as long as they can win, there will be no obstacles. If they lose, the Buffalo tribe will become their last resort. Chapter 345 Barbarians and Guns Death is scary, but it cannot stop the barbarians. As long as they can get enough harvest, no barbarian will be afraid of death. The harsh living environment taught the Northland barbarians how to adapt to death early on. In fact, from the day the Northland barbarians were born, they were fighting against death. So they had already learned to face death calmly in order to survive. What's more, war makes people grow up. The Northern barbarian warriors, who are accustomed to hunting lightly now, put on heavy leather jackets sewn with multiple layers of fur. In addition to weapons, they also carry shields although they are only covered on fixed wooden bars, with several layers of animal skin. The defense is still good, which makes them full of confidence in this war, especially the number of barbarians in the north. In addition to the 3,000 old barbarians who serve as the vanguard, there are also 5,000 barbarian warriors and thousands of barbarian recruits. They are the past, backbone and future of the tribe. Now they will join the battle together. Great shaman, the ancestor altar has been prepared and all the shamans and ancestor warriors have gathered there. A middle-aged shaman said respectfully to the great shaman, who was sitting in front of the fire and wandering around. 
The great shaman was too old. It took him a while to wake up. He nodded when he heard the words, then stood up unsteadily with the help of his cane and said to the middle-aged shaman, The enemy in front of us cannot be underestimated. We need the power of our ancestors to ensure that we can win the final victory. As long as we can win, it will be worth what we are paying now. In the final analysis, the great shaman is not confident enough. After all, the barbarians in the north are too far away from civilization. It's been too long. And I've stayed in the same place for too long. When humans use stone axes, barbarians also use stone axes. When humans picked up bronze swords, barbarians were still using stone axes. While humans forged steel, barbarians still use stone axes. When the wise men among the barbarians realized this, they tried to change. The result was an unprecedented war with humans, which not only interrupted the evolution of the barbarians, but also almost cut off the original inheritance of the barbarians. So this time when going south, in addition to plundering food and tools, what the great shaman values most is the population and craftsmen of the southern barbarians of the empire. As long as they plunder enough slaves, they will get a steady stream of food and weapons. Even if these are not made by the barbarians themselves, can also make up for the shortcomings of the barbarians. So there is no room for failure in this battle. The ancestral altar made of clay is filled with all kinds of sacrificial supplies. The spices that are not used in daily life are piled up like firewood and lit. In the smoke, the great shaman raises his hands high, leading all the shamans to look toward nature and all things, praying to the ancestors and giving strength to the warriors of the tribe in front of him. For the tribe! The great shaman roared at the top of his lungs, awakening the blood of all the barbarians. They followed the warriors among the barbarians on the journey. Only the ancestor warriors remained to pray to their ancestors. The longer they prayed, the more they obtained their ancestors, the more blessings there are the more powerful they will be. And they will be the most crucial part of this war. Owen had already released the one eye giant eagle. And there was more than one, projecting a 30-mile radius of the North City onto the sand table. At this time, he had a god's perspective and fully grasped the maneuvers of both sides, so he could clearly see the changes in the barbarians. With just one trial, the northern barbarians mastered many techniques for siege. In addition to being equipped with heavy leather jackets and shields, they also carried hooks and long ladders which were divided into three parts. The old barbarian took thousands of new barbarian soldiers and divided them into two, and came to the two wings of the North City to launch an attack. This would involve many troops in the North City, because if they were not careful, the barbarians would rush up the city wall. By then, the advantage of firearms would be wiped out, and instead, they would fall into disadvantages. For this reason, Howard divided the three battalions into mixed groups and handed them over to Baron Charlie. Night Monk, and Night Kayla respectively. They each led a group of recruited musketeers to garrison the other three city walls, while he led the city defense troops to resist the main force of the barbarians. As the commander of the city defense army, Hogg automatically became Howard's deputy, and the father and son fought together today. When the troops in Beicheng were mobilized, the barbarian warriors did not stop. They were like a torrent, trampling the originally fluffy farmland as hard as stone. The momentum was so great that the expressions of Howard and his son changed slightly. These barbarian warriors are not old and weak. Each one is at the peak of his life. He is over 2 meters tall, weighs more than 300 kilograms, has a thick frame and well-developed muscles. When he runs, he looks like a migrating buffalo herd. Fortunately, it was a city defense battle. If it were a field battle, even if Howard was given the same number of firearms troops, he would not be sure of victory. The cannon battalion fires. The huge momentum of the barbarian warriors made Howard immediately realize that the enemy did not test this time and plan to defeat them in a single fight. So he no longer had the idea of holding back or luring the enemy deeper. Following Howard's order, the 50-12-pound cannons placed in the open space behind the city wall roared immediately. Not long after, the same sound of cannons also sounded on both sides of the North City. But there was no momentum here. After all, the entire 50 of the 80 12-pound cannons in the North City are here. In the gushing and spreading smoke, the explosive bullets crossed the city wall and streaked across the sky, falling on the charging path of the barbarian warriors, and then released flowers of death to plunder the lives around them. Explosive bombs are nothing compared to the technology of today's territory. However, due to cost considerations, the SH LS are not filled with black glue, but with a high-quality and cheap magic corn tree powder mixture. It is more powerful than black powder, 
but it is it's not too strong. The effective killing range of each one is 30 to 50 meters. Unfortunately, the shockwave weakened too quickly, and there were not enough SH. L fragments. Otherwise the effective damage would be at least 100 meters away. But even so, a round of SH. Ling would take away at least 3 to 500 people. The barbarian warriors who encountered SH. Ling for the first time did not panic for too long. After being blessed by the shaman, they not only gained stronger strength and faster speed, but also shielded themselves from fear and pain. As long as they could not be killed, they would they will continue to fight. Even if they become weak afterwards. But as long as they can win, they will win. The power of the cannon is good, but the longer barrel makes reloading a troublesome task. And a second round of bombardment cannot be carried out in a short period of time. However, there is never a shortage of artillery in the North City. After the enemy steps into the shooting range, the 8-pounder cannon on the city wall emplacement roars. The power of the 8-pounder cannon's SH. LS is smaller, but it can hold up in large numbers and has a fast rate of fire. Especially the multiple unit cannon. As long as the multiple unit cannons are not exhausted, the rate of fire of this thing is faster than that of a musket. After a lot of bombardment, the dense barbarian charging formation became full of pits and pits. If the barbarians had not already taken the lead and charged with all their heart, they would have been in chaos. But when the great shaman at the back saw this, his heart went cold and he had a bad premonition. When our warriors rushed to the city wall, immediately let the ancestor warriors go into battle. The great shaman ordered a little tiredly. The surrounding shamans nodded and kept their eyes on the battlefield because they also noticed the battle situation and did not imagine it. So optimistic. Now the southern barbarians of the empire are like this. Although a shaman did not finish his words, everyone knew what the last two words were. Powerful. Yes, no matter how much you don't want to admit it, the brave barbarian warriors suffered such heavy casualties before they even got close to the enemy. If the opponent had more firearms, wouldn't it mean that they wouldn't even have a chance to fight in close combat? Having lost the chance of close combat, what can the barbarian warriors do no matter how strong they are? Chapter 346 Life-Saving Straw At this time, the musketeers on the city wall also started their hunting. Compared with the massive bombardment, although the sound of the muskets was not loud, the hit rate was higher. However, the preparations of the barbarians were not in vain. The power of the hot projectiles was indeed reduced a lot when faced with the thick fur, and they could only get stuck in the strong muscles of the barbarian warriors. It's not that the power of the musket is weak, but that the three or five layers of fur stacked together are too thick, coupled with the tenacious vitality and solid muscles of the barbarians. As long as the internal organs are not injured, the battle will not be affected at all in a short period of time. Just braving artillery fire, rushed to within 100 meters, the barbarian warrior suddenly became energetic. He clenched the spear in his hand and skillfully threw the spear, which was two meters long and as thick as an egg. He threw the spear which was two meters long and as thick as an egg, onto the city wall dozens of meters away. The hit rate was not low. This is all practiced through hunting for many years. Every mistake may lead to starvation. Even if it is not accurate, it will not work. Although it is a wooden spear sharpened and hardened by fire, under the exaggerated strength of the barbarian warrior, it still has the power to penetrate the steel breastplate. Even if it does not penetrate, the strong impact will break one or two ribs of the musketeer and lose him on the spot. Combat strength. After all, if you withstand the recoil of a musket with a broken rib, you might die from internal bleeding. Now Owen regrets equipping the musketeers with such a light and paper-thin breastplate. Although it is light and has good defense against arrows, it is too thin and has very limited defense against powerful and heavy attacks. The musketeers continue to shoot, and the swordsmen and spearmen step forward to fight. Upon seeing this, Howard knew that there was little chance of stopping the barbarian warriors from climbing the city wall. So he immediately made adjustments. Hogg took a deep breath, nodded to his father, and then led his soldiers to push forward, facing Hogg who stepped onto the battlefield. It was impossible for Howard not to worry. But it was a war now, let alone watching his children go to the battlefield. Even if he died in front of him, he would not have time to grieve until the war was over. What's more, as long as he directs it properly. There won't be too many barbarian warriors who can break through the artillery fire. It's a pity that Howard still underestimated these barbarian warriors. They were adapting to the battlefield quickly and no longer blindly pursued speed. They learned to raise their shields, spread out, dodge, and counterattack. 
So even if the musketeers within 100 meters had a lower hit rate even higher, even if the three-pounder gun was raised, it began to fire fragments of shotguns. The barbarian warriors just relied on their strong physique and firm will to rush to the city wall and climbed up the city wall with simple hooks and long ladders. It's not that the defenders didn't work hard, but after the distance was reduced to within 20 or 30 meters, the barbarian warrior's axe throwing was frighteningly high in terms of lethality and hit rate. The stone axe weighing 5 to 6 kilograms is so fast that it cannot be seen when thrown. Its power is so powerful that it can hit the head of a helmeted musketeer, and the sparks scatter directly with the brain. If it hits the chest, even the breastplate and ribs will be dented, and the back will be bulged, and the person will be carried off the city wall by the impact. The lethality is terrible and a few rounds of throwing will clear a section of the muskets on the city wall. Soldiers, but they also met their opponents. Longswordsmen are a branch of the army with a good balance of offense and defense, and are very versatile. Even if the proportion of firearms in the army gradually expands, the number has not been reduced. Instead, it has increased to 500 people. With the support of 500 spearmen from behind, they can compete with the barbarian warriors who climbed the city wall. A fierce fight began. Almost at the moment the barbarian warriors climbed onto the city wall. Dozens of ancestral warriors also ended their prayers, picked up the weapons left by their ancestors, and ran towards the north city at extremely fast speeds. They would deliver a fatal blow to the tribe. Open the door to victory. Every ancestral warrior is extraordinary. Their courage and quality are recognized by their ancestors. They are able to use the power of their ancestors to explode with incredible fighting power. Even the ancestral warriors who have just started have the strength of intermediate knights. And the best among them even have with high level or even master level strength. If the inheritance was not incomplete, there might not be legendary level ancestor warriors. Owen had actually noticed the existence of these ancestral warriors, but he did not expect that the strength of these ancestral warriors was so strong, although it was not long lasting. The burst of strength was still enough to tear apart the defensive front of the city wall and allow a large number of barbarian warriors to rush into the city. Although Beicheng will not fall by then. Huge casualties are inevitable. Fortunately, he had enough cards. In addition to recalling his men who had been trained in the illusion early, he also arranged for Charles, Teutonic Knights, and Templars to work under Howard. Miss Charles, these special barbarian warriors are entrusted to you. Although as the highest military commander in the territory, Howard has never underestimated the other party. Even though Charles has always regarded herself as a maid, so although it is an order, it is very polite, said. The armored and sharp seal nodded, leaving the Templars behind and led the Teutonic warriors up the city wall. At this time, the battle on the city wall had entered a fever pitch. The musketeers and artillerymen were firing calmly, while the swordsmen and spearmen were using their flesh and blood bodies as a city wall to block the barbarian warriors. Both sides were bleeding like rivers and suffered heavy casualties, but neither of them retreated. Step. Charles raised her halberds and fought from the east to the west of the city. The Teutonic warriors behind her were no less impressive. With their tacit cooperation, proficient martial arts, and sophisticated equipment, they killed the barbarian warriors who wanted to climb the city wall. It was impossible to take the lead until the arrival of the ancestral warriors. The physical advantage of the barbarians is too obvious. After receiving the blessing of the power of their ancestors, they can beat the knights below the senior level based on their attributes alone. The problem is that this time, they encountered cheating Char and Teutonic warriors. Needless to say, Seal is extremely talented, coupled with Owen's many enhancements. Eastern ancient martial arts and Western fighting spirit superimposed on each other. It can be said that even the demigods and below are not enough for her to kill. The Teutonic warriors are not the original ones. Each one has been strengthened by the T-Virus. They are considered junior ultra warriors, equipped with sophisticated equipment. It is not a problem to kill those shirtless ancestor warriors. It's over. The great shaman who saw this scene only had these two words in his mind. Compared to the other shamans, who were still cheering for the tribal warriors, the aging great shaman had already seen the ending, which was not a very happy ending. No, absolutely not. I must not let the tribe be destroyed in my own hands. The inheritance of dozens of tribes. The great shaman whispered to himself. The great shaman's first thought was to fight for his life. He didn't care about his own life. If he burned his soul and his remaining lifespan, it would be enough for one or two ancestral warriors to truly inherit the power of their ancestors and become legends. But when he raised his head and glanced at Seal, 
who was chopping up ancestral warriors like melons and vegetables. The great shaman immediately rejected the idea. The woman with the legendary barbarian physique is by no means an ordinary legend. One or two temporarily upgraded legendary ancestor warriors may not be able to defeat them. Let alone those warriors, who are like steel monsters. Each of them has the strength to surpass the ancestor warriors. Unless all shamans sacrifice themselves. Victory is possible. But without all shamans, the tribe cannot exist. At this time, the great shaman raised his head and looked in the direction of the bison tribe. Thinking thoughtfully, perhaps his unintentional idea became the tribe's last life-saving straw. Chapter 347 means The frontal battlefield became intense and the faint attacks on both sides also became fake due to the blood. The old barbarians who were determined to die were the first to die cleanly. And the young and energetic barbarian recruits were all teenagers. Infected by the barbarian old man's belief in death. He also followed his superiors and prepared to seek death. Fortunately, the great shaman was well prepared and arranged for some shaman to follow. So the future of the tribe was not lost. Of course, there are always some stupid young people who don't listen to advice and think they will become the protagonists of the battlefield. But what will happen to them? If you die, you will die. Enough people have died anyway. So this is not enough. As for the bloody frontal battle, the great shaman has decided to give up. There is nothing you can do if you don't give up. Because the barbarian warriors do not have positions in the officer system at all. And although the tribal leader who takes the lead is the most capable of fighting in the tribe, he is not so much a leader as a double-flowered red stick. He can take the lead in rushing when something happens. That's it. In this case, trying to withdraw people without command or organization is simply a dream. What's more, if we really want to take that step, there's no way we can make it unless these tribal warriors die. Humans can take in a stray dog, but they cannot take in a wolf that poses a threat. What the great shaman has to do now is to remove the wolf's claws and make it harmless and tameable. To put it simply, the great shaman betrayed the tribal warriors who were still fighting bloody battles and was already preparing for surrender. At the same time, the great shaman was also helpless. He longed for the victory of the tribe and even didn't mind burning his own soul. Just for that glimmer of hope. But they chose the wrong opponent and ruined themselves with their own hands. Beicheng is definitely not a simple city. Nor does it belong to the empire. When the great shaman was young, he concealed his identity and traveled to the empire. Thanks to his smaller size and smarter mind than the barbarians in the north. He successfully completed the trip. Not only did he gain knowledge and experience, but he also had a deep appreciation for the empire. Familiar. So he could feel that this city did not belong to the empire. Realizing this, the great shaman decided to take the last step. Even if many tribal warriors were sacrificed, he could at least preserve the future. Thinking of this, the great shaman smiled bitterly. His method was undoubtedly dirty but it was the only thing he could do for the tribe. When failure was a foregone conclusion, he had no choice. Feeling the decrease in fighting intensity, Owen felt a little strange until a shaman came from the south gate of the north city to deliver a message. It's interesting. It seems that there are wise men among the barbarians in the north. But some people are really causing trouble. Owen put down the surrender letter sent by the great shaman and said to Maya with a smile, Yes, the other party is very smart. He lured these barbarian tribes to the North City without even showing his face. Maya nodded and said calmly, It was only a matter of time before Bei Chung was discovered by the barbarians going south. However, because the barbarians in the North were bent on going south, even if they were discovered by chance, it would be difficult to gather so many barbarian tribes. But if someone specially guided them, the situation would be different. The barbarian tribe was unaware of this. Only the great shaman, who had matured into a master, noticed that something was wrong. So he wrote down his guess as a bargaining chip for surrender. In fact, the opponent's operation was very simple. They released the herds of animals at fixed points and easily guided the barbarian tribes that relied on hunting to deviate from the southward route little by little. They eventually crashed into the North City and triggered this war. But this is obviously not the other party's real method, Maya said after a pause. There are tens of thousands of northern barbarians and there are thousands of barbarian warriors alone. Not to mention a large number of shamans and ancestor warriors. In a field battle, they are enough to kill tens of thousands of imperial frontier troops. But that's not enough. As a grand duke, Macaron would not be so naive, thinking that a barbarian with just a few points could defeat a well-established elf royal family. The identity of the Owen Elven royal family 
is no secret among the upper echelons of the empire. They attracted tens of thousands of northern barbarians. It was a bit heavy as a test and a bit light as a means of destroying the enemy. This was completely inconsistent with the methods of a grand duke. First, they contacted the newly arrived northern nobles to attract our attention, and then attracted the northern barbarians as a sharp knife. It was a good method, but these were all used by the other party to hide their ears. Maya shook her feather fan lightly, holding a pair of pearls of wisdom. His appearance completely lived up to the Zhuge Liang template. I'm afraid their real purpose is the sealed undead demigod. Maya clapped her hands lightly and pointed to the north. It just so happened that the entire Northland was in war, with killings and deaths everywhere. This was enough to speed up the recovery of the undead demigods who broke out of the seal. It also provided the opponent with materials to form an undead army. Owen sighed, not expecting the other party's handiwork. So big. This is in line with the status of a Grand Duke. Maya concluded the Grand Duke Macaron's coffin with one sentence. Not caring whether he did it or not. In fact, Irving doesn't care because he wants to spread these speculation through black hands, regardless of whether they are true or not. He believes them anyway, and others also need a target to vent to, and they also don't care whether the other party is true or not. Many times when emotions arise, people need a channel to vent. As for whether it's a gas pipe or a sewer, they don't care. Just fight to death, and then blow it up. Don't think that only the North City encountered the barbarian invasion. In fact, during the war between the two sides, the barbarians who went south had penetrated deep into the central part of the Northland, which was also the area with the largest number of nobles in the Northland. After all, Owen's place was too far away, the development cost was too high, and it was close to the empire. The competition in the border areas is fierce, and it is difficult to break away from the control of the internal forces of the empire. Therefore, any new Northland nobles with some ambitions will choose to build their own territory in the central part of the Northland which is not far away, but no matter how ambitious they are, facing the hordes of Northland barbarians heading south, no one will be spared, because the barbarians are the real natives of the Northland, and with their strong strength, those who can run fast can still save their lives. If you run slowly, there will be nothing. Under the sweep of the Northland barbarians, a large number of Northland nobles either died or lost their territories, and the population was either killed or plundered. The originally chaotic but prosperous Northland was completely overthrown, and the Northland was left to its own devices. The barbarians repeatedly ravaged it. Faced with this situation, the Imperial Frontier Army, which had been idle for a long time, was mobilized in a rare move. A large number of idle soldiers were regrouped and urgently received additional training while paying salaries. The old checkpoints in disrepair were also repaired, and the rusty cannons were replaced, polished black and shiny. The entire border took action to prepare for war. Yes, it's just preparation. The Imperial Frontier Army, which has almost lost all hope, takes the initiative to go to the vast and sparsely populated Northland to find a decisive battle with the barbarians. Don't be kidding. Troops who can't endure long-distance marches should not engage in these difficult things. Just stay in the fortified city of Xiongwan and wait for orders from the great men of the Imperial capital. As for the northern nobles who suffered heavy losses, they can only express sympathy first. As for sending troops to help retake the territory, don't even think about it. It is now clear that the enemy is the Northland barbarians with obvious characteristics. Otherwise, a few Northland nobles will be framed and beaten. Really, all frontier army masters are good-tempered. Chapter 348 Merger and Alliance It seems that the Empire is unreliable, and we can only rely on Hydra, because there were too many people fleeing at the whim of the situation. Farrier had to spend a lot of time and energy to stabilize the territory and finally found time to consolidate it. So Lari was invited. And he was not in the mood to talk nonsense at all. So he spoke very straightforwardly. So Lari, who had always been energetic, now looked several years older. It was obvious that he had been under a lot of pressure recently. He nodded after hearing this without any objection. The situation now is obvious. The barbarians march south is a foregone conclusion. And the imperial frontier army's perennial laxity makes people unable to trust them at all. If you don't hold on to them under such circumstances, you may have to wait for the next life. Moreover, the two of them had already agreed on this, but they didn't expect it to happen so quickly, and they were not prepared at all. The two of them did not expect the barbarians to move south, nor did they expect the imperial frontier troops to sit idly by, nor did they expect the situation to change so quickly. So they felt anxious, 
Now that we have reached a consensus, let's not waste any more time. Farrier took out the double-sided mirror, thinking that before it was just cooperation. But now he has to completely surrender. He couldn't help but feel a little emotional. But he still activated the double-sided mirror and put it together. The news of their surrender was sent. The complete surrender of the two people did not surprise Owen. Instead, he felt that the two of them were decisive and smart enough. If you really wait until you are desperate before surrendering, you will still have some value. Selling yourself at a good price while you still have enough value is a wise choice. In fact, what finally made the two of them make up their mind was related to Owen's generous treatment of his subordinates, such as the two maids who served in the church. One became the manager of North City, and the other was cultivated into a legend. Current and Howard father and son joined him in the early days. He came from a humble background. But now no one is in control. The two of them already regretted a little after they decided to surrender. They regretted that they made the decision too late and missed the opportunity. Now they can only seize the opportunity in front of them. There's a letter from Miss Maya. Farrier felt the vibration of the double-sided mirror and was immediately shaken. She didn't leave Solari, who was resting with her eyes closed, and immediately opened her eyes. This, the projection projected by the double-sided mirror and the densely packed plan stunned the two of them. It was obvious that the other party had already anticipated their surrender and the difficulties they faced, and had already prepared a detailed plan. That is merge. Then merge and build a southern city according to Lord Hydra's order, Solari said decisively as he slapped the table. Okay, you will be responsible for the personnel transfer, and I will be responsible for the material distribution, because according to the plan, the merger was mainly focused on Farrier's territory. So she took the initiative to give up some of her rights. Solari didn't care about this. Compared to Farrier, he was much more decisive as a man because he knew very well that no one would tolerate a half-hearted subordinate. There were too many young men under Farrier. Even if a batch of them escaped, there would be a lot left over. She was too lazy to distinguish them and left them all to Solari. Solari was moving the population while recruiting refugees. After all, According to the city construction plan, the number of manpower required was not a small number. Fortunately, Maya sent many middle-level managers and grassroots personnel, as well as a large number of officers, so that Solari could save a lot of energy and still have enough energy to mix him with Farrier's army. Although things are busy, neither Solari nor Ferial have any intention of relaxing because the opportunity is rare. Now that the barbarians are moving south and the border troops are preparing for war, it is the best time. Firstly, the forces within the empire are unable to intervene. And secondly, a large number of nobles and refugees who have lost their territories have gathered here, so that the two will not lack manpower. So the progress is very smooth. However, the two people's big moves also brought a lot of inspiration to others. After some communication and testing, alliances of various sizes emerged like mushrooms after the rain. Alliances are nothing new to the north. And no matter what kind of alliance, there is always entry. It may even turn from resisting foreign enemies to disrupting each other. However, this time the alliance will appear more professional, more restrained, and more knowledgeable about the art of compromise. This is mainly related to the people who formed it. The previous alliance was composed of the original group of Northland nobles. Most of them were from humble backgrounds, ambitious and capable, but lacked experience in compromise and alliance. And they did not know how to transfer the benefits of betrayal, maximization, random operation, and betrayal too fast caused the alliance to collapse internally before it could play any role. Most of the current Northland nobles come from major forces within the empire, regardless of their education or vision. They are no strangers to compromise and alliances. Therefore, alliances take shape faster and are more powerful. Because of their different origins, the alliance formed by the new Northland nobles first communicated with each other and formulated a plan before notifying Farrier and the other two. This plan does no harm to the interests of the two of them. But since they have surrendered, they cannot make decisions alone. So the two of them first passed the plan to Maya and waited for the other party's reply. When Maya handed the plan to Owen, he was also surprised. But after thinking about it carefully, he didn't find it strange anymore. The plan was not complicated. Those people planned to form an alliance of northern nobles and jointly build towns along the empire's border to form a line of defense against the barbarians moving south. To put it bluntly, I was afraid of being beaten by the barbarians in the north, compared with other plans and benefits. I wanted to save my life first. They were also unlucky. They encountered barbarians heading south 
before they could get any benefits. What's even worse is that during the invasion of foreign enemies, they could not cross the empire's borders and go inside the empire, because this was an act of abandoning their territory and fleeing, and the noble council had the right to deprive them of it, because of their noble titles and territories. They were restricted to the north and could only survive as a group. The role of the newly formed alliance was dispensable. It was just a group for the weak to keep warm, but it gave Irving some inspiration. I remember that many northern nobles hid in Mara Town and North City because they lost their territories. We went to organize them. We also formed an alliance called the Northern Glory Alliance. Owen knocked on the table and said, Although only the weak unite, the saying, Strength in numbers, can not only be used in battles, but also in the right to speak. Once the Northland is represented by the Northland Noble Alliance, Northland will be passive in terms of public opinion. Therefore, Owen simply formed an alliance to directly divide the Northland and compete for the right to speak. This is probably what the Empire would like to see. However, Irving does not intend to let Farrier and Solari join the alliance he established. Instead, he wants them to join the Northland Noble Alliance. His intention is self-evident. By the way, don't forget to spread the conspiracy of Grand Duke MacAaron, Owen said before Maya left. It's already being done. I believe it has spread throughout the world now. Maya said with a smile. In fact, this is indeed the case. Because the envoy of Grand Duke MacAaron really contacted many Northland nobles in private. So this matter was directly confirmed by those Northland nobles that it was him. Compared to Grand Duke MacAaron, the so-called nobles of the North are almost like shabby people. However, there are masters behind these people. They cannot afford to offend a Grand Duke. But it does not mean that the forces behind them cannot cause trouble for the Grand Duke. He was making trouble. Chapter 349 The Army of the Barbarian Kingdom The scene shifted to Beicheng. The war was over. Just as the great shaman expected, the tribal alliance lost unexpectedly. There are many reasons. For example, the barbarian warriors are said to be warriors. But in fact, they have not received any military training. They are just a group of strong hunters who are not afraid of death. They can still take advantage when fighting alone or in a small team. When two armies go to war, their numbers will only be small. Let them fall into confusion and blindness. Most people don't even know where the enemy is and what they look like at the beginning, let alone respond and cooperate. Just because he knew this, the great shaman chose to send out all the combat power of the tribe at once. Because once a fight started, any command and plan would be useless. The great shaman racked his brains to let the barbarian old man take the new soldiers to both sides of the north city to mobilize the troops. But no matter how many times he went, he couldn't implement it because there was no command, no channel to convey the order, and no soldiers to execute the order. Overly complicated command would only create chaos. So Yabolia can't win. They lose, and they don't even have a chance to come back. What's worse is that because of the single-mindedness of the barbarians and the various brainless blessings of the shaman, the barbarians can endure huge casualties. This is both an advantage and a disaster, because either they will win miserably, or they will not be able to fight to the death. The retreat suffered huge casualties, and there was no other possibility. Even the great shaman could not pull back the bloody barbarian warriors. Not only did a large number of barbarian warriors die in this battle, but a lot of food and supplies were also lost, because the great shaman tipped off the information. The witch riding a broomstick easily burned most of the luggage. This was what the great shaman did to convince others. Prepare. Under this situation, this short-lived tribal alliance was undoubtedly in dire straits. So the great shaman took the opportunity to propose that he take the remaining people to join the nearby powerful barbarian tribe, the Buffalo tribe. The other shamans, who noticed the big shaman's intentions were silent. No one wanted to join a strange tribe. But they also realized that the tribe was already on the border of life and death. If they took one wrong step, the tribe would perish. After some discussions, most of the tribes decided to follow the great shaman and join the bison tribe, while some tribes chose to continue southward, and the two sides separated peacefully. On the way to the buffalo tribe, the great shaman had mixed feelings in his heart. Although he knew that this battle was not his fault, he still felt guilty and just hoped that his decision this time was not wrong. In fact, the great shaman knew very well that there must be something wrong with the buffalo tribe, but it was still a barbarian tribe which was better than joining Beicheng, who had just fought to death. As for continuing to move south, let alone the benefits gained from losing so many warriors, the barbarian kingdom alone is a threat that is not inferior to the imperial frontier army. Yes, in the heart of the great shaman, 
the barbarian kingdom is also a threat. It is not that they abandon their traditions to form a kingdom. In fact, if possible, the great shaman also wants to turn the tribal alliance into a more powerful kingdom. But because of a premonition, as one of the few remaining great shamans among the barbarians in the north, the great shaman had an ominous premonition long before the snow disaster arrived. At first, because he had a premonition that the danger was coming from the north, the great shaman thought that the cold current would move down the northern mountains and cause disaster to the survival of all living things. But after crossing the river, he was surprised to find that the direction of the threat had changed. Heading southward, this aroused the alarm of the great shaman. So he formed a tribal alliance to attack Bei Cheng, because he wanted to avoid the threat. And as long as he captured Bei Cheng, the tribal alliance could gain enough harvest and return to its original territory to spend the winter. Unfortunately, the great shaman underestimated Bei Cheng's strength. And by the time he realized something was wrong, he was already helpless. Of course Owen would not refuse the tribal alliance to join the bison tribe. But this also brought about a new problem. As a branch city, the upper limit of the population of the bison tribe is only 10,000. But the original population is thousands. Plus more than 10,000 northern barbarians. The population is obviously excessive and cannot be converted at all. However, the solution is also very simple. Just upgrade the town center. Anyway, the authority space is about to complete its evolution and the demand for progress value has been greatly reduced. Owen has enough energy to manage the territory. In fact, the town center can only be upgraded to level 5 at most. But there is nothing that cannot be solved by the progress value. If there is, it means that there are not enough progress points. So Owen forcibly upgraded the town center to level 6, with a population limit of 1 million, with 10 subsidy quotas, each with a maximum population of 50,000. The total population is 1.5 million, not to mention in the north. It is the top traditional noble even in the empire. It's a pity that the population is not easy to increase, especially without external supplements. After absorbing the refugees caused by the barbarians moving south, the territory's population has only increased slightly, and it is still far away from 200,000. These are arranged by Maya, and Owen's main focus now is on collecting corpses. Although it is only a guess that the undead demigod sealed in the north will break the seal. Owen will not take the gamble. Not to mention that the accumulation of a large number of corpses is a hazard in itself. And the authority space in the evolutionary stage also needs these corpses. So he is rare get moving. Not only were there tens of thousands of corpses in the north city. Owen also used broomsticks and other means to quietly collect a large number of corpses in the north. But he didn't know how much trouble his actions caused to some people. But even if he knew, Owen wouldn't care. Have you found the army of the barbarian kingdom? Owen, who hurried over, wiped off the snowflakes on his body and said to Maya, Well, I've been tracking it for a while. But because the other party has flying units, all I have is the long-range images taken by the Cyclops Eagle. Maya clicked on the projection and zoomed in on the key points that needed attention. Preliminary estimates put the number of the Barbarian Kingdom's troops at between 170,000 and 190,000. Because a large number of people were dispersed to plunder. A more accurate estimate cannot be made. Now it is confirmed that 90,000 to 100,000 of them are the main soldiers. With heavy equipment, armor and iron weapons, and the rest are auxiliary arms. Through the enlarged image, Owen could see that the warriors of the Barbarian Kingdom were stronger and more sturdy. The main body was barbarian warriors equipped with heavy armor and giant blades. Although they only nailed iron sheets to thick leather, the weapons were more like cast iron. But the increase in lethality is not just a little bit. If the barbarian warriors who attacked Bei Cheng before were equipped with this kind of equipment, the losses would be more than doubled. Moreover, these barbarian warriors are real soldiers. Not only have they received training, but they also know how to cooperate and march. The threat they pose is far beyond that of tribal warriors. In addition, Owen also saw other races in the barbarian army, such as the very rare frost giants and draconians. There are dragons in this world, and naturally there are giants, but they are rare in the empire and have been wiped out by adventurers. Frost giants are called the shame of giants, not only because they are shorter and thinner than other giants, but mainly because they are too cunning and do not have the honesty of giants. But this does not affect the strength of the frost giants because the frost giants living in cold areas have the natural ability to control ice and can attack from a distance in melee, coupled with the field control ability of the ice system. They are said to be giants. 
rather than oversized. The Ice Mage. The dragons are not inferior either. The half-human, half-dragon dragons not only have scale armor with good magic resistance, but also have sharp claws and wings. In addition to the lack of dragon horns, the head looks like a lizard, which is said to be a trumpet. Any dragon will do. Most dragon men have no spell casting ability, but they have strong melee capabilities. Plus they can fly. They are very difficult opponents. Although from the color point of view, these dragon men belong to the weakest white dragon series. They are enough to serve as flying troops. At least if they are against each other. Owen will not dare to easily send out the flying broomstick which even the one-eyed giant eagle responsible for surveillance will fight. The other party is unfamiliar. Chapter 350 The Power of the Skeleton Sea The next image played by Maya made Owen's expression become ugly. At first, I thought they were plundering the population to serve as slaves or even for food. But unexpectedly they turned out to be sacrifices. This is very bad news. Maya said faintly after enlarging the image of the mass grave. At the edge of a huge pit, the barbarian warriors stood in a circle like chefs would butcher knives. They tied the slaves in a string like slaughtering chickens, wiped their necks one by one, and threw them into the pit. The opponent's body gradually became cold and hard in the convulsions, and the flowing blood cooled and turned into big ice lumps at the bottom of the pit. At this moment, their knives were cold, their blood was cold, and their hearts were cold. They were frozen. The shamans on the side made fresh skulls into decorations and sacrificial items like peeling lychees. The originally primitive but close to nature sacrifices also became evil. But the effect was remarkable. Thousands of skeletons broke free from their restraints. Of flesh and blood. Removing cumbersome internal organs. Removing useless eyeballs. Shaking out large chunks of brain. And crawling out of the pit cleanly. Becoming qualified cannon fodder and skeleton soldiers. This is just the beginning. Whenever enough slaves are plundered, the same blood sacrifice will appear, causing the cannon fodder of the Barbarian Kingdom army to increase exponentially. As the number becomes larger, the scope of the impact becomes wider and wider. At the same time, the plundered slaves also more and more. Not only the people of the Empire, but also the Barbarian tribes have become the targets of their plunder and blood sacrifice. Such a grand killing feast excited the demon leader and the people of the Church of Flesh and Blood lurking in the north. Not only did they participate in the feast, they also joined the army of the Barbarian Kingdom and became a member in charge of the Butcher Knife. Something's wrong. It's so wrong. Even if it changes, it won't change so fast. Owen muttered to himself. Although the Barbarians in the North are savage and aggressive, and even have some customs that can be called cruel, they do not kill needlessly. The shamans believe in the way of nature. Otherwise, if hunting is allowed, no amount of prey will be enough for the barbarians. Therefore, it is unbelievable, unscientific, and against the laws of nature to have such a big change in a corner without external threats. Therefore, there must be other factors that cause this abnormal change. The situation in the barbarian kingdom must be very bad now. Owen has already seen the prototype of the iron-blooded military state, as well as bloodthirsty cruelty and desire for power. Now it has also been mixed with the demon head and the flesh church. Plus the originally evil frust giants. Like the dragon man. The barbarian kingdom already has all the ingredients to become a villain's base. Although the situation is very bad. The barbarian kingdom army is getting further and further away from the north city. And Owen's territory is not affected at all. After all. Unless the barbarian kingdom army makes a special turn. It has nothing to do with Owen's territory. Let alone the barbarians. The kingdom's army has a clear purpose and goes straight to the empire's border. Now the empire's border army and the newly established Northland Nobles Alliance have received the news and are in panic. The Northland Noble Alliance can still hide. After all, the Northland is vast. As long as they stay far away, the barbarian kingdom army will not specifically pursue them. The empire's border troops cannot hide and can only prepare for war with all their strength. It's a pity that the imperial frontier troops have been lax for too long. Even if they are reorganized quickly, they can only scrape together about 100,000 regular soldiers. That is, regular soldiers who can wear armor and fight. And the rest can be used as auxiliary troops at best. This is obviously not enough. In theory, as a defender of the city, relying on the strong pass and the strong city, it is impossible to attack without three or five times the enemy. However, the army of the barbarian kingdom cannot be calculated using common sense. What is more terrible is that there are as many as hundreds of thousands. Moreover, 
The number of skeletons in the army is still increasing. If these cannon fodder swarm forward, no powerful city can dare to say that they can stop it. It's not that the skeleton soldiers are powerful, but because there are too many of them. There are tens of thousands of people who are boundless. This does not mean that they are truly boundless, but that they cannot see the boundaries. Tens of thousands of them were like this. Hundreds of thousands of skeleton soldiers were spread out in a way that could only be described as a sea of bones. What's more, the skeleton soldiers have a high reduction in long-range damage. It is difficult for arrows and bullets to cause effective kills. In addition, the light and strong body is very suitable for climbing the city wall. It is like a wave of bone sea, unless a few legendary mages wash it together. Otherwise, soldiers alone would not be able to defend it, even if professionals join in. First of all, a person's energy is limited, with a helmet and armor constantly wielding weapons. If it can last for half an hour, it is not bad. It can be called an elite. Veterans of hundreds of battles are just better at allocating physical strength. They are also not made of iron. I can't resist the waves of impact. Facing the same humans, you can still hold on and wait for the opportunity to switch defenses. But facing the tireless and fearless skeleton soldiers coming in waves, daring to switch defenses is simply seeking death. You can only continue to hold on as if you are adding more fuel. As for how long you can hold on, no one knows when it will happen. Only that it will collapse sooner or later. This is the most frightening thing about the undead. Fighting against the undead for physical strength endurance, and will is purely courting death. Everyone now knows that this large-scale war is inevitable. And it started when no one was prepared. As the former shaman, who was transformed into a death priest held up various magical weapons made of bones. The sea of skeletons made waves. Just like peeling an onion. Layers of skeleton soldiers stepped towards the city wall. And for a moment, they clicked. The sound of bone friction covered up all sounds. Including the chattering teeth of the city wall defenders and the sound of Suasua's trembling body shaking the armor leaves. Fear and fear are not important. The defender's heartfelt rejection did not change the direction of the skeleton soldiers. The arrows fired, and the roar of the artillery also failed to do this. The white sea of skeletons was accompanied by falling snowflakes, constantly moving forward, trying to cover everything. The war began, and what was unexpected was that the huge imperial frontier army was at a disadvantage. Even if the knights and mages were deployed, they could not regain the disadvantage. It was really the barbarian kingdom's army that went too far. First, there was the nearly costless skeleton sea impact. When the defenders were almost exhausted, there were the frost giants who threw thick ice spears, the dragon men who dived and turned people into pieces, the demon warlocks who were good at summoning, and the flesh cultists who liked the distortion of flesh and blood, turned into a sharp axe, easily splitting the defense line of the city wall completely. And then the barbarian warriors, who were not afraid of death, rushed forward to completely tear the defense line apart and successfully won the victory. What's even more frightening is that the army of the barbarian kingdom does not need prisoners. Only constant blood sacrifices. Through blood sacrifices, they can easily obtain more skeleton soldiers as supplements. At the same time, the shaman who has been transferred to the death priest class has become more powerful. Although the whole process was cruel, it was efficient. Even the Imperial Frontier troops, with defensive advantages, were unable to resist and could only delay time by fortifying layers of defenses. Chapter 351 After the War The war at the border of the Empire was fierce, and Owen was busy recruiting refugees, registering small nobles, and forming the Northern Glory Alliance. Except for Owen, the Northern Glory Nobles Alliance is composed of small nobles who make up the numbers. There are many, but their strength is dispensable. After all, they were looted by the barbarians from the south. It is good to be alive. So the so-called alliance is just an empty frame. But don't worry about whether it will be used in the future. Let's build it first. What's more, the small nobles who have taken refuge are more or less talents. They can fill the vacancies in the territory and can also be used as a disguise to the outside world. After all, the anomalies in the territory still need to be covered up. The Northland Noble Alliance, which had been busy running around since its establishment, took no time to ask for support from the forces behind it. It wanted all the manpower and property. At the same time, it was busy building cities and places that avoided the war between the two sides. And it was equally busy. Although the Northland is in trouble, the problem is that they have no choice. Either to return to the Empire and become wastes waiting to die, or to stay in the Northland and risk their lives as lords. In fact, it is a good choice. Every war will end one day. 
No force can fight the war forever. When the war is over, the Northland will still be their world. So even if the risk is high, most of the Northland nobles are still willing. Stay persistent. In fact, the war has begun to enter its final stage. If the army of the barbarian kingdom had not relied on plundering along the way, it would have been unable to withstand it long ago. After all, the foundation is too weak, and the long journey is too long. Domestic support alone cannot sustain it. Similarly, the border army if it wasn't for the empire, it wouldn't have lasted long. But overall, regardless of the fact that the border troops have been beaten, the death toll is close to 100,000, and there are countless civilians. But the final victory always belongs to the empire. Not long ago, the empire sent two legendary mages, together with a legendary knight, and two legendary warriors belonging to the border army, to implement decapitation tactics. Although the goal was not achieved, it still caused considerable losses to the top brass of the barbarian kingdom's army, and even almost severely damaged them, the leading coach. Afterwards, the barbarian kingdom's army launched a retaliatory attack. But these losses were nothing to the empire. As time goes by, the frontier troops who suffered heavy losses have been replenished, and the reserve troops reorganized in the rear alone number, as many as hundreds of thousands. Not counting those who have arrived one after another, it is conservatively estimated that within three months, the total strength of the empire's frontier troops will reach 500,000. Regardless of how many elite soldiers there are, at least before these people die, the empire can mobilize more soldiers. This is the empire's confidence. Owen once estimated the empire's war potential. Regardless of the cost, the total mobilization of troops could reach more than 20 million. If it were any more, it would collapse due to a complete breakdown in logistics before the war started. Of course, this is only theoretical. Because first of all, the whole country, including the traditional nobility and royal family, must obey the emperor's orders to achieve this. And this is obviously impossible. Even if the end of the world comes, the possibility of achieving it is pitifully small. Because of human nature, it's actually pretty hacked up. In any case, with its immense war potential, it is only a matter of time before the empire wins. Even the commander of the barbarian kingdom's army knows this very well. So he has already begun transporting supplies and slaves to the rear. It makes no sense to kill slaves for blood sacrifices now. After all, several legends are nearby. There were no legendary mages before. Legendary knights and warriors were afraid that there would be no return. So they chose to sit idly by. Now that there are legendary mages, they dare not say anything. You can go freely, as long as you pay a small price. There is no problem in destroying the blood sacrifice. What's more, now it is no longer a question of expanding the results of the war and burning the flames of war into the empire, but a question of how much gain can be gained by paying so much. Fortunately, the empire's frontier troops were unexpectedly wealthy. The large number of war-prepared warehouses left the unsophisticated barbarian kingdom army dumbfounded and at the same time pitiful. Due to lack of maintenance, a large amount of equipment rusted, mountains of food spoiled, and massive supplies decayed. These man-made losses alone exceed the output of the barbarian kingdom in decades. This shows how fat the imperial frontier troops are, and how distressed the barbarians will be when they see the scene. So they seize the time to transport them to the rear. Not only did the army of the barbarian kingdom gain a lot, but the devil's head and the church of the flesh who joined in the process were also full of food. However, when the final carnival was approaching, the members of these two evil organizations disappeared collectively. The commander of the barbarian kingdom's army suddenly felt bad. Compared with the people brought from the north, he had never trusted the southern barbarians who had joined the empire halfway. Therefore, he immediately ordered the army to be on alert and at the same time ordered the rear army responsible for escorting supplies to set off immediately. Unfortunately, it was too late. The magic circle that enveloped most of the military camp made him feel as if he had fallen into an ice kiln. With three legendary mages as the core, a mage group composed of more than a hundred archmages and senior mages jointly cast a forbidden spell that was superior to the legends. For a time, countless sky fires fell from the sky. The earth cracked, and poisonous gas was rampant burying tens of thousands of barbarians in one fell swoop. Army. If the commander of the barbarian kingdom's army hadn't made a decisive decision and sent 100,000 skeleton soldiers to the rear, and all the survivors would have given up their supplies and returned immediately, the losses would have been even greater. Although a lot of supplies were obtained this time, more than 100,000 barbarians were lost, leaving only 50,000 or 60,000 people. 
The commander of the Barbarian Kingdom Army did not know whether it was a loss or a gain. But he knew that this was just the beginning. When a new batch of soldiers grew up, that's when they went south again. Owen did not pay attention to this battle at all times. Especially after discovering the emergence of the legend. He directly recalled the Cyclops Eagle and relied solely on the intelligence network he had set up before to obtain information. Although it has various flaws. It is still better than what is discovered. With its legendary perception and intuition. The one-eyed giant eagle cannot hide it from them. The barbarians were defeated and returned. The imperial border troops had no time to celebrate and were busy rebuilding the border pass. Many mages also stayed behind. They tried to build a magic barrier at the border pass to warn the barbarian army heading south again. However, this was obviously not an easy task. The Northern Nobles Alliance also received material and population support from the Empire. This move was not for poverty alleviation, but to build a barrier between the barbarians and the imperial border, when necessary. With an order from the Empire, these Northern Nobles had to sending troops and food to assist the Empire's frontier troops in fighting. The Empire's things are not so easy to get. The North City also fell into the eyes of the Empire. In one battle, tens of thousands of people were beheaded and tens of thousands of barbarians went south. It can be said that this was the only bright spot among the northern nobles in this war. Naturally, they were regarded as a model and received various benefits. Of course, along with the benefits comes all kinds of suspicion and suppression. After all, many forces in the empire have invested a lot in the north. Having a force as powerful as Hydra is not conducive to their plans. But after seeing those concerns were put to rest once casualties were reported, all regular military establishments were almost crippled, and the temporarily recruited militiamen also suffered heavy casualties. It can be said that the losses were heavy. Even if there were enough people and resources, it would not be possible to recover for another three to five years, because soldiers cannot appear by clicking and deducting gold coins. Of Another reason is the high proportion of firearms equipment. Everyone knows that firearms are useful, but they are cancelled again after large-scale deployment. There is naturally a reason. Worrying about the huge hidden dangers caused by living among the people is only one of them. The biggest problem is the existence of extraordinary professionals. Firearms are too easy to target. So although firearms are good, they are not suitable for large-scale equipment. Chapter 352 The Scar in the Sky is Broken Strengthening City Defense Replenishing Soldiers And Adjusting Strategies All Required Owen's Intervention So it was a headache. This did not include the establishment of an alliance and the preparation for the cold winter. Fortunately, the abilities of Howard and his son, as well as teachers and students of Emily, were quite good. After some processing, Owen found that there were not many things that he needed to deal with, but more of making decisions, which suddenly changed from composition to multiple choice questions. The city wall continues to be taller and wider, although it doesn't mean much. For ordinary people, tall city walls mean safety and serve as a deterrent to outsiders. After signing for approval, Owen put down his pen and rubbed his smooth chin, thought for a while, and said, I will arrange a group of gargoyles and iron golems to be placed on the city wall. You will see how they can be integrated into the existing defense system. Gargoyles and steel golems originate from the game Invincible Heroes. They belong to the golem category. Although they are not flexible enough, they are quite suitable for city defense. Owen previously exchanged the corresponding military buildings on the second floor of the dungeon. And now he has accumulated a lot which comes in handy, as the need for progress value in the authority space decreases. Owen plans to exchange for some more heroic and invincible military units to replace the Imperial Era units that can no longer keep up. However, this will be a very long process. At this stage, the territory still needs the high-quality and low-cost troops from the Empire Era to take the lead. After taking care of some things, Owen returned to Academy City because he wanted to see how the Empire would react to this battle. In fact, there was no reaction. The imperial capital was still prosperous, and the academy city remained unchanged. Even if he heard that a terrible plague had appeared in the south and many people had died, no one cared because it was too far away from them. There are so many evil organizations in the south? Owen was chatting with Corgi, and he was the only one in the entire specialty class who could talk a few words. Just now, Owen talked about the devil's head and the church of flesh and blood that appeared in the northern war. Corgi said in passing that the Scourge Church was behind the plague in the south. And he was stunned. Who would have thought that the seemingly powerful empire was already riddled with holes inside? With the nobles and royal families holding back. 
and a bunch of messy villain organizations seeking death. Owen couldn't help but shake his head. That is to say, the Empire's financial resources are strong enough. Otherwise it would have been lost long ago. It was originally just a topic for chatting. But who knew that the plague in the South was getting worse and worse? Academy City, which had already dispatched a group of mages and alchemists to support the construction of the Imperial Frontier Army, had to mobilize a group of people to go to the South because it was said that the people infected with the plague had changed. It's like an undead zombie, which makes people think of the undead demigod who caused hundreds of thousands of deaths and injuries in the North before he showed up. You must know that such a person was also sealed in the South. To be on the safe side, not only do we need to research the antidote to the new plague, but we also need to check out the ceiling points. This requires a lot of manpower and is very urgent. There is no way. Although the Empire will not be damaged in the Northern War, it will be a huge waste to repair the damaged border, rebuild the border army, and restore the lost population in the North. What if the South does this again? The Empire couldn't bear it so it had to deal with it quickly. So it was surprisingly efficient. But Owen always had a feeling of panic. Because a large number of teachers and senior students have been expelled, the Academy City is now in a state of semi-paralysis. Many students have no classes to attend. In this rare leisure time, the students have learned to have fun on their own. The air is filled with a happy atmosphere. It is estimated that many people will become parents next year. But Owen is getting more and more nervous. The other students in the specialty class noticed this. They didn't understand. But they believed in Owen's feelings. Except for the missing elf deer girl. Others built a shelter under Owen's leadership. Although I don't know what the use of this is. I would rather do this than go to class. The dwarf muttered and drew drawings. Making the underground fortress built by Owen stronger and more complete. According to their respective races. Their mental ages are very young. And they are all very interested in building underground fortresses. Even Corgi rarely stays to help with suggestions. Owen's premonition became a reality. The long-term peace made Academy City careless. And so many people were mobilized. Therefore, when the Flesh Gate towered over Academy City, there was no defense or counterattack mechanism activated for a while. These two mechanisms definitely exist in the College City. And there are dedicated people responsible for maintaining them. So there is no other possibility except an insider. Even so, a mere demon gate is not a big problem for the Academy City. After all, Although the level is high, it cannot attack or move. It can only attack by triggering demonization and summoning objects. If you accumulate strength secretly, it might turn into trouble. But hanging in the air in broad daylight would be underestimating the foundation of the Academy City. But what no one expected was that the purpose of the Devil's Gate was not the Academy City, but Tian Tian. The scar of the sky is the scar of the world. Although it has many seals, it is still fragile because the increasingly huge secret realm puts huge pressure on the Scar of the Sky, making it impossible for the Scar of the Sky to heal. The problem is that the secret realm is the food of the world. Even if it causes pressure, it cannot be abandoned. Therefore, the organization Tian Tian is created to mediate and allow both parties to reach a balance. But the balance is fragile, and the Devil's Gate that can communicate with the Abyss is not a vegetarian. With the careful preparation of the Devil's Head and the Flesh Church, it is like a door key or a steel needle, easily breaking the heaven's gate. At this moment, the sound of breaking chains resounded throughout the world. Even in the imperial capital, illusory chains could be seen breaking and disappearing in the sky. As the chain broke, the seal began to disintegrate. The mark of the sky was squeezed by the secret realm and began to dent inward. The shape changed from a cross to a convex mixed hemorrhoid. A large amount of unexplainable material was vented down, filling the hole. It grew bigger and bigger, even falling to the ground. As soon as the turbid glass-like substance flowing from the sky touched the Academy City, the entire city was distorted. Then, like a painting falling into a vortex, it disappeared in the blink of an eye, as if it had never existed, and was replaced by a burning on the land. Countless demons appeared out of nowhere. After a short period of adaptation, they spread happily around, standing at the entrance of the underground fortress. A group of people in the special class were dumbfounded. Faced with a disaster of this level, no bunker would be easy to use. Demons are much more powerful than huskies. And they can be dug out no matter how deep they hide. Owen originally wanted to teleport away with everyone. But who would have thought that the whole space would become chaotic? It was not necessary to teleport. Once it was used, it was like pulling out the plug when taking a bath. It was all chaos and everyone was sucked in. As the core, Owen was the worst. 
and was the deepest involved in the turbulence. Seeing others escape from the turbulence, he was the only one who could not escape. He had no choice but to expand the authority space. But he was surprised to find out what the authority space was absorbing. On the contrary, it became increasingly impossible to get rid of it, and got stuck in it. Chapter 353 The Impact of the Secret Realm Owen's fragments of authority were incomplete, and he had been using them reluctantly. It was not until he obtained the seeds of the golden tree that he had hope of becoming complete again. But the authority space is left by a true god, and it is extremely difficult to completely restore it. It is not realistic to just redeem the progress value to fill it. It is not impossible, but it takes too long. In the early stage, even Owen could only barely provide the foundation. Now he is in in the turbulent flow, like a sponge falling into water or a mouse falling into a rice vat. Countless law imprints and origins poured into the space of authority, making him not want to get out. However, what Owen didn't expect was that the flow of time here was different. The deeper you went, the faster it flowed. It didn't take long for him to look like two or three years old. With the growth cycle of the elf royal family, this time would be feared by ordinary people. It has been buried long ago. Owen, who knew he couldn't stay any longer, could only choose the opportunity to escape from the turmoil and return to the human world. When Owen appeared again, he had become a young man. According to the life cycle of the elf royal family, it would take at least three to four hundred years to grow to this point. Although time flows at different speeds in the turbulent flow, it is a bit scary. At least Owen was shocked, because he was not sure how much time had passed. He only knew that the progress value reached fifty times many times. I don't know what's going on with the territory, Owen said with a frown as he put on some fitting clothes, because he was not sure about the time. Owen didn't know how many years had passed in the territory and what the current situation was like. So he eagerly wanted to return to the territory. But he soon realized something was wrong and the world had changed. The original world was like a glass bottle. Empty and free. Owen could teleport freely as long as he wanted. But now it was not only filled with glass beads, but also filled with viscous juice. Turbid. Heavy. And difficult to break free from. This is the feeling that the world brings to Owen now. Thinking back to when the sky trace was broken, the secret realm collapsed, and the academy city disappeared. Owen understood that this was caused by the secret realm. The secret realm is composed of a large number of world fragments. It is a food reserve for cheats in the world where Owen lives. Tian Tian uses various methods to slowly integrate the gentle and non-dangerous fragments into the world and become the nutrients for the growth of the world. To a certain extent, the existence of the secret realm and the sky mark is beneficial to the world. But no matter how good something is, it will be fatal if it is too much. And the same is true for world fragments. Each fragment of the world carries different imprints and origins of laws. Even in the void, it is not easy to consume. If digested, it will naturally be of great benefit. However, swallowing too much in one breath will lead to indigestion and food accumulation. Nowadays, the large amount of law imprints and chaotic origins that are pouring in make it difficult for the world to adapt. As long as it is not digested in a day, not only the world, but also the creatures living in the world will bear this invisible pressure. The external manifestation is that it is difficult to deeply lever it. Laws make it difficult to break through. The advantage is that the rich laws allow extraordinary professions to expand horizontally. Extraordinary professions are closely related to laws. The more law marks there are, the easier it is to access them, and the chance of becoming a professional is higher. The problem is that 90% of the law marks today are foreign. Not only are they broken, but they have not been integrated into the current world. In the system of laws, that is to say, there is no way forward. Unless the laws are perfected, there is no way to advance. This is just one of the effects of the collapse of the secret realm and the influx into the world. Another effect is the complexity of space and environment, making long-distance transmission extremely difficult, because the original empty bottle is now filled with glass beads. From the beginning of straight-line transmission, it becomes necessary to overcome many obstacles and endure the deviation caused by chaos. In other words, if Owen really dares to teleport, even he himself can't guarantee where he will be teleported, because not all the world fragments are poured into the world. When the secret realm collapsed, there were still many well-preserved world fragments attached to the outer wall of the world, forming a semi-independent small world, which is a demi-plane. The existence of the demiplane increases the contact between the world and the external void, and swallowing too much causes the outer wall to become weak and many tiny holes appear. Owen is still not familiar with the current complex space environment. 
if he really dares to teleport from a long distance. Who knows whether he will be teleported into the void. In desperation, Owen put on his mage robe, took out his staff and sword, and climbed onto the dragon sheep. He planned to travel around first and collect some information. Along the way, Owen kept trying and found that mages were subject to too many restrictions, far less convenient than warlocks and other professions, whose abilities are derived from blood. On the other hand, the spell system of Hogwarts is not affected at all, because this system is a fusion of half-blood and half-soul. It achieves the effect by distorting reality and has almost no reliance on laws. So it will not have any impact even in the void. In addition, the ability to redeem directly from the system is not affected. Although the skills he mastered through learning are somewhat affected, Owen found that through constant familiarity and adjustment, this effect can be eliminated. Suddenly Owen stopped and stared at the small village in the distance because he felt negative energy gathering. Thanks to the elves' excellent vision, Owen discovered the undead lurking in the village. Apparently someone massacred the entire village and held an evil undead ritual. But I don't know why they didn't take away the undead. Is the other party still there? In this world that had become strange again, Owen didn't want to meddle in other people's business. He bypassed this direction and successfully found a main road. The appearance of villages and roads made Owen understand that the world has not changed much. It has not returned to the primitive and has not developed technology. It just does not know what the army and professionals are like. Thinking of this, Owen put away his extremely conspicuous outfit, put on a low-key gray robe, and walked on the road on foot. There had been no new traces on the road near the undead village for a long time. It was not until they reached a fork in the road that new wheel marks appeared. Owen also saw two travelers traveling together, but they did not appear friendly. One of them took a he took out his crossbow and drew his dagger. He stared at him warily. After a moment, he slowly retreated. After reaching a safe distance, he quickened his pace and left. Well, the security here doesn't look very good. Otherwise, they wouldn't be so vigilant and sensitive. Owen shrugged thinking helplessly that he originally wanted to inquire about the information. Now that a traveler has appeared, it is not far from the human gathering point. I hope to get the news I want from there. Thinking of this, Owen involuntarily quickened his pace, past the two travelers who were so frightened that they almost made a move, and arrived at Stonewheel Town. Stonewheel Town does not look small, and is a bit prosperous, so it can build tall stone walls, and the guard's equipment is not bad, including thick leather armor one-handed swords and bucklers, standard infantry equipment. Moreover, the guards were relatively strong and capable of advancing and retreating in a controlled manner. They had obviously undergone considerable training. Chapter 354 30 years after the great change. Stop the outsider! The guard captain holding the hilt of the sword stared at Owen warily and said. The two guards behind him took a step forward in unison, forming a half-encirclement. It was obvious at a glance that they had experienced actual combat. What's the matter? Owen slowly raised his head, revealing his smooth chin and pink lips. A trace of knotty hair also slipped from the hood, which made the guard captain couldn't help but be stunned. And at the same time, he felt something in his heart. I have a question. Is this a man or a woman? Spellcasters are not welcome in Stonewheel Town. If you have nothing to do, please leave as soon as possible. The guard captain, who was affected by the charm, softened his tone but the principle remained unchanged and he warned. Thank you for reminding me. I will leave early tomorrow morning. Owen was not angry because of this. Firstly, the other party was executing the order of the local lord. And secondly, it was probably the influence of the undead village. Warriors will not turn people into undead. Only spellcasters have this ability. So it is normal for the locals to hate spellcasters. To be honest, the lord here didn't hang all the spellcasters he saw or drive them away directly so he had a good temper. Of course, it is also possible that he is afraid that he will not be able to defeat him. After all, spellcasters are not easy to mess with, so he is willing to risk his life and stay alive for a long time. Owen entered Stonewheel Town and did not go to the tavern. He went to buy some books first. Fortunately, although there is no special library here, there are places that sell books, but the prices are a bit expensive. After all, because of the poor communication methods, high prices, and poor literacy rate. Books can be classified as luxury goods here, and most people really won't buy them. After briefly browsing, many books seemed familiar to Owen. He had obviously read them before he was involved in the turbulence. Fortunately, the appearance of several diaries prevented him from leaving empty-handed. These diaries were left behind by an old wizard 
who died in the undead village. Because the person who picked them up didn't know how to read, he brought them back his books. Unfortunately, he only exchanged them for two glasses of ale. The reason Owen bought it was that the old wizard died in the undead village last month. As long as he pushed forward, he might be able to determine how many years had passed in this world. After arriving at the tavern, he ordered a glass of the best wine and sat down at the small round table in the corner. Owen took out his diary and started to read through it. Diaries are not cheap, and they also serve as study notes. So these diaries are full of useful information, which is a big gain for Owen. It doesn't matter what the old wizard's name is. What's important is that he lived long enough. In addition, the previous great changes in the world had a great impact. It is naturally recorded on it. Therefore, Owen can be sure that he has been in the turbulence for about 30 years. Because it was too shocking, the old wizard devoted a lot of space to recording it. And many years later, he would repeatedly mention what happened that year, and also pursue the secrets of the great changes in the world. According to the records of the old wizard, the academy city disappeared too suddenly, and countless demons appeared too suddenly, causing the imperial capital to fail to react. In addition, the head of demons, the flesh church, the church of natural disaster, and other evil organizations jointly implemented the plan, the plan was shattered, and the imperial capital fell. You should know that the defensive measures of the imperial capital are enough to withstand the siege of a million-strong army. You can imagine the shock caused by this incident when it spread. Originally, the great changes in the world caused widespread chaos. And the fall of the imperial capital was the last straw that broke the camel's back. The entire empire fell apart in just a few years, with strong control over the territory and the most powerful dukes and princes. Time established kings and kingdoms, and large-scale wars broke out between them. The war lasted for ten years, during which an unknown number of people died. In the end, there were only five kingdoms left, except for the Elf Kingdom and the Dwarf Kingdom, which were located in a corner. The remaining three kingdoms were established by two Grand Dukes and a Prince respectively. The next level Earls and Marquises also followed suit in Jangwo, but their strength could not support their ambitions so they expanded their power around cities, and formed the Hundred Cities Alliance to resist the Seven Kingdoms. Unfortunately, the old wizard only moved in the south, and had never been to the north. He was not very clear about the situation in the north. He only knew that the northern barbarians went south again, and were defeated by three alliances there. Seeing this, Owen knew something in his mind. So he focused on other contents of the diary. The one that impressed him most was the old wizard's ridicule to the mage. The foundation of a mage is not only the spiritual power to leverage elements to transform magic power, but also knowledge. Theoretically speaking, mental power is only the foundation of a mage, and knowledge is the upper limit of a mage. But since the great change in the world, the knowledge of mages has become difficult to use. Several famous legendary mages even self-destructed on the spot. Those who were still alive had to choose to seal themselves. The wizards and warlocks who were originally small and transparent started to tremble and even the witches were shocked, dared to go out for a walk. However, the wizards did not remain complacent for long, because the world soon ushered in an explosion of professionals. The number of professionals, who were originally one in a thousand became one in a hundred, and their number increased by more than ten times. As long as anyone with some talent is willing to practice and has someone to teach him, he can almost reach the threshold of extraordinary professions. The wizard's spellcasting ability is cumbersome and unsuitable for combat. Now faced with competition from many professionals, it has become transparent. On the contrary, wizards are becoming more and more popular, except for demon warlocks. Under this situation, the old wizard was unwilling to give in. He got part of the necromancer's inheritance from nowhere and tried to struggle again. The result was obvious, and he was afraid that he would lose it. Seeing this, it was almost dark, and there were more and more guests in the tavern. Owen, who occupied a table to himself, was a bit conspicuous. But his elegant posture was obviously not something that a grey rogue could block. So those who wanted to share a table often discouraged. Owen put away the diaries on the table, returned to the tavern room, released the slime maid, and transformed into a soft and elastic lazy sofa. He fell down on it and relaxed. But his mind kept spinning rapidly. He definitely had to go back and take a look at the territory. Only by confirming the situation of the territory could he make the next plan. However, Owen will not be in a hurry. He needs to observe the changes in the world with his own eyes. Only in this way can he be aware of it. Otherwise, staying in the safety of the castle and just reading reports will be divorced from reality. Because of his super high attributes, 
Owen didn't feel sleepy even though it was late at night. But even if he fell asleep, he would be awakened by the sound of climbing through the window. After twitching his long ears to receive the subtle sound waves from the outside world and forming them in his mind, Owen could hear a thin man who was not too old carefully climbing from the corner to his window and taking out a bottle from his pocket. A hollow, slender wooden tube. You don't need to think about it to know what this wooden pipe is used for. But Owen doesn't know that thieves in this world can also use incense. Interesting, Owen whispered to himself, because it was quiet at night. Even though the sound was not loud, it was still heard by people outside. He suddenly stiffened and did not dare to take any chances. He pushed hard against the wall and fell to the ground. He rolled to the ground and ran away. The whole process was extremely smooth. Obviously he had practiced a lot, but a thick and long rope flew in and interrupted his escape plan. And he was tied up tightly. Just when Owen was about to take the person back, the other person broke away from the rope like a loach, leaving only a piece of clothing. He then exploded the smoke bomb and successfully escaped under the cover of the smoke, leaving him stunned. Even thieves are professionals now? This method is obviously not available to ordinary people. So Owen said with some surprise. As for being targeted, he didn't care much. After all, no matter his posture or some details, he couldn't hide his good background and his majestic temperament. It was normal for him to be targeted. Chapter 355 Village of the Undead After a night of silence, Owen left Stonewheel Town early the next morning with the guard captain staring closely at him. As for the thief last night, he had never cared about it, and it was not worth wasting his time. However, before walking a hundred meters away, there was the sound of horse hooves behind him. A knight wearing noble armor led twenty fully armed soldiers and several adventurers out of the town. One of them was the person last night. Thief. When he saw the thief rolling his eyes and running to the leading knight, Owen knew that trouble was coming. Sure enough, the leading knight then turned his horse and came to him and asked, Mage, wizard, or warlock, anything is fine, Owen said with a smile. He really wasn't lying. The sources of his power were indeed complex and diverse. In the name of the Lord of Stonewheel Town, Baron Oren, a mission is issued to eliminate the undead village. The total task bounty is 300 gold coins, which will be distributed according to the size of the contribution. As a spellcaster, you can receive an extra portion. Baron Oren also added. He didn't care what profession Owen was, as long as he was a spellcaster. So he said calmly, as if he didn't even think that Owen would refuse. And he didn't know who gave him the confidence. I remember that I hate spellcasters here. Owen rubbed the staff in his hand raised his head, and said to Baron Oren, Yes, a mad mage massacred hundreds of people in the entire village, as well as countless travelers passing by. I have reason to hate them. Baron Oren stared at Owen through the narrow gap in his full-coverage helmet, and said at the same time, It's really annoying. Owen nodded and said, which made Baron Oren's attitude improve. After Owen agreed, he joined the team, and then stared at the thief last night without saying a word and just laughing making the thief laugh so hard that he felt guilty at the same time. After all, he just pretended that he didn't see anything and nothing happened. So why bother to get the thief in? Not to mention the cost of having one more person in the team. If someone cheats you during the war, you will die without knowing how. Don't worry. I have a very professional ethics and never cheat my teammates. Irving saw the other person's nervousness and smiled and patted his shoulder, making the other person tremble and reluctantly smile back. Obviously, he didn't believe it. The undead village is not far from Stonewheel Town. And the group of people will arrive when it gets bright. No wonder Baron Oren, the lord of Stonewheel Town, can't sit still. The distance between the two parties is really too close. And he feels too insecure. Moreover, the undead village is too close to the road. And many travelers and caravans have been killed. Which is equivalent to cutting off half of the road to the town. It is okay for a short time. But over time, the town cannot withstand the loss of tax revenue. At this time, the thief started to use his hands and feet to sneak into the village quietly with the help of trees and shadows. Owen wanted to stop him. After all, the undead did not rely on sight to find the enemy. But in his perception, the opponent was able to use the power of shadow to cover himself. He immediately understood that this was the opponent's professional ability. No wonder he dared to enter the undead village alone. The thief's movements were extremely light and gentle without causing any wind or making any noise. He sneaked into the dead village like a ghost. This skill is the special skill of a thief. After all, a thief is neither an assassin nor a thief. 
in addition to a sap. He relies entirely on sneaking, unlocking and escaping to earn a living. Those who are not good enough will either be hanged or have their hands cut off and beg to survive. Day. After some inquiring after climbing over eaves and walls, passing through houses, the thief knew what he was doing and quietly exited the village. Little did he know that just after he left, the undead soul that had fallen asleep during the day had already lit up the soul fire in his skull. As soon as the thief came back, he told the information he had collected and drew a simple map on the ground with a branch, which looked very professional. However, Baron Oren was not very happy, because the thief only inquired about superficial things. If the village of the undead was so simple, he would not hesitate for so long before taking action. In fact, there is not only a skeleton mage in the undead village, but also a suture monster. A wizard died some time ago. If he also became undead, the situation would be even more difficult. The skeleton mage is difficult enough to deal with. And the stitch monster is an existence that can be defeated by hundreds of people. Even if he is faced with it, he has little chance of winning, let alone one against three. This is why he hired several adventurers. We can set up traps and lure the undead to kill them. The ranger in the team put forward his opinion. Baron Oren nodded and assigned several soldiers to set up traps. As for whether it works or not, it is better than nothing. Powerful. Owen didn't express any opinions during the whole process. He just observed secretly. Baron Oren is an intermediate knight according to his professional level, which means he can skillfully use fighting spirit, and his physique is not bad. With excellent armor and weapons, he is at the level of a hundred enemies. As for the soldiers, although they are not many in number, their physiques are not bad. They are between swordsmen and long swordsmen, but their combat skills are unknown. In addition to thieves and rangers, professionals also have a warrior and a walking knight. It's hard to say how strong they are, because the combat effectiveness of professionals fluctuates, depending on how well they perform. When the sun shines overhead, the action begins. The undead did not like the sun and were either hiding in the cellar or staying in the room. However, their hatred for the living allowed the undead to overcome their aversion to the sun and rushed out in the black smoke, trying to catch the thief who had deliberately revealed his traces cut into pieces. But the thief's plan failed after the skeleton mage appeared, and the undead returned to the shadows. However, the thief who was prepared for this threw out a special Molotov cocktail. This thing is a kind of alchemical product. Although it is relatively expensive, it is really easy to use. If the undead does not come out, it will have to be cremated. The soul fire in the eyes of the necromancer holding the bone staff flashed. His mandible clicked several times, and large black smoke began to spread in all directions. This is not an undead spell, nor does it have any lethality. It is just pure smoke. Its only feature is that it is opaque, making it suitable for use in special scenes, such as now, with the black smoke blocking them. The undead finally didn't have to be afraid of the sun and crawled out from every corner. Most of the undead are skeleton soldiers transformed by villagers, but their foundation is too poor. Even if they are transformed into skeleton soldiers, their bone strength is slightly insufficient. This can be seen from the stuck movements. In addition, there are also some skeleton warriors transformed from caravan guards. Twenty soldiers stood at the entrance of the undead village, mustering up their courage to fight the undead. Soldiers and foot knights also joined in, taking the lead to prevent the soldiers from collapsing. The thief and the ranger each used their own methods to lure away a group of skeleton soldiers, reducing the pressure they faced. However, the key to victory or defeat still depends on whether the skeleton mage and the suture monster can be eliminated. Chapter 356 Skeleton Mage Baron Oren stared closely at the skeleton mage standing behind the undead, his eyes full of anger. After all, it was the other party who caused the huge losses to Stonewheel Town. Sir Owen, can you fight against this skeleton mage alone? Because he realized that Owen was not simple. Baron Oren's tone was much more polite. However, the situation was urgent at this time, and he had no time to be polite. So he asked straightforwardly, Road. No problem. Owen nodded and said, although it was difficult to use his full strength because he was not adaptable to the new complex and changeable rules. The diverse sources of power allowed him to always find a suitable way. So he said with confidence arrive. In this case, leave the stitch monster to me. Baron Oren took a deep breath and said when he saw the figure dragging a huge guillotine in the black smoke. In order to fit the character, Owen started to cast spells, starting with a magic armor protection, and then the classic Expelliarmus. 
The skeleton mage was also an orthodox mage during his lifetime. Even if he was transformed into an undead, he still retained considerable instincts. He started with the mage armor, and then used the corrosive spell. His routine was similar to Owen's. The two sides went back and forth and entered the testing phase. On the contrary, Baron Oren came up and entered into fierce melee combat with the Stitch monster. After all, melee professions never play empty tricks. Stitch monsters are the backbone of the undead system, although they are sewn together from corpse fragments. Because all the materials have been fully soaked in the power of death, they are not only tough enough, but also possess powerful strength after being sewn together. Weighing more than 20 kilograms, the heavy guillotine has no weight in the opponent's hand, and the wielded tiger is like a branch in the hand of a naughty boy. Although it is unorganized, it is full of destructive power that cannot be ignored. Faced with the overpowering stitch monster, Baron Oren could only use his shield to deflect the opponent's attack, and did not dare to take a direct attack. Even so, the sophisticated shield began to become irregular under the continuous critical hits. While the body was shaking, the limited counterattack could not cause enough damage. After all, to the undead, a mere fatal injury was nothing at all. Not to mention that the Stitch monster was originally a torn corpse. Sensing that Baron Oren's situation was not good, Owen shook his head and reluctantly worked harder. The magic spells in the Hogwarts series are essentially the ability to mix magic and spiritual power to distort reality. Therefore, the effects of many spells are completely unreasonable, such as space spells, repair spells, cleansing spells, and even the ability to manipulate time. Props. Because his destructive power is low but almighty enough. Owen has never given up research in this area. Coupled with the growth of telepathy, the most important thing is that the authority space has given him the same ability to distort reality. To a certain extent, he can be its called a reality warper. So once you get serious, you don't even need to take a shot of any spells or magic. You can get whatever you want. Of course, this performance is a bit outrageous. And since he has only mastered this ability initially, Owen only uses it as an auxiliary ability to lower the learning threshold, enhance the power of skills, and achieve the effect of 1 plus 1 being greater than 2. The originally invisible armor protection not only appears, but also has a steel-like texture, except for your weapon, which is basically no lethality. It is as powerful as a laser gun. The skeleton mage has used many methods, but it has not changed his transformation. A scumbag ending. With his hands free, Owen then used the upside-down golden bell on Stitch Monster, helping Baron Oren win. Without the skeleton mage, the undead inevitably fell into chaos. Baron Oren pursued the victory and led his soldiers to eliminate all the undead and set the village on fire, bringing the battle to an end. Because Owen contributed the most this time, he got half of the 300 gold coins. The remaining people, the warriors and the walking knights as the main force, took the lion's share, followed by the rangers, and the thieves the least, and most of them were taken away by Baron Oren because he stole if something is caught. This time it is a meritorious service, and the money taken away is a fine. Dear Spellcaster, I wonder if you lack a loyal servant. Putting away the poor three gold coins, the thief rolled his eyes, ran to Owen, and saluted gracefully before saying, Yes, and I think you are a good fit, Owen said with a smile. Now it was the thief's turn to feel unsure. After all, he also knew that he was not a good person. So the problem was, knowing that he was not a good person, he still dared to what is the purpose of keeping him. Well, if there is someone suitable, I will definitely introduce it to you. After saying this, the thief turned around and ran away. Irving just smiled at this and then rejected Baron Oren's solicitation. After the other party left, Owen returned to the undead village that had been reduced to ruins and stood in front of a well. Just by reaching out and grabbing, the wellhead and the surrounding land were separated from the earth and suspended in the air motionless. This shows that Owen's mental power is very strong at this time, and he already has considerable power. Putting the wellhead aside, Owen looked down and found a secret room. Too lazy to go down. The transformation technique and the power of telepathy were used to lift the entire soil layer, revealing that although it was a skeleton, it could still be seen that it was full of helplessness and fear. The puppet technique is good, and the spell casting is also very standard. It's a pity that he met me. Owen squinted his eyes and stared at the other person. The previous skeleton mage was transformed from an unlucky old wizard. The real skeleton mage has never shown up and has been hiding in the secret room under the well for research. Unfortunately, 
he met Owen, and all his methods were useless. Mon, a member of the Imperial City Mage Group, has met you. Skeleton Mage Mog still maintained his etiquette, even if he was facing an enemy. I remember that the Imperial City has fallen. Owen recalled that the first time he entered the Imperial City was still vivid in his mind, but it was gone in the blink of an eye, so he felt a little emotional. Yes, that place has become the death paradise of the Head of Demons, the Flesh Church, and the Church of Natural Disasters, Skeleton Mage Mog said in a complicated tone after a moment of silence. Then you have also fallen. After Owen finished speaking, he looked at the village with only broken walls remaining. Yes, I have fallen. Skeleton Mage Mog put the manuscripts and diaries he studied in a box, raised his head, and said to Owen, Kill me and take away my research. Knowledge is innocent. Skeleton Mage Mog didn't care about death, but it was a pity that his research had not been completed yet. You're overthinking. Although I'm not evil, I'm not a messenger of justice either. So come with me. Owen said calmly, if he had just traveled through time, maybe Owen would have killed the other party. But now, he really doesn't care much about the crimes committed by the other party. Even if the other party destroyed the entire village and killed many travelers passing by, it had nothing to do with him. There are no laws in this world, and there is no clear distinction between good and evil. Wars between nobles and lords often last for hundreds of years, and various organizations fight each other. There are so many innocent people dying that he can't help but pity them, compared with good and evil. Owen is more concerned about whether the other party is useful to him. If he is useful, he will stay. If not, he will be killed. It is so realistic. The skeleton mage Maud agreed, put on a robe that could block the sun, and followed Owen on his journey. Chapter 357 Entering the Secret Realm by Mistake Through Communication Owen discovered that Maud was not actually evil. He was just simply unlucky. As a member of the Imperial City Mage Group, an elite among the elite, with high income and various benefits, Mog still lived a comfortable life even in the Imperial Capital, and was a frequent visitor to Succubus Night until that day came. Chaos and killing. Demons and undead. The sudden changes made it difficult for Mog to adapt. After all, mages are more interested in researchers. And the Imperial City Mage Group has not encountered war for hundreds of years, and has already become a research institution. Therefore, even the Imperial City has terrifying the defensive measures were theoretically capable of resisting double-digit legends and millions of troops. But after losing the opportunity and encountering backstabbing from traitors and traitors, the defenses were breached without much effect. In a panic, Mog was at a loss and was attacked by someone. He was severely cursed and had no choice but to activate the emergency teleportation device and escape from the battlefield. However, he still inevitably began to become undead. So he hid in a secret room under the village and tried to find a solution. Method. Looking at his current appearance, it was clear that he had failed. And the curse had spread, turning the entire village into undead. In order to avoid being disturbed by people attracted by the undead, Mog pieced together the corpses he had previously dissected to study the undead and created a stitch monster. This is the origin of Mog. A pure unlucky guy. However, this does not affect his value. A senior mage who is good at research understands the latest and most advanced theoretical knowledge of the Imperial Capital at that time and is familiar with the Imperial Capital's defense measures. His value is immeasurable, especially when Owen has the ability to reach out. When in the Imperial Capital, unfortunately, due to the curse, Mog had always stayed in the basement, causing him to have little understanding of the changes in the outside world. The two could only follow the general direction to the north and suddenly entered a strange space. The impact of the secret realm flowing into the world is not limited to what Owen understands. Another huge impact is that the world has become bigger. After all, so much has been poured into it. How can it not be stretched? What's interesting is that even though the walls of the world have become thinner due to expansion, not only are there more bulges on the outside, there are also many wrinkles on the inside. The bulges on the outside are demi-planes that cannot exist independently, and can only be attached to the wall of the world. While the wrinkles inside are actually space fragments that have not been completely digested, these fragments either have unique and incompatible law imprints, or they have high quality and difficult to digest origins. Because they are difficult to digest, although they are integrated into the world, they are not completely integrated, showing a superposition state, like a pocket, seemingly integrated, but always somewhat isolated. The space is formed by the folds may be large or small. But the biggest feature is that there is always a semi-superimposed channel. 
This kind of passage is difficult to find, but it has unique rules. Therefore, if you are not careful, you will often accidentally enter it unconsciously. Owen just made a wrong step and entered a certain fold space. With Owen's talent for space, he shouldn't have made such a stupid mistake. But who made him focus most of his energy on discussing the changes in the world with Mon? And by the time he realized something was wrong, it was already too late. He didn't dare to use the space teleportation ability at all. Because he was already in an unstable space. If he used the space ability without knowing how much force to use, Owen didn't know where he would be teleported. Someone's coming in! Owen heard an exclamation before he could stand still. And he immediately put on a piece of armor to protect himself. Mon, who had just landed next to him, also skillfully added mage armor to himself. The one who made the sound was a standard team of adventurers. Thieves, warriors, and warlocks. They were rushing behind him like crazy. And then fell into a ball in despair. Damn it! The grumpy warrior with nowhere to vent his temper actually walked angrily toward Owen with a tomahawk in his hand. It was obvious that he didn't intend to talk properly. Irving would let him get used to it. Hogwarts has regulations that prohibit the use of transfiguration on people. But does he seem like someone who will abide by the regulations? If you have the ability, tell the professor. Calmly raising the staff, Owen used the Hogwarts version of the sheep transformation spell. Unexpectedly, something went wrong the first time he used it. The soldier carrying the battle axe looked at himself, who suddenly became furry blankly. He didn't know what happened for a while. But his two companions could see it clearly. The muscular man with chest hair, who was originally full of masculine aura, is now covered with white cloud-like wool. He also has a pair of small horns on his head. With his blank eyes, he looks a little cute. Seeing the great transformation of their companions, the thieves and warlocks felt their hearts tremble. There was a high-level mage who was suspected of mastering instant magic and an unknown spellcaster. The thief and the warlock didn't know that they had kicked the iron plate, and they immediately knelt down neatly, showing their ability to bend and stretch. The proficiency of heartache. The half-man, half-goat warrior's IQ seems to have been affected. He is lying on the ground eating grass. He is eating very deliciously. This makes the thieves and warlocks kneel down waiting to be punished. As for face and other things. Guess what? Why were there so many people in their team? But now only two of them were still alive. Now tell me where this place is. Who are you? Owen used his transformation technique. And the ground rose up and turned into a stone chair. Although it was uncomfortable to sit on. It was more elegant. As soon as he spoke, the two of them shivered. Mog is not good. As a subordinate, he doesn't even know how to set off his boss's majesty. He needs more training. Lying in front of a spellcaster is definitely a very stupid thing. Even the most brilliant thief dare not say that he can 100% hide it from a spellcaster with various means. So the two of them rushed to try to tell Owen interesting news. Save the other party from hacking one to death before asking. These three people. No. I should say these two people. Are professional treasure hunters. As for warriors. As we all know. Treasure hunting is very dangerous. So cannon fodder and human shields must be prepared in advance. Therefore. It is normal for the treasure hunting duo to have three people. If necessary, it can be four or five people. Anyway, when it comes to dividing the money just the two of them. As for this place, the two of them found it through a treasure map. It is said that it is a secret place where precious treasures are hidden. Although there are not many folds similar to space pockets. They are not few. So it has long had a special name. Which is the secret realm. The problem is that the power of the secret realm is beyond the imagination of the two of them. And even the warriors with no brains dare not take it hard. What's even worse is that they can't get in or out. The three of them have been trapped in the secret realm for several days. If they don't get out, they will probably eat dirt. If there is anything worse than this, it is that three weak chickens were forced to stay in the same space with two murderous men. So in order to save their lives, the treasure hunting duo not only knelt down, but also took out the treasure map they had collected and told many precious messages. Treasure hunters have been around for a long time. It can be said that treasure hunters and mercenaries are the predecessors of adventurers. Therefore, each treasure hunter has his or her own uniqueness and possesses a lot of secret information. These are all precious wealth. Therefore, every time they say a word, both of them feel heartbroken. But in order to survive, they have to say it, let alone hide anything. Because they can feel from each other's soul deep gaze and the feeling that their own thoughts are being peeped into. Knowing what their situation is now. How dare you lie? 
I'm afraid it would be like if you turned into a sheep and gnawed grass. I didn't see the warrior sheep eating grass until they vomited. Huh? Why did he swallow it back again? Chapter 358 The Secret Realm is Equal to the Copy After these years of exploration, the secret realm has been explored pretty much. At least that's the surface information. It is currently known that each secret realm is special, with unique origins and legal imprints. Although they are familiar, they are not exactly the same. And it is the core of the secret realm that causes these changes. Theoretically, as long as the core is not lost, the secret realm will exist for a long time. And even if it is destroyed, it will be rebuilt. However, it is inevitable to lose some of the origin. Because in the process of reconstruction, part of the origin will be absorbed by the world. So although the secret realm can be reborn, but not infinite, what's interesting is that the core of the secret realm often breathes treasures. What they are cannot be determined. But they are precious enough, but they are real. But just knowing this is enough. Most people don't care about where the treasure comes from. They only care about where the treasure is. Since then, people who have peeked at the treasures in the secret realm have been talking endlessly and have never stopped. For this reason, no one knows how many secret realms have been destroyed. And no one knows how many people have died in the secret realm. What's in a secret realm? Owen naturally has this. But he is very interested in the secret realm. So he asked. It is said to be a rare weapon. But it is guarded by a group of night female wolves. So it is impossible to get it. The warlock spread his hands and said helplessly. If he could get it, they might have gone out. After hearing this, Irving had a question mark. If it wasn't for the sake of face, he really wanted to ask again, because the name didn't sound very serious, and it was very similar to the special professionals who circled around the steel pipe in some bars. Only after letting the two of them lead the way did Owen realize that they really weren't lying. It got darker and darker as we walked forward, and within a few hundred meters it turned from day to night. It was very strange, but for the two treasure hunters, they had long been accustomed to it, because anything could happen in the secret realm. There is a werewolf village ahead, and the treasure is inside. I just don't know the exact location. The sense of smell of those female night wolves is too sensitive. Their five senses are frighteningly high, and they are even more proficient in stealth. They can't go in and search at all, the thief said helplessly, who makes him unable to compare with the other party in professional aspects. He can only suffer. A werewolf who is proficient in stealth and has a dark night effect. This is what Owen has constructed in his mind. But when he gets closer, he sees a wild wolf-haired lady with long black straight legs. Is this really a joke? In fact, Owen is purely rare and strange. The secret realm is between reality and reality. The basis of its existence lies in the core. In theory, everything here is built from the core. However, because the core is incomplete, the secret realm is easily affected by the outside world. Especially once. The shape of a secret realm that has not yet been opened is easily affected by the first person who enters it so it is understandable that the things built are strange. After all, no one has ordered special XP. But Owen wants to know, who influenced the secret realm to be able to construct such a unique werewolf? What has he experienced? In addition, Owen learned from the two people that except for treasures and a few special beings, anything taken out of the secret realm will disappear. Similarly, as long as the core is still there, it will be rebuilt even if it is destroyed countless times. There is another feature. That is, Killing the monsters here will themselves be slightly strengthened. According to some mages, this is the effect produced by the passive absorption of the power that builds the existence of the monsters. Therefore, although the mortality rate of exploring the secret realm remains high, but it cannot stop countless ambitious people. Isn't this just a copy? Owen suddenly felt that reality was more magical than imagination, and the world became increasingly incomprehensible to him. The seemingly powerful empire collapsed like this and the unexplored world became larger and more complex. All of this made Owen feel uncomfortable. He felt like a new college student who had just entered the society and experienced being manipulated by reality. The feeling of being beaten. However, the secret realm did arouse Owen's great interest because he thought of something. So now, he needs to verify it for himself. Owen, who was a little eager to give it a try, asked Maud to look at the two people, then cast a magic spell on himself and walked towards the mountain stronghold alone. The female wolf of the night was really perceptive. Even if she didn't see it, she was still aware of Owen's presence. Obviously, she couldn't hide it from him simply by changing her color. A low threatening sound came from her throat. The female wolf of the night's eyes became sharp. 
The corners of her mouth were pulled back to reveal sharp teeth. The nails on her hands also extended three inches. If she was caught in a critical situation, she would probably take out the bird and its eggs. Owen did not dare to be careless, fearing that the opponent had demon-breaking properties. So he released the moon spirit marrow liquid to protect his whole body, and then suddenly stabbed out a dozen silver-white tentacles. Facing the tentacles, the female wolf of the night was like a frightened cat. While her fur exploded, she dodged all the attacks with a strong body, and then joined forces to attack from all directions in a tacit understanding. For a moment, her nails shone with cold light, which made Owen panic at the same time. He also started to become confused. After all, he still had too little combat experience, and he was either overwhelming others with force or driving a Gundam. So he had few personal combat experiences. Fortunately, the fused ghost and god Lubu's template worked. As expected, it was a template that he exchanged specifically to make up for some of his own shortcomings. When he stretched out his hand to grab it, a tentacle that became limp due to the failure of the attack suddenly seemed to be filled with energy. Normally, it becomes hard in an instant and transforms into a thick square-shaped halberd. In Owen's hands, it is so powerful that it can beat a bunch of night female wolves and run away. As expected, as long as it is big and hard enough, there will be no female wolf that cannot be beaten. The night wolf's attributes are definitely higher than Owen's strength and physical agility. The problem is that as a reality warper, he is cheating. Theoretically, he can infinitely improve any of his attributes before reaching the critical value, provided that he has this determination and willpower. Obviously Owen didn't have these. So after forcing back the female wolf of the night, he quickly cast the spell. This was what he was best at. The upside-down golden bell, the leg-locking curse, and the tusk curse are not very harmful, but extremely insulting. One after another, the tough night female wolves put their legs together and hung upside down in the air. Because of the body curves, the too long the teeth were pushed up by protrusions, and he could only open his mouth and look up to drool. Fortunately, these female wolves of the night are not serious creatures. If they had been anyone else, they would have fought to the death with Owen. He took advantage of Hogwarts' lack of lethality spell to capture all the night wolves alive. It wasn't Owen who wanted to capture the night wolves because he lacked intelligence in these eyes, but more like a flesh and blood puppet. He was purely curious about their existence characteristic. The divine edge is shadowless. Owen raised his hand and killed a female night wolf without hesitation. The other party first spurted blood and howled, and then turned into nothingness with lifeless eyes. If you change the color of the blood, this is a green game, the kind that anyone under the age of 18 can play. As the female wolf of the night turned into nothingness, Owen immediately sensed a weak force wrapping around her, but it was converted into experience points before she even got close to her body. However, Owen can confirm from this that the enhancement of killing monsters in the secret realm is real. But there will definitely be an upper limit. And it is impossible for the Shalippo sword god to appear. According to Owen's guess, the stronger the monster, the stronger and purer its power will be. Ordinary monsters can at most have a significant effect on ordinary people. Which is better than nothing for professionals. Although it is just a guess. Owen thinks it is almost the same. After some research, Owen found that the female wolf of the night is not much different from the soldiers he built in the authority space. The only difference is that the core is injected with the power of existence as filler and has a more complete setting. So it is more real. The kind that makes you cry when you hit him and bleeds when you hit him with a gun, which inspired Irving a lot. Chapter 359 The Potential of Authority Space After some experiments to eliminate all the female wolves and copycats of the night, Owen also found the hidden weapon playing with the black gold wolf head scimitar in his hand. Owen had no interest in this weapon with acceleration and stealth effects. Instead, he fell into deep thought. After a while, he asked the secret passage to be opened to let the treasure hunter duel leave. The thieves and the warlocks hurriedly ran away with the warriors, who were still chewing the grass balls, as if they were on the verge of amnesty. It was really that Owen's performance just now was too scary. With a wave of his hand, the copycat and the female wolf were all gone. With another wave of his hand, he hid. The rare weapons appeared in the hands of the opponent. They couldn't understand what happened. So how could they not be afraid? The two sides are not on the same level at all. Now they really have no idea at all and run away. If they were not afraid of leaving the grazing warrior behind and making the other party angry, they would not even want to take this burden with them. Owen has been meditating somewhere. Because the existence of the secret realm makes him involuntarily connected with the space of authority. 
and the more he thinks about it, the better he gets. In theory, the authority space is between reality and reality. It can be empty, or it can give birth to all things. It is very similar to the secret realm. Perhaps the god of reality and illusion became a god after mastering this law. Owen made a bold guess and decided to invest more energy in this aspect, compared with overcoming obstacles and carving a path to becoming a god on your own. It will undoubtedly save time and energy to follow the footsteps of the forerunners and find a way to open the way when you get to the end. After letting Mog leave the secret realm, Owen, who was undisturbed, slowly unfolded the authority space. Suddenly, the surrounding space began to twist as if it was being squeezed, creating more and more wrinkles. This is because Owen's expansion of the authority space this time is not simply to cover, but to explore the root causes more deeply, which is why there is such a big movement. Something is constantly expanding and groping inside the body. The secret realm is like a cat that has stepped on its tail. The entire space contracts violently and vibrates. It tries to squeeze Owen out, but is unable to do so. It is as if Owen has taken root in it, tightly blocked inside, and relying on the increasingly strong authority. The space is still expanding and deepening. The initial authority space was broken, although it was of extremely high quality and had the ability to distort reality and illusion. It was rootless. This is why Irving used it with caution. Because for ordinary enemies, using the space of authority is like using anti-aircraft guns to kill mosquitoes, killing chickens with a machete, and is not worth using. But for enemies who are truly above the law, it's almost like delivering food, and it's easy to get away with it. That is to say, it is not useful against really powerful enemies, and not worth it against weak enemies. It wasn't until he could exchange the golden tree seeds that Owen found the possibility of repair. The golden tree has the potential to grow into a world tree. In theory, it can be realized as long as enough sources and laws are poured into it. The problem is that he really has so many origins and laws. Wouldn't it be better to become a god himself? Fortunately, the existence of the system allows Owen to use tricks. It is difficult for him to be compatible with countless laws and origins. The golden tree is different. It is designed to do this. So after planting the golden tree seeds in the authority space, he constantly exchanges laws with laws from the system. Items with the same characteristics as the original one serve as nutrients for the growth of the golden tree. The quality and quantity may be somewhat different, but they are enough to build a stable and relatively complete foundation. And luckily, Owen was involved in the turbulence before and the authority space absorbed a large amount of the origin and imprint of chaos like a sponge. Although the impact caused most areas to become chaotic, it became more potential, and no longer incomplete, as long as the golden tree slowly absorbs and sorts out these laws and origins. The authority space will be tantamount to having the prototype of the kingdom of God. This is also the reason why the secret space appears to be very powerless despite its resistance, because of the quality and quality gap between the two sides. Too big. The only problem now is that Owen is too weak. Even if he cheats, he can't control the power of the space of authority, which is difficult for ordinary gods to control. As the space of authority continues to expand, the secret realm that resists fiercely becomes increasingly weak, allowing the space of authority to suppress it and continue to deepen beneath the body. When he got deep enough, Owen rubbed his hands, activated the mystery and wisdom techniques, and summoned the patron saint ancient sage and began to peel off the veil of the secret realm layer by layer to explore the hidden secrets. Peeling off one layer and covering it with another, Owen carefully explored the mystery of the secret realm. At the same time, he compared the authority space and found that his guess was correct. The authority space was another form of secret realm, but it was incomplete, and it lacks the most important core. But the quality is high enough to have a crushing effect on the secret realm. In any case, Owen felt that he had gained a lot, and he swallowed the core of the secret realm in one last bite, becoming the nourishment of the authority space. Although the authority space has swallowed up many laws and origins, it still has not reached the upper limit, which makes Owen sigh that it is not easy. Just an incomplete fragment has such outrageous qualities. If it has a complete authority space, plus the bonus of divinity and priesthood, how awesome will it be? Owen, who did not dare to think any more, left the collapsed secret realm, took Mog on his mount, and headed straight for the Northland. As he gets closer to the Northland, Owen gradually gets more information. The five kingdoms in the south are fighting for hegemony. The imperial capital is a chaotic place, and the hinterland is an alliance of hundreds of cities. The north is not much better. Nowadays, the Northland is divided into five, 
and the layers are clearly defined. From south to north, they are the Baguan Border City Alliance, which evolved from the Imperial Border Army, the Northland Nobles Alliance, which is dominated by the second batch of Northland Nobles, and the Northland Nobles Alliance. There is the Northern Glory Alliance, which is dominated by Beicheng. And then, there are the Northern Barbarian Tribes and the Barbarian Kingdom. Among them, the Baguan Border City Alliance, which inherited the Empire's Border Army, is the strongest, second only to the Five Southern Kingdoms and the Hundred Cities Alliance. It occupies either a heroic pass or a fortified city. It is also well armed, with a standing army of up to 200,000. Once mobilized, being able to gather an army of 500,000 people is enough to compete with the three human kingdoms. The neighboring Hundred Cities Alliance has to station a large army in this direction. Then, there is the Northland Noble Alliance. Due to the collapse of the Empire, a large number of refugees poured into the Northland. The Empire's border troops were also in chaos at that time, and they took the opportunity to eat a lot. Although the total population was not as good as that of the Baguan Border Town Alliance, because of the unique parliament systems can integrate forces to the greatest extent, so they cannot be underestimated. The Northern Glory Alliance, which is mainly based in Beicheng, did not receive many refugees because of the distance. However, perfect agriculture and trade have allowed the population to grow steadily. Now there are hundreds of thousands of people with two powerful allies. It is also impossible. Look down upon. As for the barbarian tribes in the north, because they failed to take advantage when they went south 30 years ago, they were severely cheated by the army of the barbarian kingdom. As a result, they have never recovered and regained their vitality. Many tribes near the north boundary river have chosen to join the most powerful the barbarian tribe, also known as the buffalo tribe, learned to farm and herd, and their lives became more stable. So the barbarian tribes in the north naturally declined. The barbarian kingdom is still mysterious. Firstly, it is too far away. And secondly, it is extremely xenophobic, resulting in very little news. Moreover, its move southward again ten years ago caused considerable losses to the three major alliances, making it the biggest danger to the north. Even if they are both barbarians, and the barbarian tribes in the north regard them as mortal enemies. Unfortunately, relying on the undead army and the newly grown warriors. The barbarian kingdom is still powerful enough to pose a fatal threat to any alliance. In addition to these, there are also many members of evil organizations such as the Devil's Head, the Flesh Church, and the Church of Natural Disasters active in the Northland. It is also a must-visit place for many adventurers. Because the Northland is vast and sparsely populated, the probability of triggering secret realms is very low. There are many unexplored secret realms that attract many adventurers. However, the danger level of the secret realm in the north is second only to the original site of the Academy City and the Imperial Capital, and most people really don't dare to explore it alone. Chapter 360 Changes in the Territory 30 Years Later A. Eh? Nowadays, the fragmented empire makes Owen sigh. At the same time, he is very curious in his heart why the empire collapsed so suddenly. How did the indescribably impregnable Imperial Capital fall? He is no longer the novice he was. There is not only knowledge in Academy City, but also the most complete history of the Empire, which has not been modified or beautified. Therefore, Owen is very aware of the size and potential of the Empire. The Empire's territory is very vast, spanning thousands of kilometers and supporting hundreds of millions of people. Its war potential in the Cold Weapon Age can be said to be fully reached. Therefore, although the undead and plague in the North and South involved a lot of the Empire's energy, they were not able to shake the foundation of the Empire. Even if the scale was ten times larger, it would still be about the same. And even if war breaks out, the time that the empire can sustain is measured in years. It can even be said that as long as the upper level of the empire does not collapse, the empire will not fail. Not to mention that the empire has hidden countless trump cards for thousands of years. And Mog is only responsible for a corner of the defense circle. Owen was amazed. Not to mention that this is just something on the surface. The real things that the empire has under the hood must be more powerful than this. Otherwise, what qualifications do they have to let the glory of the three noble gods stop outside the palace? But such a powerful empire was gone. And the three aristocratic gods did not make any movement. This made Owen difficult to understand. And at the same time, he was very curious about what happened in the first place. However, more detailed information needs to be returned to the territory. And Maya will not let him down. As soon as he entered the scope of the Baguan Border Town Alliance, Owen sensed the presence of the ninja. 
under the guidance of the other party. He returned directly to the territory through the secret FLA network. Of course, this FLA network was not redeemed by Owen. But 30 years was enough for the territory to master the technology of setting up a FLA network. So he was not surprised. Owen's return was quiet and did not cause any ripples in the North City. However, the entire territory's top management immediately put down their affairs and headed to the castle. After 30 years of expansion, the castle is no longer the old and small one it once was. With its majestic architecture, low-key and luxurious decoration, and the magic covering every inch, it is no less impressive than Hogwarts Millennium Academy. The moment Owen walked out of the fireplace, the castle's huge magic network was connected to him. After confirmation, he was immediately granted the highest authority. Obviously, this was taken into consideration when setting up the magic network. It seemed that they were intentional, feeling that the complex magic network extended to the entire North City with the castle as the center. Even if it was not perfect, Owen was still surprised by the changes in the territory in the 30 years since he disappeared. Could it be that he had really dragged down the development of the entire territory? Just when Owen was doubting his life, he suddenly fell into a warm embrace. Judging from the familiar squeezing and suffocation felt on his head, it was obvious that the person coming was Dale, because others did not have such a strong sense of oppression. As for love, mere, that is a suffocating bottomless swamp, and Owen dare not touch it. Sure enough, when Irving was put down, his eyes suddenly lit up. After not seeing her for a long time, Dale has grown again. This figure already has some of the grace of his mother Emile, but the height is a bit too high, almost over two meters. If Owen gets too close, he won't even look up. It was no wonder that the oppression he just felt became stronger. Welcome back. Master! Dell wiped the tears from the corners of her eyes and said with a smile while crying, which shows how excited she was at this time, compared to Maya, who is busy with her career, and Charles, who is determined. Dale is a traditional woman. Owen is her master and everything to her. You can imagine how she has lived in the past 30 years. It is probably useless. Medicine pestles can fill a closet. I'm back. Owen stood on tiptoes and reached out to pat him. He felt like he was beating a bull from afar. Then he suddenly remembered that he seemed to have grown up again. And the configuration had reached the minimum standard for use. Suddenly, his feet went soft and he almost sat down. On the ground, Dale, who had all the attention on him, reached out and hugged him. He once again experienced suffocation and squeezing. He couldn't help but sigh inwardly. It seemed that the next days would be difficult. But he didn't know the expansion spell. I can't stand it now. So maybe I should learn druid transformation. In addition, you must sleep alone before you grow up. Otherwise you will suffocate to death due to the weight of the mountain in your sleep. Which would be too funny. Maya, who was still beautiful and charming, came over with an improved model of Juan Bao Bao. Her seductive eyes and hidden resentment made Owen clearly feel the power of a super mature woman who has been alone in the boudoir for 30 years. What's scary is that this person is not only a warlock, but also has the endurance of a Medusa snake. It seems that he really has more breasts than chickens when he comes back this time. Next came Seal and Bella in human form. Judging from the bloodstains on their bodies, it was obvious that they had just experienced a battle. But they still rushed over as soon as they received the news that Owen was back. Compared with the gentle Dale and the seductive Maya, Charles and Bella only have loyalty and fanaticism. Time has not worn away their loyalty, but has become more indestructible. The four women are equivalent to Owen's cabinet. With them here, there will be no chaos in the territory, let alone the entire territory being systematized. And there is no doubt about their loyalty. Therefore, even after 30 years, his heart is still as stable as a mountain. Thanks to what Irving left behind, the old man is still there. Although aging is inevitable, it is not a problem for him now. This was just a meeting and Owen didn't say much. After all, he just came back. He didn't know anything about the situation in the entire territory, and he didn't know much. Talking nonsense at this time would easily make a joke. So he talked about the past and praised him. Let's talk about the future now. And this meeting is over. In fact, as long as Owen is not dead, there will be no problems in the territory. So even if he has been missing for 30 years, the territory is still developing vigorously. Owen was busy for a long time. Before, he was worried that the expansion spell would not be able to withstand it. But when he got busy, he realized that he had to turn on the watch to release the water. How could he still be in the mood to engage in such shameful things? Thing. 
Owen first restores his men's condition, although they will not be immortal. There is no problem in restoring them to their peak condition and extending their lifespan by a hundred or two hundred years. Even if they are willing to fuse with the inhuman blood, they can live for at least hundreds of years. The other titles that had not been touched in the past thirty years were all mentioned. He first proclaimed himself Grand Duke. Then Maya, Howard, and Collins were all made earls. And a bunch of other viscounts and barons were made. Although the position and salary remain unchanged. Everyone is still happy. After all, the title has been deeply rooted in the hearts of the people for thousands of years. This move not only prevented the territory's top management from being absent from work due to physical reasons, but also strongly gathered people's hearts, making everyone's blood surge, and they would fight for Hydra for another hundred years. Loyalty is loyalty. Positivity is positivity. And being willing to die for you doesn't mean that I won't be lazy. A healthy body and a glorious position are undoubtedly the most suitable methods to win people's hearts at the moment. The next step is to get familiar with the territory, which gives Owen a terrible headache because the territory has developed into a behemoth in 30 years. The information he collected outside before was only the surface of the territory. And the real scale shocked him. Chapter 361 changes in the territory 30 years later b. The Northern Glory Alliance was originally a joke created by Owen. But 30 years later it has become a behemoth. With a direct population of 1 million and an affiliated population of hundreds of thousands. Totaling less than 2 million people. It is a well-known local emperor in the north. Don't think that this small population is not as large as a city in the previous life. But in this world it is enough to become a king and found a country. However, it is a powerful force and borders many parties. The affairs involving all aspects are very complicated and troublesome. Which is very confusing. Fortunately, Maya knew Owen's temperament and specially organized the information. The upgraded Nuanbobo projected it. Replacing the original sand table. So that he could feel the changes in the territory more intuitively. Seeing the Northern Glory flags densely planted in a small area of the north on the projection. Owen nodded with satisfaction. Although he did not have any credit. It did not dampen his pride. After all. Everyone was his subordinates. And this credit did not count. Whose is his? The Northern Glory Alliance has a large population. But because they know that there is an upper limit to the territory's population conversion. Maya has been controlling the population of the North City over the years. It is now around 900,000. All after system conversion. Although this caused many small nobles in the alliance to travel outside the core and be difficult to control. It made the whole North City united and impregnable. And the advantages obviously outweigh the disadvantages. Of course, Beijing's nearly 1 million people cannot all live in the city. Even if Beicheng continues to expand, it cannot accommodate them. Only 400,000 of them live in the city. And the remaining 500,000 are scattered in the surrounding villages and towns. Although a large number of people are scattered outside the city, there is no need to worry about safety issues. First of all, there is the upgraded Mara city in the south, the growing buffalo tribe in the north, the unfathomable green shade city in the east, and even Bella in the west. The nomadic tribe set up defenses, so it was not easy to break through the outer defenses and invade the hinterland of Beicheng. In addition, Maya also used two subsidy quotas. One is Farrier City, and the other is Solari City. Yes, these two cities are within the sphere of influence of the Northland Noble Alliance. And they are not small cities. In this way, any movement of the Northland Nobles Alliance cannot be hidden from Beicheng. Not to mention that the two cities have more young people, and are well trained to obey orders. The army formed is the main ace of the Northland Nobles Alliance. The barbarian tribes across the river have become increasingly declining in recent years, and more and more barbarians have joined the Buffalo tribe. For this reason, some of the population quotas have to be allocated to the North City, and multiple barbarian villages and towns have been built. Otherwise, it would have exceeded the five-year limit of the subsidy. The population limit is 10,000, so it is not much of a threat. As for the alliance between the Barbarian Kingdom and Baguan Border City, they are strong, but they are far away. Even if the army is dispatched, it will give Beicheng enough time to respond. Of course, Beicheng's real confidence comes from the territory's productivity and army. 30 years is enough time for the territory to enter the Steam Age. However, the factories are hidden in underground cities and underground ruins and are not exposed. After all, the painting style is different so it is better to hide them. Only agricultural machinery will pretend to be puppets during spring plowing. It is used during the autumn harvest, and even sold externally. It's a pity that no one buys them. 
even though everyone knows that these machines are more efficient and can save manpower. The problem is that for most lords, the cost effectiveness of using steam machinery is too low because one agricultural machinery can hire hundreds of farmers to work them to death. This is not Beijing's arbitrary asking price. Metal itself is not cheap. Manufacturing steam machinery requires the use of a large amount of steel and complicated processing, which makes it even more expensive. You must know that a set of steel armor and weapons is enough for a fief to night to live on dirt for a year or two. And how much armor and weapons can be made from the metal consumed to make an agricultural machinery? Spending so much money to buy a puppet for farming. Those noble lords are not crazy yet. The extensive use of steam machinery has not only greatly improved the territory's agricultural and water conservancy advantages, but also enabled the export of a large number of goods, ranging from agricultural tools, firearms, armor, and cloth, which are the most indispensable best sellers in the north, because they have the initiative in trade. Although the Northern Glory Alliance is smaller in size, its status is not low at all. Of course, wealth alone without swords and guns is not enough. After all, it is more popular here for neighbors to farm grain and me to farm guns. So the army in the territory has also begun to change. First, the old-fashioned muskets were eliminated and breech-loading rifles using paper sh. L bullets began to be equipped. The breech-loading rifle can only be loaded with one round at a time. And it is easy to get wet. And the barrel needs to be cleaned frequently due to insufficient combustion. In addition, the too long barrel makes cleaning more troublesome. But overall it is good. The length of nearly 1.5 meters gives this gun a high range and hit rate. With a bayonet attached, it becomes a spear. The most important thing is the rate of fire, which is 10 rounds per minute. The shooting posture requirements are also low. And the usage method is the same as that of a spear. The structure is also very simple and is very suitable for large-scale equipment. In addition to guns, there are also cannons. Small caliber infantry cannons. Although compact, the caliber is only 60 millimeters, but the range and power are not bad. It uses copper case bullets with integrated ammunition and high explosive warheads. If the output was not high, it would be with this. Bei Chung can defeat the entire Northland with no invincible opponent. These are just infantry equipment. Thanks to the large scale use of agricultural machinery over the years, steam tanks have also achieved considerable development and relatively mature light steam tanks have been equipped into the army. A light steam tank with riveted homogeneous armor weighs only 3 or 4 tons, and a full load of ammunition. Fuel and water weighs less than 5 tons. This type of steam tank can reach a speed of 30 to 40 kilometers per hour when there is sufficient steam, which is comparable to an electric vehicle. Its main weapons are an 80 mm steam smoothbore cannon and two 10 mm caliber steam nail guns. Unfortunately, limited by resources and production. Although there are new equipment, it is difficult to expand. Currently, there are only 50,000 infantry and 50 light steam tanks. If it were a normal cold weapon era, this army would be enough to push down any enemy. The problem is that this world is not normal, let alone how much ammunition it takes to deal with a sea of undead bones. The legend of being able to tear apart tanks with one's hands is not something that these simple weapons can deal with. But the most troublesome thing is the resources because the steam machinery and guns in the territory require magic horn trees, and they can eat as much as they can, with the current size of the steam industry and army in the territory. If it is not controlled, the magic horn forest will have no time to grow. It will be only a matter of time before it is cut down, unless super farmland is used recklessly. A large number of magic horns will be spawned in a short period of time at the expense of destroying nature. Hornbeam? No one would be so short-sighted. Even if the current area of the Devil's Horn Forest is enough for Bei Chung to bombard all the way to the Imperial Capital, Maya has not approved the expansion of the army. Only the number needed to maintain defense. Various restrictions on knights make Bei Chung unsuitable for expeditions, because the new army relies too much on ammunition and fuel. But on the contrary, Bei Chung has almost no opponents in defensive battles. Even if the army of the Barbarian Kingdom dares to come, it can still make the opponent unable to survive. In addition, Maya is implementing the same strategy as Owen. These are all on the surface. The real trump card of the territory is the 1,500 strong guards. Chapter 362 Guards and Underground City A. The 1,500 guards are super soldiers that the territory spent a full 30 years building. 1,000 of them are Teutonic warriors strengthened by the T-Virus. Each one is 2 meters and 3 meters tall. They have physical fitness and tenacious vitality that exceed the limits of human beings. 
equipped with relatively mature guards type power armor. Standard bolt guns and chain swords. They can kill people with ease. Although there are only a thousand people, it is enough to push back an army of tens of thousands. The remaining 500 people were 300 ultramarines and 200 witch hunters, two real monsters that were superior to the guards. As the most successful work of biochemical transformation in the territory, the ultramarines have a height of 2.5 meters and a weight of nearly half a ton. However, their body shape is just strong but not bloated. On the contrary, the ultramarines are agile and their reactions are beyond the range of humans. They can chop with chainsaw swords. The fly is at your fingertips. This is a higher cell density, as well as changes brought about by extremely developed neural networks. It can be said that every extreme warrior represents the limit under the legend. In comparison, witch hunters are not inferior. These female warriors, who are witches have more powerful fighting skills than the ultramarines, and are proficient in spells, curses and potions. They have also received training from ninjas, thieves, demon hunters, etc. Training, in terms of means, is the most territorial and the most difficult to prevent. The guards' frontal attack, the ultramarines' unparalleled breakthroughs, and the witches' hunting for strange skills and tricks. With the cooperation of the three, I really don't know what kind of army can resist. It can be said that these 1,500 people are the strength of the territory. Even Owen can't find any fault with it. But after looking at the resources consumed by these 1,500 people, Owen's expression changed. The 50,000 troops combined didn't cost them as much. The main reason is that power armor is too expensive. Even the simplified guard-type power armor is made of mithril steel skeleton and composite armor. It is strong and durable, and can also be enchanted. In addition, the power backpack is also a relatively successful imitation of the energy core. And it is an incredible technology even in this world. The total production cost is an exaggeration to say that it is equal to the same weight of gold. But it is also much more expensive than the same weight of silver. Not to mention the exclusive power armor of the ultramarines, which uses adamantin steel skeleton and mithril steel armor. Its value is more expensive than gold of the same weight. Even witch hunting, which seems to be inexpensive, requires a long time to cultivate and consumes a lot of magic resources. It can be said that none of the three professions that make up the guards is cheap although the price was expensive. From the perspective of combat effectiveness, it was only a matter of time before the guards consisting of 1,500 people would win against 50,000 new-style troops. So Owen felt a little entangled in his heart. In any case, the existence of the guards did give Owen confidence, filling the gap between the territory's ordinary army and the legendary combat power. But the strange thing is that without him, there would be so many Teutonic warriors in the territory. After reading it, I realized that the Teutonic warriors were powerful, but they were also one of the arms of the imperial era. In other words, as long as their physical fitness and potential met the standards, they could change their profession through training. The only problem is that the Teutonic warriors are too inhuman. Even knights can hardly reach this level of exaggeration. It is not an exaggeration to describe them as one in a million. Therefore, the Teutonic warriors in the previous territory were all exchanged by Owen. However, as more and more northern barbarians joined the territory. The Teutonic warriors had the basis to appear on a large scale. The Northland barbarians can be said to be the pinnacle of pure-blood humans based on their physical fitness alone. So there are many candidates with the potential to become Teutonic warriors. In addition, after arriving in the territory, they have no worries about food and clothing. And their physical fitness can be improved after systematic training. They are the best source of soldiers. Owen was immediately delighted. The Teutonic warriors, as the ace arms of the imperial era, even without further strengthening, were still able to withstand firearm damage to a certain extent after being equipped with well-equipped armor. At least ordinary bullets could not penetrate a finger-thick gun. Steel armor. If they are strengthened by the T-virus and equipped with power armor, unless they are directly hit by artillery, these guys will be almost invincible on the battlefield. Otherwise, how can they be worthy of this expensive equipment? Seeing this, Owen couldn't help but go to the dungeon. Because that's where the reinforcements and equipment of the guards and ultramarines came from. The underground city is still divided into three floors. But in fact the interior has become more complicated. Especially the first floor. Which is the base camp of the roots. Continues to expand on the basis of the first floor. Various organs and secret passages are all over the north city. Like roots. At the same time. Due to the absorption of the black hands branch in the north. In addition to the ninja system. 
professions such as thieves, thieves, and assassins were also added. There were countless informants and spies on the outside. With these, the basic intelligence network has been laid to the north. The Guangyan City Alliance is currently infiltrating the 100 Cities Alliance and the five southern countries. But it will take more time. After all, manpower needs to be trained and intelligence needs to be collected. Not to mention conflicts with other forces. Especially the Black Hand. Both sides can talk about making a big feud. Now the three giants at the root are Samui, Shinobu, and Mabuyi, who was summoned when he left. Needless to say, Samui and Shinobu. Samui was originally the secretary of the 4th Hokage. She was good at judging and analyzing battle situations. And was capable in dealing with things. She was indispensable for the rapid development of the roots. However, Owen originally chose to summon her. Mainly because of Mabuyi's unique secret technique. The ninjutsu. Tend of heaven. That can transport any item to any place at the speed of light. This secret technique is not affected by any conditions or areas. Any item can be transported to any place at the speed of light. It can be called the ninjutsu version of the airdrop pod. The original version of the heavenly delivery technique had many flaws. Such as quantity and weight restrictions. And the lack of effective protection. As a result, ordinary people could not bear the airdrop method from the sky. Because it would fall apart due to air friction halfway. After all, this is not skydiving. But is projected at an unimaginable high speed. Like a missile. Which is beyond what normal people can bear. After continuous research. The delivery volume of the heavenly sending technique has been greatly improved. As for the problem of lack of protection, this thing itself is not prepared for ordinary people. After all, compared with delivering a bunch of soldiers, it is far inferior to delivering ultramarines. Such a terrorist killing machine is cost effective. Not to mention that it can also be used to deliver bombs or biological and chemical weapons. In fact, with this great weapon in hand, Northland cannot control Beicheng at all. The problem is that Owen is not here. And the population converted by the system is fine. There is no doubt about it. But once it expands and the population increases, it will definitely cause instability. This this is also the reason why Maya clearly has such resources and heritage, but is always limited to the Northland. After an inspection, Owen was very satisfied. In fact, he didn't understand the current operation of the route at all. He only knew that if he needed information, he could ask them for it. Chapter 363 Guards and Underground City B. From the route to the second floor, it was originally named a High Precision Technology Production Center. And now it is worthy of the name. Thousands of spirits have kept the place in order, and various mechanical puppets and high precision machinery are everywhere. In the corner, many Owens can't see what they are used for. At present, after layers of processes, a large number of high precision parts are produced and assembled into various machines, including power armor. Bolt guns and chain swords specially used by the guards. These equipment are not only expensive, but also time-consuming and labor-intensive. It takes a lot of time to produce each set. So it is necessary to produce and reserve some in advance. Owen originally wanted to collect a few sets, but thinking that the ones dedicated to the Ultramarines were obviously better, he gave up the idea and only picked up one set. And then started looking around. Nowadays, in addition to the restrictions on the recruitment of spirits in the spirit manufacturing factory, the military construction of manufacturing gargoyles and iron golems has been free from restrictions. After all, as long as the manufacturing process is mastered, making two kinds of golems is only a matter of time and resources. At the same time, the bionic puppet originally based on the T-600 has also been updated to create a more advanced and powerful T-800. However, Maya did not approve it at the time because it was not needed. The ultramarines holding adamantine serrated chain's words are basically killing each other indiscriminately against the T-800. In addition, the speed and reaction are average. They lose the function of camouflaging and infiltrating. In addition, many functions are not suitable for fantasy worlds. The T-800 is really inferior. The cheap and large volume T-600 is useful. So now what is being researched and produced here is a bipedal robot that is larger, has thicker armor, and has more powerful firepower. To be honest, Owen feels that this is definitely a copycat of the Dreadnought from Warhammer. It's so similar. Of course, I'm just talking about it. In fact, this is an upgrade based on the early Goblin Woodcutter. So Owen felt friendly after seeing it. It's a pity that this thing is much more complicated than a steam tank or something. It needs a long period of testing and improvement. If you want to mass produce it, it's still early. 
Owen was dazzled by all the high-tech production centers. He lamented that the development in the past 30 years had been too fast. In some aspects, it had even surpassed the world before he traveled. However, he did not go to the third floor, which represented the most advanced technology in the territory. Owen, who has the highest authority, directly enters the core area of the third floor. This is where the Flame Queen's host and database are located. It is extremely well defended, not to mention a large amount of mithril and fine gold. The four rebuilt mithril golems are used. Also here, even if a few legends want to break in, they won't be able to do it in a short time. At this time, in addition to a super large crystal ball on the main body, the Flame Queen also has several small crystal balls surrounding it like satellites. This is the extension program of the Flame Queen which can perform special calculations better and faster. Welcome back. Master! The Flame Queen's projection is becoming more and more real. In fact, with the cracking of various rune systems, it is not difficult for the Flame Queen to construct a real projection. But it is not necessary. Well, I didn't expect that the territory has changed so much during my absence. I feel like I can't keep up. Thinking about his recent understanding of the territory, Owen couldn't help but sigh. Obviously facing the challenges of artificial intelligence Flame Queen. He doesn't need to pretend to be anything for the sake of face. Show me the research results of these years and the current projects. Owen calmed down and said to the Flame Queen. Okay, Master. Before the Flame Queen finished speaking, a dense screen of light appeared in front of Owen, almost making him think that the Flame Queen was infected with a virus. The first thing Owen looked at was the personnel. Currently, the Scientific Research Center has a director a deputy director, 11 senior researchers, 33 intermediate researchers, and 82 junior researchers. The director is Emily, the deputy director is Brian, and the rest of the researchers are junior high school and high-level professional spellcasters. Most of them are graduates of Greenshade Town Magic Academy, and some are transformed foreign spellcasters. After investigation, he was admitted to the Scientific Research Center as one of the incubators of territorial technology. Hundreds of spellcasters seem to be a lot. Plus the legendary mage Emily and the master Brian. It is definitely a very terrifying power. But for the various studies they have carried out, it is simply a drop in the bucket. At present, only the enhancement of the T-virus, the transformation of the ultramarines, and the optimization of the power armor have achieved considerable results. In other aspects, it can only be said that the idea is good, but it is unrealistic unless the number of personnel is double dozens or hundreds of times. The Empire's original heritage must be retained. There was nothing he could do. The various exaggerated research projects made Owen wonder if he was wrong. Although the research was good, it was very expensive. Even if he was cheating, his face turned pale, and he quickly closed his eyes. Isn't the span of this city in the sky and the void spaceship too big, coupled with the technology of the ultramarines and high-altitude delivery? Do you really want to learn from the Empire in Warhammer? Owen hesitated for a long time and finally did not veto these research projects. After all, as long as he is open enough, none of this will matter. Entering the research area, Emily, who had already received the notice from the Queen of Fire, sent a clone to receive her. As for her body, she was lying in the sleep box, and only her brain was still active. Emily's situation is very special. Without a soul, she is essentially a living corpse. For this reason, she specially studied cloning technology and wanted to create a soul out of nothing. But it failed. The clone body is not much different from the original body. It also has no soul. Even if the memory of the original body is instilled, it still lacks something more core. Therefore, the original body must mediate. This is why she has mastered the cloning technology, but the reason why the number of clones cannot be expanded without limit. Emily is currently studying the digitalization of spiritual will. Because once her body ages, she will not even have a chance to transform into an undead. Because of the Flame Queen as a reference, Emily has already achieved some results in this regard. Maybe it won't be long before she completes the uploading of her consciousness and becomes an existence similar to the Flame Queen. In contrast, Brian's research was more radical. He dug out his brain early and soaked it in a large iron jar of nutrient solution. It has gotten better over the years. And at least, I have built myself a humanoid mechanical body. Although it has more hands and more complicated circuits. I can still tell that it is a human being. Although it looks a bit scary. In terms of research. Abandoning all unnecessary organs and emotions is like practicing the sunflower manual since the palace. The efficiency and speed are incredible. 
and many researchers have followed suit and gradually transformed their own limbs and organs are replaced by machines, such as robotic arms, electronic eyes, and various interfaces. They are so cruel to themselves. As their most successful work, the ultramarines have been transformed to the extreme. The bones, muscles, and blood have all been strengthened, not to mention the standard two hearts and three lungs, even the nervous system, digestion the system, immune system, vision, hearing, smell, taste, touch, etc. have all been strengthened, and even acquired in human abilities such as low-light vision and infrared perception. Chapter 364 Goblin Core and Evil Radman A. Owen was very satisfied with the inspection of the dungeon. The only problem was that in order for many projects to continue, he needed to spend a lot of time exchanging the resources, knowledge and items needed by researchers such as Emily, because only he with the system could done. However, the resources required for research are simply a bottomless pit. Owen has to make some choices. Choose those that are priority, those that need to be postponed, and those that only need to be theoretical reserves. Otherwise, directly launch Sky City or Void Battleship. 100% the buy we will drag down the territory. So they must be prioritized. With Owen's current ability, it is obvious that he cannot do this job well. But he is the only one in the entire territory who is qualified to make choices. Considering the actual situation, Owen decided to let the Scientific Research Center continue to improve the enhancement of the Ultramarines, and then design a set of Terminator Power Armor based on the Power Armor, as a filler between the Ultramarines and the Bipedal Robots. However, the improvement of Power Armor needs to solve the problem of materials first, and this requires Owen to open the portal that has been disconnected for 30 years, and obtain precious materials from the mountains in the other world. You must know that each piece of power armor requires the consumption of mithril and fine gold. Without the resources of the mountains, it is unrealistic to collect them by yourself in the territory. Now that many precious resources in the territory are almost at their lowest point, and there are no more sources, I am afraid that many research projects will have to be stopped, and even the production of power armor will have to come to a standstill. It just so happened that Owen planned to go to Green City to see if this problem could be solved. And where was the most troublesome part of the territory? Otherwise he would not leave it to the end. After resting for a day, Owen set off for Green City. Compared to the increasingly majestic North City, Green City seemed to blend into the forest. Here, it is difficult to distinguish the difference between city walls and trees. And even the buildings. It is also perfectly integrated into the natural environment, resulting in more than 50% of the green area of the entire city. In addition to roads and houses, there are plants and many magical animals everywhere. Apparently the magical animals Irving left behind have multiplied. A lot. As for the population here, the largest number are goblins, followed by demi-races and adventurers. So this place is very dynamic. Whether it is goblins who are optimistic by nature, or they have finally found a demi-race that does not discriminate against them. They are all interested in green shade. The city has very deep feelings. Even adventurers with no fixed abode like green shade city very much. This is not only due to the system transformation, but mainly because everything here is like a paradise created for adventurers. For example, the Deshudong Tavern, which is very famous throughout the north, has a wide variety of potions, tailor-made equipment, and portals that connect multiple secret realms, not to mention a certain alley and the Succubus Hall. It meets the needs of all adventurers inside and out, and has become a recognized paradise and retirement place for all adventurers. In addition, the Magic Academy is becoming more and more complete. In addition to systems such as spells, potions, and alchemy, it has also added disciplines such as swordsmanship, writing, and tactics. Adventurers who have families and offspring are also happy to settle here and let their offspring enter the academy to study, etc. After graduation, even if you are not an adventurer, you can still go to Beicheng to take the exam. However, the teaching at the Magic Academy still favors the legal system. Hundreds of people graduate every year, but not many are truly successful. Most of them are apprentices and junior wizards, which are similar to adult wizards in the world of Hogwarts. Their spell casting abilities are limited. But to say how strong it is, it's not that strong. Among them, there are those who are good at research. A few have gone to the Underground City Scientific Research Center, and some have joined the Green Shade City Spellcaster Corps. The main job of the Spellcaster Corps is not to fight. They mainly study spell improvement, magic potion refining, magic herbs, alchemy items, magical creatures, etc. 
They are a diverse research group. But the changes in Green Shade City have made them indispensable contribution. Thinking about this information, Owen went all the way to the City Lord's mansion. General Wild Beast had already led his people to wait in front of the door. But compared to the frenzy and restlessness back then, he now seemed much calmer, more majestic and imposing. As an insignificant monster in the dungeon, General Wild Beast has been able to achieve what he has achieved so far. Even Owen looks up to him. After all, managing such a large territory shows how capable he is. He is completely worthy of the Liaohua template that was originally integrated. His civil and martial arts are all top-notch. Therefore, he was specially given the name Daegu. From now on, he no longer needs to call himself the Wild Beast General, but a senior official with a name. After entering the City Lord's mansion and sitting down at the main seat, Owen hesitated for a moment and asked, When did the mother and daughter leave? Owen asked naturally about his biological mother and sister. At the beginning of the great change, he left in a hurry, saying that he was going back. Naturally, Dagu was always paying attention to the owner's mother and sister, so he specially took out a thick stack of files with records of every arrival and departure. Owen flipped through a few pages and put them away without looking at them. In fact, his feelings towards the mother and daughter are quite complicated. He doesn't want to get close to them, and he doesn't want to reject them. He doesn't want to see them, but he can't help but pay attention to them. But after 30 years, it's okay to leave. Now tell me about the secret realm. Owen took the coffee and drank it in one gulp and said to Daegu, even though Green City looks peaceful, it is actually just like sitting on the crater of a volcano and the cause lies in the portal. The portal in Green Shade City is the most frequently used in addition to connecting to the mountains and the other world. Owen also opened the back door to the secret realm before it collapsed. This caused the secret realm to withstand the backflow of the secret realm when it collapsed and gave birth to the entire North Land, the biggest secret place because this secret realm is too huge and contains more imprints of origins and laws. It is better to say that it is a secret realm than a special demiplane, and its value is difficult to estimate. But what's worse is that there is a very special race inside, the evil ratmen. Ratmen are very common, but whether they were in the secret realm or were contaminated when the secret realm collapsed, these ratmen are actually able to use a very special energy. This kind of miserable green energy is highly corrosive and contagious to the body and soul. So it is called evil energy, which is evil energy, according to research. The territory concluded that this evil energy comes from a very advanced and terrifying existence. So it must be isolated in a secret realm. Otherwise the entire territory may be destroyed. In fact, if the ratmen simply use evil energy, it won't be a big trouble for the territory. After all, the ratmen are too weak, and the reproductive ability of the goblins is not inferior to that of the ratmen. And they are also smarter. In addition, the territory's industry if you have the support, you will definitely not suffer in a fight. The problem is that these ratmen broke the upper limit of evolution under the influence of evil energy, quickly adapted to the attack of the goblin mechanical core, and developed their own technological system through the picked up mechanical remains, gradually becoming a serious problem in the territory. According to the territory's research, the greater the stimulation these evil ratmen receive, the faster they evolve. Therefore, the best way is to maintain a balance and reduce the opponent's evolution speed. Therefore, the territory maintains a goblin core all year round to fight against the enemy in the secret realm. The fell skaven begin a war with no end in sight. This is also the reason why the goblin population in the territory has not been able to grow in the past 30 years. The casualties are too heavy. Just a simple estimate shows that there are millions of goblins who have died in the secret realm over the years, which has seriously inhibited the development of the territory. In fact, it is not that the territory does not want to solve this serious problem. The formation of the guards has this idea. However, it is not completely sure yet. So it is delayed again and again. After all, once the evil ratmen are stimulated, the ultramarines will emerge. That would really be a serious problem. Chapter 365 Goblin Corps and Evil Ratman B. It's not that the territory doesn't want to solve this serious problem. The guards had this idea in mind when it was first formed but it was delayed because it wasn't completely sure yet. After all, the evil ratmen are too evil. Once the evil ratmen are stimulated, if we also bring out the ultramarines, it will really become a serious problem. While listening to Daegu's explanation, Owen looked through the information on the evil ratman, his brows getting closer and closer. The original evil ratmen were no different from ordinary ratmen. 
They were furry and a little cute at first glance. But their eyes were a little green. Therefore, the goblins who went in to explore at first had no intention of starting a fight. After all, they were not devils. Nor were they. On the fourth day of disaster, whoever is caught will be killed. But as time went by, the evil ratmen gradually revealed their ferocious side. At the same time, because their companions disappeared one after another, the goblins also launched a counterattack. And the thirty-year war between the two sides began. Today's evil ratmen have changed a lot. Their originally rounded skulls have gradually elongated back to their ancestors. And their bodies are covered with thick and long hair. They have become more and more like rats that walk upright. They grew up drinking wastewater from floating islands. Kind of. The change in appearance is only secondary. Through continuous wars, the fell ratmen quickly adapted to the changes brought to them by fell energy and gradually evolved some special professions. The most deadly ones are fell warlocks. A group of people who use fell energy. The life-robbing spellcaster. At the same time, the fell ratman developed a set of technology based on evil energy by picking up broken machinery on the battlefield. Which surprised Owen. These ratmen must be cheating. Owen as a serious cheater, said so, it can be imagined how much impact the evil ratman brought to him. So without further delay, he directly called Daga to go to the ruins. Need to do some on-the-spot investigation. There are horse-drawn carriages and steam cars in the territory. But the main ones in Green Shade City are sheep carts. These dungeon-born magic sheep continue to multiply in Green Shade City and take on the important task of pulling carts. Unexpectedly, they are unexpectedly popular. Even some adventurers are willing to raise one. After all, magic sheep are much stronger than ordinary sheep. Carrying dozens of kilograms of luggage can climb high and low without delay. And he is not picky about food. He can sustain himself for a long time just by eating grass. Not to mention that as a magic sheep, he can also eat meat, making him very suitable for survival in the wild. In fact, the popularity of sheep carts is also related to the environment of Green City apart from one avenue that leads directly to the ruins and the forest. The other streets in Green City are not wide. After all, they are built in the forest, and the small streets and alleys are winding and winding. It is a common thing, so it is not suitable for a large carriage. And the relatively small sheep carriage is obviously more convenient and faster. Owen got on the sheep cart, with hundreds of demon sheep cavalry wearing light armor and holding spears guarding both sides. As Dagoo walked out of the city gate, he saw a wide green avenue in front of him. Today's super farmland is used more as a mediator, because the magic horn trees on both sides of the road have faded a lot after continuous felling, and have been replaced by a large number of farmland and nurseries for cultivating magic horn saplings. Obviously, the territory's growing demand for magic horn trees has been difficult to maintain a balance through natural growth, which gives Owen one more thing to worry about. Fortunately, the scenery in front of him quickly distracted Owen and allowed him to indulge in the pastoral scenery in front of him. After years of continuous cultivation, a large amount of land has been opened up and has become fertile farmland. It is now being built into a production farm, providing a continuous supply of fresh fruits, vegetables, and food to the entire territory. In addition to the high-quality meat and dairy products obtained from grazing, the civilians in the territory have been satisfied. Life is quite prosperous because of the importance of the ruins. Maya gave a sub-city quota to the ruins. But there are no civilians here. Except for soldiers and workers. Even the spellcasters on the third floor of the ruins have the name of a core. The increasingly tight semi-permanent defense line outside the entrance to the ruins made Owen feel a pressure. It was obvious that the place was prepared for the worst. Beyond the defense line, multiple landing pads were built at the huge open-air entrance that originally spiraled down. The decent steam helicopters were parked there. Judging from the honeycomb-like bomb nests on both sides of the fuselage, they already had actual combat value. But Owen just glanced at it, and then frowned and stared at the bottom empty space. Where was the entrance to the evil ratman's secret realm? No wonder the territory is so big. Once the fell secret realm gets out of control, the ruins and green shade city will bear the brunt, followed closely by the north city. Therefore, even if the losses are huge, the war against the fell ratmen will not stop. The entrance to the ruins has been enlarged, filled with steam tanks, and fortifications and secret warehouses have been built. Obviously, once there is any movement, the torrent of steel will directly push forward. If it cannot be pushed, there will be resistance layer by layer. Owen rubbed his brows, feeling the pressure growing. 
All the previously sealed areas on the first floor of the ruins have been used and transformed into barracks. Thousands of hobgoblins and bugbears are training in company units. Their hard work and evil aura made Owen feel the goblins and bugbears. A trace of the cruelty of the brutal war between the evil ratmen. After years of war, the goblins' fighting methods have also undergone tremendous changes and become more professional, which can be seen from the equipment and soldiers. The original steam nail gun was too heavy and unreliable, so it was replaced by bolt action rifles and water cooled machine guns. Yes, the territory is already able to produce bolt action rifles and water cooled machine guns, and even more advanced weapons are not impossible. But the territory's limited resources cannot bear the consumption. The faster the rate of fire, the more ammunition is consumed. Coupled with the steam industry and steam machinery that consume more resources, the territory is really unbearable. So the only choice is bolt-action rifles and water-cooled machine guns with a rate of fire of only 3 to 500 rounds. But steam nail guns haven't disappeared. They've just been mounted on steam tanks. Compared with the steam engine that can only provide limited steam when carried by an individual soldier, the vehicle-mounted steam engine is obviously more powerful. So the nail gun is more powerful and has a longer range. In addition, there are no cartridge cases and propellants. So it can carry more reserves. Very suitable for fire suppression. Hobgoblin riflemen, bugbear machine gunners, goblin tankers, and helicopter pilots form a perfect core, which is enough for a battle. Not to mention steam tanks and steam helicopters with some black technology. The goblin woodcutter dungeon is being studied, and it has been put into the battlefield early and has become a big killer. However, compared to the detailed research on dungeons, the ruins are much more practical, and the pursuit is productivity and lethality. So the shape is a bit crude, with thick joints and many pipelines exposed. And the control will also be limited due to insufficient structure. It is precise and has obvious glitches. At the same time, the armor is forged armor made of wrought iron sandwich between steel plates. It is heavy, but its defensive power can only be said to be average. Although there are many shortcomings, the advantages are large output, easy processing, and easy maintenance, which is very suitable for bursting production capacity. As for weapons, the classic chainsaw is retained, and the other mechanical arm is equipped with a large caliber nail gun and flamethrower. If you like, you can also change it to a jet power claw or a power hammer. It is with these equipments and the extraordinary reproductive ability of goblins that the evil rat men can be blocked in the secret realm. Chapter 366 Sarcophagus Biped Mecca If the first floor of the ruins is a heavily guarded military camp, then the second floor is a bustling factory. As soon as Owen entered, he was almost knocked over by the steam and roar. So he quickly cast a bubble spell to isolate the steam and noise. As soon as I walked in, I found that there were thick pipelines, valves and pressure gauges everywhere, with almost no place to stay. These are the blood vessels of the entire factory, transporting high-temperature steam and cooling water, pushing heavy levers and gears to roar. Noise, but the things produced have nothing to do with precision. But goblins don't need those expensive things and even sneer at them, thinking that they are for sissies. If you are a goblin, you have to play big, thick, hard, hard enough, powerful enough, and boom, it's hard for Owen to comment on this. After all, he had seen the goblin throw a plane into a plane 30 years ago. He really didn't take his own life seriously. As the machine rotates, parts of different shapes are freshly produced. Xiong Dijin puts on a steam-powered exoskeleton, opens the power tongs to clamp the high-temperature parts, throws them into the turbid pool for cooling, and then puts the parts with them into the turbid pool for cooling. The parts with rough edges are put on the assembly line and handed over to goblin workers for further polishing and assembly. Finally, goblin engineers are responsible for assembly and adjustment. The first step is to inject fuel. As the goblin engineer's slightly shrill voice sounded, the hobgoblin dragged the fuel pipe over and then injected the black oil extracted from the magic horn tree blocks using liquefied coal technology into the fuel tank. The second step is to start the engine. The hobgoblin sitting in the cockpit slammed the button hard, and the method of using blank bombs to ignite the engine was really effective. There was only a roar. The black oil was ignited, and then the entire bipedal mecha was it began to vibrate, and as high temperature steam flowed in the pipes, the industrial butter used as lubrication began to melt making the machines running and smoother. The third step is to connect the power. The hobgoblin sitting in the cab pulled the lever with a serious expression. As the core gear fell, the power of the engine was poured into the whole body of the bipedal mecha. 
causing more violent vibrations. Just like it's about to fall apart, this process is very dangerous, and an explosion will occur if there is a slight mistake. In the past, the casualties caused by this were around double digits every month. There is no way. I am too obsessed with production and have no time or energy to polish it carefully. Even if it is assembled with standard parts, accidents are normal. Fortunately, the goblins have absorbed a lot of experience and built a lot of fortifications with sandbags and iron plates around them. Most of the time, they only need to pray for the hobgoblin as the driver. As the roar and vibration continued to decrease, it meant that the most dangerous part had passed. Goblin engineers wearing helmets came out again to conduct further inspections, such as twisting bolts to return some offset parts. This is not something ordinary hobgoblin workers can do. The engine is running normally. The power transmission is normal. Install the robotic arm and proceed to the next test. As the goblin engineer with a different colored helmet spoke, the bearded spirit workers worked together to push the heavy cart. With the two feet placed on it, a pair of mechanical arms of the mecha. As the gear rotates, the mechanical arm wrapped by the iron chain is lifted and then installed and fixed on the body by skilled hobgoblin workers and hydraulic oil is injected. The hobgoblin pilot in the cockpit is busy checking the exoskeleton-like thing on his body. This thing is called a stressor. After being fixed on the body, it can control the operation of the body according to the direction of the driver's force. However, due to its precision, this thing is not sensitive enough and requires a lot of force to move. So it is quite laborious to use. This is why the driver is a hobgoblin, not a smarter goblin. Unfortunately, even the hobgoblin cannot use it for a long time. It usually relies on joysticks and pedals to control it. This method is only chosen in close combat. As the hobgoblin vigorously swings its limbs, the nearly 4 meter tall bipedal mecha moves at an exaggerated pace. Every time it lands, you can feel the hydraulic rods on its feet working hard to cushion it. It is indeed a steel monster weighing several tons. But don't expect any accuracy in this kind of movement. But the bipedal mecha doesn't need precision. Its weapons are either chain swords or power claws. Or large caliber nailed guns and flamethrowers. None of them are needed. High precision. Generally speaking. Just rush. Rush. Fight. And get it done. There is a special testing area here. In addition to heavy artillery and other large scale weapons. Ordinary weapons can be tested. Owen was very interested and followed him there. However. He spared no effort to protect himself with armor. And then followed a group of people. The goblin engineers hid behind the bunker together. Apparently there were also casualties during this test. The walls and frames of the test area have been reinforced. And thick sandbags have been stacked as buffers. Followed by wooden boxes. Stone walls. Iron plates and other targets. The first is the nail gun. This large caliber steam nail gun mounted on a bipedal mecha uses thumb thick nails as ammunition. The powerful steam jet is enough to shoot through a homogeneous iron plate hundreds of meters away. When it hits a person, there will be a blood hole as big as a bowl. Any cover or protection will be useless. This is still a nail gun that focuses on penetration. If it is replaced by a gunpowder weapon of the same caliber, I am afraid that the person will be broken. However, this level of lethality is enough. After all, there is no need to consume additional propellant. Not to mention the softcore spikes and burning spikes aimed at killing infantry. Next is the chain sword. The 2 meter long chain sword is extremely lethal and can even saw light steam tanks apart. If it is replaced with a power claw, the armor can be torn apart with one claw, with strong power, powerful weapons, and thick forged steel armor. Each bipedal mecha is a veritable killing machine on the battlefield. A pioneer and dead soldier who breaks through the enemy's defense line. The hobgoblin quickly began to paint the bipedal mecha with gray paint, and at the same time sprayed the number of the war machine on it. Since then, all tests have been completed and will be delivered to the Goblin Regiment on the first floor. When the defense is changed, this machine the machine will then step onto the battlefield and fulfill its true mission. From Owen's point of view, this bipedal mecha has so many minor flaws that it can't be written down on a piece of paper. It's painful to see all the imperfections. But I have to say that this is the best choice during the war. So I especially gave it to him. Named Sarcophagus. The name is unlucky but it vividly expresses the boxy shape of the gray bipedal mecha and the extremely high driver mortality rate. If the infantry can still survive on the battlefield, then the survival of the bipedal mecha, which is at the forefront and can attract the most firepower, is no longer just a matter of luck. It depends on fate. Chapter 367, 
Massive Weapon, and Spellcaster Core. In addition to the Bipedal Mecha, there are two big killer weapons here, namely the 150mm ground-shaking heavy howitzer and the 300mm caliber 12-barrel fire tornado rocket launcher. The 150mm heavy howitzer does not use Steamjet SH LS, but a traditional ammunition mode. This design is mainly impossible to achieve, because the larger the diameter, the more serious the steam leakage, and the greater the air pressure required. With current technology, 100mm is the upper limit, and even this will affect the range. Besides, if steam is used, additional steam engines and complex pipelines are required, which is simply a nightmare for logistics. As for integrating it into a tank, this idea is not realistic, mainly due to the weight and weight of the 150mm caliber heavy howitzer. Due to its size, the built chariot may weigh dozens of tons, which is far less cost-effective than towing. Traditional ammunition firing does not have these problems. The range easily exceeds that of steam guns. The only problem is that it consumes more. After all, whether it is explosives, propellants or fuel, they all rely on the magic horn tree. Even if the territory is constantly cheated, it is impossible. Endless creation. Which is why infantry uses bolt-action rifles and slow-firing water-cooled machine guns, while suppressive weapons choose steam as power. Compared with the more familiar heavy howitzers, Owen was stunned after reading the data of the rocket launchers. The lethality of this thing is probably better than the legendary spells. A 300mm caliber rocket can turn an area nearly the size of two football fields into a sea of flames with one shot. If it were a small town, it would be basically gone with one shot. Twelve consecutive shots would be even more terrifying. Moreover, after careful design, the time difference between the rocket's falling and the specially designed circular ballistic impact point can use the continuous explosion of flames from the rockets to form a fire whirlwind-like scene. Therefore, even if the enemies within the killing range do not die from the flames, will also die from the vacuum caused by the combustion explosion and the thermobaric impact of the huge change. To put it bluntly, this thing is an oversized thermobaric bomb or the kind that fires continuously. Its power cannot be described as brutal, but as extermination. The only problem is that this thing is very heavy, so it moves slowly, and it is flammable and explosive, which further limits the movement speed. Therefore, the survivability on the battlefield is very poor. Enough soldiers must be sent to defend it to the death. Otherwise one bullet will kill it. It could cause a huge disaster. At the same time, the fuel and combustion agent required for the fire tornado rocket launcher are not of ordinary quality. Even if the territory now has more advanced equipment and a large number of mages and alchemists, the output has always been difficult to increase. Therefore, unless the war situation becomes difficult to control, it will not be used easily. Such a big killer. After witnessing several big killer weapons, Owen finally resisted the urge to find a force to challenge him now. After some encouragement, he came to the third floor of the ruins with great expectations. As soon as he came in, Owen noticed the anomaly in the space here. It was not just a Hogwarts space expansion spell, but also incorporated fragments of the secret realm, which expanded the space almost permanently. He also made great achievements after seeing the Caster Corps. The members of the Spellcaster Corps are relatively complex. At first, they were mainly witches and sorceresses. Later, as Owen continued to visit his home in the Academy City, the mage, alchemy and other systems were gradually improved. And then many of them were absorbed in the past 30 years. A spellcaster who was born as an adventurer. His system has become more and more perfect. Currently, the largest number of caster core are witches and sorceresses, who mainly study potions, curses, summons, herbs, creatures, etc. If which hunting hadn't absorbed many elites, the men in the caster core would have basically no way to survive. When Dokens spray them to death, and fight them to death. Even so, the men in the Spellcaster Corps have always been courteous when facing women, never argue, and are very, very gentlemen. In the Spellcaster Corps, the men are basically wizards, mages, and alchemists. They mainly study magic spells, runes, and alchemy, with a preference for science, so they don't need much space. They only occupy a small corner of the entire third floor. What's left is either an ecological garden built by witches that imitates a greenhouse or a voodoo land. Not to mention that breeding magical creatures also requires a lot of space. What Owen can say about this is that he can only blame those men for not living up to their expectations and being unable to beat each other with punches. 
although a little messy. The caster core has indeed made great achievements, such as seals and source extraction devices for secret realms. The former can stabilize the secret realm and reduce fluctuations, so that it will not be open frequently. After all, some secret realms are not only dangerous, but also of little value, so they can be sealed. As for the source extraction device, to put it bluntly, it takes the opportunity to absorb the dissipated power of existence when fighting monsters in the secret realm. The efficiency is not very high. It is difficult to have much effect on a perfect secret realm. But for an unstable small secret realm, this the thing is a big killer. And this is how the expanded space on the third floor of the ruins is filled up. In addition, the caster core did not have any outstanding achievements. And it was not as good as the group of female casters who continued to provide various equipment and supplies for the witch hunt. Next, Owen visited several other branch cities to familiarize himself with the changes in the entire territory as soon as possible. The city built by the bison tribe with large rocks and logs is full of primitive atmosphere. Simply put, the painting style is quite sloppy. And the barbarians are also very consistent with the painting style here. They are all heroic and majestic, and are not as difficult to contact as rumored. In fact, this is because the living conditions have improved, compared with the difficult survival further north. This place is simply a paradise for them. Therefore, the transformation speed after joining is very fast. So fast that the great shaman realized that something was wrong. It's too late. By the way, the great shaman who died 30 years ago is still alive now, because he obtained part of the druid inheritance left by Owen, and improved it into abilities more suitable for today's shamans. This is also the reason why he clearly sensed something was wrong, but was willing to accept his fate, because here he not only found the hope of completing the incomplete shamanic heritage, but also saw the future of the barbarians. So some problems were no longer problems. However, there is still a problem in the buffalo tribe. That is, the lack of a tribal leader. Because the great shaman is only suitable as a spiritual leader. When the war starts, the tribal leader has to take the lead in the charge. It was impossible for any of the more than 100,000 barbarians in the territory to be outstanding. In fact, Owen got a list immediately after asking Maya, so he called all the barbarians on the list and planned to select one of them to be the leader of the buffalo tribe. In the end, Owen selected Aguilee, the tallest, largest and strongest among them, as the leader of the buffalo tribe. He's cheating anyway, so it doesn't matter who is the leader, as long as it's not mud that can't stand up to the wall. Skillfully apply the character template to strengthen it, and then stay in the city to learn how to manage and command the troops. It took a lot of Owen's brain cells to choose which character template to use. After all, he had to be able to be both literary and military. So he chose Su Huang. Chapter 368 It's hard for me too. Su Huang's various attributes are not top-notch. But he has no shortcomings. Taken together, he can be called a famous general. With this template, Aguilee quickly adapted to the position of leader and tried to manage the Buffalo City. People's livelihood issues. And at the same time began to reorganize the barbarian army. The barbarians can be said to have all the people as soldiers. Even the decrepit old man can pick up an axe and chop one or two to death and pull them to his back when he has one breath left, which shows his bravery. However, except for a few elites who were converted into Teutonic warriors, the vast majority of barbarians were loose in nature, and even the discipline of the army was average. Although they fought bravely, it made them more difficult to command. They would get the upper hand in a fight, and it was useless for Zhuge Liang to come. At the same time, their easy fighting style also makes them unable to adapt to firearms. Previously, the territory tried to equip the barbarian soldiers with axe muskets, which were short-barreled muskets with axe blades installed on the top and bottom of the muzzle. In this way, when the distance was narrowed, the shot was fired first, and then the axe was swung to chop, which naturally took advantage of the situation. But after equipping it, the barbarian warriors either forgot to use it or didn't remember how to load bullets during a fight. Instead, they were distracted and increased casualties. Therefore, they simply used all weapons and thickened their armor and let them charge. At present, the Iron Bull Heavy Infantry, the special force of the Buffalo tribe, are heavily armored, wearing horn helmets, carrying round steel shields, and swinging battle axes. Even if the charging cavalry hits them, they will be shattered to pieces. Although this is a primitive fighting method, this is a fantasy world where you may encounter any kind of enemies. So having an army that is good at cold weapon combat is not a bad thing. 
after inspecting the buffalo tribe. Owen then went to the nomadic tribe where Bella belonged. Because of the special nature of the nomadic tribe, there is no fixed city. Most of the time, thousands of people are scattered over a large area to graze. This ensures that the pasture will not be eaten up by cattle and sheep. It also serves as a link to the west of the territory. Line of defense to ensure that they are not attacked by the enemy. The characteristic unit of the nomadic tribe is the nomadic cavalry. But they gave up their ancestral bows and arrows and picked up more convenient and faster firearms. Anyway, with the riding skills of the nomadic cavalry, they can eat, drink and piss on the horse, let alone reloading bullets, aiming and shooting. With them here, tens of thousands of people would not even be able to get close to Beicheng. If the nomadic tribe is the line of defense in the west, then Mara City is the iron gate of the territory facing the south. To the south of the territory are the Northern Nobles Alliance and the Baguan Border City Alliance. Once the two major forces invade, Mara City will bear the brunt. Therefore, after years of expansion, Mara City has already become a war fortress, with not only two walls, but also trenches and traps. As for commerce, leave it to the town not far away. Because of its heavy responsibilities, Mara City has stationed an army of tens of thousands of people, and even the northern city has a few steam tanks. At the same time, if a war breaks out, the city can still mobilize at least 10,000 to 20,000 militiamen, enough to support the reinforcements from Beicheng. Next, Irving secretly went to the city where Countess Ferrier and Count Solari were. He was not afraid of any danger. After all, the population in the city was transformed by the system. As long as he was not encountered by outsiders, he could stay with him at home. No difference. We haven't seen each other for 30 years. It's better that Ferrier is a witch. She still looks good despite all kinds of tricks. She is well known as a social queen in the Northland Noble Alliance. In comparison, Solari looks much older. Now he has handed over most things to his son. However, after Irving took action, this man has regained his youth. It may not be interesting to add a brother-in-law to his grandson. He will continue to work for dozens of years. Year is no problem. Of course, this benefit is indispensable for Farrier. After Owen left, she was still obsessed with her shiny skin and her waist and hips that no longer became saggy. It is estimated that she will not need the facial features she raised tonight. Go to sleep. After finally looking around, Owen couldn't wait to return to the castle. Took Dell with him to take a rippling hot bath. And then, after sleeping until noon the next day, Owen lazily asked the slime maid to lift him off the big bed, put on a new nightgown, and after becoming comfortable again, he slumped in the slime maid's version of the wheelchair, going up to the back garden to bask in the sun, and live a leisurely retirement life in advance is still based on the standard of not being able to take care of oneself. The greenhouse behind the castle was obviously rebuilt, compared with the original emphasis on planting and teaching. It now looks closer to nature and beautiful. There are many magical plants and animals, some of which were exchanged from the system, and some were collected from secret realms or other places, enriching species diversity. Coming to Dale's territory, it was obviously impossible for Owen to escape and scathe. He lost three kilograms when he walked, and lost two and a half kilograms in sweat alone. His eye circles were blue, and he had to hold on to many modified versions. Make up the soup and escape. Owen, who is addicted to the gentle country, is too lazy to cheer up. The territory has continued to operate for decades without him, but has become stronger and stronger. How can he cheer up in this case? He might as well put his strength into a few women. If they are in a happy mood, their work efficiency will be improved. Even if it can increase a few points, he can be regarded as making a full contribution to the development of the territory in disguise. What's more, this is also a strenuous job, and it requires a lot of effort and energy. So he is also very hard. Okay, with a large table of soft food to eat, Owen felt at ease. In the following days, apart from slowly understanding the changes in the territory and exchanging some things and knowledge needed for territory research, Owen had almost no use until he discovered the changes in the authority space. The core of the authority space began to become stable, and the golden tree, which was already somewhat sizable, took root in the void, absorbing and transforming the still chaotic origin, sorting out the messy laws, and re-embodying what Owen originally exchanged in it. The first ones to materialize are some military structures, mainly the military units from the Heroes of Invincibility series. It's a pity that the system is only 50% enabled. Due to the high world limit in the Heroes of Invincible series, only level 1 to 4 units can be exchanged. 
Otherwise, a group of dragons and angels will be exchanged, and Owen will dare to walk sideways in the north, turning on various states and summoning ancient sages. Owen took the opportunity to rebuild these military buildings and strengthen them to prevent them from falling behind before they reached a large scale. The golden tree is the core, and natural-oriented buildings are built around it. Then Irving divides the levels into layers to create an upper space and a lower space. The lower space is located at the root of the golden tree. According to Feng Shui, it is in. So whatever evil is piled in it, ten abyss demons, who are about to become moldy have learned to play mahjong and fight landlords. As for the upper level, it is left to the dragon mother. She is currently locating through the belief line of the mountain lizard people. Once completed, Owen can try to open the transmission channel between the two sides. Chapter 369 Faith and Holy Objects Regardless of dividing the space or embodying the military buildings, they are actually simple uses of the authority space. So far, Owen's understanding of the authority space is still only superficial, even if he makes it complete again. However, Owen, who was in various states, was fortunate enough to peek into the deeper rules of the authority space during this process, and felt that he had gained a lot. It's a pity that Owen couldn't believe it, because he never overestimated his ability and understanding. And he made breakthroughs with just a little knowledge, which was not suitable for people like him who were accustomed to eating soft food. Therefore, he gave up those seemingly profound things and turned to research is more realistic. Although this did not immediately increase Owen's strength, it gave him some insights into his faith. Faith belongs to the realm of gods. Even legends can only vaguely perceive it, but they can never touch it. It is like fishing for the moon in the water. It seems to be close in front of you, but in fact it is far away. Only with divinity can you attract and touch it. The qualifications for faith are that only those with priesthood and authority have the ability to exercise faith. Oh, it is not a legend. Nor is he a god. It is only through the system that he has mastered the space of authority that ordinary gods cannot have. With the golden tree and many opportunities, he was lucky enough to gain the understanding of faith in his current strength and realm. For ordinary people, this kind of realization would be meaningless. Because there is no way to spread faith. No soil for the development of faith. And no ability to utilize faith. But Owen has all these. The millions of people transformed by the system are his most devout believers. The ones who are willing to die. At the same time, he also has the most professional monks and priests as shepherds. And even a powerful Templar knights to help him maintain his faith. And without his knowledge, the sacred scriptures prepared for him by the territorial temple in the early days have been updated several times. Version. As for collecting idols of faith, Owen also has equipment that integrates holy objects to replace them. Even in terms of divine priesthood, there is still room for authority and a golden tree to make up for it. It can be said that Owen already has all the conditions to become a god. It just depends on whether he is willing to take this step. Although becoming a god is good, Owen is not ready to turn himself into a third-rate god in such a hurry. He has a long lifespan, huge potential, and powerful power. There is no need to rush at all. He has plenty of time and conditions to make adequate preparations. So he planned carefully. In addition, Owen remembers a saying in his previous life that incense is poisonous, and gods feed on incense. If the incense is swept away without distinguishing it, he will be poisoned. In fact, the same is true for faith. There are countless demigods who are driven crazy by faith. There are only a handful of demigods who can survive this hurdle and ignite the divine fire. The main reason is that their faith is impure. The main reason why missionaries like fanatics the most is because fanatics do not ask for anything in return from the gods, but are only willing to give. In the end, all they want is to return to the gods. So their faith is pure. As for the vast majority of ordinary believers, their belief in God is purely to satisfy their inner desires, either for money or to get ahead. Anyway, they just don't want to be ordinary. This kind of twisted belief is no less than seasoning with crane crown red to the gods. Once absorbed, the prayerful cry of desire reverberates, making it difficult to purge. Although at the life level of a demigod, the influence of this level is like having mosquitoes buzzing in your ears. Annoying, but not fatal. But as the faith absorbed becomes larger and larger, these voices become more mixed and their influence continues to deepen. Even the same noises will gradually merge together, becoming larger and deeper. So even demigods will be affected. The serious impact is that the temper becomes increasingly violent at first. And then, there are intermittent outbursts that cannot be tolerated. And the final result is to become a mad god. 
Every demigod that goes crazy will cause huge damage. So the Empire does not allow the emergence of demigods. This is why the two undead demigods were sealed in the first place instead of killing them to extract divinity at a huge cost. First, the divinity of the undead has too many consequences. And second, because once divinity is controlled by the royal family or a large noble, it is inevitable to gather faith and try to become a god. And failure will also be inevitable, because this will break the balance. So there is no people will watch the opponent produce a demigod and remain indifferent. And they will surely be attacked by a group of people. Therefore, there can be demigods, but they cannot come from the royal family or the nobility. Owen does not have these problems. Because all believers are members of the system's transformation population. And everyone can believe whatever he says. Coupled with the equipment and authority space integrated with the sacred objects. Owen has conditions that can make countless demigods go crazy with jealousy. Thinking of this, Owen checked the sacred weapons left behind. Irving originally left several pieces of equipment that were fused with holy objects. And asked monks and priests to load them with attributes which was to rely on publicity to make believers think that these pieces of equipment were sacred and powerful. The power of faith is extremely special. In theory, it is like a stone. As long as there are enough believers who think that even God cannot lift this stone, then God really cannot move it. Owen knew little about faith at the beginning, but he just tried it if he could. Therefore, the attributes he could be blessed with were holy armor slash holy, holy sword slash severing, holy spear slash guaranteed hit, holy shield slash protection, and holy ring slash dispel. Although it is not much, it is very comprehensive. If he has all the equipment, even the demigods may not be able to beat him. This is no lie. From tens of thousands to millions, 30 years of uninterrupted faith have caused earth-shaking changes in these five pieces of equipment that integrate sacred objects. Even the author Owen does not know the process. He only knows these five pieces of equipment. This piece of equipment is very powerful and can be regarded as a new trump card. In addition to these five pieces of equipment that are regarded as sacred objects, the idol worshipped in the territorial temple is him who wears these five pieces of equipment. Therefore, Owen has already gathered a considerable amount of faith without knowing it, using holy objects as the medium, the authority space as the container, and the golden tree as the core. Owen transformed the invisible and intangible power of faith into a special golden thick liquid, which is divine power. Even the mother of dragons can only use the power of faith roughly now. And she is still a little short of giving birth to divine power. However, this does not prevent the mother of dragons from being able to use divine power. After all, she only lacks the finishing touch. So this means that Owen has another one. Trump card. Owen, who was confident, took the holy armor, which was the power armor he developed in the early days. It was just a trick. And the technology had already lagged behind. But now it is extraordinary. Under the influence of the power of faith, this thing is like evolving from Agumon to fighting Greymon is the same. They are very different. But they share the same origin. Owen stretched out his hand and touched it gently. And the holy armor immediately turned into light and shadow, covering his whole body, and then turned into the holy armor again. The full coverage armor was not designed with any life support system earlier. But now Owen does not feel any stuffiness or discomfort. Instead, it is like being soaked in warm water and being massaged by countless small hands all over his body, keeping him in optimal condition. After trying, even the latest model of bold guns in the territory could not leave the slightest trace on the holy armor. In fact, the bold guns and the flames they produced did not touch the holy armor itself at all. Strong defense was only one aspect, and the huge increase in strength was not taken seriously by Owen. What surprised him most was the increase in his own reaction speed. It was as if Owen suddenly had two sets of nervous systems. And both of them complemented each other. The internal network connected to the external network, which greatly enhanced his perception and reaction speed. Moreover, the seemingly thick holy armor did not bring any hindrance to him, but was flexible. Outrageous. Owen's physical problem has always been his biggest shortcoming. But now it has been best compensated. With other holy objects and his own trump card, he can't help but want to move. Chapter 370 The Great Expedition The Great Expedition Plan? After taking over the plan that Owen spent a meal writing, Maya was stunned for a moment, and then began to calculate her fortune. After all, the Great Expedition or something, you can tell at a glance that you need to mobilize troops. And mobilizing troops often means the reserves of the territory dropped off a cliff. However, if the master insists, 
Maya will not dissuade her, but will give her full support. Because in her opinion, it does not matter whether the master's order is right or wrong. As long as the master is willing, she will turn wrong into right at all costs. It's just that Owen is not as careless as Maya thought. He never cares whether he will lose control of the territory after not showing up for 30 years. And he has no intention of establishing prestige by winning a glorious victory in a huge war. Therefore, he so-called it's hard to describe the great expedition. Because he just wanted to visit the secret realm of evil energy. In Owen's understanding, the secret realm of evil energy is not in reality. It is equivalent to going to another world to fight. Naturally, it can be hung with the words, great expedition. But little did he know that when she first saw these three words, Maya was already ready to dig out the words. Prepare for an empty home. Although we are just going to the secret realm, because it is dangerous, we must strengthen the armed forces of the evil secret realm and mobilize the guards to follow. This is also the meaning of the latter's existence. But compared to the territory's full support for a great expedition, this cost is really not worth mentioning. Seeing this, Maya couldn't help but secretly breathe a sigh of relief. At present, the territory has been accumulated for 30 years, but it still needs to be cautious in war. Therefore, Owen's plan is the best in her opinion, and it does not even require the mobilization of troops other than the Goblin Corps and the Guards. The Goblin Corps has never been open to the outside world since its formation, and the Guards are Owen's personal bodyguards. Therefore, using these two troops will not have a big impact except consuming some resources. It does not even require adjusting the territory's defense strategy and defense lines. Therefore, Maya quickly began to prepare the necessary resources and troops. In this expedition, Seal naturally followed, as well as Emil, who was quite comprehensive in all aspects. But the main force was still the Goblin Corps. Because of Owen's decision, Dago personally directed the defense change of the Goblin Corps this time, because he was worried about leaving it to others. The army's defense change was more cumbersome than Owen imagined. Because the two sides had been fighting for 30 years, the Felrat men were already familiar with the Goblin Army's fighting methods. So they often took advantage of the change of defense to make sneak attacks. Later, the Goblin Army strengthened their vigilance, and it became a large-scale attack was launched. So we must be fully prepared. Otherwise we will pay a heavier price if we want to regain the lost ground. In addition to being loaded with ammunition and fuel, 100 bipedal mechas are also equipped with special ceramic armor, making the thick body more bloated. Owen looked at what was new and asked. After all, this method will obviously put more pressure on the foot joints of the bipedal mecha. Once there is a huge drop in the ground, the bipedal mecha will be empty. A might break his leg. Regarding Owen's question, the goblin engineer on the side immediately gave the answer. The outer armor used by the bipedal mecha is a very cheap steel plate. The advantage of this kind of armor is that it is cheap enough and easy to process. The disadvantage is that it has average defense and is relatively heavy. However, this is not just to save money. It is mainly because evil energy is very corrosive. And the difference between fine steel armor and steel armor is not very big. So goblins will choose the cheaper steel armor. But this does not mean that you can only die when facing evil energy. In fact, after careful research by the Scientific Research Center, ceramic armor was created. The hardness of ceramics is very high. And it can dissipate kinetic energy very well after being broken. Therefore, it was used as an insert plate for body armor in previous lives. In addition, ceramics also have good heat insulation and corrosion resistance. Even if they encounter evil energy, they have more advantages than steel. Therefore, once they enter the evil energy secret realm, not only bipedal mechas, but also steam tanks and infantry will increase their power. Hanging a layer of ceramic armor increases the weight and accelerates the wear and tear of the machine, but it increases the chance of survival so no one will complain about this. After wearing the ceramic plate breastplate, the hobgoblin received the order from the officer to prepare for combat. He quickly took out a five-round standard magazine from the ammunition box at his waist and pressed it into the magazine. He also took out the bayonet and fixed it under the muzzle of the gun. The reason for this is because it is impossible to predict what will happen next. So he can only prepare for the worst, such as close combat. The strong bugbear also silently attached an ammunition chain to the water-cooled machine gun in his arms, preparing for battle, while the deputy shooter next to him was reinforcing the ammunition box tied to his body. Although the rate of fire of water-cooled machine guns is not as good as the thousands of rounds per minute of modern machine guns, it is not much worse than the rate of fire of several hundred rounds per minute. 
the consumption of ammunition is also very considerable. So before the logistics personnel deliver the ammunition, all they can rely on are the bullets they carry. So bring as many as you can. After receiving the order, the caster core on the third floor of the ruins open the layers of restrictions and then open the sealed barrier. Suddenly, a black and green vortex appeared in the open space at the entrance to the ruins. It was full of ominousness at first glance. Just like the miserable green color, the pus mixed with the putrid sludge was shrinking like a chrysanthemum. It was really disgusting. Both Daegu and the goblin core were accustomed to this and moved towards the vortex without hesitation. The sarcophagus bipedal mecha core took steps that became heavier and were the first to enter the vortex. They were combat units between infantry and tanks. They were more suitable for complex and dangerous battles. So they were well-deserved pioneers. Then came the hobgoblin infantry who started charging in small steps with bayonet rifles. And the bugbears carrying water-cooled machine guns. They not only needed to use bipedal mechas for cover, but also used their wider field of vision and the weapons in their hands. The gun covers the bipedal mechas advance. As for the steam tanks, driven by strong steam, they escorted more infantry into the vortex. At this time, Owen was also fully armed. But instead of using holy objects, he used the next generation heavy power armor carefully developed by the Scientific Research Center. This type of power armor is called the silver type because it uses a large amount of high quality mithril steel. The silver heavy power armor is taller and heavier than the power armor currently equipped by the guards. But its movement response is more agile and faster. Coupled with its excellent defense and power output, it is completely crushing. It's a pity that this type of power armor is too expensive. The inner metal skeleton is made of a new generation of adamantine steel, which cannot be said to be indestructible. Ordinary legendary weapons and advanced magic cannot be damaged at all. And the mithril steel used as the outer armor is it is a rare high quality. The material cost alone is enough to make the average person vomit blood, not to mention the other technologies integrated internally, as well as runes and enchantments which will undoubtedly cause the manufacturing cost to skyrocket. Even if the problem of raw materials is solved, mass production will be difficult because many technologies are only mastered by Emily and Brian and are far beyond the reach of others. This is not a matter of teaching or not. Just like the difference between being an apprentice and an 8th level fitter who are both fitters. Therefore, except for Owen, others cannot enjoy this treatment at all. In the future, this type of power armor will either be simplified to reduce costs or it will be reserved as a technical reserve. And mass production will be carried out until the conditions are met. Chapter 371 The War of Evil Energy A. In addition to the silver heavy power armor, Owens rarely used thunder power hammer. Chain sword and bolt gun have all been strengthened. It can be said that he is armed to the teeth. He can't even break through the defense after being legendary. It was only because of knowing the performance of these equipment that Owen could bear the thought of using the holy weapon directly. After all, it was a trump card. Unless there were special circumstances, it would not be easy to use it. Full of confidence, Owen took Charles and Emil into the secret realm of evil energy and embarked on his own great expedition. Whether everything goes smoothly depends on whether he is open-minded enough. As soon as he entered the fell secret realm, Owen heard the deafening sound of gunfire. Obviously, the fell rat man did not miss the opportunity to change defenses and launched a fierce attack. But what impressed Owen the most was the ubiquitous wine. This huge demiplane-like secret realm was dying. Its origins were extracted, and its laws were distorted. Therefore, the sky was gray-green, and the earth was dead. The entire secret realm was it is turning into evil energy. No wonder the evil ratmen still cannot kill them all in such a harsh environment. They rely on swallowing the entire secret realm to reproduce. The advantage of this is that as long as the secret realm is not destroyed, the fell ratmen cannot be killed at all. The disadvantage is that if they do not escape before the secret realm collapses, the fell rat men will disappear. Therefore, the goblin core that controls the entrance to the secret realm is fell energy, the mortal enemy of the skaven. It's just that Owen doesn't understand what the fell rat men thinks. Because although the defense change will cause some chaos, before the defense change, he only has to face one goblin core. But when he changes defense, he has to face two goblin core. Don't they count? Irving didn't know that this was because the fell rat man could not forget the benefits he had experienced several times. Therefore, even though the goblin core had been constantly improving and no longer had any advantage, they still habitually launched attacks when changing defenses. However, the goblin core spent a lot of thought on the station in the fell secret realm, with a portal at the entrance of the secret realm as the core. 
They built a large number of semi-permanent defensive buildings and connected them with crisscrossing trenches to form a dense defense network. Currently, there are a large number of semi-permanent defensive buildings. The Goblin Infantry raised their rifles and set up machine guns and launched a frantic attack on the fell ratmen swarming down the mountain. The carefully constructed artillery positions also responded with angry roars, killing countless fell rat men on the way to charge. Shred, Irving's helmet comes with various functions, which are more complete than the upgraded Nuambobo. Currently, a large amount of data is put in front of his eyes through tracking amplification and data analysis. According to the information Owen had read before, the one currently running wildly on all fours is the weakest evil rat man. Except for his green eyes and stronger explosive power, he is not very different from the black back rat man in the early ruins. So his combat effectiveness is not the same. They are not strong. But there are too many of them. So even if they know that they are not strong in combat, they cannot be allowed to get close. Otherwise, once they fall into hand-to-hand -hand combat, the advanced units of the fell rat men will take advantage of the situation, causing the goblin core to lose its long-range advantage. This was the reason why we lost position several times. Therefore, even though we knew that these fell rat men were very weak, the guns could not stop until the barrels overheated and the infantry needed to replenish ammunition. At that time, the fell rat men's advanced units also joined the battle. When? Because it was a war of attrition that had just begun. Owen didn't pay too much attention and instead looked at the positions that the Goblin Corps had spent many years building in the fell secret realm. The hilltop where the Goblin Corps is located is also carefully selected, except for the soil one or two meters deep on the surface. There are solid rocks below. This greatly reduces the efficiency of the fell rat men digging tunnels. On this basis, semi-underground bunkers were built with rocks and cement, and were connected with tunnels and trenches. Behind the bunker defense chain, there were multiple artillery positions, ranging from mortars to fire tornado rocket launchers. They can be accommodated perfectly. So despite the deafening sound of gunfire at this time, both sides are actually warming up. Although his equipment had astonishing defensive capabilities and he had legendary guards, Owen still did not stay outside for long and headed to the command center under the leadership of Daegu. Before leaving, Owen turned his head and looked at the portal behind him. This is the core of the entire defensive position. Because the caster core has bound the entrance to the evil secret realm in the portal with special restrictions. Therefore, if the evil ratmen want to invade the outside world and escape from this secret realm that is about to be destroyed, they can only go through the portal or smash it. Otherwise you will be like a rat in your pocket and don't want to harm the territory outside. The command center is located on the top of the mountain, with a total of eight floors, but there are only two floors on the ground. The remaining parts are deep inside the mountain and serve as barracks, warehouses, canteens, hospitals, transportation hubs and other important functions, connecting the defense system into a whole. However, although this place is perfect, it lacks traces of magic, except for the portal. There is no trace related to magic here. This is mainly because evil energy corrodes magic very seriously. I didn't know this at first. So many casters entered the secret realm of evil energy, but they were all infected by evil energy unknowingly. If the casters who came here were not transformed by the system, they would probably have backlash on the spot. The advanced core suffered huge losses. Even so, none of the spell casters were able to save any of them. They all pulled the evil ratmen to explode themselves to death, because they knew very well that they were hopeless. If they did not commit suicide, they were afraid that even their souls and bodies would be completely penetrated by evil energy. At that time, no matter how strong your will is, you will not be able to control yourself. The problem is that although this method of death was heroic, it also gave birth to the first batch of evil rat warlocks, which caused huge trouble to the subsequent goblin regiments, and even fell more than once or twice because of it. It was only after this incident that the territory realized the specialness of the fell ratmen, and did not dare to bring in the ultramarines or the like. Otherwise, who knows what the fell secret realm would have developed into, perhaps dropping airdrop pods and explosive bombs all over the sky, shooting guns at each other, maybe cutting each other with chainsaws. Although you can't use magic, there is no big problem with technology. After all, the mechanics of the evil ratmen have already made tanks and mechas. So except for some special technologies, most commonly used technologies can be used here, such as monitors, radios, intercoms, etc. So Owen can perfectly control the battle situation even in the command center, as the goblin staff continue to receive news from various fronts from the communications troops. 
More and more chess pieces were placed on the huge sand table in the command center. Daegu commanded calmly and made various responses. The whole process was smooth, all familiar to him, which made Owen very emotional. As expected, time can change a person the most. However, as the first round of artillery fire ended and more than half of the ammunition carried by the infantry was consumed, the real war had just begun. Chapter 372 The War of Evil Energy B. At this time, most of the defense lines of the position have been replaced. The goblin regiment that has been stationed in this damn place for half a year is a little tired, but has no intention of leaving impatiently. Instead, the logistics personnel and the disabled leave first, followed by the war machines that need overhaul. Finally, they are the infantry, because it has been repeated many times. Although it takes a long time, it is orderly and not chaotic at all. This is also the last chance for the evil red man. Once the defense change is completed, the portal will be hidden again. At the same time, the huge space fluctuations caused by large-scale space passages will slowly calm down, causing the fell rat men to lose the chance to escape from the fell secret realm again, so they will not give up of every opportunity. As the commander-in-chief, Dagan knew this very well. While he sent soldiers to fill the defense line, he also prepared more firepower points to prepare for battle. He was not careless at all, because there were countless evil rat men dying at the foot of the mountain. Because these are cannon fodder sent by the evil rat men to consume the ammunition of the goblin regiment. And the real main force has not yet appeared. This rat sea tactic was still somewhat useful in the first few years. At that time, the goblin corps was mainly equipped with steam nailed guns and front loading muskets. The steam of the steam nailed gun was not endless. Especially after continuous shooting, it would weaken quickly. The power of the spikes. But the front loaded musket has a slow rate of fire and the barrel is prone to overheating after continuous firing, making it easy to be forced into close combat with the fell redmen. However, with the emergence of more advanced bolt-action rifles and water-cooled machine guns, as well as amazingly powerful steam tanks and cannons, it is difficult for simple rat sea tactics to be effective. After all, it will take time for evil rat men to regenerate. It nurtures and grows, and as long as the resources can keep up with the ammunition, it can be produced in any amount. Therefore, in order to consume life more effectively, the fell ratmen have corresponding arms. Because the goblin corps has long-range advantages, the fell skaven evolved fell archers and giant rat cavalry in a targeted manner. Fell shooters look a bit like the rat version of radiation infantry, but they are actually similar. These fell ratmen wearing gas masks and carrying metal cans storing large amounts of fell energy spray out the fell energy through the thick barrels in their hands. Although the range is short and the hit rate is not high, the lethality is very high. Even a steel plate several centimeters thick will be melted through. If the goblin infantry is hit, not even a complete bone can be found. Most of the time it is just a corpse. The end of no existence. Fell archers are the regular soldiers among the fell ratmen. But the real elite are the giant rat cavalry. Although this giant rat specially modified by evil energy has average endurance and not outstanding strength, it has strong explosive power and speed. With the soft musculoskeletal structure of rats, it is so flexible that it can even dodge cannonballs falling from the sky. When he was running fast on the complex battlefield, he could only see a black shadow. One has long-range attack methods, and the other is good at rapid breakthroughs. Even the goblin regiment with a defensive advantage did not dare to be careless. So they immediately loaded their ammunition and prepared to call for artillery support. The evil shooters wearing gas masks and carrying metal cans don't move very fast. But they pose the greatest threat. Once hit, there is no rescue value at all. But the giant rat cavalry cannot be ignored. Because the giant rat cavalry is also called the trench killer. Once the giant rat cavalry rushes into the trench, before killing them, the giant rat's huge size, virus carrying fangs and claws. There is also the sharp scimitar of the rat cavalry, which can often cause double-digit casualties. If it reaches a large scale, the entire front may be lost. So no one dares to be careless. At this time, the sound of gunfire became more intense. The hobgoblin infantry squatting in the trench placed several five-round magazines with an easy reach in advance. Once empty, they immediately reloaded, trying to maintain the fire network without loopholes for more weapons. Many giant rat cavalry are approaching. The bugbears at the machine gun position opened their mouths wide, revealing sharp canine teeth. At this time, they no longer looked like honest coolies, but like beasts that wanted to eat meat and drink blood. Under the brute force, the heavy water cooled them. The machine guns became very flexible in their hands. 
As the canvas bullets beat rhythmically, hot bullets streaked across the sky, hitting the incoming fell ratmen, making them become more broken and sparse, to reduce the pressure on the defense line. As for the gathered evil ratmen, their own artillery was responsible for blasting them away, and the battle became more and more intense. Owen has seen the main force of the evil ratmen through Nguan Bao Bao. The evil energy shooter will often shoot concentrated evil energy through the barrel of his hand after taking a few steps. This evil energy sprayed out is very corrosive. Not to mention the goblin infantry. Even the trenches became pitted, making it difficult for the goblin infantry to concentrate on shooting. At the same time, the goblin infantry also had to be careful of the giant rack cavalry that came out of nowhere. These cavalry were silent, but extremely agile, and were more threatening than the fell archers. Once they jumped into the trench, the nearby goblin infantry would be attacked. You must immediately raise your bayonet-mounted rifle and rush forward, blocking the opponent with your life and flesh, and even firing grenades to kill your opponent together, even if you accidentally injure your teammates. Otherwise, there will be more casualties. Even so, the battle situation still changed from one-sided at the beginning to a back-and-forth situation. And Degu, who was responsible for directing the battle, became more solemn, following an unknown muffled sound. More than a dozen huge pale green light clusters fell from the sky like meteors. Each time they hit the ground, everything within a radius of dozens of meters would evaporate and turn into indistinguishable rotten dust. It doesn't matter whether the goblin infantry or the steam tanks serving as fixed firepower points are within this range. Because with the green light flashing, nothing can be seen. It's a huge evil cannon. It's not in the way. Daegu looked up and glanced at the place where the muffled sound came from. Explained to Owen and then continued to adjust the battle line to make up for the severely damaged areas without allowing the steam tanks to attack and destroy them. The intention of those huge cannons, even though those huge cannons were so powerful, was to cause serious damage to the battle line. The fell cannon is another shocking work of the fell ratmen. Through complex pipes and compression devices, this seemingly huge cannon can fire incredibly powerful fell disintegration bombs with destructive power. Very amazing. Theoretically, with these dozen cannons, the hilltop where the goblin core is stationed can be raised to the ground. But this is unrealistic, because the evil energy is not infinite. At least the amount of evil energy required by the evil cannons exceeds that of the evil rats, the upper limit of what a person can provide. So unless necessary, the fell rat man would rather send tens of thousands of his compatriots to die than open fire easily. But once they open fire, it proves that the fell rat man is serious. Chapter 373, Battle of Evil Energy C. Although the destructive power of the evil cannon is astonishing, the three salvos of more than a dozen cannons did not actually cause many casualties. But the tight battle line inevitably tore a hole, let alone the goblins. Even the trenches were raised to the ground, leaving gaps in the originally dense fire network. The giant rat cavalry that had been wandering on the battlefield were keenly aware of this change and did not miss this opportunity. In an almost death-defying manner, they rushed forward against the bullets of the goblin infantry on both sides even if they were hit by the bullets, even if they were overturned by the shock wave of the bomb. A considerable number of these extremely flexible cavalry still rushed into the trenches. In an open place, the giant rat cavalry is no better than the rats running around in the streets. The bullets fired are like broomsticks hitting the ground. And the SH. LS falling from the sky are like big-footed volleys. How can one word describe how miserable it is? But once once in the trenches, the giant rat cavalry showed its sharp fangs. The trench, which was not very big to begin with, was almost filled with fat giant rats. The low chassis and flexible body made the giant rats very adaptable to the trench environment, and they charged extremely fast, running like they were in the barrel of a gun. Bullets. Even bugbears couldn't withstand the rampage. Even if they could withstand the impact, the giant rats' claws and the scimitars of the cavalry on their backs were not decorations. In an instant, an unknown number of goblin infantry died tragically in the hands of the giant rat cavalry. It's not that the goblin infantry are not brave. They raised their rifles with bayonets and never retreated. However, the standing giant rats were more than two meters high. The minions that could leave deep marks on the steel were simply not something that flesh and blood could stop. Not to mention that the rat cavalry clinging to the back of the giant rat were all carefully selected masters. Their two scimitars were as fast as lightning, and many goblins had their heads chopped off before they could react. Seeing this scene, the goblin officer not far away immediately gave up the idea of leading troops to support. Because there were too many giant rat cavalry breaking into the trenches. And they didn't know where they came from. Just like rats in the gutter. 
There were so many that they couldn't be eliminated in a short time. So they immediately ordered the machine gunners to fire indiscriminately, block the trenches with fire, and at the same time place bombs to blow up the trenches. The giant rat cavalry should be restrained first. Otherwise the entire front would be in chaos. But how could the fell ratman give up this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? The fell ratman, who had originally slowed down their attack due to heavy losses, began to rush forward regardless of casualties, covering the fell energy shooters and speeding up the approach to the trenches, allowing the fell energy shooters to use the fell energy guns. Take out more firepower points. The current situation is very clear. Once the evil shooters and giant rat cavalry are mixed together, the gap will become wider and wider, and eventually it will be out of control, and the entire defense line will fall. What's even more deadly is that the ground not far away collapsed in several places. With the sound of heavy treads, evil mech is produced by Ratman technology came out of the hidden tunnels and joined the war. Owen, who had been sitting idle in the command center, immediately became interested and mobilized many warm baby clones to collect data. It can be said that the technology of the fell Ratman is completely copied from the goblins. So the fell mecha has a strong goblin style, which is stupid, thick, and very crude. A large number of mechanical parts are exposed. And the armor is also very careless. With rivets. Forget it. It's not neat, and it looks like it's just been repaired at a country roadside car repair shop. This is because the Ratman's industrial foundation is relatively weak, resulting in the performance of the evil mech as produced being very average. If it were not for the blessing of evil energy, these mechas would have fallen to the ground due to various malfunctions before the war started. After all, Owen is well aware of the reliability of goblin technology. As their apprentice, it is surprising that the evil Ratman technology is so good, but Fell Energy is really cheating. With the blessing of Fell Energy, these wasteland-style mechas are walking heavily, and a small-caliber Fell Energy cannon on a mechanical arm continuously fires Fell Energy bullets, destroying some at the threatening firepower point. A mechanical arm equipped with a huge mechanical claw kept grabbing, crushing the goblin infantry who rushed up with explosive packages into a pulp and unstoppably approached the defense line in the smoke. The current situation is very bad, as more and more firepower points are knocked out. The cannon fodder of the evil rat people who are not smart enough and only know how to rush forward are constantly pouring towards the mountain like a gray-black wave, while the hidden evil shooters among them cunningly targeted the goblin infantry tearing the defense line into pieces even more. However, the biggest threat is still those evil mechas, although they have many problems. Mechas are still mechas after all. The thick armor cannot be penetrated by ordinary bullets. It is common for them to keep advancing against the rain of bullets. As for artillery support, because the fell ratman had cunningly dug tunnels to the foot of the mountain, the artillery could not hit the target at all, because the ballistic trajectory was an arc. It was very difficult to accurately hit the fell mecha at the foot of the mountain. But this is not the first time this has happened. It is impossible for the goblin corps to be unprepared. In addition to the bipedal mechas that are coming, the goblins also use various targeted weapons. The hobgoblin jumped out of the trench bravely with a flamethrower on his back, aimed at the swarming evil rat men and pulled the trigger. The strong air pressure sprayed the mixed fuel 30 or 40 meters away with a flash of sparks. It was ignited. The mist instantly turned into a greedy fire dragon that devoured life. In an instant, an unknown number of fell rat men were burned into candles, revealing the fell archers hidden behind, as well as the muzzles of their guns that were glowing green. The fell archer didn't care that his kind was burned into a small curled mass. He smiled strangely and used fell energy bullets to kill the goblin flamethrower. Even the flames of the explosion became dim under the erosion of fell energy. As for the more threatening firepower points, the fell mecha uses fell cannons to destroy them. But the goal of the goblin flamethrowers rushing out has been achieved. Without the cover of the cannon fodder fell rat men, the exposed fell shooters will face targeted sniping by the goblins. Bugbears carrying thick rifles are already in position. They are holding 20mm caliber single-shot anti-armor guns in their hands. Although they are very heavy, they have to be said to be very powerful. The evil shooters can fire one at a time. Even if they are completely connected, there were no corpses left and the cockpit of the evil mecha was rattled, causing the mecha's movements to become somewhat deformed. In addition, there are cluster bombs, rocket launchers, and other targeted weapons. So the fell mechas dare not leave the cover of the fell rat men and fell shooters. They can only keep firing at those goblins, who are desperate for life and death. Fortunately, the sarcophagus bipedal mecha arrived in time. 
The large caliber steam nailed gun and flamethrower hanging on its arm quickly cleared away the evil rat men that were about to pour into the defense line. At the same time, it activated the honeycomb bombardier on its shoulders. Grenades the size of soda cans were ejected by steam and fell into the evil rat camp. With a violent explosion, gaps were cleared. Although it was covered with minced meat and broken fur, it had to be said that the effect was indeed very good. However, these weapons have almost no effect on the Felmecha. Although the thick spikes with a diameter of 20 millimeters can pierce the rudimentary armor of the Felmecha, they are difficult to cause greater damage. And the ejections mainly kill infantry. The grenade didn't even have the ability to shake it. Even if it was stepped on by the Mecha's feet, it would only raise a puff of smoke. So they chose to fight in close combat. Chapter 374 Evil Empire At this time, Owen had already brought Charles and Emile to the roof of the command center and was watching with interest the mecha battle that was about to break out at the foot of the mountain, although it was risky to do so. As a man, there was no one who was not interested in mecha battles. So he was rarely willing to take the risk and walked out of the thick and solid bunker, cast the illusion spell, and stood on a high place to watch this rare scene. Both Daegu and Emil felt a little uneasy about Owen's decision to take risks. The problem was that he didn't feel that way. After all, even if he was unlucky enough to be directly hit by the evil cannon, he was confident that he would be fine. Otherwise, he wouldn't have come out. Not mentioning these, Owen's attention is currently focused on the upcoming mecha battle. These clangs are walking heavily, first shooting each other with felt cannons and steam nail guns, and then swinging their giant mechanical claws and chains. The scene of fighting with sawed swords made his blood boil. Little did he know that as more and more evil ratmen died, the concentration of evil energy here was also increasing, causing waves that were difficult to detect. Goblins have long discovered the problem of increasing evil energy concentration. They even know that if creatures other than goblins stay in this environment for a little longer, they will either mutate or go crazy. Only creatures that have also undergone mutation, and whose genes are very stable the goblins can adapt to the environment here. But they still need to change their defenses every once in a while, and return to Green Shade City to clear away the slight distortions in their bodies, souls and wills. However, the secret realm of fell energy is too unfriendly to spellcasters which makes many targeted research on fell energy just like scratching an itch. Therefore, the territory does not know that the fell rat people have already exceeded their expectations in controlling fell energy. For example, using fell can send certain things. The penetration of evil energy into the secret realm has reached an irreversible level. So with the help of the ubiquitous evil energy, what happens on the battlefield is quickly transmitted to the base camp of the evil rat men, the bottomless empire of the shattered lands. The shattered land is full of large or small rifts, as if the entire land has been shattered. In fact, this is because the source has been extracted too much and can no longer maintain its shape. But this is also convenient for the evil rats. People mine various minerals hidden underground. At present, countless tunnels connect the surrounding Great Rift Valley to form a hole. Various minerals are mined and cast into various parts in fell furnaces. Then, fell mechanics who like to transform themselves use mechanical pliers to replace arms. Assemble them together to become the fell guns. Fell cannons and fell mechas commonly used by the fell rat men. Obviously with the help of evil energy, these rat people develop their own industry and technology at a cheating speed. The cost was that more and more of the source of the secret realm was converted into evil energy, causing the sky above the Great Rift Valley to always be filled with a thick the mist of evil energy also spawn more and more evil rat men. Countless fell ratmen live, grow, and train here. As for death, there are no fell ratmen who die of old age. Because when their physical strength and intelligence begin to fade, they will be thrown into the fell energy furnace and ignite their souls and bodies to become fell energy, the fuel of the empire. Old age and death are an unacceptable waste for the fell ratmen. The vast majority of fell ratmen are nothing more than consumables to the fell empire. But they are not without high level existence. A huge group will always be divided into classes. This is inevitable. Even the evil rat men are no exception. For the fell rat men, fell energy is their foundation. So fell warlocks, who control fell energy deserve to be the top leaders of the fell empire. Located deep underground. Several great warlocks from the fell council gathered here to discuss the future of the empire. The wait is finally over. Their king finally appears. Kill their king and seize the door. We need to get out of here as soon as possible. The underground has begun to collapse. And we don't have much time left. Go and inform our king. Gather our most elite troops. 
and launched the final war in the Fell Council, whose power in the Fell Empire was second only to the Fell King. Several Fell Warlocks, who maintained strong vitality through the use of Fell energy quickly reached a consensus and then immediately split up to act. The Palace of the Fell King is located at the bottom of the Great Rift Valley, deeper than the location of the Fell Council. It is a place as dark as an abyss. It is also the lowest level of the Fell Secret Realm and the place closest to its origin. Here you can clearly see a huge light band formed by evil energy, a thousand meters wide and an astonishing length, running directly through the bottom of the secret realm, like a trace left by some kind of existence. Even if it is just a trace, the concentration of evil energy traces left by this unknown existence is still astonishingly high, although it only brushed against the core of the secret realm and did not cause much damage. The evil energy emitted invaded the core very domineeringly and polluted it. The origin created the twisted species of evil ratmen. When the evil ratmen gradually mastered the power of evil, they relied on instinct to find this place and regarded it as a sacred place for their race. They also built a spectacular palace where their most noble king lived to protect the sacred objects. As the great warlock of the Fell Empire, the ratman, who braved the fire of Fell energy and was shrouded in Fell energy mist, has status and power second only to the Fell energy king. So he successfully passed through the gate guarded by fell energy guards. When I came to the palace, I saw the evil king. What is the biggest impression that the evil king gives people? That is, he is fat. Extremely fat. So fat that the rat hair all over his body is invisible due to the fat. The originally triangular rat head is even sunk into the fat on his neck. Like it's like stuffing a meatball into fat meat stuffing. The body is covered in layers of fat. And the limbs can't be seen at all. Then, there is the hugeness, which is so huge that it makes the huge palace seem small, so that any creature standing in front of the evil king can't help but worry that it will be crushed by the mountain of flesh in front of it, or drowned by the fat that breaks the skin. The great evil king! The opponent's king has finally appeared! The great evil warlock knelt down in front of the evil king excitedly, and said in a trembling tone, The eyelids that were thicker than cement manhole covers did not block the burning evil fire in the eyes of the evil king. It stared at the great warlock and spoke in a thick voice like bubbles in the magma. Send out an army. Kill their king. And seize the key to the outside world. The holy objects need more lives to be converted into evil energy. Only by accumulating enough evil energy can the holy objects guide us to find the Lord. Everything is for the Lord. The great warlock, who had already been penetrated by evil energy, shouted fervently. Because he was too excited. The evil fire in his eyes burned his eyeballs but he was once again penetrated by evil energy. Repair? This pain only makes the Great Warlock become more fanatical. Chapter 375 War Mobilization After receiving the war order from the Fell King, the Great Warlocks of the Fell Empire joined forces to stir up the ubiquitous evil energy in the Shattered Lands, imprinting the King's orders directly into the will of the Fell Ratmen. Just like the Steel Seal of Thought, although it is inhumane, it is extremely efficient. In the blink of an eye, the terrifying number of fell rat men in the Great Rift Valley suddenly stopped in the middle of their busy work. Like control puppets, they began to flow in the direction of the goblin core under the guidance of fell energy. Like a black wave, the wave has appeared ten miles away. There are still evil rat men pouring out in a steady stream in the Great Rift Valley, which shows how many there are. As regular soldiers, the fell energy archers and the giant rat cavalry rode together on a rat and ran wildly in the same direction. Behind them were a group of fell energy mechas and slow-moving fell energy cannons. These were accumulated by the fell energy empire over the years. All the family wealth that came down is now being spent. Just to win this battle and completely obtain the key to open the door. Such a huge fell legion cannot be formed in a short time. Nor can the goblin corps resist it. Therefore, the only reason why the goblin corps has been able to persist for many years is that the fell rat men have never exposed their true strength. In fact, this is related to the early experience of the evil ratmen. At that time, they were not fully evolved. Therefore, when facing the goblin core, except for occasionally gaining the upper hand, most of the time they were in a passive state of being beaten. This led to the evil the ratmen have always lacked confidence. Even if they later established a kingdom and industry belonging to the ratmen, they still did not dare to put all their efforts. After all, the ratmen knew very well that except for evil energy, Everything in the empire was copied from the goblins. Later, when the evil ratman built up enough confidence and achieved several victories, they discovered a fatal problem. That is, it is easy to defeat the goblin core. The fell ratman have occupied the opponent's position several times. 
but every time the Goblin Corps chooses to blow up the portal before their complete defeat, causing the Fell Ratman to just stare, but have no choice. The Fell Energy Secret Realm was punctured twice inside and outside by the Caster Corps. Without the portal, the Fell Energy Ratman could not open the space channel at all. If force was used, the Fell Energy Secret Realm might completely collapse. By then, could the Fell Energy Ratman be able to no one can guarantee whether he will survive? This is also the reason why the two sides are stuck in a back and forth stalemate. Unless the Fell Ratman can seize the portal before the Goblin Corps destroys the portal. Otherwise, they will not show their true potential. Every time the defense is switched, the attack is more about using to paralyze the opponent. Anyway, the Fell Ratman never care about the casualties suffered in this process. Let alone the equipment lost. Because as long as the Fell Secret Realm is not destroyed, their resources and population will be endless and they have the confidence and be patient and hold on. And now comes the opportunity they have been waiting for. The reason why we didn't take action before was because there is only one core of the Goblin Core, which is the portal. Therefore, once they are in a desperate situation, the Goblin Core will destroy the portal without hesitation. Even if they all die here without any hesitation. The problem is that there are two cores now, and their king is here. As long as the Goblin Core doesn't want their king to die here, they can't destroy the portal. This gives the Fell Ratman a rare opportunity. There is only one such opportunity. And the evil Ratman have been preparing for this for 10 years. So once it breaks out, it will be like a mountain falling apart. And trouble will come. Something's wrong. Daegu, who was staying in the command center, frowned and whispered, according to past practice. Although the evil Ratman are not afraid of death, they will not die in vain. Generally, if the loss exceeds 50%, they will retreat. And then the surviving veterans will be mixed with new recruits to form the main force of the next attack. In this way. But the current casualties have exceeded six levels. And the Fell Ratmen still have no intention of retreating. Instead, they continue to send batches of Fell Ratmen to die as if to add fuel to the fire. And the precious Fell Ratmen are left to their own devices. The battle damage was at the foot of the mountain and turned into a pile of scrap metal. They are stalling for time. Daegu immediately came to this conclusion. The question now is, why? Daegu had actually noticed the abnormality of the evil Ratman for a long time. So he spent huge amounts of material and manpower to build the entire mountain into a war fortress and made a lot of preparations. But according to his prediction, it will still be a long time before the evil Ratman break out. Therefore, there must be something that satisfies the conditions for the evil Ratman's action. It's not hard to guess. Daegu immediately found Owen and informed him of the matter. After hearing this, Owen fell into deep thought. He didn't like to take risks. But that didn't mean he would shrink from anything he encountered. Let alone the fact that he had a trump card in his hand. If he wanted to threaten him, ordinary circumstances would not be enough. Start the total war mode. And at the same time, I will hand over the command of the guards to you. Owen turned and returned to the depths of the command center while handing over the command of the guards to Daegu. As for leaving here directly, Owen has not thought about it. Daga could guess that the evil Ratman's abnormal behavior was related to him. And Owen could naturally guess it too. Let alone Daegu directly telling him to guess. So as long as he stays here, the fell Ratman will target him with their firepower. And he will be the bait. Another reason that made Owen make such a decision was Daga's prediction and estimation of the evil Ratman. Which chilled his heart and made him decide that he would never let the evil Ratman leave the evil secret realm. However, it is not very realistic to completely eliminate the evil Rat people. So Owen plans to use himself as a bait to attract the evil rat people to spend all their wealth to fight an unprecedented war and consume the opponent's vitality as much as possible. In this way, even if it happens, in the worst case scenario, it won't be completely out of control. As soon as Owen's order was given, the entire territory began to take action. No one was idle, and no one could stay away, because he was the will of the territory. Maya? Howard and other core personnel immediately set up a war logistics center and took over Green Shade City and the underground ruins. First, they sent the part of the guards, who did not follow them directly to the entrance of the ruins, and let them join Owen through the portal. Because Owen's safety comes first, next came the Goblin Corps. Except for the Goblin Corps that had switched defenses, all the Corps entered the evil secret realm to prepare for war. A large number of weapons, equipment, and weapons were also transported to the secret realm as quickly as possible to prepare for the next war. If the fell secret realm were not too special, tens of thousands of troops from the territory would have been sent into the secret realm. However, they were not idle now. 
They were also preparing for war. Once the Fell secret realm was lost, it would be their turn. However, the current Fell war still requires the Goblin Corps as the main force. But it needs more support. Therefore, Maya packed up a large number of golems and mechanical puppets stored in a dungeon and sent them to the Fell secret realm. As for how effective it can be, she could only resign herself to fate. Anyway, she did everything she could do. Chapter 376 War Fortress The arrival of tens of thousands of goblins made this mountain-based war fortress fully operational for the first time. A large number of sealed buildings and equipment were activated one after another under the command of goblin engineers. As the huge steam unit in the mountain began to operate, the roar of the machine was deafening. Like a beating powerful heart, pouring high-temperature steam everywhere along the pipes. The cold mountain fortress seemed to have been injected with hot blood. And the war machinery began to operate. Groups of soldiers carried guns and ammunition on small railcars and quickly went to the defense points of the mountain fortress. Massive amounts of ammunition were also transported by goblin workers. The heavy guns hidden in the mountain raised their barrels and fired at any time. Let out a roar that can shake the earth. The bipedal mecha took heavy steps to reach the important place where it needed to be stationed. While reducing its power and waiting for battle, it was also making final preparations. Witnessing all this, Owen felt indescribable excitement, and even began to look forward to the next war. In fact, he was not allowed to wait long. Under the infusion of evil energy, the evil ratmen who stimulated all life potential rushed in like moths to the flame, trying to flood the entire position. But the evil ratmen obviously thought too much. They can hide, and the goblins are not bad either. Everyone has hidden more than one hand. And now it depends on who can use up their trump cards first. As the steam was driven, large and small gears and chains began to rotate, and the hidden muzzles originally hidden in the mountain opened one after another. The heavy cannon also slowly moved forward under the push of the base, until the thick barrel was extended out of the cannon. The mouth was pointing straight into the sky, like a high-spirited steel gun in the hand of an 18-year-old boy, ready to erupt at any time, and more than once. Several bugbears worked together to load cannonballs weighing hundreds of kilograms into the barrel. The hobgoblins stepped on the pedals, adjusted the shooting angle with the help of mechanical power, and then waited for the order to fire. At this time, the one-eyed giant eagle was already flying in the sky. Owen used the projection to witness the black mass of evil ratmen. He couldn't help but take a breath. This number was simply a rip-off. I'm afraid there were not three to five million. Many. Even if these fell ratmen lie still, and shoot them one by one. It will not be possible in a short time, let alone the fell shooters. Giant rack cavalry. Fell mechas and giant cannons behind them. This is a powerful enemy that he has never seen before. Perhaps only the Imperial Frontier troops at their peak can rival him. Only then did Owen realize that war is not a child's play, especially when facing a powerful enemy. Not only will people die, but they may also fail. If there were three and a half million humans, Irving might not be that worried, even if they were stronger, because there is an upper limit to the amount of casualties humans can bear. After a random bombing, even if the casualties did not exceed one-tenth, there would be morale is greatly reduced, and they will collapse beyond the third level. The evil rat men are not good at it. Looking at their posture, there is no hope of returning alive. So as long as they are not dead, the war will probably not end. Lord Demon King, I will definitely bring you the final victory of this war with the resources of the entire territory to support him. Dagu, who had never fought such a rich battle before, knelt down on one knee in front of Owen with confidence, and said even the title of Demon King from earlier years reappeared, leaving Owen at a loss for words. No matter what, it was obvious that Dagu was an expert in war, so he just watched quietly. After taking over the power given by Owen, the high-spirited Dagu immediately ordered the cannon to be fired. Hidden in the mountain fortress are heavy artillery, with a caliber of more than 150 millimeters. The range is astonishing. And the movement is earth-shattering. On the side facing the evil ratmen, dozens of heavy artillery fired at the same time. And the dust on half of the mountain was covered with dust. It was shaken up, and did not fall for a long time. If the war fortress had not been reinforced as a whole, it would have been shaken to cracks. Amidst the terrifying whistling sound, the cannonball weighing hundreds of kilograms hit the ground hard. When it detonated instantly, the terrifying shock wave swept everything within a hundred meters before the bursting flames, and was still expanding layer by layer. The evil rat men were originally thin, but they could withstand the shock waves generated by the explosion of hundreds of kilograms of artillery SH, LS, which were also dense. 
Therefore, when a sh l fell, the ones that were close were torn apart, and the ones that were far away were twisted and thrown into the sky. And this is just the beginning. As the distance got closer, the 150 mm howitzer also began to show its power, hitting the enemy's head with high destructive grenades, leaving large and small craters covered with flesh and blood on the ground. The high intensity bombardment lasted for half an hour before it began to slow down. During this period, tens of thousands of fell rat men were turned into pieces or limp corpses. But it still could not stop the fell ratman's almost endless charge, which made Owen, who had been observing the battle situation, look a little unhappy. But Dagu did not panic at all. He calmly ordered the heavy artillery to fire in turn, increasing the cooling time, reducing the failure rate, and also saving ammunition. The high intensity SH. Ling in just half an hour directly destroyed one-fifth of the ammunition reserves of the war fortress. This is not good news. Although the amount of ammunition stored in the war fortress is not the entire territory, there is an upper limit to the transportation of the portal. At this time, troops and materials need to be transported, and there is not much transportation capacity to transport the heavy SH, LS of the heavy artillery. Therefore, if you continue to maintain saturation bombardment, you will not be able to get enough replenishment before running out of ammunition. So you must save some money and use the artillery SH, LS at critical times. Owen looked at the amount of ammunition consumed and felt a little distressed. But he had no choice. If he wanted to have a range, he could only use traditional ammunition, which often meant two or three times more resource consumption than a steam cannon. Fortunately, after the distance was shortened, the steam weapons were able to come in handy. A large number of steam cannons began to fire SH. LS at the heads of the fell rats. The steam nail guns also sprayed iron rain that was denser than raindrops making the fell rats the man's unstoppable charge pause for a while. The grenade specially prepared for killing infantry is a cylindrical metal can filled with a large number of steel balls. A large beverage bottle grenade explodes in the air, covering a radius of 100 meters within the killing range. Even if you are wearing plate armor, it will be penetrated by the steel balls, not to mention the fell rat men who can only rely on their fur. So the effect of clearing the field is very significant, with one shot covering a large area. With the continuous steam provided by the steam unit in the war fortress, the steam nail gun also exerts its theoretically highest rate of fire. Each sharp nail will turn the evil ratmen within the range into hapless creatures that spurt blood everywhere. If the egg is hit too much, it will be torn directly. However, when the main force of the fell ratmen is about to arrive on the battlefield, the goblin corps will also face a severe test. After the evil cannon, which was pulled by hundreds of giant rats, arrived within the firing range, it immediately began to fix the cannon position and absorb the surrounding thick evil energy for complex compression and purification, and then converted it into a terrifyingly powerful evil energy disintegration bomb and fired it. Go out. The power of the evil energy fragmentation bombs, which are like meteors falling to the ground, is extremely terrifying. They are like invisible excavators. Once they land, a large area will disappear. All defenses are empty, regardless of whether they are heavy artillery bunkers, or the bipedal mecha turned into nothingness in the blink of an eye. Its power was not inferior to that of ordinary legendary spells. As for its shortcomings, apart from the inconvenience of movement, it also had a too slow rate of fire. Chapter 377 The Extinct Fire Tornado After the fell archers and giant rat cavalry entered the battlefield, they put huge pressure on the entire defense line. One had long-range attack methods, and the other was good at high-speed penetration coupled with the massive fell ratmen acting as flesh and blood shields. The war fortress could only feel like it was on fire. Like a hedgehog, they used the most intensive firepower to resist the enemy's charge at the cost of their lives. The two sides inevitably fell into a stalemate. Now it depends on who can't hold on first. Whether the flesh and blood body is completely broken up, or the ammunition is used up first. In any case, the current situation is that as long as the firepower of the goblin core is slightly weakened, it will be a foregone conclusion that the defense line will be breached. But Daegu didn't even look at it, but issued the first special order since the Goblin Corps entered the evil secret realm. Behind the mountain, a hidden passage opened, and with a low and dense roar, special steam machinery flew into the sky. It was a steam helicopter that had never been used by the Goblin Corps. These steam machines that killed and maimed countless goblins have always been regarded by Daegu as a trump card that could change the situation of the battle. Even though the Goblin Corps was in dire straits many times, he never used it because he knew very well that with the evil Ratmans with the ability to imitate, 
as long as you obtain a wreckage. It won't be long before the sky is full of evil helicopters. Therefore, steam helicopters can be used. But they must be used at the most critical time to achieve enough benefits. And now is the most appropriate time in Daegu's opinion. And there are ways to make up for the shortcomings of steam helicopters. The steam helicopter's release of firepower is a masterpiece. The only problem is its lack of self-protection ability. Even if the Fel Ratmen do not have aerial troops, they are still at risk of falling. But now that the territory has opened up resources to him, Daegu has the means to make up for it. As soon as the steam helicopter took off, a large number of gargoyles flew into the sky. They would serve as the guardians of the steam helicopter. And the one-eyed giant eagles high in the sky were their eyes. The appearance of the steam helicopter shocked the entire battlefield. Especially the Fel Ratmen. They immediately realized the seriousness of the problem and were immediately frightened. Because once they lost the fire support of the Fel Cannon, they had little confidence in defeating the enemy, the war fortress in front of us. So the evil shooter, who reacted immediately raised his gun and fired. Unfortunately, the range of the evil gun was comparable to that of the two kickers and could not reach the steam helicopter. He could only watch the fleet leave and shoot towards the evil cannon. Fly in the direction. The Fel Cannon, as the most important weapon of the Fel Rat Man, will not ignore the issue of defense. Thousands of Fel Mechas surround dozens of Fel Cannons to form layers of defense. Even if the Goblin Corps has an entire army, don't expect to encounter the Fel Cannon when attacking. But the limitation of vision makes the Fel Rat Men ignore the threat from the sky. Therefore, when they discover the steam helicopter, they can only let the Fel Mecha raise the Fel Cannon to attack. Resist. The problem of air defense was not considered when the Fel Mecha was first manufactured. Therefore, the small caliber Fel Cannon installed on the mechanical arm could not be raised at too high an angle, and the range was also quite limited. After all, Fel technology used Fel as energy. Lord, to put it bluntly, ammunition is concentrated evil energy. And the disadvantage of energy bombs is that the farther away they are, the faster they dissipate. This is why only the evil cannon poses a huge threat. Because if enough evil energy is shot out in one breath, even if it is even if part of it is dissipated, it can cause huge damage. So the fell cannon must not be destroyed. In desperation, some of the smarter fell ratmen directly put the fell mecha to the ground and fired furiously into the sky. They saw the undulating fell cannonballs trying to shoot down the steam helicopter like monkeys piercing the sky. But the guards were still there. The surrounding gargoyles will always use their bodies as shields to block the fell cannon. Without missing a beat, allowing the steam helicopter to steadily approach the fell cannon and start firing rockets. The bomb nests on both sides of the steam helicopter are filled with densely packed rockets. The hit rate of this thing is not high, but it seems to be the best for cleaning the ground, especially when targeting the evil mecha lying flat on the ground. There really wasn't a single shot that missed. I couldn't count how many fell mechas were blasted into the sky by powerful rockets. The fell mecha group that the fell ratmen regarded as a comeback card suffered heavy losses before they could be put to use. No, they are not coming for the fell cannon said the fell warlock, who was busy strengthening the defense cover of the fell cannon, gritting his teeth and stamping his feet. Who would have thought that the flying machine that had been hidden by the goblin core until now would attack in the east and west, apparently to attack the evil cannon, but in fact it was to destroy the evil mecha. How could this not make the evil warlock angry? In fact, after seeing the destructive power of the rockets, the evil warlock knew that they had guessed wrong, even if they ignored it. The power of these rockets was not enough to destroy the evil cannon protected by the evil shield. Or even not at all. The fell energy shield needs to be fully activated. Which will affect the power and range of the fell energy cannon. When all the fell rat men turned their attention to the steam helicopter, the war fortress secretly opened a special passage. And four heavy rocket launchers drove out from the heart of the mountain. Then, with the assistance of hundreds of goblin engineers, quickly support the vehicle body, raise the launcher, and adjust the shooting angle. By the time the evil magician realized something was wrong through evil energy, it was already too late. Even the territory cannot tell how powerful the fire tornado rocket launcher is. Because this thing costs a lot of money, and its destructive power is too exaggerated. There is no chance to experiment at all. After all, once it is tested in reality, it will definitely not be hidden from a few people in the north. Power. And the secret realm cannot withstand such damage at all. The only super large secret realm that can withstand it is the evil energy secret realm, which cannot be stimulated at all. Therefore, only part of the data has been tested with a rocket launcher level micro rocket launcher. 
So this is the first time it has been used in actual combat. And four at a time. When the 48 fire tornado rockets flew into the sky, both the evil rat men and the goblins instinctively felt the feeling of a natural disaster coming. The crisis of destruction at any time made the entire battlefield feel silent. By the time, the evil rat man came to his senses and fled in panic. It was already too late. The fire tornado rockets falling from the sky gave no chance to escape at all. They exploded one after another, each blasting into towering mushroom clouds and spreading freely. It is a flame of death, and the shock wave generated by expelling the air turns everything within the killing range into a distorted state. And this is just the beginning. One after another, the rockets falling in a circular trajectory formed an upward airflow, gradually forming a circle of death formed by flames and airflow. The air is burning. Life is being robbed. And death is laughing. When a fire tornado hundreds of meters high is formed, everything is irreversible. A total of four fire tornadoes were evenly distributed on the battlefield because the borders were too close. After a simple touch, they began to merge with each other and eventually formed a terrifying eye of fire that penetrated the sky and wiped out everything, spreading death to the entire battlefield. This period is difficult to calculate. Not even the corpses of the evil rat men could be found. They were either burned to ashes or completely torn into pieces. Most of them were dried out by the oven and rolled up by the chaotic airflow, just like plastic bags blown up by the strong wind. Flying eventually turning into finer pieces. Chapter 378 Evil Energy Invades the Main World This power is much stronger than the legendary spell. Looking at the eye of fire that grew stronger and stronger on the battlefield until it reached the point where the clouds wiped out everything. Although Owen knew that the fire tornado rocket launcher was very powerful. It was only compared with the legendary spell. And he even felt that it was still powerful. It was slightly weaker. But he never expected that the combined power of the fire tornadoes would be so outrageous. The only thing that can limit it is air. Without air, even if it burns, it will be difficult to last. He didn't expect that the surrounding air would not be replenished in time. The eye of flame began to fade quickly. However, the large-scale burning also caused many unaffected fell rat men to die of suffocation. After all, most fell rat men were only contaminated by fell energy rather than controlling fell energy. Therefore, except for fell energy, they are not much different from ordinary creatures. They also needed to eat, drink, and breathe. And they also needed to breathe and sleep. Therefore, the casualties were extremely heavy. In the end, only tens of thousands survived. Not even one out of ten. The face of the evil warlock can no longer be described as ugly. Now they are riding a tiger, and it is difficult to get off. If they fight, the defeated soldiers will definitely not be able to defeat them. If they don't fight, no matter how hard it is, the opponent will not miss this opportunity. If the opponent is poor, no one can bear the consequences of chasing after the evil empire. Inform the king and ask if the day of shattering will be opened in advance. The evil warlock forced out these words through a mouth full of rat teeth. The goblin corps blocked the entrance to the fell secret realm for more than a day or two, and they could not attack it for a long time. Naturally, the fell rat men were also exploring other methods, such as directly digging through the fell secret realm and entering the main world. It's just that the evil energy secret realm is too big and some parts are beyond the scope of the main world. Once the secret realm is dug through, they are likely to be sucked into the void. Even if the evil energy can save their lives, they will be worse than dead. Therefore, despite this plan, but it has never been implemented, and now they have no choice. In the underground palace of the evil empire, the evil king was angry at the incompetence of his subordinates. But the matter had come to this, and no amount of anger could change the reality. So he took out a sacred object, a broken tooth, obsessively rubbing his broken teeth that were bigger than his own head and already coated with pulp with his fingers as thick as a courtyard pillar. The evil king couldn't help but stretch out his thick tongue and lick the bottomless tooth cavity, trying to suck out the depth inside. It was a pity that it had been trying hard for decades, but still couldn't do it. Only a strong evil energy was injected into its obese body, adding more than a hundred kilograms of fat to its huge body. After thinking for a while, the evil king finally made up his mind, holding the broken teeth with both hands and smashing them hard on the ground. The ground was not damaged at all, but the evil light that penetrated the secret realm under the palace vibrated silently, just like a tight rubber band was pulled and then suddenly released, and the core of the secret realm next to it also shook. Not only was the core of the secret realm originally damaged by evil energy, but it was also continuously polluted and penetrated, 
if it could withstand such torture and break decisively. In other words, the core of the secret realm of evil energy was leaked. Owen, who was about to send out the guards to decide the outcome, suddenly felt his hair standing on end and felt something bad. He left and ordered everyone to retreat. If it were in other places, even if the emperor ordered it, it would not be implemented so quickly. But here, 100% implementation of Owen's will is the meaning of their existence. Daegu, let alone discouraging inquiries, started immediately without even a trace of delay. Emergency evacuation devices suddenly appeared throughout the war fortress. And red lights representing crisis evacuation began to flash rapidly. The goblins who were originally in a hurry to deliver supplies to the evil secret realm did not hesitate at all. They immediately changed from the front team to the back team and returned immediately. When the earth continued to shake and huge cracks appeared in the sky. And he could even see the scenery of the main world. Owen knew what was happening and that the secret realm was shattering. The fragmentation of the secret realm is definitely a disaster for the creatures in the secret realm. But for the main world, it is no less than a delicious meal. The problem is that this dish is not only mixed with shit but also poisonous. The human stress response is vomiting. And the world's stress response is rejection. Therefore, the fragmented evil energy secret realm was not absorbed by the main world. Instead, most of it was eliminated from the body and drifted to the original void land. But there was still some evil energy. The fragments of the secret realm are scattered all over the main world. Adding another world destroying general and evil power to this unfortunate world with undead. Demons and plagues. Owen, who witnessed all this happening, was unable to stop it. He could only expand the authority space to cover the fragments of the secret realm where the mountain fortress was located, and anchor it in the space around the territory so that it would not be thrown to unknown places by the turbulence. Not here. After the fluctuations caused by the shattering of the evil energy secret realm stopped, it will be time to deal with the aftermath, because the secret realm is in the mezzanine of the main world. Although it is broken, it does not have much impact on the main world. Evil energy pollution is another matter. Therefore, except for the consumption of some materials in the previous war, the territory has not been damaged. Therefore, the main efforts were focused on placing war forts. Of course, the war fortress that took the Goblin Corps nearly 30 years to build will not be given up just like that. After purifying the remaining evil energy, magic elements will be added to the original foundation and further improved to see if it can be transformed into a trumpet. The Sky Fortress, as for the Sky City, don't dream about it. Owen does not need to interfere with these. The territory has a mature research system. He only needs to open the corresponding permissions. The biggest problem now is that there are many evil energy fragments scattered in the north. Obviously, contamination is inevitable. Prevention must be taken early. The pollution of fell energy is too strong and difficult to be diluted. So the emergence of fell creatures and fell warlocks is a foregone conclusion. And it is only a matter of time before the severely injured fell rat men make a comeback. Owen rubbed his eyebrows. The main world was also in too much trouble. Originally, the empire was still there. And there were tall men who were responsible for these things. The problem is that now that the empire is gone, there are only many scattered forces. And Hydra is still one of them. It is obviously a dream to expect others to come forward or come to rescue. First notify Farrier and Solari of this matter, so that they can be more vigilant and guard against evil energy invasion. Compared to solving the evil energy problem, Owen prefers to protect himself first. And Maya has no objection to this. Even if evil energy was not too dangerous, she would take the initiative to spread the evil energy and occupy the North Land. It's not bad at the moment. Compared to the territory that has been dealing with evil energy for 30 years, the main world knows nothing about evil energy, which gives the territory a lot of initiative. And compared to Owen who is worried about this and that, Maya doesn't care about the appearance of evil energy at all. After all, not only the undead are raging in the main world, but demons can also come and go freely. And with the intrusion of the secret realm, there are more messy things. And evil energy can harm although it is big. It may not be ranked in the top three. In addition, although the fragmentation of the evil energy secret realm caused a lot of trouble, it also opened up a passage to the outside world. In the past, because the evil energy secret realm was too large, the territory's portal could not connect to the mountains in the other world. Now that the obstacle has disappeared, Owen only needs to spend some time proofreading before he can open the passage again. In fact, it didn't take long for Owen to open the portal to Hydra Island. Chapter 379 Evil Energy and Faith The manpower Owen left behind on Hydra Island are still alive. 
although they are inevitably aging, they can still control the power by relying on their offspring, which saves him a lot of trouble. Of course, as a person from heaven, taking over power will definitely cause some trouble. But Owen doesn't care. As he upgrades the castle tower, the population limit increases. After a while, after the transformation of the system, here again will become a new territory. Although there has been no contact for 30 years, Owen's orders are still well implemented, such as the magic horn trees and black glue bugs he transplanted. Those men not only planted on Hydra Island, but also specially found a nearby island that was more suitable in all aspects to plant all the magic horn trees. By the way, they also cultivated a large number of black glue worms. However, due to the lack of effective utilization technology, the island is out of control because there are too many of them. In fact, if Owen's students hadn't developed a new type of propellant using magic horn tree blocks to refine better steel, even the magic horn trees on Hydra Island would have been overrun. This is actually a good thing for Owen. But instead of having another territory that produces resources, he pays more attention to the news in the mountains. Where are the places where rare resources are really produced? Fortunately, Hydra Island has maintained trade with the mountains for 30 years. Currently, there is a large amount of rare materials accumulated in the warehouse which exceeds the number of transactions with the mountains. And this part comes from plunder. The chief apprentice that Irving took in back then has now become a pirate queen who dominates the world. She dominates the queen's island and has become a well-known big shot. However, after seeing Owen as her master, Shu Lia still knew how to remain respectful because the main body of her pirate group was composed of Japanese warriors from Hydra Island. And Owen's appearance had not changed but was getting younger. Although Shu Lia is partly male, she is more obsessed with appearance than ordinary women. Therefore, the teacher is still a teacher, and she must maintain respect until she grasps the teacher's vital points and forces out all the essence. Otherwise, wouldn't she be a student? All for nothing. Although he didn't know what Shulia was thinking, Owen always felt that it was not a good thing. However, Irving has long been used to it. The environment Shulia lived in since she was a child cannot raise a kind-hearted little white flower. Not to mention that her gender problem itself is a way to die on Queen Island. It can be said that she has been living in panic since she was sensible. Middle. No matter what. Shu Lia is indeed a talented person who can stand on her own. So Owen is not going to destroy her. Anyway, Hydra Island has been upgraded. Let her stay here for more time and stop running around at sea. Sooner or later she will be his. Knowing that the mountains had not changed much. Owen arrived at Rivendell Town through the teleportation array. Time here seems to have been frozen. Even after 30 years, it is still not much different from the last time he came. Even the traitors are descendants of those people back then. Only the adventurers have changed over time. But the number is much reduced. This is actually normal. Because the magic power of the earth veins has begun to fade. And the frequency of opening the teleportation array has naturally decreased a lot. As the mayor of Glen Town, after learning about Owen's arrival, Maya immediately came to accompany him in person. This was both respect and caution. But it was of no use. Owen had already decided to exchange it for a town center here. So this rare snake-haired snake sooner or later the banshee will become his. With this idea in mind, Owen was very generous when discussing future cooperation. Which made Maya very satisfied. He even invited him to visit his room. But he was rejected because Owen had personally experienced a snake from Maya. How powerful is the squeezing power of the banshee? A domesticated one can lose three kilograms at a time, let alone a wild one outside. And the one who plays for free will definitely not cherish and use it. So for his small body, forget it. After redeeming the town center and setting up the portal, Owen's next focus was on the lizard men at the bottom of the mountain. Several lizardman clans are still fighting, with no hope of an end in sight. If the environment here were not very suitable for the lizard people, and the lizard people's reproductive ability is not weak, they might have become extinct long ago. However, neither Owen nor Dragon Mother cared much about this. Because war would make their faith pure. Therefore, even if the Shanmu clan, which believed in Dragon Mother, was renamed the Dragon Mother clan, they still did not achieve the final victory with the help of the gods. It is true that life is much easier. And this also makes the Dragon Mother clan's faith deepen. Owen has always been very greedy for the huge number of lizard people. So the invasion with faith is just the beginning. Next, he will first build a new territory in the mountains, and then conduct transactions with the lizard people to deepen the relationship between the two parties. As for why they built a territory first 
and then traded with the Lizardmen. It was mainly because this allowed the Lizardmen to choose fair transactions instead of plundering by force. After the relationship between the two parties deepens, look for opportunities to build a town center in the Lizardmen clan, recruit more Lizardmen, and form an army of Lizardmen. The whole process will obviously take many years. Fortunately, neither Irving nor his men lack longevity, and he can afford to wait. When Owen returned from the mountains, evil energy had appeared in the north, but it was not taken seriously. In fact, this is normal. The barbarian kingdom's blood sacrifice all the way south led to the emergence of many secret realms with undead attributes in the north, and many undead transfer inheritances were left behind, causing the undead casters to almost overrun the north. In addition, as early as 30 years ago, the devil's head and the people of the church of flesh were wreaking havoc here. Now, not only have they not disappeared, but they have become stronger. I don't know how many people in the north have colluded with them. So evil energy. He, he. The territory will not underestimate evil energy because of this. The lethality of evil energy is only one aspect. The most dangerous thing is the irreversible pollution. Materials are fine and can be purified after some time. But once a living being is contaminated with evil energy, not only the body, but also the will and soul will be contaminated. No one can predict what kind of ghost it will eventually become. So it must be strictly guarded against. In fact, the best way to deal with evil energy is not guns, but faith. Faith is the light of the soul, but mortals cannot use it. However, if you can get a response from the gods, with the help of devout faith, you can enhance the strength of your own soul, resist the pollution of the will and soul by evil energy, and weaken the distortion of the body. After reaching this conclusion, the temple, which had always been very low-key in the territory, began to expand on a large scale. Simply expanding the temple is meaningless. The core lies in the transformation and return of faith. And this requires Owen's action. It's just that at Owen's current level, millions of believers are not a windfall from the sky, but a mountain of gold from the sky, which will be smashed to death without any body parts. Therefore, he must find a carrier for this huge faith. And it cannot fall on him. Otherwise they will either be held to death or crushed to death. Fortunately, it is not difficult to find carrying objects. Owen has ready-made ones, such as the Authority Space and Sacred Objects. Chapter 380 Belief Network Owen has never been exposed to faith before, and these have been working on his behalf. Otherwise, even if there is a system, under the huge pressure of faith, he will either be stupid or crazy. It's just that this method is too scattered and does not have much effect. What Owen has to do now is to integrate these and form a complete belief network, which can respond to the prayers of believers like a magic network and use it to the maximum extent. The power of faith protects millions of believers. This sounds like a very huge project. Even if Irving already has all the conditions, it is still not easy to implement it. First of all, Owen ordered to expand the scale of the temple on the original basis, because the temple is the residence of God, and only the temple can become an important node of the faith network. At the same time, allowing the temple to go to the countryside and integrate with the common people will also facilitate the gathering of more faiths. Building temples is not a problem for the territory. Sufficient manpower allows temples in various places to change day by day. The main problem is the recruitment of missionary personnel. Fortunately, monks as evangelists are one of the military units in the Empire era. They can also be transferred from civilians. And it only takes some time to quickly replenish them. In fact, there are not many monks in the territory. Because the monks are knowledgeable and have certain mysterious powers. After learning, they can master art construction, technology, medical treatment, medicine, spells and other abilities. They are quite a panacea. So they directly mobilize a group of them. That's it. The missing positions and territories will be replenished automatically. In contrast, the priest, who is the core of faith propagation, is a bit troublesome. Because the priest is a heroic and invincible fifth level unit. While Owen can only exchange for unit buildings of one to four levels and units higher than level 4 can only rely on exchange. Although Owen's current progress value recovers faster, it still feels insufficient. Firstly, he needed to exchange knowledge and items from the system for the research of the territory. Secondly, temples in various places needed to exchange holy objects as the core of gathering faith. So Owen's head began to hurt again. Fortunately, the current situation is relatively stable, and Owen can have the time and energy to improve the territory's belief system. The Holy Light Cathedral in the North City has been expanding for 30 years. 
It is the largest temple in the entire territory. Today, it is even more solemn and grand. Teams of priests, monks and templars escort the sacred objects to various temples. Next wherever they will be stationed, they will be both guardians of sacred objects and spreaders of faith. As each sacred relic was implemented, the priest led the monks to hold large-scale sacrificial activities in the local area, gathering the faith of the surrounding people on the sacred relics. And then the holy relics transmitted their faith to the five sacred relics of the same origin. Owen, who was staying in the Holy Light Cathedral, could sense that the power of faith coming from all over the territory was gathering here, and tried to integrate into his body. But he refused because he, as a mortal, could not bear the power of faith. When Owen put on the five holy weapons, the power of faith gathered in the Holy Light Cathedral seemed to have found its source, pouring into the five holy objects like a river pouring back. Then Owen opened the authority space and introduced a steady stream of faith power into it. Leave it to the golden tree. The faith generated by millions of believers fell into the space of authority like a violent storm and was about to form a terrible storm. However, the golden tree stretched its roots and branches and turned into a giant tree that could cover the sky and the sun withstand all the wind and rain, and then transformed into a huge tree with itself as the core. At the same time, using tree roots as looms and laws as patterns, the imprinted faith weaves threads, spreads through the authority space to the territory, connects the temples throughout the territory, and then uses them as nodes to weave into a network, eventually covering the entire territory and forming a unique realm of belief. Because it is a startup, the faith network will definitely have some omissions, but the effect is significant. First, monks and priests as shepherds have mastered the power of the soul and the magic of faith granted by the golden tree. Then, the faith field expanded around the temples in various places can enhance the resistance of believers within the area to abnormalities, especially them. These shepherds, with the blessing of faith, directly have the ability to annihilate evil. From now on, no matter whether the undead, demons or evil forces are protected by the shepherd, it will be difficult for them to invade the territory, let alone cause damage. But this is only temporary. Owen can figure out how to create a belief network and realm. The evil forces will also find ways to continuously exploit loopholes. So you can rest assured. But you cannot take it lightly. Owen, who knew it well, did not stop, but continued to improve the territory's belief system, such as the Cathedral of Holy Light as the core, as the first and largest temple in the territory. It houses the five sacred objects and the most complete statue of Owen. It is also the core of the faith network of the entire territory. It is no less important than the political and military core, which is the town center. The Cathedral of the Holy Light is so important that ordinary priests are naturally not enough to preside over it. Therefore, Owen ingeniously integrated sacred objects with priests to create the special profession of bishop. Because of the fusion of the sacred objects and the permission of Owen, the bishop can directly mobilize the power of the five sacred objects and release power beyond legend. To a certain extent, a bishop is nothing less than the incarnation of God in the human world, or a living saint. Therefore, the conditions for formation are naturally very harsh. The priests, who have just been redeemed cannot withstand the powerful faith infused by Owen at all. Only the initial system rewards ten priests can serve as bishops full-time after decades of faith and training. Even so, it was enough. After all, converting a bishop required a lot of faith power. Even with 30 years of accumulation, Owen would not dare to squander faith power at will. It's just a waste to convert all 10 priests into bishops. It's not that the bishops are not good, but because the abilities of the bishops are more like priests, and they are suitable for holding ceremonies to develop faith, rather than fighting. But among the invincible priests, who is not the master who wields the scepter and dares to fight the devil hand to hand? It is obviously a waste to all become civil servants. So Owen thought about it and only transferred five bishops. And the remaining five were transferred to judges, officials, and established a court of justice. In Owen's vision, the tribunal is mainly aimed at the purification of heretics and evil. So more targeted power must be given. The bishop can draw on the power of the five sacred objects. And the inquisitors of the same level can't be inferior. Owen thought about it and used the hunting god sword as the core integrating the power of the devil he possessed into it, and creating a weapon that still has lethality. The magic sword on top of the five sacred objects was inserted into the root of the golden tree, allowing the judge to use the power of this magic sword. In addition, Owen also mobilized a group of guards and witch hunters to join the trial house 
and become the first batch of God's punishment warriors and sin-hunting sisters. At the same time, the tribunal trained a group of judges to serve as a territory to fight against evil. Of Hunters Chapter 381 Blood Sacrifice Massacre and Alliance Laws While Owen was busy building a protective net for his territory, he didn't know that someone was taking the initiative to lure the wolf into the house. Compared with the Northern Glory Alliance, which is confident and united, and the Baguan Border City Alliance, which inherited the Imperial Border Army's family background, the Northern Noble Alliance not only lacks hard power and foundation, but also faces threats from many external forces. So it was forced to form a highly centralized alliance jointly formed an alliance army, jointly funded the construction of public roads and facilities, and just united the entire alliance. But the alliance is still an alliance. And it is strange that there is no internal intrigue. What's more, in order to successfully form the alliance, the first law passed by the alliance is that private territory is inviolable. This is why the nobles of the north, who are all lords, join the alliance, because only by ensuring themselves only if they have the rights and interests, they will contribute money and efforts. However, such a law has a very serious consequence. That is, the alliance needs to abide by the laws of the alliance. But the laws of the alliance cannot be enforced on the territory of a certain alliance member. Which means that the rights of alliance members on private land are not above the alliance. It includes tax collection, military, trial, etc. And this right is also supported and guaranteed by the laws of the alliance. This is funny. In theory, as long as the alliance members pay taxes to the alliance according to their shares, the alliance has no right to interfere in the territories of the alliance members. Even the nominal noble council of the alliance. It might be better if the outside world maintains huge pressure or is in a state of war. The problem is that the neighbor to the north, that is, the Northern Glory Alliance, has not been able to afford weapons for 30 years. Unless they take the initiative to provoke, they will not bother to raise their hands. For such an object, you can just say it is a threat. The key is that someone must believe it. The Northland Noble Alliance does not need votes. The decision makers are all noble lords. It is so easy to fool. So it will not work. As for the barbarian tribes in the north, they are almost exhausted. And they are blocked by the Northern Glory Alliance. So they cannot become a threat. The threat from the barbarian kingdom is real and huge. But the distance is too far. And the accumulation of strength is slow. It doesn't take 10 or 20 years to accumulate the strength to go south. Plus there are almost all enemies in the north. So most of the time it can be neglect. Only the Baguan Border City Alliance poses a real threat. But with the Northern Glory Alliance and the Barbarian Kingdom here, they don't dare to invade in a large scale to prevent the other party from seizing the loophole and invading. What's more, the Baguan Border City Alliance is adjacent to the hundred cities to the south. The Alliance is a terrifying behemoth. No one dares to take it lightly. Therefore, the Northern Noble Alliance is actually very safe. And there is no huge threat although they had some scruples in the early years to form an alliance. They have spent 30 years safely. As a result, the leaders and subordinates inevitably feel lazy. Foreign enemies do not come to fight. And they take the initiative to attack again and again. However, under the circumstances, the conflicts and struggles within the alliance naturally increased day by day, and even began to resort to unscrupulous means. Not long ago, someone discovered evil energy. And for some unknown reason, he took the initiative to spread evil energy in his city, and even attracted some evil ratmen. As a result, things immediately got out of control. The other party originally just wanted to achieve a certain goal by spreading evil energy in a small area, but he never expected that a group of ratmen would actually cause him a big stumble. Compared to the rough usage of people who have just discovered evil energy, the evil rat people who have been soaked in evil energy since birth are no different from natural users of evil energy. Moreover, the secret realm of evil energy was broken. Although the evil rat people were not extinct, their vitality was severely damaged. They desperately wanted to regain their strength. So what better way to do it than to use evil energy to devour the lives of a city? So the original small a widespread flu turns into a widespread plague. As for agreeing to the conditions of a certain human being, uh-huh, they are evil rat people. How can they abide by the agreement? The ecstatic evil rat men are like rats carrying the plague spreading evil energy crazily in the city, making more and more people infected with evil energy, becoming more and more twisted, and the entire city will inevitably fall into in chaos. After being baptized by the undead and demons, the residents of the north have long known how much trouble these mutated people will cause. 
The best way is to kill them with swords and then burn them to ashes with fire. So they decisively attack anyone with green eyes. The man raised his butcher knife. But the evil energy has not disappeared. Because as long as it is infected, the evil energy will continue to devour life and strengthen itself. Death only allows the evil energy to leave the host and increase the concentration of evil energy in a certain area. This makes it easier for the evil ratman to drive the evil energy. Can infect more people. Evil energy spreads rapidly by devouring life force, causing large areas of pollution. However, the secret realm where the evil rat men were previously was too closed, and they were still new to blood sacrifices and massacres. Therefore, it only caused huge panic in a short period of time. If you want to really use evil energy, devouring a city is still too early. However, the appearance of evil energy and the chaos it caused attracted people from the devil's head and the church of flesh. These two were veterans of blood sacrifices in the rebellion. The undead blood sacrifices of the barbarian kingdom were not as smooth as they could do. So the damage caused was much worse than that of evil energy. Much larger. Three deadly forces were mixed and fermented in a city. And the impact caused by it was beyond the comparison of a single force. Even the devil's head and the people of the church of the flesh did not expect that the evil power was so talented in this area. Not a small interest. Of course, such a big movement cannot be hidden from anyone. The businessmen who come and go will spread the news. Not to mention the people who are still alive in the city will ask for help. But as the evil energy spreads, the blood sacrifice of the city has begun. Which is so easy to stop. Now, except for the barbarian kingdom and barbarian tribes, everyone in the north has been alerted. And they have turned their attention. This unlucky city was not far from Farrier and Solari's city. Only a few dozen miles apart. This made the two nervous. They immediately mobilized troops to go to the border, preparing to set up a defense line close to the other side city. Both armies are semi-firearms armies. They are not only equipped with a large number of muskets, but also carry many artillery. They are far more advantageous than cold weapon troops in fighting defensive battles. This is why the two decided to set up defenses on the border, because they did not want to start a war with the other party in your own city. Every Northland noble will expand its territory from the city as the center to the surrounding areas. Therefore, most Northland nobles border each other. In order to avoid conflicts and disputes, clear border lines have become a necessity. After ordering the army to set up defenses on the border, Farrier and Solari headed to the other side city with a small number of elite troops. After witnessing the green evil energy spreading in the city, the maniacal laughter of the devil could be heard in their ears, and the flesh and blood twitched as if they had independent consciousness. Their faces changed wildly, and they immediately led their troops back 20 miles. In fact, if the two men were determined to attack the city immediately regardless of casualties, it would be possible to interrupt the blood sacrifice of massacre. However, it is actually impossible. It is not that their troops cannot enter, but that it is not allowed and illegal. Chapter 382 Investigation of the Demon Hunting Department As a semi-independent alliance composed of many Northland nobles, the Northland Nobles Alliance has very strict alliance laws. The first article is that private territory is inviolable. This is also the cornerstone of the establishment of the Northland Nobles Alliance. Because the Northland nobles who join the alliance are not it may be impossible for someone who selflessly surrenders all his territory and people to die. In fact, except for one name, the members of the alliance are in charge of their own affairs. They only jointly provide money and people to form the alliance army, build public roads and buildings, and abide by the same rules of the game. These are all commanded and deployed by the Northland Noble Council. But one thing must not be violated. That is, private territory is inviolable. Even in the name of the Alliance. No plant or tree on the territory of Alliance members can be touched. Therefore, without the consent of the other party, let alone the army, even a bullet belonging to Farrier and Solari falling into the other party's territory is considered an invasion. At that time, not only will the Alliance be held accountable, but other members of the alliance will be hurt. And the consequences will be it was very serious. So even if the entire city was destroyed in front of their eyes, they couldn't do anything. Fortunately, this was not the first time that a similar incident had occurred. The alliance parliament had already established a special organization to respond and receive special emergency authority in the parliamentary vote. So a special team arrived quickly. Dear Count Solari, I am Jonathan, the senior demon hunter of the demon hunting department. According to the laws of the Alliance, I now have the right to ask you some questions. Please answer them truthfully. Jonathan is a middle-aged man who looks very rigid. The man, 
with sharp eyes, wearing a long windbreaker unique to the Witcher, a long sword and an alchemy firearm, stopped in front of Solari and spoke businesslikely. Solari frowned, feeling unhappy. After all, he was a noble Earl, and the other party was just a dog raised by the Alliance. However, according to the laws of the Alliance, the other party did have this right, and it looked like the other party pressed their hands together. With a prop like a pocket watch, he knew that he was the object of suspicion. In fact, this is normal. Using similar means to deceive neighbors is an ancestral craft of the nobles, and it is even more popular in the north. Therefore, it is very normal for both Solari and Farrier to become the target of suspicion. After using magic to activate the recorder, Jonathan began to ask some questions, such as when Solari knew about it, when he arrived, and whether the insidious incident had anything to do with him. Solari is over 70 years old and has never seen any scene before. His answers are flawless. Even if Jonathan wants to cause trouble, he can't find any flaws. What's more, just as Solari thinks in his heart, the identity gap between the two parties is too big. If it's too big, just stopping the other party from asking a routine question is already very offending. If you use other methods, I'm afraid the other party will fall out directly, and even the demon hunting department won't be able to protect him. After Solari left with a straight face, Jonathan immediately played back the recorder, trying to find something. Boss, you are so brave. That is Count Solari, one of the twelve counts in the Alliance. I was so scared just now that I didn't dare to speak. After Solari left, one of Jonathan's team members breathed a sigh of relief. Pan said, The Count cannot violate the laws of the League. Jonathan said expressionlessly. It was obvious at a glance that this person was not usually easy to contact. But his team members had long been accustomed to it. Head. Okay. Did Count Solari lie? The team member asked curiously. Because this is related to the direction of their actions. The recorder in Jonathan's hand is a high-end product. Not only does the resolution reach the level of a hair, it also has the function of detecting and detecting lies. However, only some high-level officials of the Alliance and members of the Demon Hunting Department know about this matter. After all, lies belong to the nobles. Face, no one likes to be unmasked and reveal their ugly side. He didn't lie. Jonathan put away the recorder and his expression became more serious. Because this was not good news. He would rather Solari did it. So that the matter would be simpler. As a senior member of the Demon Hunting Department, Jonathan has dealt with many similar incidents. Some were eliminated in the bud before they broke out. But some developed to an extent that was beyond control. Such as the Wailing City in front of him. No matter which one. The cause is very important. Firstly, you can learn lessons and take precautions. Secondly, you can have more accurate ideas to solve it. Otherwise, you can only use your life to find clues. Obviously, the situation they are facing is very bad. The situation in the city has begun to get out of control. People inside can't escape. And it's difficult for people outside to get in. The most important thing is that they don't know what the cause is. And they don't know how far it has developed. In fact, purely from a rational perspective, Jonathan knew that the best way now was to use the army to attack the city. A war could not solve the problem. But it was enough to break the opponent's advantage and make the chaotic situation clear. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The laws of the Alliance allowed them to implement the procedures rigidly. Because without enough clues, they could not convince the members of the Parliament or the Alliance members. Especially if they needed to use the army to attack a city of an Alliance member. Asking for information is just a routine. And most of the time, they can't get any effective clues. Next, they need to venture into the city to find clues. And use death to prove that they found the right one. Those who are lucky enough to come back alive will report it. As for whether to implement it, then it depends on the decision of the Alliance Council. Jonathan had seen so many people die from this that he was numb. So he did not explain anything. But led his team members, who had obviously just joined the industry for a long time through a secret passage into the city that was being shrouded in death. The demon hunting department has secretly built secret passages in many cities. Everyone knows what the purpose is. So it can be used but cannot be exposed. Let alone admitted. After getting out of a drain, Jonathan immediately took out the tester. The pointer on it quickly crossed from the white area to the gray area, and finally pointed to the black area, and was still approaching the red area. Not only Jonathan saw the scene, but several other team members also saw it. And at the same time, they showed fear and panic. They who have been trained by the demon hunting department are very clear about what this means. 
according to the division of the demon hunting department. The white area is safe, and you can move freely. The gray area is slightly polluted, and you need to be vigilant. And the black area is severely polluted. Even if there are senior members lead the team. And the mortality rate remains high. As for the red area representing the abyss. It is no longer about solving the problem. But how to escape? Obviously. The seriousness of the city's problems has exceeded their previous expectations. And it is slipping towards the abyss. Captain. According to the regulations of the demon hunting department. We can now choose to withdraw and call for support from the Alliance Army. A team member whispered to Jonathan, with the secret support of several teammates. Continue to carry out the exploration mission, Jonathan said without changing his expression. Several other team members were unwilling to do so. But as the captain, Jonathan still had the highest command authority without orders or takeovers from his superiors. If they dared to disobey orders, they would end up badly. So they could only take out their weapons and prepare for action. It's just that I have ravaged this captain who doesn't take their lives seriously hundreds of times in my heart. Chapter 383 Praise for Evil Energy Jonathan either didn't know the seriousness of the situation, or it was because he knew it that he made such a decision, because he vaguely felt that this unusual disaster was different from the past, and it might not be a good idea to directly call for military support. So he planned to start by finding the source of your discomfort. Fortunately, every member of the Demon Hunting Club is an all-rounder, and the configuration of the team is as complete as possible. For example, Jonathan is not only a warlock, but also a swordsman and an archer. He is also proficient in many mysterious knowledge. And except for a few of his men, who are specialized in most of those who fight have some spellcasting abilities, and have learned relevant mysterious knowledge. This is the source of his confidence in adventurous investigations. But not everyone has the feeling of being a lone hero. Except for Jonathan. The other team members just want to leave here because the more they understand the mystery, the easier it is to feel fear. In addition, as members of the Demon Hunting Club, they often experience many abnormal events, which makes them full of fear. Of fear. It's a pity that while they have special rights and rich resources, they are also subject to many restrictions. They cannot run away when encountering danger like adventurers. They can only follow their captain hard and curse the bastard in his heart to die quickly. At that time, they would have a reason to run away. As for the problem of mission failure, they can leave it to the captain to die. They are just soldiers. What can they know? The group of people did not pretend in vain. Countless bloody lessons have clearly told them that this will not work at all. First of all, the strength attributes are different. And secondly, who said that all colleagues live in harmony? Neither the devil's head nor the flesh church is a family. Awareness. It has become a common practice to cheat each other. And it is even more common to stab each other in the back. So I think that if I sneak in, everything will be fine. Generally, I will not survive the next day. If I can really sneak in, the problem will be even bigger. Because you will definitely not normal. Relying on the thieves' stealth methods, Jonathan and his party gradually approached the residential area, and at the same time saw more and more cruel scenes. The warlock of the demon head likes to summon demons to carry out massacres. This can not only please the demons, but also take the opportunity to collect more souls to summon stronger demons. Therefore, demons can be seen everywhere in the city killing humans. In comparison, the people of the Church of Flesh and Blood are much more pure. They simply want to sacrifice more flesh and blood to the Lord of Flesh and Blood. Therefore, the place where they operate is like a slaughterhouse. With broken limbs and limbs everywhere, they also sealed the city gate with their twisted flesh and blood. Anyone who dared to get close would either have their flesh twisted into a monster or be swallowed by the twisted flesh and blood. There are even some people who have become undead spellcasters and are fishing in troubled waters in the city, evoking the remains of the dead and enslaving the souls who died in this disaster. It is almost like participating in a carnival. Jonathan has long been accustomed to the scene of demons dancing in front of him. But what really makes him feel uneasy is the evil energy. Along the way, Jonathan saw too many people with green eyes. They were panicking and struggling and escaping like ordinary people. However, he was keenly aware that these people infected with evil energy were not the first targets of demons and undead. Even after touching the twisted flesh full of curses, it has a strong resistance. To a certain extent, in this city full of curses and killings, evil energy is more like a blessing. This is not the first time that Jonathan has heard of evil energy. And he has even read relevant information. Because evil energy had just appeared and its lethality was not great. It did not attract much attention in the demon hunting department. 
This is mainly because the concentration of evil energy is greatly reduced after it leaks into the main world. And it is suppressed by more complete laws. Before the evil energy adapts. Its lethality is indeed inconspicuous. But its pollution is not affected. Instead, it becomes more secretive. In the early days, the symptoms are only green eyes. And there is no irritability or irritability. This is the reason why the demon hunting department ignores evil energy. After all, compared to the soul devouring demons, the church that twists flesh and blood, and the undead souls who will not rest in peace, evil energy seems too harmless. But here, as the evil energy continues to spread, the death of more hosts causes the concentration of evil energy to rise significantly. And the terrifying side of evil energy gradually reveals itself. Sensing something was wrong, Jonathan decided to look for more evidence, which required some samples. This is a gift from God. If you drink it, the devil will not eat your body. The undead will not torture your soul. And we will be able to gain eternal peace and praise evil energy in a private house. A man a man with faint green fluorescent eyes is selling the evil energy soup he'd brewed with his own blood to more people. This man is also infected with evil energy. But compared to other infected people, he always hears some faint whispers. Every time the evil energy in his body becomes more impure, he is unconsciously brewing it. Come out with such a pot of evil energy soup. Instinct told him that spreading evil energy would allow him to obtain more gifts of evil energy. And he would become more powerful and even omnipotent. Therefore, he took advantage of the panic to spread, roped in his neighbors, and said, That's it. A gathering of evil spirits. In normal times, if anyone dared to sell a pot of weird green soup, they would have been escorted to the Lord and hanged. But now it has become the only choice for many people. What Jonathan can notice can naturally be seen by people trapped in the city. Therefore, even though they know that drinking the strange soup may lead to eternal disaster, they undoubtedly choose to fight to the death now. The latter, as they drank bowls of evil energy soup. These civilians with frighteningly green eyes suddenly felt that they had nothing to fear. Their minds seemed to have gained peace. And their bodies were full of desire for evil energy. Before the person who made the evil soup could say anything, Jonathan rushed in with a long sword in one hand and an alchemy gun in one hand, lowering his body like a cheetah. He immediately used the long sword to cut off the opponent's head, and then stood up before he could land when fired several shots in a very short period of time, killing several infected people who drank the evil energy soup. He then placed the sword in front of him and placed the alchemical firearm on the arm holding the sword. After the enemy was alive, a signal was sent, and the team members guarding the window and back door immediately came in and sealed the door. Although it was not the first time to use an alchemical firearm, Jonathan had to admit that this thing was indeed more useful than a sword. Alchemy firearms are driven by alchemy potions and magic power, and fire metal projectiles or energy bullets. Although they have various shortcomings and are expensive, we have to admit that this thing is very useful, especially for a novice, even if he can equip one as a backup weapon. Just like now, there is no need for tedious spell casting or intense movements. Just swing your arm and pull the trigger. The only pity is that it doesn't pose much of a threat to real masters, especially demons and undead. Chapter 384 It would be wrong to die less. Safe. This house was not big. So several team members quickly searched it and said to Jonathan, Get tested immediately. At this time, Jonathan was not in the mood to respond, but immediately said to a team member. The team member nodded, took out special equipment, and inserted probes into various parts of the body of the dead evil energy infected person to detect the degree of contamination and mutation. Just looking at the other party's increasingly ugly face, Jonathan knew that the situation was very bad. Especially when he saw the team member inserting the probe into his body. He closed his eyes and sighed. How bad is it? After taking a deep breath, Jonathan opened his eyes and said to the team member, It's very bad. The level of evil energy infection is constantly rising. The worst thing is that we are also experiencing evil energy contamination reactions. This team member first pulled out the probe inserted into himself and then rolled the eyelids of his teammates next to him, said with an extremely ugly expression after seeing the green bloodshot eyes. Can the evil infection be eliminated? Jonathan asked. It's difficult. I participated in the ministry's preliminary research on evil energy. This energy is not very lethal, but it is extremely infectious and is highly resistant to many purification methods. This team member was drinking after sensing the next bottle of holy water, 
he spoke with a bit of despair. If he didn't care much about evil energy earlier. Then after seeing what happened in the city, he could no longer deceive himself. Although according to research, evil energy is difficult to kill. But according to the regulations of the demon hunting department, after being infected with abnormal energy, let alone continuing to be a demon hunter, it is a good thing not to be captured and used as test subjects. In other words, they are finished. Even if they return alive, everything will be lost too. At this time, even Jonathan couldn't hold himself back. They all ended up like this because of his orders. After knowing that there was no cure, he looked at him with a very evil look. If Jonathan hadn't been the strongest, his hands would have been put it on the sword and gun. I'm afraid someone is ready to take action. Jonathan now knew why he was uneasy. But the price had been too high. In the end, Jonathan, who was seriously injured, spent a huge price to send the news back to the demon hunting department. After several hours of internal discussions, the demon hunting department revised the information and then reported it to the Alliance Parliament. The situation was serious and an emergency meeting of members was convened immediately. After three days of intense discussion, the Alliance Council made a difficult decision to massacre the city. In fact, there is no need to massacre the city at all. Because most of the people have died long ago. Now it is full of demons and undead. As well as twisted flesh and blood monsters and evil infected people. All real humans have died. In fact, this is exactly what the Alliance Council needs. Otherwise, how could they have to hold a three-day meeting to make the decision that should be made immediately? As for the reason for doing this, it is mainly to avoid Article 1 of Union Law, which states that private territory is inviolable. Now that all the people are dead, the rights will naturally disappear. No matter how you deal with it, you don't need to worry about this or that. And you can successfully take back a city to the Alliance. Even if someone protests afterwards, it won't matter. If there are too many people protesting, the Alliance will deal with one thing a day, and even the elves may not be able to survive it. Now that the purpose of delaying time has been achieved, the Alliance is very straightforward and immediately mobilizes an Alliance army to go. The Northland Noble Alliance has 100,000 Alliance troops and a larger number of local armies. However, only the Alliance army is a force that the Parliament can mobilize independently. The local army belongs to the local lords. Unless the Alliance is invaded, the local army has the right to refuse the alliance's transfer. The main force of the 100,000 strong alliance army is on the southern defense line. The two neighbors next to each other. One has not expanded and cannot move for 30 years. And the other makes small moves from time to time. Not guarding the Baguan border town alliance. Despite this, there are still 20,000 alliance troops stationed in the north. And they are the ones being mobilized this time. When the 10,000 alliance troops arrive with a large number of artillery. Three days had passed. From the time when the evil energy appeared until now. Even the wailing sounds disappeared. A full ten days had passed. Not to mention the Northland Noble Alliance. Even the Baguan Border Town Alliance had already I got it. And disgustingly. I sent a lot of extra troops to the southern defense line. Which forced the Alliance army to strengthen their vigilance. Which took a lot of energy. Fortunately. The neighbor to the north remained unchanged. Which made the Alliance Council somewhat relieved. It's a pity that the congressmen relented too early. The real situation is worse than they imagined. But they don't know it yet. 10,000 Alliance troops surrounded the city and bombarded it for a full six hours. Then, they carefully entered the ruined city with their guns raised and successfully killed hundreds of demons and undead. A glorious victory. And commended by Parliament. But after Jonathan returned injured, he immediately discovered something was wrong. Because too few Union soldiers died this time. Just over a hundred which was obviously abnormal. Either the Alliance army suddenly became brave and good at fighting, or something went wrong. Obviously Jonathan thinks it is the latter, because he knows very well that a city with a population of tens of thousands, after being chewed by demons, ravaged by the undead, and deformed by flesh and blood, can at least cultivate three-digit monsters equivalent to senior professionals. And even as long as after careful preparation, it is not surprising to create legendary level monsters. So even if there are artillery, muskets, and tens of thousands of troops, without the same number of high-level professionals to contain them, the number of deaths will definitely exceed four digits. With the cooperation of those evil organization members, it is possible to completely wipe out. So the number of deaths is the maximum the problem. Jonathan immediately reported his findings to the Demon Hunting Department. As a result, the Demon Hunting Department, which had always been slow to respond, 
responded surprisingly quickly this time. In fact, this is not surprising. Because the demon hunting department had previously expected that the Alliance Army's operation would suffer a huge setback. At that time, it would definitely turn to the more professional demon hunting department for help. And it had already reservedly prepared how to cut off the Alliance forces. The next piece of meat was prepared. But what anyone expected was the news of the brilliant victory of the Alliance Army. This victory of the Alliance Army will obviously affect the Alliance's subsequent allocations to various departments. The Alliance Army, which already occupies a large amount of resources, will have to eat a fatter piece of meat than before, while other departments will compete for all the resources. Not many bones left. In this case, if Jonathan's guess can be confirmed, it will not only weaken the military exploits achieved by the Alliance this time, but also win more funding for the next quarter. Therefore, everyone is as anxious as a mad dog who can't get shit, and even did not hesitate to use the teleportation scroll as a strategic resource. Seeing the most elite team of the demon hunting department appear in front of him, Jonathan felt mixed emotions. If the demon hunting department had such efficiency ten days ago, how could the city in front of him become a dead city? However, Jonathan was indeed a mentally tough man. He put aside all other distracting thoughts and took the initiative to lead the team to investigate. These people are indeed the real elites of the demon hunting department. They quickly discovered some clues and pieced together part of the truth. Chapter 385 Dangerous Goods Devil's Eggs Twisted Flesh and Blood And the Curse of the Undead These are the three most troublesome things in the main world today. One can turn people into half-demon. One can distort people's flesh and blood. And one can be cursed into undead. Either way can cause a lot of trouble. At least massacring the village will be fine. If it spreads to a large number of cities. No city can be said to be 100% able to defend it. It's just that the formation of these three things requires a lot of life and soul. So members of evil organizations rarely produce them in large quantities unless necessary. After all, wouldn't it be better to use them to strengthen themselves? The problem is that the elite team of the demon hunting department found many traces of cultivating these three evil items in the city. And found that the other party had successfully taken these items away. No one knows where these dangerous items will explode next. What a disaster it will cause. After learning about this matter, the demon hunting department immediately reported it to the Alliance Parliament. While condemning the inaction of the Alliance Army, they confidently demanded more funding and more rights. This caused a headache for the Parliament. But they had to obtain it from the public. A part of the construction cost was allocated to appease the demon hunting department. As for condemning the Alliance Army, it was impossible to condemn. The only way to survive was to allocate more funds. Jonathan, who was on the run, didn't know this, but he could guess it because the Alliance had always been like this. And this was one of the reasons why he chose to defect. Jonathan thought he had been numb for a long time. But when he personally executed those young teammates, who were unknowingly corrupted by evil energy, his traumatized mind was hit hard again. Especially when he endured the pain. Rushed to the dead city as soon as possible and successfully found important clues. But after it became a means for the demon hunting department to seek profits, he could no longer hold on. The upper echelons of the Alliance don't care where those dangerous evil items will break out, nor how many people will die. Wealth and power are their only pursuits. Even if many people will die for this. But for them, this is just a necessary means. Anyway, the population is like weeds in the ground. And a lot of them will grow in a blink of an eye. Jonathan didn't want to continue like this anymore. In the little time left, he wanted to find a place where his soul could rest. He didn't have much time. Seeing his pupils reflected in the water which were gradually taking over the color of green. Jonathan had prepared an alchemical bullet for himself. When necessary, he would take the initiative to give himself peace. The Alliance's intelligence network is like a sieve. The Baguan Border City Alliance soon learned of this. In addition to strengthening border management to prevent the inflow of dangerous items, it also took the initiative to break out low-intensity fighting in certain controversial places. Similar battles have long been routine for both sides who made the Northland Noble Alliance choose to build a city with its back against the Empire's border when faced with the threat of the Barbarian Kingdom's army. As a result, the border between the two sides is now like a zipper, entangled with each other. But neither side wanted to take a step back, and both stationed a large number of troops on the border. With so many troops stationed here, they cannot lie in trenches basking in the sun every day. Therefore, various low-intensity local wars have continued. This has not only stimulated the arms industry within the alliance, but also trained a group of qualified soldiers. But this time, the Baguan Border Town Alliance added insult to injury 
and took the initiative to provoke in many important places. The two sides fired back and forth at each other. The problem is that the defense lines of both sides have been quite perfect after years of construction. Whoever takes the initiative to attack will suffer the consequences. As a result, the two sides fire at each other from a distance of a mile, with less than double-digit casualties in a day. But the consumption of ammunition is very large. Firearms are easy to use, but they consume too much. And alchemists are needed in key areas of production, resulting in high costs. Moreover, the ammunition produced has a shelf life, making it difficult for both alliances to reserve large amounts of ammunition in advance. In comparison, the Northland Noble Alliance suffered even more. Firstly, its wealth was not as good as that of the Baguan Border City Alliance, which inherited the Imperial Border Army. Secondly, the 10,000 Alliance Troops SH led the dead city for several hours and consumed a lot of ammunition. Although the Alliance's internal the strategic warehouse still has a lot of reserves, but it is already close to the warning line. For this reason, the Alliance has to spend a sum of money and plans to purchase a batch of firearms from the Northern Glory Alliance. Beicheng is the first force in the North to install firearms on a large scale. And it is also the largest exporter. Even though most of the forces now have their own firearms workshops, Beicheng brand firearms are still recognized as the best in the North. The person in charge of purchasing this time was Countess Ferrier. Her good skills were not only well known within the Alliance, but also the Northern Glory Alliance and the Baguan Border City Alliance. In addition, as a woman, she could get preferential treatment in Beicheng. So she became the best choice. After all, everyone knows that the real controller of Beicheng is a former maid. Of course, no one dares to say that now. One is the other party's right to control. And the other is the other party's amazing ability. Even the most conservative nobles have to admit that the other party is worthy of respect. Through Farrier, Mai obtained more detailed information and handed it over to the root for processing. Of course, Owen also sent a copy somewhere. And I don't know when he would read it. Jonathan quietly escaped from the small caravan that followed Farrier. These small businessmen, who relied on Farrier's light and only hired a small number of guards, were busy doing business and didn't even notice that one person was missing. Even if they knew, they would I won't care. After all, the caravan's population flows very frequently. But Jonathan didn't know that he had been noticed a long time ago. Even if he covered his eyes with a hood, he couldn't hide the evil energy emanating from his body. The believers spread throughout the territory are the ends of the belief network. Although they are weak, they are the cornerstone of the entire belief network. Therefore, any evil that dares to get close will touch the threads that make up the belief network. This level of contact is difficult for believers to notice. But the priest who presides over the temple will not ignore the evil that dares to invade. Taking a deep breath, Jonathan slowly pulled out the long sword and took out the hidden alchemy firearm. Then he slowly placed it on the ground and raised his hands to express surrender. The whole process was very skillful. The two Templars pressed him away, one on the left and the other on the right. His tall body and thick plate armor all showed that Jonathan made a wise choice. With the weapons he equipped, he could not even break through the defense. As for attacking, the joints of the armor and the gaps in the helmet's eyes. Uh-huh. That's the way to deal with the weak, not the strong. Given the opponent's strength, speed and reaction, one punch can teach him how to behave. All in all, facing the two Templars, Jonathan has no chance of winning. Even if he is lucky enough to escape from these two tin cans, there will be no place for him in the entire North City. Countless ancestors have proven this with their own lives. The Northern Glory Alliance, which is dominated by Bei Chung, is able to stay in a corner, not because it is honest, but because it is strong enough. Excellent and large-scale equipped firearms give the Glory Corps an advantage in defense. No rational person would want to attack such a place head-on. So private infiltration has never stopped. But against Northern Glory the infiltration of the Alliance was not smooth from the start. The civilians here are wealthy, peaceful, and loyal. Most bribes end in failure. As for coercion and inducement, although there are occasional successful examples, the retaliation afterwards will definitely let the other party know what it means to lose more than the game. Over time, Beicheng becomes an insulating ground for spies. Chapter 386 The Holy Shield is referred to as the Aegis. Jonathan, who originally wanted to go to Green City to spend the last part of his life in seclusion, never expected that he would be caught just after arriving in the North City, or by the Temple, so he had no hope for what would happen next. It would be nice to know what methods the Temple will use to purify people who are contaminated by evil. 
But Jonathan's fate did not end there. Instead, he was escorted by a whole team of tin cans to a castle, which was also the only castle in the entire North City. Of course, Jonathan knew who the owner of this castle was. And it was because he knew that he felt incredible. Count Hydra, the Lord of the North City, the controller of the Northern Glory Alliance. But Jonathan couldn't connect these with the young man in front of him, who was probably less than 20 years old. However, after seeing the other person's appearance and pointed ears, he understood why Earl Hydra never cared about his title, why the North City did not expand all year round, and why the Northern Glory Alliance had never seen this controller, because the other party was an elf, or an elf superior to the High Elves. Royal family, I am afraid that all this is just a small game in the other person's long life. Please sit down. Mr. Jonathan, I'm looking at your information. I need to wait for a while. Owen smiled at him, and then asked the house elf to bring desserts and drinks. Jonathan nodded with a stiff expression, and then began to eat and drink with abandon. Don't mention it. He had never eaten such delicious food in his life. As for his own intelligence issues, Jonathan readily confessed after being caught by the temple. It was not that he was a weakling, but as a senior member of the demon hunting department, he knew very well that because of magic, simply speaking harshly was meaningless. Medicine, magic, curse, there is always something suitable for you. Even if you die, unless you use extremely expensive and rare poisons or props that can affect the soul, death is not the end. So there is no concealment. So this is a bit embarrassing. Who else? No one knows how to do crafts without having something to do when they were young. And the rigid Jonathan is no exception. Owen looked through it and put it aside. When he saw the empty plate in front of Jonathan, he knocked on the table and with a bang, all the drinks and snacks were replaced with full ones. Then he asked with a somewhat embarrassed expression, How much do you know about evil energy? Owen's question made Jonathan stun for a moment. And then he said seriously, I don't know much but I personally believe that the threat of evil energy is still greater than that of demons and undead. Jonathan is not talking nonsense. Mainly because demons and undead are not naturally produced and need to be summoned by blood sacrifices. In other words, as long as targeted strikes can weaken or even eradicate them, evil energy will take root in the main world. Lingering sores. Good knowledge. Take a look at these information. Owen nodded, then took out a crystal ball and asked him to check the information inside. You have blocked evil energy for 30 years. Jonathan said in surprise, after only reading part of it. Yes, because the evil ratmen have been unable to break through the blockade of the territory. They chose to break through the secret realm. Although they suffered heavy casualties, they have to say that their purpose was achieved. The evil energy finally polluted the main world. Owen did not expect evil energy pollution. It spread so fast, and was mixed with the demon head and the flesh church. He heard that the undead casters were trying to integrate the newly emerged evil energy into the undead system, which made him feel bad. There is no shortage of smart people or ambitious people in this world. The problem is that smart, capable and ambitious people themselves are the biggest source of trouble, because they are restless and have the ability to cause trouble. Now more and more people are paying attention to evil energy. As you can imagine, many smart people have begun to study evil energy and even plan to take it for themselves because according to the research team of the territory, the evil energy in the main world has a special source, which is ownerless. Therefore, in theory, whoever masters this source will control the evil energy in the main world. If it is operated properly, it can be condensed it is not impossible for divinity to ignite the divine fire, but it has a very high success rate. The reason is simple. Evil energy can devour lives and souls and continue to grow stronger, even when it reaches a certain amount. It can erode the laws and origins of the main world and completely turn it into an evil energy world. So if you master the source of evil energy and become a god, and then turn the main world into the kingdom of evil energy, a powerful god will appear. This can't be kept secret for long. If someone has started planning now, Owen also believes it. There are too many smart people in this world, and they can't kill them all. Originally, Owen didn't want to get involved in this mess. But the problem is that now that the Empire is gone and divided into pieces, who would have thought that the Northern Glory Alliance, which was just a joke at the beginning, would become a force in this situation? If he kept ignoring it and being an ostrich, he might be burned by the evil fire without even realizing it. So Owen decided to set up a special organization as a means of dealing with it. Unlike the Hydra Interest Study Group founded in Academy City, this time he planned to set up a justice organization similar to S.H.I.E.L.D 
he had already thought of a name. And it was called Holy Shield. Or Shield for short. In Owen's vision, the Holy Shield is a semi-public cross-regional organization that needs to reach consensus and cooperation with local rulers. In this case, it is not suitable for people who use the territory exclusively. So he chose Jonathan. Jonathan's father was the first generation member of the demon hunting department of the Northland Noble Alliance. If he had not died early, he would have been at least one of the top leaders of the demon hunting department. As his son, Jonathan's current upper limit must be more than a senior demon hunter. So simple. Although Jonathan is rigid, he is fair and always takes the lead in actions. Therefore, his reputation in the demon hunting department is not low. In addition, coupled with the connections left by his father, it is precisely because of the perfunctory pursuit of the demon hunting department after his defection. Reason. Owen is optimistic about Jonathan's abilities and also needs his connections in the demon hunting department. As long as the demon hunting department is opened up and the matter is raised to the Alliance Council, Farrier and Solari will take over and contribute. These two are not just spies sent out of the territory. As the first batch of feudal nobles in the north and the elders of the Alliance, they have considerable influence in the Alliance overtly and covertly. They offered some benefits in exchange to facilitate this. The probability of it happening is as high as 80% to 90%. However, it is definitely not possible for Irving to have Jonathan alone in the organization he envisions. In fact, he has already initially thought about the organizational structure and key personnel. Inform Harvey to come over. Owen knocked on the table. And someone went to notify him. The flu network all over the territory also made transportation extremely fast. It didn't take long for him to hear the sound of the fireplace. Chapter 387 The Difficult Task The little man who bowed his head and just wanted to survive has long been tempered in his roots. It was he who led the people in the roots to launch a brutal assassination battle with the Black Hand's power in the north when the empire collapsed. At the cost of losing an eye, he personally killed the little finger. And this is why Irving chose him. After all, it is common sense for Aegis to have one eye. Let's take a look at this plan first. Owen looked at Harvey, who was wearing an eye patch and had a slightly weathered look on his face, and nodded with satisfaction at his image. Although he was not bald, his temperament was quite suitable. After receiving the information and spending a lot of time looking through it carefully, Harvey asked a few more questions and accepted the task knowing what he was doing. Very good. I'm very optimistic about you. Owen specially gave him a black leather windbreaker and a new eye patch, and then signed the appointment letter and other documents. Harvey, who put on a black trench coat and a new eye patch, respectfully took the letter of appointment signed by Irving, as well as a box of Aegis-style badges. From today on, you are the Minister of the Holy Shield. You have rights independent of all departments in the territory. You are directly responsible to me. Owen's words are not small. Even if the Northern Glory Alliance is known as the uncrowded, neither Queen nor Maya can interfere with Harvey's actions, which makes Harvey feel great pressure and honor. In addition to Jonathan, I will transfer Blood Princess Angel to you as Deputy Minister, Deathblade Vanessa as the leader of the action team, Necromancer Mog as the magic consultant, and the rest will be deployed from the territory. Owen's words made Harvey, he took a breath of cold air, considering that his current city was a bit unbearable. The Necromancer Mog was originally a member of the Imperial City Mage Group, but he was cursed to become an undead. However, this did not affect his rich knowledge, which was enough to serve as a magic consultant. Harvey had no objection to this. Vanessa, the Blade of Death, the top assassin in the territory, a legendary swordsman and warrior, and also a famous legendary hunter. If he is staring at the Black Hand with eyes that have nowhere to hide, then Vanessa, it was the sharp blade that cut off the black hand. If Vanessa's joining only made Harvey feel valued, then Angel's joining was a shock. Few people know that there is a demigod in the territory. And that is Angel, who absorbed the demigod's original divinity. A high-level necromancer. A legendary hunter. And a vampire demigod. Together they can cause a natural disaster on the territory of any force. How can he have these three as his subordinates? The only reason is that they are sacred. The shield's mission is not that simple. Harvey thought with a secret sigh. Seeing Harvey's solemn expression, Owen nodded with satisfaction. Very good. He was not blinded by the benefits he gave. He was still very awake and immediately noticed the problem. So he continued. Clean up the demon head. Flesh church. Undead spellcaster. And evil energy in the north. These are just regular tasks. The holy shield has four more long-term tasks. Owen paused 
and then said something that made Harvey's eyes dazzle. If you jump, collect information on the original locations of the Imperial Capital and Academy City, and search for the missing Academy City and Sky Trace. Harvey, who stretched out a hand to hold down his blindfold, couldn't help but wonder if it was still too late to retire. There is no way around it. I don't know how many people or forces have been interested in these four events in the past 30 years. Countless people have died for it, including some powerful organizations and legendary experts. But none of those who dared to go deep came back alive. I don't ask you to go in-depth exploration now. Let's collect enough information first. Owen knew that this was a difficult task. Otherwise, he would have gone there by himself. So he spoke to comfort him. Harvey breathed a sigh of relief, then thought for a moment and put forward some conditions. Owen didn't care about the conditions put forward by Harvey, because he was the Order and the other party was the Executor. Without strong support, how could things be done well? After getting the conditions he wanted, Harvey hurriedly turned around and left, fearing that Owen would propose another super task that would make him lose his hair. He is not afraid of death, and he will not disobey Irving's orders after the system transformation. Harvey is afraid that he will not be able to do anything wrong. Harvey is very aware of how involved these four things are. It is not an exaggeration to say that the whole world is paying attention. Therefore, if a mistake is made and someone catches the tail and finds the territory, it will definitely be a big trouble. Fortunately, the mission has no time limit, which gives Harvey more time to plan just like how he eliminated the Black Hand's men in the north. But now, he will first take over the base where the Lord gave the Holy Shield. There is a strange tower on the third floor of the ruins compared to before. Fortunately, the space here has been continuously expanded. Otherwise, it would not be able to accommodate it. In fact, the worry is in vain. This tower is far more magical than most people imagine. The tower occupies the original location of the Void Magic Well, and has obviously integrated the Void Magic Well into the tower becoming the tower's energy core. Because it is filled with huge void magic, this tower can enter the void or in between at any time, as long as the attack method cannot break the space. Then the tower can be immune to damage from the void and the main world. And this is it is just an insignificant part of the functions of this tower that are constantly being improved. This is a military building that Owen redeemed from the system hero's world. It is a mage tower that can recruit fourth level mages in Academy City, compared to summoning mages in batches. This mage tower that Owen integrated with the magic guild and heroes is more suitable for doing various magic research. Therefore, in addition to the recruited mages, the spellcaster core also moved in to complete this tower. One of the strengths of the tower is also one of the two major scientific research cores in the future territory. Since it is so important, most people would just dream about getting close, let alone entering. However, with the authority given by Owen, Harvey successfully entered here and found the necromancer Mog, who was waiting for him. Where is the base of the Holy Shield? Harvey only knew to find Mog here, but did not know where the base of the Holy Shield was. So he asked, Here, the second round of testing has begun. Once the testing is completed, you can take it away. From now on, you will return every six months for maintenance and improvement. Although Mog became an undead, he completely retained his consciousness when he was alive. He said to Harvey very excitedly, Obviously, even though he had experienced a lot in the Imperial Capital during his lifetime, he was still amazed by what he heard and saw today. When Harvey heard it, he understood that the base of the Holy Shield was not an underground base like the Roots, but a magic base that could move freely. And he immediately felt refreshed. The base at the Root is of course good. Not only is it large, but all facilities are very complete. But it is only suitable for the territory. Because if it is built outside the territory, once it is discovered, no matter how good the base is, it will fall into endless passivity. So it can be moved. The base is the most suitable for Holy Shield. Chapter 388 Aegis Magic Spaceship The internal space of the Void Mage Tower is far larger than Harvey imagined. Countless space expansion spells were applied inside, creating a magic research base with an area comparable to a town. Under the influence of Void Magic, the internal space is still expanding. Expand? Huge space and sufficient magic power are just the foundation. What really makes this mage tower come alive is thanks to the recruited mages. Compared with the spellcaster core that is accustomed to freedom, the mage, as the fourth level unit of the Heroes Academy City, is not very powerful. But after being transformed into reality, it has a very solid foundation and rich knowledge. Especially good at enchanting, alchemy, 
They have knowledge and skills in runes and other aspects, and have experience in making golems, alchemical equipment, and sky cities. Therefore, they are also responsible for the transformation of the mage tower and the construction of the sacred shield. The caster core can only do it on the side. Arriving at the dome square on the upper floor of the mage tower, Harvey finally saw the holy shield base he had longed for. A magical spaceship named the Aegis. This was originally proposed by Irving. Although he was ready to start building a sky city before he came up, the prototype design was still too huge. Even if the portal to the mountains is reopened and the rare resources accumulated for 30 years are obtained, it will still be making the territory feel strenuous. Owen did not have his own way. So the magic ship Aegis appeared. The Aegis is shaped like an ancient sailing battleship. Except that a temple was built behind the deck to replace the original building. It looks strangely sacred. But the magic spaceship is not just about letting a sail battleship fly. Even if a temple is built on it, it still doesn't make much sense. In fact, the technical content of this magic spaceship is very high, integrating many weakened versions of the territory's technologies. These technologies were specially weakened and integrated to prepare for a real test using the Aegis platform to collect and complete data to prepare for the prototype designed by Owen. Therefore, except for its appearance, this spaceship has nothing to do with the sailing battleship. The Aegis, which is 100 meters long and 30 meters wide, has four huge sails that may seem cumbersome and cumbersome. In fact, they are magic sails. Runes and magic nets are hidden in the sails, which can gather wind elements to form an airflow cover, reducing the damage caused by the shape of the sail battleship. Wind resistance, while the flowing airflow cover can also provide additional power to speed up flight. Another function is to absorb the surrounding magic, dust and water vapor to replenish the consumption of the Aegis internal circulation system. Theoretically, with a huge space and super farmland inside the hull, the initially perfect internal circulation can maintain self-sufficiency for a long time. This is nothing. The real cost is inside, such as the priceless mithril steel keel. The 100 meter long mithril steel keel is not only full of runes engraved with pure mithril, but is also inlaid with a large number of crystals and gems that can store magic power. To a certain extent, this is an oversized wand that can store stored magic wands. The magic power is transformed and added to the hull to enhance the strength and resistance of the hull. It can also be released as a means of attack. For example, the multifaceted shields covering the outside of the ship look like decorations, but are actually mithril rune shields. After connecting with the magic power of the mithril steel keel, they can form a legendary defensive stance. The most important function of destruction is to release a powerful beam of magic energy. Even if an adult dragon is hit, it will be difficult to leave a complete corpse. Of course, this kind of attack consumes too much magic power. Without the supply of earth magic power, and there is no powerful void magic well, this kind of attack can only be used as a trump card with the magic power collected from the outside world. Therefore, the Aegis steam engines and a large number of guns were also installed on it. The steam engine mainly provides flight power for the hull. By driving the propellers at the stern and short wings on both sides, the Aegis can fly in the air. As for guns, they can very well supplement the Aegis's lack of attack methods. But it is a spaceship after all. Even with the blessing of magic, large caliber heavy artillery cannot be planted in several rows like radishes. Therefore, most of them are rapid fire cannons and steam nail guns, which can effectively attack anyone who dares to rely on their flying ability to get closer of enemies, coupled with a large number of bombs, gargoyles and steel golems stored inside. There is no problem that the Aegis is a flying fortress, and because the internal space has been expanded, it can accommodate thousands of people working and living on the Aegis for a long time, and the number of people on board can reach 3,000. It is no exaggeration to say that such a spaceship is an important weapon of the country. Anyone who has never seen Harvey smile can see his molars. With the completion of various tests, Eight Thestral carriages began to transport personnel and supplies to the Aegis. Harvey doesn't care about supplies. Judging from the territory's usual style, everything from munitions to tea seeds is probably ready. What he cares about is personnel issues. 300 well-trained crew members can maintain the perfect operation of the Aegis. And 500 elite combatants also give it powerful combat effectiveness. Together with the gargoyles and steel golems, it is enough to pose a fatal threat to any city in the north. When the eight completed Thestral carriages entered the cabin, Harvey and Mog boarded the Aegis together. In addition to steam-nailed guns and rapid-fire cannons, there are also many gargoyles placed on the wide deck. It is conceivable that any enemy 
who dares to launch an air attack will face a baptism of enthusiasm. There is a sacred object stored in the temple behind the deck, which is guarded by two priests, eight monks, and ten Templar knights. They are responsible for the faith and medical care of the Aegis, and also help the Aegis resist evil attacks. Is an important part. Walking into the cabin, the wide space does not feel like being in a ship that is famous for being narrow and crowded. And the specially open small garden also makes the environment here very comfortable, helping people who have been staying on the Aegis for a long time to relax. However, the dense magic restrictions and steel golems placed at key nodes make this place not as simple as it seems. When we come to the command office, we have complete projection technology, with the one-eyed giant eagle and warm baby floating eyes that come with the hull. We can observe the surrounding wind and grass at 360 degrees without blind angle. Therefore, when necessary, we can also become a wartime command post. This is simply a perfect work. Harvey, who was sitting in the captain's seat and controlling all the information on the Aegis through the crystal ball in front of him, exclaimed. Hearing this, Maud didn't know what to say. He couldn't tell him that the Aegis was actually just an experimental ship used to test certain technologies and must be scrapped. Forget it. Let's wait until the day of the crash before telling him this cruel reality. Chapter 389 Jonathan's Life on the Aegis When the first ray of sunlight in the morning shone on Jonathan's face through the porthole window, he did not miss the comfortable and soft bed. After washing up in the small but fully functional independent bathroom, he put on the straight uniform that had been ironed last night. Walk out of your single dormitory and head to the nearby cafeteria. The Aegis, which can accommodate thousands of people, has two large canteens, which can accommodate hundreds of people for dining at one time. The quality and quantity are guaranteed, providing each crew member with sufficient energy and nutrition. Although it was still early, there were already many people eating in the cafeteria who had finished the evening shift or were preparing to go to the morning shift. Jonathan had long been accustomed to this. He skillfully picked up the trays and cutlery on the side and moved them from the long dining table. The tray contained some pan-fried bacon and sausages paired with a hard-boiled egg, a bowl of vegetable salad, and fresh milk. A nutritious breakfast of meat and vegetables is completed, sprinkling some black pepper and salt. Jonathan began to enjoy his breakfast, and at the same time, a faint sense of satisfaction began to nourish his scarred heart, making him more and more convinced that joining the Holy Shield was a wise choice. This is the second month that Jonathan has joined the Aegis. In the previous month, they had been familiar with the Aegis in the sky above Green Shade City. It was not until they were able to skillfully control this magical spaceship that they arrived at the border area and began their inspection work. Because of the existence of the Aegis, the patrol mission was easy. And they could even commute to and from get off work on time. This took a lot of time for Jonathan, who had almost taken overtime for granted before. To get used to it, although the task is easy, they will occasionally encounter dangers. But the purpose of their work is to eliminate dangers outside the defense line so no one will complain about this. Instead, they work more seriously to stop unscrupulous businessmen and evil spirits who smuggle dangerous goods. Organization Members After finishing breakfast, Jonathan began to check the equipment very carefully, because these equipment are the key to survival. Compared to when he was in the Demon Hunting Club, Jonathan's equipment at this time can be called luxurious, including a sharp and lightweight mithril rune sword, an enchanted pistol with various bullets, a wand that he needs to use to learn spells, and a very light and good defense. The silver scale breastplate and the series of magic potions produced by the spellcaster core are even more necessary. In many cases, a bottle of magic potion can save a life. However, the most valuable ones are a sacred book written by the bishop himself and a sacred skeleton necklace given to him by Count Hydra. This can reduce the influence of evil energy on him and constantly purify the polluted body and mind. Jonathan also develops the habit of going to the temple regularly to pray. After completing the inspection, Jonathan picked up the broomstick behind the door, boarded the deck of the Aegis, and waited for the arrival of his team members. As a former senior member of the demon hunting department, Jonathan has rich experience, so he is responsible for leading two newcomers, which makes his emotions a bit complicated. After all, many newcomers have been sent away by him due to various abnormal events. Captain. Here we come! Bonnie, who was tall and long-legged and had nowhere to express her youthful vitality, grabbed Blue, who had thick dark circles under his eyes and looked like he was dying, and ran towards him. Seeing the two of them, 
Jonathan couldn't help but feel a little headache. It's not that they are incompetent. Both Bonnie and Blue are graduates of the Green City Magic Academy. They have systematically studied various mysterious knowledge for 10 years. When placed in the demon hunting department, each one is a seed that needs to be carefully cultivated. It can be seen that the abilities are related to their abilities. What's the potential? It was the personalities of the two people that made it difficult for Jonathan to adapt. Especially Bonnie. As a witch, he didn't understand why her personality was so open, full of energy and endless energy. In contrast, as a Bonnie man, my friend's blue is like the bones that have been boiled repeatedly in a soup pot. It feels empty and light all day long, as if it will go away with the wind at any time. It's not that Jonathan doesn't know about the affairs between men and women. But Bonnie is really as powerful as he has ever seen before. Even if she squeezes her bones and sucks her marrow so hard. Captain, we're patrolling there today, Bonnie said energetically, holding her own special broom. Go to District 8. According to the intelligence received, there will be unscrupulous businessmen trying to enter the Northern Honor Alliance from here during this period. In order to prevent the territory from being destroyed, we have to capture them at the border. Jonathan looked at Brew, who was drinking tonic. After one glance, it was judged that he could still persist in today's work. And he briefly explained the content of today's work, then sat on the broomstick. And with a slight exertion, the team of three took off from the deck of the Aegis and formed with other members. The same team, with the Aegis as the center, began to patrol the surrounding areas. The newly launched Aegis did not fly over the heads of other forces to show off its power, but patrolled around the border. The problem is that with such a big magical spaceship in the sky, the neighbor can rest assured. Not to mention that in order to deal with the members of the evil organization who broke through the barrier some time ago, the Aegis not only dispatched Aurus riding broomsticks, but also used weapons including artillery. Destructive weapons gave the Alliance troops stationed on the border a good eye-opener. Since the debut of the Aegis, the Northern Nobles Alliance has been holding meetings for half a month, and even tried to get the Baguan Border Town Alliance to jointly put pressure on the Northern Glory Alliance to hand over the magic spaceship. The problem is that the Northern Glory Alliance is too arrogant, and its location is too remote. Although it has built a magic spaceship, it only patrols over its own border. Even if the Northern Nobles Alliance tries to exaggerate the threat of the other party, the Big One Border Town Alliance still has not united. Instead of exerting pressure, he planned to cooperate with the Northern Glory Alliance to introduce magic spaceship technology. This move made the Northland Nobles Alliance so angry that they quickly asked Farrier to send an envoy to the Northern Glory Alliance to cooperate with the other party first. Therefore, the Aegis can now enter the borders of the Northland Nobles Alliance and deal with unscrupulous businessmen and evil spirits, organize members to arrest them. But they cannot go deep. Now the Northland Noble Alliance is discussing with the Holy Shield and plans to send some members of the Demon Hunting Department to study on the Aegis. Although this was in line with Harvey's wishes, he knew better that people never know how to cherish things that are easily obtained. So he never let go. However, the gifts said by the envoys of the Northland Noble Alliance Council were not rejected. The Alliance Council understood this and knew that more money would be needed. Sure enough, after donating a large donation, the Northland Noble Alliance obtained some temporary workers' places. Jonathan saw many familiar faces among the temporary workers sent by the Alliance Council. The other party was also a little surprised. But he did not show it. Instead, after a while, he pretended to know them accidentally. Jonathan had already prepared a set of excuses for this. Because he was infected by evil energy, he became disheartened and prepared to find a place to wait for death. He accidentally discovered that the temple could suppress evil energy and later joined the Holy Shield by chance. There are many loopholes in this statement. But the more it is, the more realistic it is. Therefore, the Alliance Council intends to win over Jonathan and use him as a nail into the Holy Shield. Chapter 392 Much positive energy is poured into it. Recalling his experiences during this period, Jonathan didn't feel like there was anything to be happy about. Compared to being involved in complex political conspiracies, simply performing tasks was more in line with his character. Not to mention that he had now found his faith in life, and even less willing to get involved in these things that disgusted him. It's just that the Holy Shield needs more political allies, a wider space for activities, and wider support, so that it can proactively eliminate those lawless elements. Therefore, Jonathan had to follow Minister Harvey's plan to induce those envoys from the Alliance Parliament to bribe more senior executives of Holy Shield to achieve their ulterior secrets. In fact, these have become jokes within the Holy Shield. 
Many people are betting on who will receive the most and the best things. The loser will naturally not have a good look at the people in the Alliance Council. And they will fight against each other in various ways. To come one after another. This move made the envoys of the Alliance Council feel that the top management of Holy Shield was very greedy. But they were very happy and confident. Because they were not afraid that you would ask for more. But they were afraid that you would ask for nothing. As long as the goal can be achieved. A little investment does not count at all. What? Because as long as they have the handle. They will get it back tenfold or a hundredfold sooner or later. As for wondering whether this is an act. I'm sorry. But I judge others by myself. The level of corruption in the Alliance Council is even more outrageous than what the Holy Shield acted. So it really doesn't matter. Everything went smoothly according to plan. And there was a dedicated person in charge. Owen didn't need to worry too much. But he was not in a good mood because he had frequent problems of his own during this period. What made him most distressed was that he found that he his desire in certain areas has decreased. And he is always nauseous. Which makes him very embarrassed when facing several women in his family. Of course, it's not that he can't do it at a young age. Nor is it affected by the low reproductive desire of elf blood. Nor is it that his gender has changed. The main reason is that even though he has made so many preparations, he still cannot avoid being influenced by his beliefs. In fact, the believers in the territory have pure beliefs. After being filtered and purified through multiple processes such as sacred objects, authority spaces, and golden trees, they have almost reached the ultimate purity of faith, and even crystallized it, which is what all gods dream of. The only problem is that as the main body of faith, this is still something Owen cannot bear. After all, he is still immortal, let alone the authority of the priesthood. He does not even have divinity. It is inevitable that he will be affected by his faith and become more and more like as recorded in the Holy Scriptures. It happened that the Holy Scriptures written all described him as Guangzhou Wei, and all the key believers believed him. As a result, he was affected by the belief and was flooded with positive energy all day long. The decrease in desire in certain aspects was only an early symptom. If he couldn't find a solution, solve it. He is afraid that he will gradually become a saint without selfish desires. Just like the emperor of the Warhammer world, divinity is greater than humanity. Only big love without small love. And even himself is just a tool that can be used. If Owen were a commoner, he would naturally hope to have such a selfless emperor. But he would not be able to accept it. This one is still a human being. But each one is just a machine created by God. But now unless Irving is not the object of this belief, there is no solution. Owen has a headache about this. And wants to maintain his humanity from being overwhelmed by sparseness through constant external stimulation. Simply put, he wants to enjoy a depraved life as much as possible. Obviously Irving needs more and greater stimulation. The kind that can stimulate him from the inside out to the point where his face turns red. His ears turn red. And his heart beats faster. This is not easy. It's not like Irving just traveled through time and was almost hungry. Now he has eaten all the things he has seen before. Pure female sex can no longer make him react through quantity. At least not a strong reaction. Moreover, compared to women, Owen needs more and more profound life experiences and experiences to improve himself, find and strengthen his own beliefs. Only in this way can he maintain his self-awareness without being changed under the erosion of beliefs. The question now is how to do it. In theory, being an adventurer and jumping repeatedly on the edge of life and death is the best and fastest way. The second is to be a tyrant or a wise king. By ruling the country or launching wars with foreign countries. Constantly temper your heart and will to achieve the ambition of being a king and to be superior to thousands of people. Owen doesn't want to choose any of these. His current life is so comfortable and his territory is so safe. Why should he ask for trouble and risk his life? It's a pity that he can't help it now because the problem will not disappear without solving it. So Owen has to rack his brains to come up with a less dangerous solution. The first step is to prepare to become a god. Once he becomes a god, these problems will no longer be a problem. And he barely has the conditions to become a god. Although it is too early, he can still make some preparations in advance. Of course, things are not that simple. Even if he becomes a god, because Owen is the biggest problem and weakness in all plans. Apart from some hardships, when he first traveled through time, after the system was turned on, Irving said it was a smooth journey. This led to his muddled thinking not being completely changed. And he even suffered from stomach problems and relied heavily on his woman. To put it simply, he lacks responsibility and firm will, has no pursuit, does not want to make progress, 
and just wants to eat and die. This is going to be fatal. He can't be helped up. To say that he is perseverant is pure lies. Therefore, in the process of becoming a god, his character and will will be 100% recast by faith. And being trapped in the priesthood and authority and unable to extricate himself means that he is completely changed as a person. It will be difficult to say that he is not himself anymore. After reaching this conclusion, Owen had to add more links to his plan to become a god in order to be able to maintain himself. After some explanations, Owen relied on the system, authority space, elf blood, and druid profession to integrate with a golden tree that was no different from God, and passively accepted the sublimation of life. The golden tree plays an important role in stabilizing space, transforming beliefs, and weaving laws. It is not an exaggeration to say that it is a god. Owen integrates into it and can experience the feeling of being a god in advance. And through this, he can condense his own divinity. And gold the tree can also help him withstand the direct erosion of his faith. The divinity condensed in this way is undoubtedly the most suitable for Owen. But it will take longer and more understanding. During this period, Owen does not plan to be idle. He plans to create an incarnation and walk around the world. Gain more insights and experiences. And prepare to become a god. Because he is not a god yet. If he wants to separate his incarnation, Owen needs to use external forces. Now there are three divine fruits on the golden tree. Representing skeletons, ghosts, and zombies respectively. They were taken away from the blood prince. Among them, the divinity about the blood clan was fused by blood Gianchi and became the demigod of the territory. These three fruits the fruit is the purified divinity. Chapter 391 The Unleashing Nature of Ogre Owen With Owen's current abilities and realm, it is impossible for him to become an incarnation like a god, but he can use tricks to exchange for military templates through the system and then integrate them into his own consciousness to become an alternative incarnation. If the strength is not enough, just eat the three divine fruits and you will become a demigod. I kept them because the three divine fruits were all of the undead type and were not in line with the path of the main body. Now that I am using the incarnation, there is no need to worry about it anymore. However, considering the preciousness of the divinity, Owen did not dare to I experimented with the divine fruit when I came up, but chose the fourth level ogre in heroes as the first incarnation. In fact, he originally planned to choose to dote on his concubine to experience a different kind of excitement. After all, how many time travelers can experience the joy of small sheep's hooves and flexible tails? But he was afraid that it would be the first time he did this. Especially for his own few. Woman. For fear of death in society. He planned to talk about it later. No matter which world they're in. Ogres are synonymous with stupidity and strength and the ogres and heroes are no exception. Similar to the caveman's sunken forehead, it all shows that the ogre's brain capacity is not optimistic, but it is extremely strong. Her body gave Owen, who had always been a pretty boy, a special impulse. Unexpectedly, the animal skin skirt was pushed up, as if he was lifting the curtains with a bat. Sure enough, my choice was right. Feeling the long-lost impulse, Owen was a little eager to give it a try, but looking at his current appearance, he finally didn't go to his women because it was too awkward. Ogre, it's true that it's green. But he doesn't want to turn the body green as well. As his body fell into sleep, the Ogre Owen also gained freedom. He packed up his things and embarked on the road to temper himself. During this time of training, Owen did not choose to go to the familiar Northland or the Empire's homeland full of secrets. Instead, he left Green Shade City and headed east to explore this mysterious forest. The Devil's Horn Forest is the largest forest in the North. It is like a thick touch of green smeared on the wilderness of the north. Adding more colors of life. No one has fully explored the entire forest so far. There are three reasons. First, it is a vast area with no end in sight all the way east. Second, the environment is complex and there are more than one dangerous situation like the Devil's Horn Tree Forest. Third, there are many monsters and they are in groups. The Northland is vast and sparsely populated. Regardless of whether they are interested in the Devil's Horn Forest or not. The Northland Barbarians and the Empire's pioneering group do not have enough time, energy and strength to explore this forest. Instead, they stay away because of the monsters. When the Green City was built, it would not have been so stable if it had not been backed by the Devil's Horn Tree Forest, where even monsters could not survive. And most of the people living there were goblins. Later, a large number of adventurers continued to clean up the monsters. Even so, 
The territory's exploration of the Devil's Horn Forest is limited to one or two hundred miles around Green Shade City. The Empire's homeland is too far for Owen's territory. And the Northland will not change much for a long time. Moreover, an ogre appearing in these places is simply seeking death. So Owen plans to take the opportunity to explore it when he starts his own business. The forest was a huge help. Although there is no mount, the ogre's legs and feet are not slow. And his endurance is even more amazing. With no shortage of food, he can enter the unexplored area of the territory in three to five days. There are only a few adventurers here, and there are many dare to stay long. After Owen set foot in this area, he felt much more relaxed. He finally no longer had to worry about being beaten by adventurers as a monster after his identity was exposed. Putting away the full set of plate armor used to conceal his identity, and retaining only the original flavor of the animal skin skirt, which was still in neutral gear, Owen released the nature hidden deep in his heart and wandered towards the depths of the forest. Don't tell me. The feeling of the wind blowing under the short skirt is really special. And it feels hairy. No wonder short skirts must be paired with stockings. Especially those with long hairy legs. Owen simply threw his legs out and strode forward with a splayed figure. He was swinging extremely boldly. And his animal skin skirt was almost swayed by the big pendulum. If Emil saw it, he would be so shocked that he would not be able to close his legs. Thinking of this, Owen cheerfully lifted the big stick on his shoulders. Just like carrying Emil's long legs of 1.4 meters. His steps became more cheerful and powerful. Ignoring the goblins, who were running away along the way, and stepped on the opponent. The ogre looked at the trap as if it was a joke and just moved forward. It has to be said that ogres are uniquely endowed with not only the size and strength of a small giant, but also rock-hard skin and thick bones. Their digestive capabilities are even stronger than that of goblins. There is almost nothing they cannot eat. And even when you swallow a stone, it will be smaller when you pull it out. Therefore, there are almost no natural enemies in the forest, whether it is venomous snakes, venomous insects, wild boars or bears. They will choose to flee when they see the rampaging ogres. Interestingly, a group of goblins actually carried a dead deer in front of him, obviously offering it as an offering. Goblins are known as rookie killers which shows how weak they are. Therefore, in addition to clinging together, providing support to strong people as protection is also one of the habits of weak monsters such as goblins. Therefore, Owen, a fat and strong ogre, was looked down upon. On board, the group of goblins tried to lure him with food as the protector of the tribe. Although Owen was curious, he had no intention of accepting it. After all, his journey had just begun. So he tore off a deer leg and left leaving behind the goblins fighting for the deer. 20 kilograms of deer legs are about the same as chicken legs in the hands of ordinary people to the ogre. Owen opened his big mouth and easily bit into the tender venison. The raw meat that should have been difficult to swallow was in the taste of the ogre, but it was unusually sweet, which made him savor it a little bit. After all, he became an ogre, although he didn't intend to eat people. Owen didn't deliberately pursue exquisite food. Instead, he tried the ogre's recipe. So far, it seems to be pretty good. The buds are crunchy and bursting with pulp. And the taste is like a poisonous snake. It's like spicy strips. But you have to eat them from scratch. Bite the venom sack. And use the venom and snake blood as seasonings. Otherwise, they only have umami flavor and lack of stimulating taste. As the staple food of raw meat, venison is the best. It is extremely tender and has a melt-in-your-mouth feeling. Wild boar meat is also good. It is a bit fishy but has a unique flavor and has a chewier texture. It's not his true form. Owen, who is not afraid of eating something wrong, really let go and took a few bites of everything he caught. Anyway, with the ogre's physique, the poisonous mushroom soup would at most give the feeling of drinking too much. It's not that easy to poison him. Eating and drinking along the way, rushing to fight with monsters when they encountered them. Owen gradually became more and more familiar with the ogre's body. It can be said that except for the poor brain, the ogre has almost no shortcomings, especially as a soldier who charges into battle. It is even more perfect. It's a pity that if the brain problem is not solved, everything you say will be in vain. Even Owen feels that he is becoming more and more lazy to think. Firstly, this is not the real body. It is just like playing a game, just restarted after death. Secondly, the ogre's brain is really hard to use. Owen can't even memorize the multiplication table now. Chapter 392 Black Elf carrying the wild boar with its head smashed. Owen wanted to change his taste. So he found a dead tree. 
easily broke it into pieces with his hands, and then gathered some dead grass and lit it with flint, creating a huge bonfire, drawing out a broad knife with a thick back and a thin blade similar to a butcher's knife from his waist. Owen deftly disemboweled the wild boar and threw the smelly internal organs aside. He was not afraid of attracting wild beasts. At worst, he would have another meal. The wild boars were pierced with thick wooden sticks and roasted on the campfire. The smell of pig blood dripping in the fire and the burnt pig hair made the campfire picnic in front of them instantly no longer so exciting. But Owen didn't care. They were all cooked. Half cooked. Each had their own taste for the ogre. And he never disliked it. What's more, he was too lazy to do anything now. If it weren't for the purpose of tempering himself, he would have summoned a bunch of servants to serve him. There was no way he could do it. He was quite excited when he first transformed into an ogre. After all, the expansion spell he used was only of this scale. But as he became more familiar with his current body, the stupid and lazy side of the ogre gradually began to affect him. It made him less and less lazy to think, or even lazy to move. Fortunately, Owen's true body is still there. Although he is affected, as long as he keeps in touch with his true body, he can continue to correct his distorted personality and avoid turning into a stupid ogre. But doing this all the time would have no meaning in training. So Owen found some suitable martial arts from martial arts games, intending to hone his will and change the ogre's lazy nature through martial arts training. Because of the backflow of the secret realm, the law system of the main world was severely impacted. In addition, messy new laws were constantly integrated into the main world from the broken secret realm causing the original strict law blockade to become more and more impurities. As the hips become more and more stretched, the role that the Irving system can play becomes greater and greater. However, there are really not many martial arts suitable for ogres. So Owen found an eagle-clawed iron claw shirt outer door to practice kung fu, grabbing things and getting beaten. This thing has nothing to do with IQ, as long as he still has a brain. Practice. But unfortunately, he was too lazy to practice after a few days. After all, there is a system. It would be great to upgrade directly. Why waste time and energy to practice hard? When he came to his senses, Owen couldn't laugh or cry. It seemed that he had a long way to go. And his biggest problem and biggest enemy was himself. Even so, Owen is not in a hurry. Regardless of the lifespan of his body or the current situation, he has enough time to polish himself. After eating and drinking, and ignoring the beasts around him who were attracted by the smell of blood, Owen moved away from the bonfire and lay down on the hot ground baked by the bonfire. He hummed a few times comfortably. After a while, his thunderous snoring became louder and louder. A few cunning foxes quietly emerged from the bushes, took the heart out of the water without greed, and slipped away quietly. Seeing the successful example, several wild wolves also went to bite the intestines and stomachs of the remaining wild boars. Unfortunately, there was too much movement. Owen, who was woken up, kicked one to death, and everything fell silent immediately. It was three o'clock in the morning the next day before Owen woke up from a deep sleep. I slowly climbed up and walked to a big tree. I opened the gate to release the water directly without reaching out to support me. I saw a thick and turbid water flowing down the thickened and thickened pipe against the wind and spraying out eight feet away and falling to the ground. A pit the size of an ocean bowl was dug out, which shows how shocking the reserves and impact are. Shaking it off with satisfaction. Owen yawned and walked towards the creek, intending to replenish his water and wash away the pig blood and grease stain on his body. Unexpectedly, he encountered a common scene of the protagonist. The hero saves the beauty in the opening chapter, and the beauty is in trouble. I saw a ragged and beautiful black-skinned elf lying by the creek. Judging from the blood around her, she was seriously injured. She was thirsty due to excessive blood loss and wanted to go to the creek to replenish water. He was unconscious here due to excessive injuries. As for why Irving was able to make such an accurate judgment, it was mainly based on the blood dripping all the way and where the other party was kneeling, with his face on the ground but his butt raised. At least now, it can be ruled out that the other party was because of relatives. Just bleeding. Owen happily walked over, took out a mithril steel collar that had little use after it was made, and put it on the other party. The collar engraved with dense runes immediately lit up the moment it was buckled, and countless runes were made into fine threads and integrated into the opponent's body, and then lurked, waiting for the moment of activation. Owen's move can be called taking advantage of others. But if the target is a black elf, anyone who knows this race will only give a thumbs up and praise a job well done. 
It is true that the reputation of this race is too bad. Apart from appearance, all derogatory words can be applied to these dark elves. Black elves are born conspirators and betrayers. It is their instinct to stir up chaos. Murder is their pleasure. And betrayal is their nature. It can be said that where there are black elves, betrayal and chaos are inevitable. Therefore, the elves firmly oppose the other party called them elves. So a long time ago, the black elves had a new title. Drow. It is because of such a bad reputation that Drow disappeared from the empire many years ago. After all, no one dares to use betrayal as a race. Those who do not believe in evil will be deceived in many ways. There are many examples of Drow. They became the object of disfavor in heaven and earth, and gradually disappeared from the eyes of the world. No one knew where they had gone. However, according to the intelligence in the territory, the fall of the imperial capital and the current chaos were all behind the Drow. Obviously, the opponent was not extinct, but was just hiding in the dark looking for opportunities. And now they finally caught the opportunity. In addition, it is said that the Dark Church, which is famous together with the Devil's Head, the Church of Flesh, and the Church of Scourge, and is good at conspiracy and murder, was formed by Drow by absorbing scattered Black Hand organizations. I don't know if it is true or not. It seems that Harvey has more tasks. One already? Because he knew this? Owen came up and locked his neck and treated the other party as a slave. Otherwise, it would be 100% likely that the other party would retaliate and stage a story about a farmer and a snake. He stretched out his thick fingers and pinched open the other person's mouth and roughly stuffed half of the potion bottle into it. After seeing that the wound started to heal, Owen ignored the other person and relied on the effect of the Hogwarts potion. As long as he doesn't die on the spot, he can be saved no matter what, let alone the fusion of which. Hogwarts and Tsunade. Emil has led the territory to improve for 30 years. I dare not say that he is the best in the world. But if the effect is comparable, the cost is definitely more than 10 times or 100 times higher than the territory. Sure enough, not long after he drank the potion, Drow's heartbeat became much stronger. But the opponent's body still didn't move at all. His breathing rate didn't change at all. And even the eyeballs under his eyelids didn't move. It can be seen that the Drow have definitely worked hard in this regard. And from this, we can realize how harsh the Drow's living environment is. Chapter 393 Drow and Ogre Strong heartbeat, heavy breathing, and clumsy movements. Although the body odor was very light, Silo still accurately judged that the creature next to her was an ogre. Then through the taste in her mouth and the reaction of her body, Silo knew that someone had given her some kind of high-quality potion, which made her secretly relieved, because it proved that her life would not be in danger in the short term. But the touch of the collar around her neck always cast a shadow in her heart. From the touch, Silo noticed that this was a mithril steel collar or a magic collar. She still knew the probability of an ogre possessing a mithril steel magic collar. So she guessed that she should have fell into the hands of a spellcaster. And the ogre next to him was just a guard sent by the other party. The first time Silo regained consciousness, her first thought was to escape. But the collar around her neck made this idea unrealistic. Before she understands the function of the collar, any rash action will make her fall into a more passive situation. After all, the collar can be said to be the most merciful of all kinds of restrictions. It is better than soul curse, slave contract, or even being made into a living body. Props are much better. When Silo was thinking wildly, Owen knew that the other party was awake and knew what the other party was planning. But he didn't care about it. He couldn't even play tricks on the other party. The problem was that he was not afraid of death. It doesn't matter life. It doesn't matter death. It's not a problem if you can't play with women. It's a big deal. So Irving was invincible from the beginning. Although the other party used a special method to reduce his heart rate. Owen estimated that the other party had almost recovered. So he picked up the other party and continued on his way. Shwer is very good at using their own advantages. Beauty traps and honey traps are all left over by them. Therefore, they dress as simple as possible to reflect their own advantages. The same is true for Silo. The whole body of fabrics cannot be combined together. Half a towel. If it had not been stuck somewhere, Owen would have almost ignored the rope. So it was impossible to pick up the clothes and walk away. So he could only put Silu, who continued to pretend to be dizzy, on his shoulders and let her lie down on the back. And then hold the high bulge with your hands. Drow's private life is notoriously messy. It doesn't matter who they are, whether they are men or women. There are even people who are specially responsible for summoning Warcraft and monsters to cheer up. 
ordinary little emperor uncles would not dare to write like this. But I have to say that thanks to it the blood of elves, even if they play like this, there is no peculiar smell on the body, and they will not ravage fresh beef into beef jerky. This makes Owen more and more satisfied. Even if it is a naughty toy, no one wants it to be soaked in the smell of heather. Silo tried her best to relax herself and keep herself in a comatose state, but this ogre was so rough that her rough, rock-like skin turned red, as if she had pink eye, and her upper body was hanging upside down. It also kept rising and falling with the ogre's footsteps, making her chest hurt and her stomach churning. If she hadn't gone through the cruel training, she would have vomited on the other persons, but I don't know how long I walked. But when I saw the sun was turning westward, Irving planned to find some food to prepare for the night. I didn't expect that I was really lucky today. I picked up a drow beauty in the morning. And in the afternoon, I met two bears that had just emerged from the tree hole. Under a huge tree that no one or twenty people could hug. There was a huge tree hole between the crisscrossing thick tree roots. Two bears, one brown and one yellow, had just come out when they met a very hungry bear. Owen. He casually threw the drow beauty on his shoulder to the ground. If this was not a forest, and there was a thick layer of fallen leaves on the ground, this drop would have knocked Silo out. Even so, she was short of breath and chest tight, and almost couldn't bear it. Suddenly, I felt like tearing this stupid ogre into pieces a hundred times. Owen didn't care what the other party was thinking. He picked up the big stick that had been dragging on the ground and smashed it at the two bears. This big stick is five feet long, as thick as a thigh, and has edges and corners. It is made of a mixture of dark iron and iron from the martial arts world. It weighs 300 kilograms and is considered indestructible. It is completely overqualified for use against bears. One after another, the two bears fell in front of Owen one after another, becoming the ingredients for dinner. After touching his specially shaved bald head and stepping on a bear with one foot, Owen felt quite accomplished and felt like he had become the king of the forest. The ogres could eat, but not to the extent of eating two bears in one meal. And since he was too lazy to hunt all day long, Owen decided to smoke some bear meat and hang it in a tree hole. He would leave when he finished eating. Owen was busy preparing to smoke the bear meat. But it made Silio miserable. What could be found on the forest floor? There was never a shortage of snakes, rats, and insects. They crawled over the smooth skin one by one and just tasted it from time to time. Having undergone poison resistance training since childhood, she would not die from poisoning. The problem was that these snakes and insects kept drilling into holes, such as her nostrils, ears, and eyes, which made her miserable. Although it is not that she has never experienced worse situations, there is a purpose. What is the purpose of pretending to be unconscious now? Just to trick an ogre? What's the point? The series of question marks made Silo stop pretending. She got up and shook off the snakes and insects on her body. Then she pinched one with two fingers and pulled out one that was too deep. She threw it to the ground and trampled it into a pulp with her feet. The result was like this, there was a big movement. But the ogre just glanced at her, then pulled out a strange broad knife from his back and gave it to her, then pointed at the bear next to him, with the obvious intention of letting her go to work. Although Silio, who took the knife, wanted to chop this stupid ogre into pieces with one knife. She felt no temper at all when she touched the collar around her neck and carved the dense runes. For a magic item of this level, let alone her. Even if the archmage came, he would probably have to study it for a long time before he dared to undo it. And it was not certain whether it could be untied. So even if this stupid ogre is just a guard sent by the owner of the collar, Silo cannot openly disobey the other party's orders. After all, who knows how much authority the owner of the collar has given to this stupid ogre. In fact, Silo has not encountered similar situations before. And not once or twice. There was even a period of time when she liked to send herself to the door and use various methods to attack those greedy and stupid males when they thought they had control of everything. Kill them and watch the intoxicating look of despair. It's a pity that the owner of the collar is not there. Only a stupid ogre, which makes Silo's proud talent useless. As for using it on this ogre, come on. It's not that she can't eat it, mainly because the aesthetics are so different. Drow have captured ogres before and used them for fun but it's hard to explain. Chapter 394 Silo's Unreliable Guess Full of resentment, Silo gritted her teeth and raised the butcher's knife in her hand and stabbed the bear's head with such cruel force that she 100% thought the bear's head was that of an ogre. She just wanted to chop it into pieces or cut it into pieces. Chop into small pieces. 
with one stroke of the knife. Siliua was stunned by the silky smooth feel. With the experience accumulated over a long life, Silo gave the heavy broad knife in her hand a high evaluation. At least in terms of sharpness and sturdiness. This knife was not inferior to the legendary weapon. Silo's heart suddenly moved. What if she used this knife to cut the collar around her neck? But thinking about the spellcaster who has not shown up so far, he will definitely not ignore such a big flaw. So most likely, he will leave a countermeasure. The other party may even leave the knife to test himself. Thinking of this, Silo immediately squatted down and used a knife to break up the bear. She didn't care that her posture was like squatting in a pit. The buried string was exposed. But she didn't care. She was the only one following her at the moment. An ogre. Showing off to no one. As elves. A long lifespan is standard. However, Unlike other elves who can spend a long period of growth leisurely, drow face death and elimination from the day they are born. They have to make full use of every minute and every second from the time they are sensible. Use your time to make yourself stronger. And use your spare time to murder your companions. Only in this way can you get more resources and attention. And grow faster and stronger in the future. It is not until adulthood enters the bottleneck period that drow will focus more on intrigues. And even then, they never give up learning. Therefore, Every drow is a polymath, proficient in mystery, anatomy, art, and swords, law, stealth, medicine and many other fields of knowledge. In particular, how to perfectly integrate poison into food so that it cannot be noticed is a required course. When Joar was a child, he relied on this skill to reduce the competitive pressure brought by his peers. If he could defeat a teacher, he would be appreciated. The premise is that he could they are lucky enough to survive. So they all have good cooking skills. The faster Silo worked, the less Owen was willing to do it himself, and gradually handed over all the work to her. Silo rolled her eyes in anger, but she had no choice but to give the ogre all the poison she had hidden as a food additive. Plus, Owen, who still didn't know that he almost ate food with food additives in another world, was holding his chin and staring at the four bear paws in front of him in a daze. Simply roasting the bear paws was obviously a huge waste, but the bear paws were serious. The method is too cumbersome. Even if the recipe can be exchanged, it is still very troublesome. After hesitating for a long time, Owen felt that he could no longer degenerate like this, since he was too lazy to work hard on martial arts training. He should go to cooking delicious food. Ogres are inherently gluttonous, so they use this instinct to take the gourmet route and write a book about real cannibalism. Coming up with a magic recipe can be considered a kind of training. Although he had made a decision, he looked up at Silo, who was squatting and pouting because she was busy and then looked down at the flipped-up short skirt. Owen decided to do something else first. Otherwise, he would lose concentration. Silo, who was busy smoking bear meat, suddenly found herself shrouded in black shadow. She turned around and almost got punched in the face. She didn't know what would happen next. She wanted to use the knife to chop both ends, but she felt the collar tighten suddenly. Silo finally gave up her resistance and was grabbed by Owen. Owen, who felt so comfortable all over had a rare time of fun, and happily ran to hang the smoke bear meat in the tree hole. As for Silo, it was a bit scary to roll her eyes and foam at the mouth. But Owen believed that as a drow. This a small amount shouldn't be a problem for her. You have to trust the other person's abundant experience. In fact, Owen's guess was not wrong. When he packed up the smoke bear meat and laid down on the stone where a certain bear had slept, Silo was like a zombie, getting up stiffly and twitching from time to time for a moment, but with strong will. I managed to walk to his bed with a butcher knife. As the knife rose and fell, Silio also relaxed and tightened. She finally understood that the restriction of this collar was on this ogre, and she could not hurt it at all. Otherwise, before the knife fell completely, her neck would be it will be strangled by the suddenly shrinking collar. Whether she can kill this damn ogre or not is not important to Silo. The main thing is that she now has two guesses. The first one is the same as she had guessed before. A certain spellcaster saved her. And then something happened suddenly. Leave. Leaving only a damned ogre as a guard. The second guess is a bit scary. The spellcaster in the guess does not exist. But this damn ogre was lucky enough to find some treasures. And happened to find the right way to use them. And successfully used them on her. Silo didn't know which guess was correct. But she knew that these days of transparency had just begun. This damn ogre! Silo spat viciously. But the spit bounced back onto her face which made her even more annoyed. In the end, Silo walked out of the tree hole with the knife 
and went to the nearby water source to clean it. When Silo came back with wet hair, Owen was still sleeping on his back. So she gently looked through the other party's package. The complete range of spices and exquisite condiments made her raise her eyebrows, followed by dozens of bottles of extremely high-quality potions. No wonder she could recover from such an injury in such a short period of time. So here's the question. If it's the first guess, how wealthy a spellcaster must be to equip a stupid ogre with two weapons of legendary quality and dozens of bottles of rare high-quality potions. For for a ruthless spellcaster, even his biological son may not receive this kind of treatment. You don't need to think about this father-son relationship to know that it is unrealistic. But if it is the second guess, it is also unrealistic. Because with the intelligence of the ogre, it is impossible to know the quality of equipment. Nor to use potions accurately. Or even a lump of shit is more attractive to ogres than potions. Silo suddenly felt a huge headache because she couldn't figure it out. After all this tossing, Silo's physical strength reached its limit. She cut some bacon with a knife. Endured the feeling of fullness and ate it. Then she found a place far away from the damn ogre and fell into a deep sleep. As for setting up some early warning traps. Come on. When there is an ogre around, any early warning is useless. Silo suddenly woke up from her sleep the next day, only to find that she was once again shrouded in a familiar shadow. She suddenly felt panicked. Come again! Owen hummed a tune and went to clean the animal's skin skirt by the stream. He felt extremely wise for his previous decision to save this drow beauty. He hadn't been so happy for a long time. And at the same time, he couldn't help but dislike his true nature. What kind of handsome boy root is there? And he also specializes in magic? Shit! Even the expansion spell is not as satisfying as punching to the flesh. If the main body had the physique and scale of an ogre, what else would it need to replenish the soup? Then it would be afraid of being dragged away by its own women every night. And given three big stick lessons a day, those tame ones would have been submissive long ago. Emil didn't dare to be presumptuous in front of him. Otherwise, he would teach her how to behave in a minute. It's a pity that he is just an incarnation. And he can't cross the threshold in his heart. After all, although the body is integrated into the golden tree, it does not mean that the top of his head is green. Chapter 395 There are many ways to modify software. The more he thought about it, the more itchy he felt. He simply didn't wash it, put on a wet short skirt, and went to find Silo. Even though he was an ogre now, he was more than 2 meters tall, and Silo was only about 1.7 meters. But this this is Lao Siji, and his ability to drive a big car is superb. Press the accelerator to the bottom, no matter how the engine shakes, and the bearings will not fall off. At most, the cylinder will be wired, and just give more lubricating oil. Therefore, every time I think about it, I feel sad, unbearable itching. But Silo, who had just woken up, didn't think so, although she couldn't figure out what was going on with this ogre's aesthetics. He would actually go after a drow who was thin, weak, and ugly in their eyes. But the fact was that she couldn't handle it. Come on. She has either been posing or sleeping in the past two days. If she continues like this, even if she is a drow, she will die in the hands of this ogre. So in a hurry, she revealed the hidden secret. Owen, who went back to the stream to wash his short skirt again, scratched his head and tried to remember what the drow said before. It seemed to be about dungeons, treasures and black dragons. Let's ask her again when she wakes up tomorrow. It's time to wash up now. It's time to sleep. Silo, who was confused and didn't know what year it was tonight, finally had some decent food to eat. Although the thick soup made with bacon and berries didn't taste very good, she still devoured three large bowls. Let's go to the dungeon. Owen, who had already eaten and drank enough, packed up all the remaining bacon with a bear skin, and then threw another bear skin to Silio, who was touching her belly and lying on the ground. I no longer care about image anymore. I sit cross-legged when eating, and lie down to recover my strength after eating. As for why she was given a bear skin, it was mainly because half of the towel on Silo's body was lost in the previous impulse. In order to reduce the frequency of stopping and driving on the road, it is better to put on a bear skin. After all, Owen is now very concerned about his own. I have little confidence in my self-control ability. Of course Silo also knew this. So she didn't mean to dislike it at all. She wrapped herself tightly in the bear skin that was simply rubbed with plant ash. Just like a stunted bear. Because he learned that there was a new adventure. Owen used his body to strengthen his current body. So as not to die on the way before completing the level. As an ogre of the fourth level, 
Its strength can be said to be strong or weak. And its brain is not very good. It is far less useful than a fourth level mage. So its use is actually quite embarrassing. Facing a group of ordinary people. The army can fight one against a hundred. But if faced with masters or mages holding sharp weapons, they will be a target. Especially since the territorial army has begun to popularize guns and cannons. The role of ogres will be even smaller. Thinking of this, Owen began to strengthen the ogre into the ogre king. The ogre king is taller and stronger than the ogre. At the same time, he could also cast blood devouring spells. Although he could only cast blood three times a day, this at least means that the ogre king has the ability to cast spells. As long as he has the ability to cast spells, he can cast idealistic spells. Hogwarts charms, like those magical beasts. Silo, who was responsible for leading the way, was doubting her life. She watched helplessly as the ogre changed day by day as if he had taken medicine. In just a few days, it went from more than two meters tall to three meters tall. And it swelled completely. It took several turns and was still trying to cast the spell. The most outrageous thing is that it succeeded. At this time, Silona still didn't understand that her first guess was wrong. And her second guess wasn't completely correct either. Because it was an extremely rare mutated ogre. Ogres are stupid and clumsy. But they have a special mutant type. The Two-Headed Ogre Magician. The Two-Headed Ogre Magician not only has the ability to cast spells, but is also smarter. He is the wise man among the ogres. Now this ogre not only has the strength of the Ogre King, but has also awakened the ability to cast spells. Although his overall strength is still a little short of the legendary, he is already a very rare strongman. After realizing this, Silo's original hatred and murderous intention hidden deep in her heart immediately turned into flattery and planning. Although Zal is comprehensive, due to their eagerness for quick success and quick success during their growth, once they reach adulthood, their strength will inevitably fall into a bottleneck period and it will be difficult to break through. Coupled with a fierce and cruel competition within the drow, there is no way to accumulate breakthroughs by relying on the trick. No drow will give such a chance to their compatriots. This is why most drow will focus on conspiracy when they reach adulthood. Conspiracy reasons. But everyone is a thousand-year-old fox. Talking about Liaojai is almost like chatting. So the intrigues between each other become a thousand layers of routines. To achieve the goal, there is a long way to go. The efficiency is extremely low. And the benefits obtained are even more it was pitiful. So Drow learned to use external forces. Judging from the way Silo pouted before. She knew she was a loser. No matter how she was before. She must have lost everything now. With not even a hair left. Therefore, if she wants to stand up, she must use external force. And this special one must the mutant ogre king is undoubtedly her best choice at the moment. Although the process of using external force is similar to that of goblin offering food. In terms of appearance and posture, Silo is at the crushing level. Of course, Owen felt the changes in Silo. He felt that his current body shape was too scary. This person actually dared to go up to him. How could it be possible if there was no conspiracy? The price he had to pay was so high that he couldn't bear to look at it. You can only close your eyes and experience it with your heart. But it doesn't matter. Even in order to encourage her behavior, Owen specially gave her, Shing, software modification. After Emil's improvement, a bottle of magic potion and a set of spells can complete the software transformation. Although it is not as outrageous as Luffy's rubber fruit, it still has a softness that makes even snake spirits envious, trying to stretch her neck long enough to be able to see the rope without bending her waist. This weird feeling made Silo feel more novel. At the same time, she felt weirder and weirder towards this ogre, because she didn't expect the other party to have it in his hands. There is such a good thing. The software modification may not seem powerful enough. But when used on Drow, it can make 108 tricks on the opponent. All kinds of hidden swords, snakes, and medicines in the body are child's play. And it's easy to kill someone in one sitting. I heard about the fish intestine sword. This is especially beneficial to Silo, whose strength has already entered a bottleneck period. It will undoubtedly increase her combat effectiveness to a new level in a very short period of time. But don't expect Silo to be grateful to Owen. What she wants to do now is to dig out all the secrets of this ogre and extract more value from him. To this end, she will not hesitate to use the drow's many years of careful perfection. The 360 movements have extremely high effects on men and women, humans and non-humans, and can be called an important trump card of the drow clan. The experiences that followed over the next period of time amazed Owen. He had always thought that he had read countless movies before traveling through time. 
and he had also read a lot of animation novels with exaggerated descriptions. But for the first time, he discovered that fantasy can be reflected in reality. Sorry. He mistakenly blamed those authors with strong tastes. It turns out that the works they created can really be done. Chapter 396 The Gestating Underground World Because there were so many newly developed postures, Owen didn't want to leave along the way. But Silo's purpose was not just to let this ogre with unusual aesthetics fascinate him, but to use the other party's power to seize the dungeon. As long as she occupies a dungeon, she can give birth to more offspring, plunder more slaves, and create a family of her own. Just like other drow matrons. To do this, she must have the help of this ogre. So Asilio tried her best to make the other party unable to extricate herself. But just letting the other party indulge in this is not enough. This ogre must be moved to help her occupy that dungeon. Only by occupying that dungeon can she transform from an ordinary drow into a drow mistress. Develop a family of their own. Which is the biggest dream of every female joueur in her life. Of course, Owen couldn't guess Silo's idea of reproducing a family by herself. Because normal people would think so. It is possible for men. But it is simply anti-human for women to live on their own. Although he didn't know Silo's thoughts. Owen knew that the other party must have a plan. Even if he was an ogre, he could guess it. But he was too lazy to think about it. Seeing that he could exchange for more postures, he would add a little bit. Out of curiosity, he carried the big stick on one shoulder and Silo on the other, heading towards the secret dungeon. Ever since he entered the underground world through a crack under Silo's guidance, Owen had learned that the main world had given birth to a brand new underground world, which was really unbelievable. After contacting the body and getting rid of the influence of the ogre's body on him, Owen guessed that it was because the impact of the secret realm pouring back when the sky trace was broken was too great, and it hit the main world like a torrent carrying many bubbles and impurities. Because the secret realm is between reality and reality, it does not cause any damage to the earth. Some of them are lighter in texture and float on the ground to become numerous secret realms. The other part sinks to the ground because it contains more impurities. And due to the mixing instead of removing impurities, they solidified faster forming countless independent underground ecological spaces. Most of these ecological spaces are connected to each other, so they gradually evolve into a huge underground world. This is the reason for the formation of the underground world. After years of accumulation, secret realms large and small have transformed into countless underground spaces, giving birth to a magical underground world, attracting countless scrambles, trying to build their own country based on it, that is, an underground city. Some of the pioneers who first discovered the underground world gradually took control of some less dangerous underground spaces and formed their own forces, including drow. The drow's habit of relying on external forces has gradually made the underground world more complicated. Irving is not the first tool man to be brought in, and he will not be the last. This also means that the underground world will face more chaos and danger. Future. Because the higher the value of the space, the deeper it goes underground. Therefore, the space close to the surface is not only small in area, but also of low value. However, this also means that the occupier will not be too strong, because the powerful ones will definitely compete for better underground space. For example, in the dungeon that Silo was interested in, although there was a black dragon, it was an old dragon that had already entered its twilight years and had been robbed of its original territory. As a result, it was seriously injured and had to come to the surface to retire. Although it was a seriously injured old dragon, the dragon's power should not be underestimated. Siluo was discovered while sneaking and managed to escape with her life. But this also gave Silo some idea of the old black dragon's condition. And then she planned to trick the damn ogre into fighting for the dungeon. Owen's sense of direction was not good to begin with. Now he has not only turned into an ogre, but has also entered the underground world of 9 turns and 18 turns. His eyesight has gone dark. He has long lost his direction and can only blindly follow the clues. Luo's command, which is also consistent with the performance of an ogre. Even the smartest two-headed ogre magician has only high intelligence, and is still far from being smart. Let alone an ordinary ogre. Therefore, Owen's current performance is in line with Silo's idea of an ogre. This appearance also made her feel somewhat relieved. After all, her only bargaining chip now was the ogre that she had worked hard to exchange for with her own capital. If she lost it, she wouldn't be able to cry at all. After deliberately taking a detour, Silo took Owen to the entrance of an underground space. On the way, Owen had already heard about his opponent this time. An old black dragon. Dragons are born legendary creatures. 
and their strength will continue to improve as they grow. They rely on talent to make a living. In theory, as long as they do not die in accidents, it is only a matter of time before most dragons become legends. But dragons are not immortal. Before entering old age, dragons mainly use their powerful bodies to fight against the violent dragon breath. Only after they reach old age will they gradually rely on magic. But as he gets older, the dragon's power will inevitably enter a period of decline. Otherwise, a black dragon may not be invincible in the underground world, but it will never be easily taken away from its territory. And this gives Owen enough confidence. I just don't know if the black dragon is delicious. Owen has not forgotten about creating an ogre recipe book. So he muttered in his mouth, making Silo's head full of black lines on the shoulder. And she wanted to chop it off with a knife. Stupid ogre. He reached out and picked up Silo and put it on the ground. Owen carried the big stick and walked into the underground space in front of him alone. The fluorescent mushrooms and the luminous carpets all over make the underground space look less dark than expected. The ogre itself has a certain low-light vision ability, although it is not much. After being strengthened by the main body, as long as it is not there is no problem in a completely lightless environment. At this time, Owen was standing at the entrance to the underground space. In front of him was a slope that sloped downward. Beyond that was a plain covered with mushrooms and streams and a small lake. Directly opposite the entrance was a waterfall with a large flow of water. And there is obviously a newly excavated dragon cave under the waterfall. Having determined his target, Owen strode towards that direction. The ogre's footsteps were very heavy. And as soon as he approached, he startled a large group of goblins who were busy picking mushrooms in the plain. These goblins are similar to the goblins who offered food to him before. It is their way of survival to offer food to the strong. And what better person to serve than a black dragon? So even if they faced the ogre like Owen feeling fear in his heart, the goblins still screamed in a different tone and rushed over with a mess of weapons. Owen just glanced down, not even bothering to do anything. Not only has the body strengthened the current ogre body, but even the original martial arts has been updated. If he was chopped down by a group of goblins, what else would he be busy with? Chapter 397 I just like enemies like the old. Weak, sick and disabled. As the distance got closer, Owen could already see the old black dragon lying in the newly excavated dragon lair and felt the other party's malicious eyes. It's a pity that this black dragon is too old. The strong body that could shake the hills now only as skin and bones. Only the proliferated ferocious exoskeleton and cuticle maintain the last bit of appearance. But the cloudy eyes and the smell of putrefaction the breathing as well as the shallow layer of copper and silver coins in the dragon's lair to support his appearance. All indicate that this black dragon has entered the end of its life and can no longer maintain its dignity as a dragon. Seeing that the enemy was such an old, weak, sick, and disabled person, Owen suddenly became excited. He liked this kind of enemy. So he shouldered the metal rod, raised his thick thighs, and let his heavy feet step on the ground with a roaring sound. He heard the sound and began to charge towards the target preparing to beat the old dragon. Faced with the provocation of an ogre, the old black dragon on the other side couldn't hold it any longer. He forced himself up, flapped his wings and flew up. Then he landed not far away from Owen and tried his best to spit out a breath that was obviously weak in the follow-up. The black dragon is not the strongest among the dragons. In fact, the black dragon that likes to live in swamps and caves is far less powerful than the red dragon. Its breath is not as loud and hot as the red dragon's breath. The black dragon's breath is more like spraying venom. Poisonous snakes are in the shape of a line. And occasionally they are deliberately thinned into mist to increase the attack area. However, because the black dragon's breath mainly relies on corrosiveness to kill, naturally the more concentrated it is, the better the effect will be. It's a pity that the old black dragon's feeble breath is similar to that when urinating. Although it won't fall on the feet when it comes up. Don't expect it to spray too far. It has more of a deterrent effect. But to the ogre, all this is like showing flirtatious looks to a blind man. He is not a goblin and will be frightened by this small scene. Even if the ground is corroded by the acid breath. He stepped on it without hesitation. And then his foot slipped and he fell down on the spot. Although this black dragon is old and frail and has only a few years left to live. He still becomes a spirit in old age. Let alone an old dragon that is hundreds of years old. Although the energy and blood have declined. The magic power brewing in the dragon's body has become more mellow. The skills are also proficient. And the experience is richer. So it seems to be spitting out a weak dragon's breath. But in fact, it is a greasy technique secretly performed. 
at this time. There was no bluff intimidation in the old black dragon's eyes. Only a touch of mockery and malice. When the old black dragon saw the ogre that dared to challenge its status fall down, it held its head high, and then gently rubbed the dragon's claws. A spark instantly ignited the thick grease splashed by the grease spell, and suddenly a blazing flame covered its entire body. The grease-covered Owen was on fire, and his posture was so elegant that it attracted cheers and praises from countless goblins. Silo, who sneaked in secretly, turned green when she saw this. Do you know how much she suffered and suffered in order to fool this ogre and come to work as a thug? So what is she doing all this time? Fortunately, Owen stood up again and calmly patted the flames on his body. When he found that it couldn't be wiped off, he didn't care and continued rushing with the stick. But this time, every time he landed, his feet sank deeply into the ground firmly. Stay still. No amount of grease will help. The tenacity of this ogre surprised the old black dragon a little bit. But in its long life, it has never seen any opponent. All kinds of magic came at will, pressing Owen to the ground and bombarding him wildly. Silo, who was watching the battle, was in a state of anxiety, fearing that he would never get up again. But Owen's toughness is beyond the imagination of the old black dragon and Silo. The combined attacks are enough to level a town to the ground, but they can't break through the defense. What kind of material is this ogre made of? If Owen knew what they were thinking, he would definitely tell them what a full-level golden bell is, and what it means to be invulnerable to water. Fire and water. The old black dragon was a little panicked. Although its magic power was powerful, its body was too old. Excessive use of magic would be a big burden for it. What's more, its injuries have not improved and are now starting to worsen. Owen was keenly aware that there was an inappropriate pause in the old black dragon's successive attacks. So he reacted immediately. Blood devouring technique. The thick red light representing the advanced blood devouring technique enveloped his whole body. Owen's already huge body suddenly became even bigger, and his muscles expanded to the limit. His whole body was like a violent version of the Hulk. The power increased to an incredible level, and even Owen himself had difficulty controlling it. As soon as he raised his feet, he flew into the air, and in the blink of an eye, he passed through the magic bombing and arrived in front of the old black dragon. Neither party expected this scene, but Owen's ogre's instinct came into play, because the ogre was too lazy to think and relied on instinct most of the time. Therefore, before Owen could recover, the stick had already been swung. Past, the old black dragon was stretching his neck to concentrate on casting spells. But this time he was hit hard. As it ages, the black dragon's originally simple bone spurs and horns will gradually grow a large number of exoskeletons and cuticles, forming an additional layer of defense. Ordinary swords can only break this way when slashed. But the mixed iron rod is made of black iron and iron. Forged from a mixture. It is a little short of a magic weapon. But in terms of strength, it can make most sharp weapons useless. In addition, Owen's strength has now increased to an exaggerated level. And the proliferate of exoskeletons protecting both sides of the head have no effect. The impact was too great. And the mixed iron rod was smashed into pieces. And then, the remaining force fell on the side of the old black dragon's face. The few remaining teeth of the old black dragon were greatly damaged by this blow. At least seven or eight huge dragon teeth were thrown out from the dragon's mouth. The whole head was also thrown to the side of the body under the huge force. The impact made me dizzy. And the sound from my neck made my teeth ache. This black dragon is really too old. So old that he has nothing but empty frames. Maybe he could fool the enemy with just one breath before. But after being beaten away by Owen with a stick, he suddenly rolled his eyes and let out a breath full of putrid smell. The belly leaked out, and the old black dragon stopped moving. The goblin who was originally wailing and screaming to cheer for his old master saw that the old black dragon was gone. He bent his legs on the spot, and slid to his knees in front of Owen to pay respects to his new master. The goblin's attitude changed so smoothly that Owen didn't react for a while. There was always an illusion that these goblins had always been his subordinates, because the other party's actions were all from the heart, and they were truly loyal at Owen. In fact, this is not surprising. Goblins never care who their master is. Whoever is stronger is their master. And as long as the master is not dead, they will not betray. If he dies, of course they will join the new master. It doesn't matter? Asked. Therefore, after Owen did not start killing and acquiesced to their surrender, these goblins immediately raised their hands and cheered, and lit a fire and prepared pots to please their new masters with rich delicacies. As a result, all the goblins who were disliked by Owen were rushed aside. And then he signaled Silo, 
who appeared at an unknown time, with his eyes. After seeing Owen's gaze, Silo, who was originally shocked that the battle ended like this, took a deep breath on the spot, and immediately opened the bear's skin with a pair of plumps, revealing an abyss, which was then covered up again as she exhaled. Just like Silo's inner anger, it went from high to low, resisting the thought of poisoning the ogre. Silo began to prepare dinner, because her dream of being a drow mistress still needed this ogre to maintain. Chapter 398 Two Eggs and One Fish While Silo was preparing dinner, Owen steeled himself, suppressed his unwillingness to work or move, and began to dismantle the dead and aggrieved old black dragon. Although the performance of this old black dragon is a bit anticlimactic, it cannot change the fact that this is a legendary creature. Even if the blood and vitality decline, the body penetrated by magic is still full of treasures. It can be said that the whole body is even the ones in the large intestine. Dragon dung can be used as magic material, so it cannot be wasted. Owen first extracted all the dragon's blood. This black red and viscous blood lacked vitality, but contained powerful magic. It can be seen that it is not the magic that limits this old black dragon, but the decaying body and the few remaining blood. Vitality. Otherwise, unless Owen himself takes action, he will still have to fight. First, the dragon's blood, which is difficult to maintain, is extracted, then the perishable internal organs and bone marrow, and then the skin, flesh and bones. When the root of the tail was removed, Owen curled his lips and smiled disdainfully. Even though the old black dragon was so big, the thing had long shrunk out of shape and was not as big as him. However, thinking back to the tiger penis soaked in wine and the roasted kidneys at the barbecue stall in his previous life, Owen's eyes gradually became uncomfortable. Although the black dragon is not the largest dragon, its body length is more than 20 meters, so dismembering them all is not an easy task. In the end, even Silo, who was cooking, was dragged to work by Owen. But Owen was the main one, because Silo's resistance is too low and her strength is too small. The blood of the black dragon is very corrosive. It is not impossible to become invulnerable after showering with dragon blood, but it requires quite complicated processing. Even so, the success rate is quite limited. Most of the time, dragon blood is used as an alchemy material, such as dragon blood steel. There are not many people who drink or apply dragon blood potions directly, but very few can survive, and most of them turn into monsters. In addition, the internal organs of the black dragon are also poisonous. Even if the drow's poison resistance is not low, they may still be able to bear it. Fortunately, Silio has unique insights into dissection, and with a pig-killing knife made of black iron in her hand, there is no problem in cutting off tendons and bones. As the dismantling came to an end, Owen carefully removed the tender tenderloins and soaked them in the lake water to remove the blood stasis. As a result, many fish and shrimps were poisoned, and only a small amount absorbed the essence of dragon blood, becoming a member of the huge dragon blood biological system in the main world. Owen chopped the soaked tenderloin into large pieces and stacked them neatly around the large stew pot. In the middle, he placed two eggs, a fishy meat, and a huge heart. He then poured in strong wine spices and detoxifying and nourishing potions, and finally boiled over high heat. Simmer for a full six hours. The fishy sweet taste with a hint of bitterness made Silo's face change greatly, but she didn't manage to escape. Owen caught her and force fed three bowls of soup. Even though she had gone through many battles, she still couldn't finish it, foamed at the mouth and passed out. Owen looked at it and laughed. He picked up the huge iron fork, took out the meat pieces from the pot, and took big bites. Only then did he realize that he seemed to have forgotten to remove the mucous membrane and other things. And he also didn't take out the catheter in the whip. No wonder Silio couldn't bear the taste. And it was no surprise that stones came out after one sip. For fear of biting a stone, Owen simply rewarded the drooling goblin with a whole pot of soup. And the result was unanimously praised. Owen, who had no luck, chose to eat a specialty of the underground world. A giant snail as big as a fist. This kind of food is not delicious but it is the easiest source of protein. In addition, it is a kind of mushroom with thick roots. The roots contain starch. In addition to making you hungry quickly, it also makes you feel full. After filling his stomach indiscriminately, Owen wandered to the dragon's lair, not caring about the annoying copper and silver coins, and laid down and fell asleep. However, he didn't notice that Siluo, who was already familiar with his routine, quietly got up. She poured water into her belly in large gulps and then vomited. 
she went back and forth three times. Silo breathed into the palm of her hand. When she smelled it, she frowned. However, she couldn't bear it any longer. So she had no choice but to find some alone in the underground world. There are dry chews of plants that can cleanse your breath. While clearing the taste from her mouth, Silo recalled the previous battle. The hidden strength of the old black dragon caught Silo off guard. And the strength displayed by the ogre also shocked her. In fact, this is normal. The black dragon itself is a cunning and evil creature especially in old age, in order to maintain its status when its strength declines. It is normal to use more brains and hide a few tricks. At that time, Silo was only thinking about becoming a drow mistress. So it was normal for her to be negligent. But what really shocked her was that the ogre was so strong and had a legendary level of combat power. This is both an advantage and a hidden danger. It depends on whether she can grasp it in the future. Fortunately, the original goal was achieved. Silo occupied this dungeon. Even if there was only a newly dug dragon's lair and a cave where goblins lived like honeycombs, it still could not change the fact that this was a dungeon. Next, Silo will continue to trap the ogre and then expand the population here, train soldiers, attract some underground merchants, and find a few drow to borrow seeds to reproduce offspring. When the wings are full, the ogre will the ogres are also old and fading. When the time comes, they will find a way to kill any damn ogre and become the drow mistress. Silo, who was dreaming about a bright future and consuming a lot of energy, also fell into sleep. However, her dream soon became not serious, which could be seen from her twisted legs that were almost water-soaked, not to mention the strange bedfellows of this night. Owen, who rarely got up early, did not torment Silo, but worked hard to run the ogre's brain and think about what to do next. I wanted to be an ogre gourmet, but compared to exploring the underground world, this small goal seemed insignificant. Owen didn't know how big the underground world was, and there was too little information about it. So he planned to stay and explore it, so that he could be prepared in case the underground world wanted to invade the surface. If there is no war, he plans to try to see if it can develop into a new trade market, just like the mountains in other worlds. Since he decided to stay, he had to plan carefully. Although he was too lazy to think about it, Owen was very experienced in farming. Without much thought, he exchanged his body for the caveman in Invincible Heroes. The caveman looks like a fusion of a rotten potato and a mutated frog, and has a small tail. Anyway, he is ugly, and his combat effectiveness is negligible. The place we live in is also not very good. If you don't look carefully, it's just a pile of mud covered with mushrooms. You can't tell it unless you look carefully. But cavemen are serious underground creatures, extremely adapted to the underground environment. They are also farmers and builders in the underground world. As soon as they are summoned, they start planting mushrooms and raising giant snails in captivity. And they work very quickly. Best of all, cavemen are extremely cheap. Just when Owen was about to redeem Bird Pavilion, Silo was about to wake up with a groan. Chapter 399 The Initial Construction of the Underground City What is this? After Silo woke up, she immediately discovered the busy cavemen. Although they looked ugly, there were really not many good-looking underground creatures. So she was just curious about their origins. Slave! Coward! Hiding! Owen was still trying to make soup with the dragon bones. He didn't care about Silas' question and used a way of speaking that only the smartest ogres could master. Simple replied. Silo took the initiative to improve Owen's words. Meaning that these cavemen are slaves of the old black dragon like the goblins. But they are more timid than the goblins. So they did not show up in yesterday's battle. When the battle is over just came out. It sounds fine. But if you ask carefully, you can easily find some flaws. Unfortunately, Silo is an 80-year-old woman who has stretched her child. She thinks she has Owen trapped and in her hands. And she is accustomed to thinking that the ogre is they were all stupid. So they believed Owen's words without hesitation. As expected, men's mouths are deceiving. Especially men who seem to be honest and honest and can't lie. After waking up, Silo ate some mushrooms and giant snails without touching the dragon bone soup made by Owen, and then started to clean up the dragon's lair. The treasures that the old black dragon had collected over a long period of time had obviously not been brought out. The treasures in the dragon's lair were probably only collected during this period. However, in the old black dragon's previous state, he was obviously unable to plunder powerful forces. So the treasures in the dragon's lair were pitiful. Most of them are copper coins, silver coins, and a small amount of gold coins. There are only a few gems and crystals. 
although there was very little. Silo still collected it carefully. These were important funds for the development of the dungeon. After finding that no copper coins were missing, Silo used dragon blood and crystals to set up a simple magic circle. Its function is very simple. Similar to a beacon or a lighthouse. Indicating that this is an open area. Allowing free entry and exit. Used to attract wandering underground creatures and underground merchants. It is an essential symbol of any dungeon. If Silo was alone, she would definitely not dare to use it. But with a legendary ogre in hand, it would be the wisest choice to make full use of the advantages to speed up the development of the dungeon. Owen didn't care about Silo's movements and ignored them. After adding a handful of firewood, he was busy cutting the soft dragon skin on the belly of the old black dragon into a two-foot square piece and using magic potion. After soaking, peel off the layers, select smooth and tough ones, thread them with dragon tendons, and then decorate them with dragon bones to create a very rough ogre beauty recipe. When Silo found out, Owen had even produced the dragon bone pen and dragon blood ink, which made her feel distressed. Although they occupied a territory and shamelessly said it was a dungeon, Silua was not blind. So how could she not know what the actual situation was? So she had already calculated the skin, flesh and bones of the old black dragon. Although meat and offal are valuable, they are perishable and have limited uses. Just eat them. The most valuable ones are dragon skin, dragon bones, dragon teeth and dragon blood. These are hard currencies wherever they are placed. They can be sold to exchange for resources. Enough to set up the structure of the dungeon. Who would have thought that in the blink of an eye, this damn ogre would cause so much trouble? Silo accepted that it took so much effort and wasted so much dragon skin to get a magic book. But what the H? L is the ogre beauty recipe. Is that literal? She opened it and saw that. As expected, the pot of soup with two eggs and one fishy soup that could give people nightmares last night was on the home page. Silo rolled her eyes in anger and almost lost her breath. It took a long time to recover. However, when she saw the clothes that the ogre on the side had specially made for her, and since she was starting a business now and needed to rely on this stupid ogre, Silo had no choice but to give up, then picked up the clothes and looked through them. How to wear it? After all, this small piece of cloth is connected to a rope. If you wear it wrongly, it will not be like a tumbled rope. In addition to the piece of rope, there is also a clothes-fitting short chongsam and high heels. Short chong sam can not only be used to cover the front and rear ropes, but also reduce the frequency of the front armor shaking in battle. As for the inconvenient high-heeled shoes, which worse balance, this is not a problem at all. Let alone it is said that the heel made of dragon teeth can pierce plate armor with a kick, so it can be regarded as a murder weapon. This entire set is sewn with a soft inner layer of dragon leather, and is also enchanted. It is lighter in weight than ordinary clothing, and has more defense than plate armor. This craftsmanship didn't look like it could be done by an ogre. And Silo was full of doubts about it. But Silo had tested it repeatedly before. And found out that this was indeed a real ogre. Not a strange creature that used transformation. Moreover, its brain was indeed not very good. And the abilities and magic it could control were as if they were born in it. She could really touch it. No idea. Even though everyone already knew the truth. They still felt that the other party was hiding something. Silo was helpless. After all, Drow were generally better at hiding something. Since she couldn't figure it out, Silo wouldn't waste too much time and energy on this. She changed her clothes and prepared to go out. However, she needed to settle the ogre before leaving. If it ran away, she would it's too late to cry. Because she was too pushy. Silo almost didn't make it that day. But when she saw the ogre lying lazily, she breathed a sigh of relief and suppressed the feeling of transparency and fullness from the inside out. Going out in a hurry, as soon as Silo left, Owen also let go, preparing to exchange for the meeting hall, tavern, blacksmith shop and bird pavilion. The assembly hall, which originated from invincible heroes, is different from the town center and does not have the effect of assimilation. However, it has the special ability to collect magic and transform materials, which can provide gold coins for recruiting troops. In addition, it can also be used to reserve resources and functions. Although it is single, it is indispensable. So it was first redeemed by Irving. The tavern can increase the attractiveness of the territory to wanderers and merchants. And occasionally there will be heroes that can be recruited. So the second one is exchanged. The blacksmith shop can not only make equipment, but also war machinery. Apart from being expensive, the price-slash-performance ratio is also pretty good. 
The Last Bird Pavilion is a second-level military building. Although the harpies that can be recruited have average combat effectiveness, they are fast, flexible, and good at flying in complex environments. They are considered good flying troops in the underground world. While Owen was busy building the dungeon, Silo, who had been delayed for several days before returning, was breathing a sigh of relief after feeling the magic beacon. When Silio, who was a little gray-faced, still wearing a bright short chong Sam, looked behind her with a sense of accomplishment. That was what she had gained from this outing. Dozens of goblins, a wandering gray dwarf, and a wanted demon sorcerer were lured here by using the deeds of dragon slaying and the name of the ogre king. If Silo hadn't known that there was a gathering point nearby, she wouldn't have been able to recruit so many people in such a short time. Unfortunately, drow are so rare and unpopular that most drow would choose to hide their whereabouts. Silua would not be able to find them even for a while, let alone coax a few to come back. This made her wish to become a mistress unfulfilled. Don't delay. After all, she can lay an egg on her own. Chapter 400 When Shiman Meets Jean Lien Don't blame anyone. Is that the dungeon ahead that you are talking about? The demon warlock, who also felt the magic lighthouse, said in a slightly hoarse but more seductive voice. At the same time, he twisted his body unconsciously, curling his hair with one hand and crossing his arms with the other. Under the bear, the two giant objects are more eye-catching. It is obvious that not only is he rich in capital, but he also knows how to use it. It's a pity that the people present are either goblins or gray dwarves. Their aesthetics are not on the same line at all. The only ones who share the same aesthetics are their peers. Silo glanced at the other party with vigilance, and couldn't help but hesitate again whether to take the other party back. Because the other party's existence was undoubtedly the biggest obstacle to her control of the dungeon. After all, the ogre with abnormal aesthetics was best like this. Mouth. And there are only a few demon warlocks who can have fun with Zalbi. As long as there are enough benefits or temptations, the ogres can also do it without any bottom line. No wonder Silo is so insecure. Because everything she has now and her plans for the future are based on mastering that ogre. Once the other party takes away her beauty, she will probably if you lose your wife and lose your troops. It will be a huge loss. But the benefits brought by a demon warlock were also obvious. So even though she knew there were many hidden dangers, Silo still couldn't help but bring him here. Yes, not far ahead is what I call the dungeon. Then you will be able to see the powerful ogre king. A dragon slayer. Silo said hard, but in fact she was still a little weak in her heart. After all, her so-called dungeon is not even a piece of paper. The goblins will be easy to get rid of when the time comes. Grey dwarves and demon warlocks are not easy to deal with. And there is nothing in the territory. They cannot be allowed to be with the goblins. Sleep in a hole in the ground. Hearing this, the grey dwarf nodded with satisfaction. If there is a powerful ogre king to protect him, he can still look forward to the rest of his life. And since he is a dragon slayer, he must have many precious treasures in his hands. With the materials, maybe I can create some powerful equipment. Only the demon warlock took another look at Silo. Although the other party did not reveal any flaws. For the demon warlock who has been dealing with demons all year round, she knew that there must be something wrong with the other party and that there was no need for so-called evidence. There might be a trap ahead. Maybe it's a ruin. But it can't be as good as the other party said. However, despite thinking so, the demon warlock had no intention of leaving, because she was also interested in the powerful ogre king. At present, the surface world has gone through the most chaotic period, and all forces are pursuing stability, and an organization called the Holy Shield has emerged in the north, hunting down evil people everywhere, causing many demon warlocks to suffer. At present, the underground world has become a refuge for people like them, and many evil people have poured in. Therefore, the internal competition in the underground world is now quite cruel. In order to save his life and to live a better life, Eunice needs to master more power. And a stupid ogre is undoubtedly the best choice. As soon as she entered the underground space, Silo's footsteps paused, and then her eyelids jumped, wondering if she had gone to the wrong place. Hundreds of so-called cavemen have cultivated large mushroom plantations, and the goblins are busy chopping up the collected mushrooms and feeding them to the giant snails. This is normal. What is not normal is that there is a very dungeon-style building in the dragon lair. There is also a tavern in the open space near the lake. And there is a strange lair among the stalactites on the top. If she read it correctly, turned out to be a rare harpy. The goblins who saluted respectfully after seeing her made Silo regain some confidence. After leaving dozens of goblins behind and placing the gray dwarves and demon warlocks in the tavern, 
She couldn't wait to run towards the dragon's lair. Because Silo now really wants to know what happened here during the few days she left. The dragon's lair had obviously been expanded and could easily accommodate the sudden appearance of the building. Silo approached slowly with a sharp blade in hand. Her heart full of vigilance and countless questions. This is a building similar to a lobby. It looks low. But in fact the height inside is not low. And the area is not small. However, as soon as you enter the door, you see a long stove, which ruins the atmosphere. And opposite the stove there is on a chopping board or a slaughtering table. An ogre wearing a dragon skin apron and a tall chef's hat was carefully brewing a large pot of green soup. The smell was very strange and daunting. Try it! Seeing Silo come in, Owen couldn't wait to serve her a large bowl of bubbling thick green viscous soup. This was a mixture of dragon fat, gentian and some rare magic potions. It is made of a large amount of magical elements and has powerful unknown effects. So more experimenters are needed to provide opinions. The problem is that this is not the first time that Silo has drank the soup he made. When she remembered the taste and looked at the bowl of soup in front of her, her face turned green with fright. She even forgot what she wanted to ask. After firmly rejecting the soup with weird ingredients, Silo hugged the bear with her hands, seemingly expressionless. But in fact, she started brainstorming. Because what she saw in front of her was too weird. And it was out of her control. And the source of everything is this seemingly honest and honest ogre. Now Silo is very suspicious that this is an ogre parasitized by the devil. Maybe it is a caster using some kind of transformation technique. Anyway, it cannot be a pure ogre. At this time, she faced three choices. One is to give up everything and leave quickly. The further away the better. The second is to remain calm and investigate secretly. The third is to point it out directly and ask. In fact, as a drow, Silo would only choose the second option. It is impossible to give up. And directly stating it means there is no way out. So playing dirty is Silo's only choice. Therefore, Owen can be served to the beauty that night. If Eunice hadn't taken the initiative to send it to her door the next morning, he didn't even know that another demon warlock had arrived in the territory. If it were its true form, not to mention the demon warlock, not even Silo or Owen would touch it. It's not that they are bad looking. In fact, these two have the word big wave engraved in their bones. A normal man's legs will feel weak at first glance and he will be unable to extricate himself after being touched. They are absolutely ecstasy stunners. But for these two people, hundreds of people is just like a newbie who has just started. The knowledge that Irving secretly gained from the internet in his previous life is completely routine for these two people. He only dares to mess around when his brain is full of water. But who made him the incarnation now? And the body of an ogre. So when Shiman meets Jean Lien, no one should dislike anyone. When Scylla woke up from her sleep, she saw Eunice who was proud of successfully trapping the ogre. She was filled with hatred. But as a drow, her instinct was to let her join in and fight for the ogre. Demon Limited? That's right. Since you can't monopolize it, then monopolize as much as possible. This is the way for drow to survive. Willfulness, anger, and quarrels have long been abandoned by Silo. A drow who cannot control his emotions is not qualified to live. 